This story begins in the apartment of a debtor who owed a large amount of money to not-so-honest creditors. She begged to be given a few more days because she did not have enough funds to pay off the debt. She said that all her savings went to treatment for her father, and that is why she did not manage to settle her debt on time. The men who had come to collect the money were extremely angry at this answer. It was clear that they were not satisfied with this situation at all because they needed money to give to their management. Suddenly, one of the collectors, who was rummaging around the apartment in the meantime, ran into the room and announced that he had found money in this woman's apartment, all the necessary amount. She could not believe her eyes. It was a real surprise for her. After all, she knew that it was impossible. The young man brought a wad of money into the room and ostentatiously poured it out to brag about his find. One of the main collectors who came to her for money wanted to beat the unfortunate woman because he thought she had hidden the money and did not want to pay the debt. It was obvious that he was extremely angry, but the man who found the funds interrupted him in time and said that they should get out of here because they got everything they wanted. And after that, they left the apartment. The woman was shocked because she could not understand where the funds in her apartment came from. She knew she didn't have any money when suddenly her daughter brought a note. It was a note from one of the debt collectors who came to collect the debt. He decided to close their financial problems himself and paid off their debts. The man advised her not to get into such unpleasant situations again. That man was Ben. He himself did not fully understand why he did it. Perhaps he simply felt sorry for this unfortunate woman with a child. He could just ignore the situation, but he couldn't hold back anymore. Ben wanted to change something in his life. In his opinion, this should be the first step in a new life. After another successful working day, the collectors decided to go to a bar to have fun and escape from the daily routine. Ben got extremely drunk at the bar and could hardly stand on his feet. He himself could not understand why he was so drunk, but it was clear to him that he could no longer continue like this. He has long wanted to change something in his life, but he constantly lacks the determination to break out of this routine. While Ben was lighting his cigarette, he suddenly heard an extremely loud sound coming right at him. It was a truck that was moving at a crazy speed. There was no chance to avoid a collision, and in a matter of seconds, only Ben's body and a tree managed to stop the truck. None of the people could survive such a powerful collision. But Ben noticed that something strange happened to him. He could not understand what had happened to him. His consciousness could still feel emotions. Ben thought that surely he would go to hell, for heathens like him could not go to heaven. He became extremely interested in who killed him. He went to the cabin and saw something that made him furious. He was killed by a pathetic drunk driver. Ben couldn't believe that he died because of this loser who just fell asleep at the wheel. Ben was surprised that the angel of death, who was supposed to appear after his death, had not yet appeared. He had already thought that they did not want to accept him into the next world. In a moment, a magical portal opened in the sky and a strange noise was heard. An unknown force shot through Ben's body. The main character did not have time to understand what was happening to him. He had never felt anything like this before. Synchronization has started. After its completion, he was given a new title, Devil Knight. The current level was zero. Type, Wandering Spirit. Ben couldn't even imagine what lay ahead of him, but he figured that whatever it was, it was better than his miserable life. This was the birth of a new stage in his consciousness. An unknown red object flew up to Ben. It was a magical red orb. She explained to him that he was now the new lord of Yomlo, and he had to create his own hell before he could access the next task. She said that after successfully completing the first task, he will be able to receive a reward of 1,000 points. Ben was extremely angry at the source of the sound, which was called the system. He hit the red sphere with all his might and said that it was getting too noisy here. But the red sphere decided to continue and presented itself to him as the supreme system for the improvement of the new master, Yomlo. She added that he can turn to her in any situation. Ben couldn't understand what was going on at all. He asked her who the hell she was and what she wanted from him. He had never encountered anything like this before. She told him that she was the supreme system who would help him become a leader in their universe of hell. Of the numerous souls, only he met the necessary conditions and was chosen as a candidate for this position. But Ben said that he was just an ordinary man who died such a pitiable death. He believed that this was some kind of mistake, 
and that the supreme system chose the wrong person that they needed. But the supreme system began to continue to convince him and named several facts from his real life. She said that he grew up without parents, went to school only for friends, but never managed to find any. She reminded him that he had always felt empty and alone and that no one had ever cared whether he was in someone's life or not. Ben's eyes lit up fiercely at her words. He literally squeezed the system with his hand with all his might and forced it to shut up. These words reminded him of his worthless life. He wanted to say something in his defense, but suddenly he began to realize that it was all really the truth, which he never wanted to accept. The supreme system said that he was chosen. The previous Lord Yomlo chose him. This meant that he had all the necessary skills that were needed to continue this business. Ben began to realize the seriousness of the situation. He realized that he seemed to have no other choice. He got a real chance to prove himself. Now he can become a king that everyone will respect. And the supreme system is obliged to help him in this. Ben thought about it because it's not every day that he gets such offers. He already wanted to ask what he would need to do. All of a sudden, an unknown creature of enormous size literally appeared from under the ground, which interrupted their dialogue. The supreme system began to flee and told Ben that this is their enemy who has only one desire, to destroy them. The unknown creature began to head straight for them. It seemed as if she would just destroy them now if they didn't run away from her. But they managed to hide. As Ben caught his breath, he asked the system what the hell this monster was that nearly ended their existence. The supreme system explained to him that there cannot be two kings in the same world. In addition, there are magical powers and skills that he will have to master. The supreme system explained to him that it was Lord Cholop who would try to destroy him as the newly elected Lord of Yomlo, and she added that if he appears again now, it will be necessary to use the dodging skill. The supreme system did not have time to explain to him all the necessary information, when suddenly the creature managed to find them again. To kill them, Lord Cholop sent a water dragon at them, but this time Ben at least knew what he had to do. At the last moment, he managed to use his new skill, Dodging, that the Supreme System told him about. And after that, they were successfully transferred to a new dimension. Ben couldn't understand where they were or what was going on. He was not yet ready for such challenges. They got into an independent subsystem. The new Lord of Yomlo did not yet have enough rights to understand where they had gone. But that was not the main thing now. The only condition of this subsystem was that they were not allowed to be here for a long period of time. They literally had a few minutes to find a way out of the situation, because after the time is up, they will be returned to the world where Lord Cholop is now. Ben was extremely angry at this situation and was also maddened by the fact that he did not understand anything at all. He wanted it all to turn out to be just his nightmare and end immediately. But the Supreme System explained to him that there is no way back and she added that he can return to his former world, where Lord Cholop is already waiting for him, who desires his death. Or he has the opportunity to trust her, but since there is not so much time left, he needs to immediately make a decision on which his future fate depends. Ben realized that he didn't have as many options as he would have liked. Therefore, the Supreme System immediately began to look for a new world in which there are no other kings who could threaten it. After she completed her quest, the Supreme System opened a portal, and they traveled together to a new hell. It was the beginning of a new phase in his life after death. After a long journey, they found themselves in a new world. What Ben saw there extremely saddened him, because it was not what he expected. He did not want to believe that this place was now his new world. It was completely empty. The Supreme System explained to him that this is exactly what the Zero Level looks like, and now he will have a lot of work to build a powerful world here. The newly elected Lord Yomlo was in real despair. He did not believe that he would be able to build his own world here because he had not been able to create something of his own in his entire life. The supreme system began to encourage him. Ben is now the new Lord of Yomlo, and even with a zero level, the supreme system believed in him and his new capabilities. This greatly moved the newly elected king because no one had ever trusted him before. He suddenly realized that in his previous life he always lacked just ordinary support and a close person who would believe in him. From the joy of realization, he began to hug the system and thanked it for the words of support and faith in him. He was extremely moved by her words. This angered the system, 
She did not expect this from him, because as it turned out, the Supreme System is a woman who does not like to be hugged without permission. But at that moment, it didn't matter. The newly elected king of Yomlo needed to create a new world here from scratch. Now, he is clearly confident in his abilities and is ready to do everything necessary to turn this wasteland into a real, powerful world. Suddenly, the new Lord Yomlo heard a strange sound and saw something that surprised him greatly. He has not yet gotten used to the fact that now strange things are his new everyday life. The ground in front of him began to split and move in opposite directions. After that, he saw a strange magical glow that he had never seen before. Yomlo asked the system what it was and what was happening. The Supreme System explained to him that this is the creation of a path of reincarnation. All lost souls must pass through it to find themselves in the afterlife. Yomlo noted that this path is remarkably similar to the Milky Way, and it was really an extremely picturesque sight. Suddenly something strange started happening with the system. She began to be shaken in place in different directions. It felt as if she was trying to explode. This began to greatly embarrass the newly elected Lord Yomlo. Suddenly, points fell out of the system, which can be used to improve the new world. With their help, you can build various buildings as well as increase their levels. The main character was extremely happy that he could build his world at his own discretion, as he wanted, and immediately got down to business. First, he decided to improve the wooden shack. For this, he needs to use a thousand points. It seemed extremely expensive to him, but he was not yet familiar with the pricing policy. The Supreme System explained to him that in order to build a truly beautiful and powerful world, he would need to spend millions of points, and the reincarnation path of the first level that was in this world gives one point every day, but if you improve it to level two, it will give ten points. This seemed extremely long to the new king, so he decided to ask if there were any other ways to earn more points. He wanted to find out all the necessary information as quickly as possible. The Supreme System explained that there is another way to earn points. To do this, you need to fulfill her tasks and catch demons. For this, he will receive an additional reward. The protagonist hoped that the demons would need to be caught later, not right now, but he was ready for any challenges. Yomlo had been in the New World for quite some time. He got bored and decided to at least have some fun. For this, he asked Sistema to give him a beautiful queen. Suddenly, the Supreme System started spinning around itself and informed the king that he had a temporary mission, emptiness and solitude. This became the first task for him. In this world, the refusal of the mission costs 1,001 points, but if the balance is negative, then the Supreme System will be destroyed and the new world in which Yomlo now lives will also be destroyed. In this case, the probability of survival of the main character was zero. This news made Ben extremely angry. He could not accept the fact that if he refused the mission, he would die immediately. The Supreme System answered him that tasks and missions are the only option to overcome the boredom and loneliness he felt in this world. She continued and informed him that in order to successfully complete the mission, it was necessary to find ten souls who would agree to be his loyal servants. Other than that, it was a great opportunity to earn points. When Yomlo heard about the reward of one million points, he immediately agreed to such a generous offer. But he did not yet know what he would have to do for this. The Supreme System led him to the path of reincarnation through which thousands of souls pass every day. He had to choose exactly ten of them. But not everything was as easy as it seemed at first glance. She explained to him that these ten souls must be of the second level. Usually after death, an ordinary soul has the first level, and only samurai who have been engaged in spiritual practices all their lives have the second level. But this time the newly elected king of Yomlo was lucky. He found the necessary second level souls quite quickly. The main character took advantage of such a generous gift of fate and immediately called them to him. In a moment they appeared right in front of him in human form. But for some reason, two of them constantly argued with each other. Lord Yomlo was enraged at such disrespect and had to shout at them to stop their inexplicable bickering. He stood before them and his body radiated an aura as terrifying as the abyss. Yomlo looked incredibly huge. He was like a living deity. The souls of the second level began to understand that the Lord of Hell was standing before them. It angered him that souls were fighting, even after death. 
It looked like they didn't care where they ended up. Lord Yomlo was not even happy about their appearance and wanted them to disappear from his sight. The second-level souls realized their mistake and immediately apologized to the king for their terrible behavior. They became extremely ashamed. The chief lord saw that they had no ill intent and decided to give them another chance. He was in a really good mood today. Lord Yomlo explained to the new souls that where they are now is hell, and this is his territory. Without him here, they might disappear forever, and so he invited them to stay and help rule him in this new world. The souls agreed without any hesitation and rejoiced at their new unusual duties prepared for them by Lord Yomlo. When they began to get to know each other, the main character immediately turned his attention to a tall and prominent man, Yun Jagu. The man said that he was once a great warrior, but during gladiatorial battles their town of Musan was attacked by a hostile clan of invaders. They were not honest people and used against him a deadly poison from which he actually died in the Palace of Swords. Lord Yomlo asked Yun Jaga if this is the same Palace of Swords near which there is a huge jade stone and a sacred library in the lake. The man confirmed his guess. The protagonist hoped that the invaders had not yet managed to find the sacred library. He decided not to waste time and ordered everyone to join him in the human world. He asked the system to provide weapons to his new team, and all together they went to the Palace of Swords. The story continues in the small but at the same time picturesque town of Musan. Yunjagu said to Lord Yomlo that the hill in the distance is the Moyan Jade Stone. He said that according to legend, when this hill is illuminated by moonlight, a human figure with a sword will appear. The main character was amazed by such a story. After all, it looked like an ordinary shiny stone that had been polished by mountain water over many years. Suddenly they heard loud screams coming from the forest. They saw a man and a woman trying to catch up with a young boy who was running away from them. He ran so fast that he didn't even notice anything in front of him. The boy wanted to get away from his pursuers as quickly as possible, so he did not even see that he ran into a dead end on the top of the mountain. Only at the last moment did he realize that the road ends in front of him and the abyss begins. His legs barely managed to stop in time. His death was seconds away, but Lord Yumlo managed to save his life. The main character at the last moment grabbed his back and did not let him fly into the abyss. He said to the young man that he was running so fast as if he wanted to end his life by suicide. He really should have been more careful. The boy's eyes shone with joy. He was extremely grateful to the man for such a heroic rescue, but his problems did not end there. The young man quickly began to look for a way to escape from here. He understood that his pursuers would be found here extremely easily and quickly. He needed to come up with something immediately. The newly elected Lord Yomlo asked the boy from whom he is so desperately trying to escape. He wondered who dared to pursue such a young man. The guy told him that he would tell all the details later, but right now he needed to escape from this place. He also asked travelers not to interfere in his problems. He thought he could handle it on his own. The main character could not understand how the boy wanted to defeat his pursuers. After all, the young man did not possess any martial arts. But he never managed to escape. It was already too late, and the pursuers found the young man. It was a young couple in love who planned to escape together from slavery. But when a young man named Duan found out about their plan, they decided to eliminate him so that there would be no more witnesses. Lord Yomlo had analyzed the thoughts of the young couple and now also knew of their intentions to escape. This was the last straw for them, and suddenly something happened that no one could have expected. The woman became extremely angry at being treated so insolently. She couldn't think of a better idea than to attack the strangers she was seeing for the first time in her life. But the power of the newly elected ruler Yomlo was many times more powerful. His magic was directed at the woman with pink rays that took away all her strength and energy. She had no chance of beating him in a fair fight. After that, the main hero said that if they didn't disappear within the next three minutes, he wouldn't be so kind anymore and promised to destroy them without any sentiments. The man decided to take the initiative into his own hands. He picked up his young wife and started running with all his might to escape from that place while they were still alive. Lord Yomlo continued the conversation with the young man and offered him a bet while the young couple was running away from them. The main character offered him to jump off the cliff and if he remains alive, then he will not kill him. And if he dies, 
Yomlo will find his friend's parents instead of him and will have the opportunity to be his subordinate for the rest of his life. Duan was shocked by what was happening. He understood that if he really jumped from such a high cliff, he would definitely die. Lord Yomlo saw that the young man was extremely afraid of jumping and decided to push him himself so as not to waste time on unnecessary thoughts. The boy started flying down the cliff, but he could not understand how Yomlo knew his name and knew that he was looking for his friend's parents. When he landed, he could not understand how he stayed alive. That height should have killed him. The young man saw that the main character was already waiting for him below. Dwayne couldn't figure out who it was and how he did it. The boy asked him if he was not God by any chance. Only he would have managed to move so quickly from the very mountain here to the bottom. But the main character answered him that he is the king of Yomlo, and this information is enough for him for now. They went into the jungle and saw a cave there. The main character knew that there were treasures in it and told Duane about it. This greatly interested the young man. He was shocked by what he saw. After all, among the treasures that Yomlo spoke about, there was a statue of his beautiful sister. For a moment she seemed alive to him. This was his main goal, to find and save his kidnapped sister. While the boy was admiring his sister, the main character noticed an inscription on one of the swords and immediately called the young man to him to show him it. There was someone's mysterious inscription on the sword. Raise your head a thousand times and succumb to this sword. I do not regret that I died one hundred times while walking towards my dream. They immediately understood that it was some kind of mystery. The main character knew that Duane was a nerd and therefore wanted to see with his own eyes how he would solve this riddle. But instead, the young man hit the platform that was on the ground with his head with tremendous force. And at one point, they felt how the earth began to shake and saw how bright yellow rays of light began to come from the earth. The young man just watched in fascination. Their surprise knew no bounds. They discovered magical books that could give them new technologies and second-level abilities. It was an extremely valuable find for them. Lord Yomlo immediately chose the book for training Sin Gone the Best Martial Arts. This cost him ten points, which the Supreme System kindly deducted from his balance. The protagonist stated that it was the best martial art he had ever seen and studied. Now he felt truly strong and more powerful than ever before. Yomlo also wanted to get more information about the new skills, but due to the lack of points on his balance, he was unable to do so. The Supreme System offered him to exchange other skills for an additional 50 points to learn new techniques that would be useful to him in the future, and he decided to accept this offer. They went further and noticed that behind the meadow, which was not far away, thick black smoke was rising from among the trees. Two men were trying to prepare some thick, unknown mixture in a large cast-iron cauldron. The man with the axe was constantly rushing the second. It was clear that he was in a hurry. How unexpectedly Lord Yomlo came up to them and politely asked them what kind of stinking slurry they were cooking here. The man with the axe asked the main character in surprise who the hell he was. The man was not ready for such unexpected guests. And Yomlo explained that they are from the Neo Nanpa clan. And if they don't want to die right now, then it's better for them to get away from here as far as possible. Yomlo answered him that he should not behave so rudely and asked him if he was ready to answer for his words. The man took it as a real challenge and said that he was ready for a fair fight with him right now. It was clear that a fight could not be avoided. He swung his left hand at Lord Yomlo and tried to strike him first, but the protagonist was unmoved. He used his new magic skills and parried his blow with ease. After that, Yomlo grabbed his hand and caused him incredible pain. This caused considerable surprise in the attacker. He did not expect that the opponent would be so strong. The man could not break free from the main character's rapture to free his hand. Lord Yomlo's forces became extremely powerful. Literally in a moment, the rude man was already lying on the ground without any signs of life. After this, he will definitely not be so bold. After the fight, Yomlo's technique mastery increased by exactly ten points, which was extremely appropriate in his situation. He used his magical powers to destroy the cauldron of unknown slurry that was left behind by those unknown men. This technique used by the main one was called spiritual attack. Even Lord Yomlo didn't expect it to be so powerful. 
The ease with which he was able to deal with the attackers caused great admiration among his servants. They had never seen such powerful warriors before. Lord Yomlo gave them the following task. He ordered them to find more souls of the second level and said that if anyone interfered with them, they would have to be destroyed. His subordinates immediately went to carry out the order. None of them dared to argue with his majesty. Meanwhile, on the same mountain in a hut, two hostile clans were quarreling angrily who wanted to destroy each other for revenge. One clan accused the other of killing their leader and they didn't want to let it go unpunished. They were sure that it was the handiwork of the second clan. This clan called themselves the Sons of Nongpa and they threatened to destroy them today once and for all. They considered it their sacred duty. Suddenly the door to the hut opened and another person appeared at the door. This caused quite a surprise to everyone. Neither side was expecting any more guests and this visit was a real surprise for them. Lord Yomlo stood at the door. He looked at the opponents who were still alive. He knew that a fair match with them was only a matter of time. It seemed that they immediately forgot about their own conflicts. They decided that first they needed to get even with King Yomlo and kill him. But the main character was ready for such a development. He actually came for it, so it didn't even scare him. Yomlo was clearly confident in his abilities. He sarcastically told them that they could attack him altogether to make it easier for them to fight him. His audacity puzzled them. They didn't even have time to understand what was happening. At that time, Lord Yomlo began to use his magical skills and decided to attack them first. He performed his spell and managed to do what he came to them for. He took all the energy he needed from these scum. They were sure that together they would surely defeat him, but they never managed to react in time to his charms, and therefore they had no chance to oppose him. For this successful reception, the protagonist increased the mastery of the technique by 50 times, he took everything he considered necessary here. After a successful raid, he went outside and called one of his servants. He had a special task for him. The soul immediately appeared before him and asked him how he could be useful. It was an extremely great honor to serve him. Lord Yomlo asked him to find out if there were warehouses with treasures belonging to these clans somewhere nearby. He answered him that there is a huge warehouse nearby, which is filled with a huge amount of treasures and powerful weapons. The main character asked him to show him this place. The soul guided him, and they found themselves in front of a treasury with a huge door. The assistant explained to him that only an extremely limited number of people knew about this warehouse, because it was a top-secret place. Meanwhile, the assistant fulfilled the order of Lord Yomlo and found the required number of souls of the second level, so the task of emptiness and loneliness was successfully completed. The protagonist received a reward of 10,000 points for this. As soon as he found out about this, he immediately summoned the system to raise the level of the Sing Gong technique, which he learned from the new book, and at the same time learn another special technique, technology and production. The Supreme System instantly removed 170 points from his balance and fulfilled his order. He was extremely lucky to have such a powerful assistant who was ready to help him in any situation. The main character felt that he was now much stronger since he was already at the second level. Meanwhile, the assistant tried to open the secret treasury, but without a key, it was impossible. The doors leading to the treasures were locked by magic power, so it is so easy not to open them. Lord Yomlo took this as a challenge for himself and decided that he did not have time to search for the key that could open this door for him. He said that now he will try to open this cursed door with his own strength and skills. The Supreme System warned him that the door's protection exceeded his body's strength and added that it could damage his body. But the main character still decides to open the door by force. But he ignored her warning and within a moment, the stone door began to crack and shake with incredible force. The assistant was amazed at how easily the main character managed to neutralize the locked door, which he considered impregnable. But that was not the only thing that surprised him. What he saw extremely shocked his consciousness and worldview. Lord Yomlo stood before him with his hand torn off. The supreme system informed him that he could restore it, but it would cost him five points. He decided that it would be better if he did restore it. And within seconds, the hand was completely restored, as if nothing had happened. The assistant began to understand how strong and powerful Lord Yomlo is. He was clearly convinced that he would not be able to do this, even if he learned all the techniques from around the world. 
The main character asked the assistant if this was really the treasure for which it was necessary to take so many risks. The servant told him that it was really worth it. It was a huge treasury. It stored 5,000 gold coins, 12,000 silver coins, 3 kilograms of precious stones, 27 ancient objects, and 17 books of the first and fifth levels. But Lord Yomlo considered this not enough. He expected more. The Supreme System informed him that he could only get 90 points for these treasures. He thought that it was still better than nothing and asked the system to open a portal to transport all these precious things to his new world. The Lord's aide told him new news. He told him that he had seen Duane surrounded by a group of local thugs who seemed to have extremely bad intentions. Lord Yomlo wanted to see it with his own eyes and asked him to lead him to the place where he saw them. Meanwhile, Duane and the girl stood around and he apologized to her for getting her into this situation. He felt extremely guilty before her. The robber began to threaten them, and he promised them that they would not be able to return to their homes alive today. It was clear that now he would try to kill them. They began to beg him for mercy. Duane said that this must be an extremely strange misunderstanding. He thought they were just mistaken for other people, but his words and assumptions no longer made any sense. The decision was made a long time ago, and the robber gave the order to destroy them. A thug with a sword headed towards them. Although there were only two of them, he was clearly convinced that they had no chance against a powerful warrior like him. However, Duana's girlfriend was ready for a desperate resistance and decided to get her weapon to at least somehow increase her chances of survival. She was driven by playful excitement and curiosity. She launched sharp daggers straight at him and ran to meet him to continue her attack already in close combat. But the thug easily repelled the sharp daggers that the girl threw at him with her powerful sword. They engaged in close combat, and the robber managed to grab her by a tiny leg and threw her body on the ground with all his might. He wasn't going to feel sorry for her. His cruelty knew no bounds. Duane just watched all this in fear and didn't know what to do to help her face this fierce duel. Suddenly, the thug swung his sword to deliver his favorite decisive blow that was to destroy her. His sword flew straight into her head. It seemed that she had no chance to repel this devastating attack. She was literally a few centimeters away from death, but some unknown magical force shattered the sword. At first, the thug could not even understand what had happened. He is in such a situation for the first time in his life. It was a stranger in a black robe with a hood, and he said that real men should not beat defenseless girls. The stranger decided to introduce himself and said that he was from the Palace of Spirits. This caused a real shock to the attackers. They did not expect such a turn of events. It was impossible to believe that he had destroyed such a powerful sword with such ease. The main character ironically said to one of the robbers that he should not be so rude to defenseless girls who cannot stand up for themselves. He could not believe that Lord Yomlo was standing in front of him and publicly humiliated his personal dignity. He fell to his knees and began to beg for forgiveness. He realized that he did not act correctly and immediately realized his mistake. He began to make excuses that his consciousness was shrouded in darkness and began to beg for forgiveness. Lord Yomlo laughed in his face. He didn't think that the red-haired man would give up so quickly and easily. He was hoping for at least some resistance, but he didn't get it. Duan was overjoyed to see the Lord and thanked him for saving him and his companion again. Today is his second birthday. Yomlo asked him what kind of new, unknown girl was with him. He wondered if they had any kind of romantic relationship, to which Duane told him that it was his new friend Diana, and they, together with her, want to find and save his own sister who has disappeared. Lord Yomlo believed his words, but he believed that his look said something else entirely. The protagonist easily read his mind and understood his true intentions. Suddenly, the men from the wooden hut ran out of the forest, and Lord Yomlo had taken away all their energy. They wanted revenge and wanted to literally destroy him. This time, they decided not to miss their chance and immediately all rushed at it together. They had an advantage because they were caught off guard. They had every chance to win. But Lord Yomlo was extremely powerful and clearly confident in his abilities. He prepared for the duel and asked them for only one favor, so that they open their eyes and do not miss how he will defeat them one by one. The protagonist was clearly confident that he would easily defeat them. He began to create something incredible. Yomlo moved between them at the speed of light. The attackers had no chance, so they were destroyed in a matter of seconds. 
Finally, the Lord thanked them for the opportunity to improve their skill and for the energy he had taken from them earlier. Duan stood amazed and could not understand what kind of techniques and magic the main character used. He asked him how he could thank him for his salvation. Yomlo answered him that according to legends, Duan's family possessed a martial art called Eilanger. The protagonist hinted to him that he could thank him by teaching him new tricks. Duane thought it was the least he could do for him and had no problem accepting his offer. Only the girl had some skepticism about this because she did not know whether the king could be trusted. But Duane was clearly convinced that Yomlo had saved his life at least twice. Suddenly, a girl of extraordinary beauty ran out from behind the bushes who, as it turned out, had been watching them all this time. And she waited for the right moment to appear before them. Duane couldn't believe his eyes. He immediately recognized his sister. She decided to make him a surprise. The sister immediately ran to Diana and completely ignored her brother's presence. It seems she missed his friend the most. Duan became extremely happy and asked the protagonist how he could thank him for such a noble deed. Yomlo decided to make a joke and told him that he could settle with him with his young and attractive body. The sister immediately began to mock her brother, and she said that he finally found a worthy partner. She had a great sense of humor. Duan hoped that this was another joke of Lord Yomlo and hoped that he was not serious. The protagonist assured him that it was just a joke, and he said that he would later be able to thank him, but now he had to, because he had other things to do. And with the speed of light, he left them just on the lawn. Yomlo took a red-haired man with him, who before that begged for forgiveness. He had other plans for him. The rest stood as if enchanted and looked in his wake. They understood that he was an unusual person and suspected that he had an extremely great future. Lord Yomlo moved the red-haired man to the top of the mountain. They moved there in a matter of seconds. The robber did not even have time to understand what had happened. It seemed to him that he would not survive such a rapid transfer and began to worry about his own life. The protagonist moved him to ask him what the neo Nonpa clan was doing. This is the most important thing that interested him at that moment. The robber told him that they were well-known merchants in the region. Because of this, this region was completely under their control. Everyone respected them. The main character scanned his consciousness and asked him how long he had been. He already exists after death. He already that this man is already dead. The robber answered him that he died about two months ago and complained to him that this was the worst period of his existence. Yomlo asked him if he would like to return to life. He was ready to offer him an interesting alternative. The robber began to explain to him that only a native mother or a daughter of heaven can return to life after death. He was clearly convinced that this was the only way out of this situation. But Lord Yomlo was clearly convinced that this could be circumvented, and asked him how it can be implemented. The robber answered him that if he wants to control the lives of the living and the dead, then he must learn the Hassan technique. It was one of the best martial arts techniques that was best suited for this. After that, Lord Yomlo asked him if he really wanted a pardon and was ready to do whatever was necessary for it. Rosbink immediately agreed to this proposal, and he said if he really pardons him, then he promises him to leave the robber clan. Tears appeared in his eyes from such a chance. The master decided that it would be better if he believed him and agreed to pardon him. It was a real gift for a robber. He touched his head with his magical red blade to relieve him of the burden of his soul. How suddenly the stranger's body was permeated with charms unknown to him. It was a completely strange feeling. He felt blood and an unknown energy begin to flow through his body. The robber could not understand what kind of magical power Yomlo used, but he felt so good in this state that it seemed as if he wanted to stay in it forever. The robber heartily began to thank the master. He admired its power because no one had managed to do it before. After that, the main character told him that he would give him one more gift. The robber did not expect such generosity from a man he did not know. After his words, magical power enveloped the master's hand and he touched it to the robber's body, from which the real magic began to happen. The robber's eyes began to glow. That had never occurred to him before. Lord Yomlo gave him 30 skill points, which gave him a surge of new energy. The red-haired robber felt an incredible rush of strength. He had never felt so powerful and strong before. He promised him that he would never forget the kindness of the main character. He had the impression that he was ready to die for him at least 10,000 times. From that moment on, 
he began to regard him as his master. But these formalities were not important to the king. He wanted only one thing from him, to carry out all his orders without any objections. After that, the main character ordered him to bring all the precious things and treasures that existed in this world. That was the only thing he was interested in at the moment. Although this order drove him into a stupor for a second because he could not understand why, it was all to him. But he immediately agreed to this order without any conditions, even if he had to die for the task. His trust in the main character was maximum. Lord Yomlo explained to him that if he had any problems, and even if he was near death, he should simply shout his name out loud three times and he would surely come to his aid. But there is one thing that the robber could not understand. Why such a strong and mighty king? How did he choose such a talentless and worthless warrior, which was a red-haired youth? The main character explained to him that he seemed extremely funny and promising. He believed that they would be able to find a common language and interests. After that, Yomlo opened a teleportation portal and left the robber on the top of the mountain alone. The red-haired robber began to think how he should now descend from the top of the mountain so as not to harm himself. At that time, Lord Yomlo, together with his assistants, returned to his world to continue to develop it in all available ways. The Supreme System was waiting for him there, which immediately rejoiced at his return. And I was already waiting for his report on the things he managed to do while he was in the world of living people. The main character boasted to her that he had done the task extremely quickly and that he now had many assistants. But the Supreme System spoke menacingly to him that it did not matter how he behaved in the human world or how the points were used. She wanted to give him one piece of advice. She explained to him that he is not the only Lord of Yomlo in the entire universe, and this should always be remembered. She added that he was only a small bug compared to the other kings. The main character understood that he had to become stronger, and said that she need not worry so much about him because he is now much stronger than ever. Yomlo reminded her that she should give him a reward for doing all the tasks so well and quickly. She understood that, but for that she needed to get a good look at the king. To do this, she needs to enable display of the interface in the settings, and asked him to do it. He asked her how he could turn it on. The Supreme System explained to him that for activation it is necessary to give 100 points from his balance. She showed him the interface setup, but the protagonist could not understand why the Supreme System showed this function, only now. There were so many options in the settings that he had to first understand the menu before you could configure its interface. The Supreme System incredulously asked him what he was trying to do with its settings. But immediately, 100 points were deducted from his account, and the successful setup of the system display began. The main character successfully set everything up, and in a moment the Supreme System turned into a red-haired girl of incredible beauty. She angrily asked him why he gave her such an appearance. It was clear that she was not extremely happy about such news. The assistants stood in silence in awe of such incredible beauty and the new reincarnation of the system. After that, Yomlo said that he still needed to do something. He continued to work through her settings. She asked him in disbelief what exactly he wanted to do with her. She was frightened by his unknown intentions, which she could not control. The main character calmed her down and said that he was not going to do to her what she thought about, and asked her to show him the extra settings she had. There were two directions in the system settings, construction or goods. If he would like to build the first level of the underground road, he is advised to upgrade the first level of the reincarnation path. For the main character, it seemed too complicated and at the same time extremely expensive because he had somewhere to spend his precious points. But first he decided to improve the level of the old hut. Her appearance annoyed him and he wanted to do something about it as soon as possible. After that, he ordered to build the first level of the Hell Road and raise the level of the Reincarnation Path to the third. Without any hesitation, System began to carry out his order. She extremely wanted to please him and demonstrate all the possibilities. In a matter of minutes, she completed all his tasks and deducted from his balance 7,000 points, which he received for completing the task. They stood and watched the improvement process of the old wooden hut, which began to transform right before their eyes. Now, the hut had a completely different appearance, which was not even close to being compared to what it was before. The main character suddenly turned his gaze to the other side and watched how the path of reincarnation changed. He successfully obtained a level 3 enhancement, 
which was extremely important for the further improvement of his world. The minions continued to marvel at the power of their new master and were confident that this world would prosper better than ever before. The main character was satisfied with his work and how quickly his affairs are moving up. Suddenly, the system's eyes lit up bright red. It began to vibrate strangely with great force. She had never had such a condition before. This greatly surprised the king. He did not understand what was happening to her. As it turned out, it was an emergency warning of the first level of danger. She shouted that Lord Yolan was looking for him, and she was sure that he had managed to find his whereabouts. It was extremely dangerous for him. The main character said that this is a good chance to show him new skills and deal with him once and for all. He was fully prepared for any challenges. The Supreme System was sure that with such a small number of assistants, he would not be able to cope with such a powerful opponent. She understood that if he caught him, he would surely defeat him. She needed him to distract him while she created Yomlin. The main character could not understand what she meant. After all, he did not yet know about the possibility of creating Yomlin, and asked her what it meant. She explained to him that the Yomlin is an exclusive item of the king that has its own special property, Spatial Blast. Thanks to it, he will be able to switch to roaming mode and successfully move to another place. Yomlo decided that it would be beneficial for him to win additional time and said that it should be taken advantage of. The Supreme System explained to him that there were not enough points for it at the moment, so they could not use it at the moment. The Angry Lord couldn't understand why the Supreme System would tell him about it now, and decided to take the initiative into his own hands. He ordered his soldiers to prepare for battle. He had no choice but to face such a powerful opponent head on. The Supreme System could not believe its eyes. She did not believe in his strength and was sure that he would not be able to defeat Yolan with his available strength. After all, his level and skills were much higher. But the protagonist replied to the system that he was already dead, so he had nothing to risk, and it was an additional chance to test his new techniques. The Supreme System saw that the enemies had already come to this world and understood that it would not be able to help the main character in any way. All she could do was not to disturb. Invincible Lord Yolan glowed a bright blue color, and a cold fire burned around his neck. Together with him, his two faithful assistants appeared in this world. One of them made eye contact with Lord Yomlo's assistant, and decided to attack him while he had the chance. He literally cut off his head in a second with his razor-sharp claws. The assistant did not even have time to react to such audacity. It was extremely unexpected for everyone. The invader Lord Yolan, who came to this world, demanded to build a huge botanical garden here and give it into his possession. Lord Yomlo harshly replied that he had better curb his appetites, but the Supreme System decided to intervene and warned the main character that the alien has a third level of danger, so you should be extremely careful. But Yomlo ignored her warning and promised the uninvited guest that all his harmful actions would end here. He was ready for resistance, so he was not at all intimidated by its power. He suggested that he get out of here as soon as possible before it was too late. It was his best offer he could offer him. But Yolan's assistants interrupted him and said that the main character talks too much and now they will fix it in an instant. They were sure that they would easily defeat him in a duel. But Yomlo replied that they should not hurry, but rather take back their words before he destroyed them. And he said that for this, it is enough for them to simply kneel down and bow to him three times. Only after that, he will not touch them. His look was filled with confidence in his abilities. Yolan was amazed by the courage and audacity of the Lord Yomlo, who had only recently appeared in the universe of the dead and did not yet know how this world was organized. Yolan told him that he should not be so sure of his words, because he did not yet know his power and he ordered his servants to leave this beautiful girl alive and to bring him his head from this fool. He wanted to take her as a trophy from this terrible world. The main character decided to make a joke and told Sistema that he thought that Yolan really liked her and asked her if she wanted to become the lover of this robber. But she angrily shouted at him and told him that now was not the best time to joke. She understood that he had not yet fully realized the seriousness of the situation. Yolan's assistants quickly began to carry out his order and headed straight for Yomlo without any hesitation. They were sure that they could easily destroy him. The main character was really interested to see what they were capable of, 
And even more, he was eager to test his skills, which he had acquired during the last mission. He rushed to repulse their attack directly to meet them. He had long wanted to test his strength in a real match, and this was the perfect chance for it. From the first seconds, Yolena's assistants were surprised by the speed with which Yomlo approached them. They couldn't understand how he managed to become so fast. The main character didn't give them any chance to recover, as unexpectedly, literally, with one blow, he simply destroyed one of them. Yomlo literally smeared it on the ground. Yolan's servant had never been in such situations before, and did not even immediately understand what had happened to him. But all that was unimportant. While the second assistant regained consciousness, Yomlo decided not to waste time and rushed at their master Yolan, and shouted that no one is allowed to treat his people like that. He wanted to take revenge on him for his servant. With each step he came closer and closer. He felt the passion in himself and confidence in his victory. Nothing else bothered him at that moment. Lord Yolan wanted to keep his head as a trophy, but now he changed his mind. He didn't want to play with him anymore. Using his magical skills, he began to summon an unknown spell to demonstrate his powers. He enchanted the ferocious ice hogs and ordered them to destroy the Lord of Yomlo. They immediately began to carry out his order. They collided in a whirlwind of attack and raised a huge column of dust, which made it difficult to see the course of the match. Yomlo's assistants were worried about this because they could not see what was happening there right now. In the end, Lord Yomlo emerged victorious from the duel against the ferocious hogs. It seemed that the main character simply absorbed them. For the first time, real fear could be seen in Yolan's eyes. He could not believe his own eyes, and could not understand where the newly elected ruler of Yomlo had so much strength and power. The protagonist thanked Yolan for the new gift. It turned out that he had acquired a new skill, Power of the White Horks of the Third Level, which made him extremely happy. Yolan couldn't believe his eyes that this was even possible, and decided that it is necessary to get out of here as soon as possible. He cowardly decided to hide directly under the ground, to at least save his miserable life. He realized that he was now in an extremely disadvantageous position for him. After all, although Yomlo was the newly elected king, he was clearly convinced that the main character was definitely not a newcomer. It seemed to him that something was unclean here. Yolan tried to escape underground from the brave and powerful Lord Yomlo, but he had his own plans. He believed that he should not be allowed to escape from the scene so easily. The protagonist punched the ground with his mighty hand and decided to ask Yolan where he had started running away from him so quickly. He said that he should get out of the ground immediately as their fair match was not yet over. Yomlo wanted to show him all his power with all his heart. The ruler hit the earth's crust with all his might and literally pulled the unfortunate Yolan to the surface, throwing him up. Lord Yolan used the skill of invisible flight, but was quite sure that the newly elected Lord Yomlo could not see him. It was the only chance to be saved. The protagonist swung with all his might and channeled all his strength and energy for a decisive blow to finally end this senseless fair match. His hand collided with the exhausted Yolan's face with incredible force. Surviving after such a blow is impossible. The wretched robber began to fall rapidly to the ground from the blow. He lifted a huge pillar of dust and earth into the air with his body. Lord Yomlo successfully destroyed the invaders, and he received his reward from the system for the mission to protect the territory. He was awarded 10,000 points. The protagonist hoped that this was not all the reward he should receive for such a spectacular fair match. He expected gratitude from his servants for being able to protect him from imminent danger. The assistants immediately understood the king's hint, and all together began to loudly praise the Lord of Yomlo for his might and courage. It was entirely his achievement. He liked it very much, and he said that they should continue it as long as possible to feel truly happy and comforted. He was extremely inspired by it. The Supreme System also congratulated him on a successful victory and a sure path to becoming the true full-fledged ruler of this world. The main character did not yet understand what it was like to be a real leader and creator of his own world. He asked the system what he still needed to do in the future so that his new world would truly thrive and develop. She didn't want to speak before so as not to anger him. But these were only test missions. The hardest part was ahead of him. 
a thorny path to becoming a real master awaited him ahead. The newly elected Lord Yomlo angrily asked her what she meant. He believed that he had already done enough to consider himself the true creator of the new world. However, it was no longer important. The Supreme System told him that he should update the list and get a new mission to help him in his next tasks. The list has been successfully changed, and now, the effect of own growth has been increased by 30%, the stability of the inner space by 20%, the coefficient of reincarnation by 40%. Now his new mission, Revival of Iron Blood, for which he can get a reward, creating an army of souls. The protagonist asked the system what he needed to do to successfully complete this task. His anger was completely gone. The Supreme System began to explain that this mission was not at all simple. He will need to return to his real human world. And she said that he would have only three days to complete this task. She will give him all the instructions later. Lord Yomlo said excitedly that he knew he would still have to return to his world. He was already looking forward to the start of this task. After that, the Supreme System successfully teleported Lord Yomlo back to his original world, where a worthless and miserable drunk driver took his life. He had only three days to complete the task. Otherwise, he will become the loser king in the world of the dead and lose all his points that he managed to earn earlier. The main character was aware of all the responsibility and looked confidently into the darkness of his old world. He remembered his previous life as if, suddenly, he began to listen and could not understand what kind of cries for help were ringing in his ears. It was two attackers who approached the tiny girl and threatened her. One of them told her that there was no point in shouting for help because no one would help her. They considered her an ungrateful scumbag who dared to contradict their boss. They wanted to punish her for such insolent behavior. The attackers did not want to spare her at all and threatened her with brutal reprisals. Suddenly, the unfortunate girl was so frightened that her body simply fainted from fear. She just fell to the ground in front of them. The protagonist approached them and said that he had been here before on work, even when he was alive. The two attackers instantly turned to him. Yomlo was pretty sure they hadn't checked their horoscopes for today. After all, in that case, they would hardly be here. They could not understand who it was that appeared before them. But Yomlo was not going to introduce himself to them, because they had too bad a view. He began to mock their poor reaction. The two attackers were confident that they would defeat him easily. After all, there were two of them, and he was only one. But only a few seconds passed before the full realization of the whole situation that developed between them. Yomlo could not even think that at the very beginning of the task he would be lucky enough to get into such an easy and fair match. The main character only wondered why he was so unlucky before when he was still alive. He picked up the rescued girl and started calling a taxi. He wanted to take her to safety before the attackers regained consciousness. The best thing he could think of at that moment was to take her to the nearest hotel. After all, this is the only place where he could quickly deliver her. He asked the woman at the front desk for the best room for them. But in order to reserve a room, he was asked to provide a document that confirms his identity. The protagonist turned to the system and asked it to create a fake passport for him. But its functionality is limited, since the Supreme System did not fall under jurisdiction in this world. An additional 20 points were deducted from his balance to create the document. But he was lucky because the passport was produced in a few seconds. He handed it to the woman at the reception desk, and he said that she can rewrite all the necessary data that are needed during check-in. She took his passport, and in a few minutes she managed to find a room for him and for his rescued girlfriend, who was still unconscious. Yomlo took her to the newly booked room. He noticed that she had extraordinary beauty. The master asked the system if it knew where this girl lived. The Supreme System only asked in surprise why he hadn't asked about it before. The main character thought that the Supreme System thought about the intention of raping this girl, but he assured her that he was not going to do such things to her. He really only wanted to save her. Suddenly, a woman from the reception knocked on the door of the room and asked him to open the door immediately to check some information. He was surprised that they came to him in the middle of the night and asked her to come in the morning as he was extremely tired and wanted to rest as soon as possible. But the woman at the reception insisted on it, and she said that it is extremely important. She believed that it would be better for everyone. The protagonist hoped it wouldn't take long, and they will be able to resolve any misunderstandings that may arise. He did not yet understand at that moment what she wanted, 
But as soon as he opened the door, how suddenly something happened that he did not expect at all. The police ran into his room. They suspected him of violence and decided it would be better to seize him before he began to resist them. They knocked him to the ground and began to read his rights. Yomlo said to them that it should not be, but it is a huge mistake. He was clearly confident in his rights. The senior investigator told his colleague that he had been looking for this scoundrel for more than six months and had finally caught him. He was satisfied with his work. The main character could not understand what was happening and when he managed to become a sex maniac. He thought that the Supreme System had slipped him some wrong passport. The senior investigator angrily grabbed him by the scruff of the neck, but it was clear that he was pissed off that they had to be polite to scoundrels like him, but he believed they had enough evidence to imprison him for life. But suddenly, something extremely alarmed him. He had never encountered such a phenomenon before. He could not understand why the detainee was so cold, as if he had ice and not blood under his skin. Yomlo decided that he needed to deal with this as soon as possible before it got any worse. It was an extremely bad situation. Suddenly, one of the policemen turned his attention to the senior investigator, who suddenly changed his face. He suspected that something was wrong here, and I decided to ask the captain if he was really all right. But the investigator assured him that everything is fine with him. Yomlo spoke to the police and began to assure them that he thought it was some kind of misunderstanding. He thought that he just looked like some criminal and suggested that they conduct at least some identification to make sure of this. But the chief investigator was unmoved and told him that it was extremely unreasonable to create a fake passport of an agent of the Central Intelligence Agency. After all, you can get an extremely large term of imprisonment for this. Suddenly, the official phone called the investigator. He immediately reported to the management that the suspect had already been detained. He believed that he would be praised for such work. But he was told over the phone that the person they managed to detain is absolutely classified. And he said that if he asks them for something, they should help him. After all, if he has problems, then all of their heads will be blown off. The senior investigator immediately understood the seriousness of the situation. He hung up and walked over to Yomlo to apologize for the awkward situation. He thanked him for his cooperation and handed him his documents, which he seized during a cursory inspection. They apologized to him and said that they were leaving so that he could fully rest before the start of the next day. The policeman politely said goodbye to him and wished him all the best. Having trouble was the least they wanted today. The Supreme System was surprised that Lord Yomlo didn't kill them all at once, but she didn't know yet that this was his plan, which he intended to use again in the future. The next morning the weather was sunny and almost cloudless. What was a surprise for the main character? Suddenly the rescued girl woke up and overturned the furniture that was near her. She did not recognize the main character and started screaming out of fear, stunned. She asked him where they were. But what she was most interested in was whether he had done bad things to her. He began to calm her down and assured her that she should not be frightened. He introduced himself to her under the fictitious name Adam. He didn't think she would forget their night last night and suggested that she remember everything in order. She thought he was raping her and started screaming even louder than before. She was not one of those easily accessible girls. The protagonist calmly said that she could at least thank him for saving her life from those two thugs, and he gently extended his hands to her beautiful face. But the girl could not calm down and trust. She snapped at him to take his hands off her and not touch her, or she would have to call the police. The main character began to remind her of last night and told her how he saved her when she lost her consciousness. Suddenly her phone, which was lying on the bedside table, rang and interrupted his explanation. The girl picked up the phone. It was her sister. She could not understand where she had disappeared so suddenly and reminded her that such antics may not please the investor and he may stop the extremely important funding for them. The girl replied that she understood everything perfectly and therefore prepared the materials. But she thought that the sister did not want to change. In response, her sister retorted that if she had a good plan, she would definitely listen to it and threatened that if they continue to work on that project, everything will be extremely good for them. But if she disappears so much again and does not warn anyone, then she will stuff the damned money into her with her own strength. Sister Olivia replied that she perfectly understood all the risks they might have and hung up the phone menacingly. 
she extremely disliked when her sister taught her such obvious things. Now, the main character understood why those robbers attacked her. He managed to hear a few phrases from the phone to understand the gist, and kindly told her that if she had any problems, he would be happy to help her. Olivia managed to remember a little of last night and thanked him profusely for his help, but refused his offer of further help, and she said that she should go already. She was embarrassed by her behavior, but she had urgent matters to attend to, and headed for the exit to the door. Yomlo told her to wait a moment. He couldn't just let her go because he felt in danger. He had something for her, even though in his previous life he was still that scoundrel. But now he would not allow himself to leave such a defenseless girl in trouble. He turned to his system and asked it to find a ghost nearby. This request surprised her immensely, but she did not ask him what he was up to. Olivia looked at the main character in surprise and could not understand what he was trying to do, but he was extremely sympathetic to her as a person. The Supreme System scanned the area and reported that this hotel housed a ghost that had been killed very recently. It is located in room 1441. Lord Yomlo replied that this was enough for him and thanked her for the information provided. He quickly found the door to number 1441. The main character decided that he didn't have enough time and just knocked it out. After that, he successfully entered the middle of the room. Yomlo understood that it was an abandoned room and that no one had been here for quite a long time. Suddenly, he heard a voice from a dark corner which said that normally mortal people do not enter here. The protagonist answered him that he should not waste his time and ordered him to get out immediately. The ghost that the Supreme System told him about literally appeared from the wall. Once again, she successfully executed his order. The ghost angrily spoke to Yomlo that it was all unfair and ordered him to come to him himself. It was clear that the ghost did not want to obey his order. But he really didn't have time for all this nonsense, so he decided to act differently. The main character kicked the ghost right in the face and made him shut up immediately. He told him that he was giving him only one chance, and if he did not obey, he threatened to send him to the 18th floor of hell, and angrily looked him straight in the eyes. The ghost did not yet know who was in front of him and boldly answered that he was not going to follow the orders of ordinary mortals. He wanted to kill him right now. Lord Yomlo remembered that he had not introduced himself to the ghost and immediately informed him that Lord Yomlo was in front of him. The lost soul immediately understood the seriousness of the situation and asked how he could help him. The main character promised to definitely help him, but first he will need to do something for him. The soul obediently bowed to his majesty. Yomlo wanted him to follow the defenseless girl, and with the help of magic, he turned the ghost into a few hairs which he immediately gave to Olivia as a talisman. She did not understand such a gesture and believed that he was simply mocking her. On her face, you could see the extreme disgust at such a terrible gift. The protagonist told her that her hair would protect her when needed and asked to simply take them with you. The girl continued to consider it some kind of bad joke and decided that it was already too much for her. She simply turned and silently walked away from him. Olivia threw away the hair that Yomlo had given her on the way. At that time, it seemed to the system that it was a kind of flirtation from the main character. The master ordered the ghost to take care of the girl and reminded him of the consequences if he did not cope with this task. He replied that he would do everything possible to protect her from all dangers, even if it meant dying again, and imperceptibly hid in the girl's hair. The supreme system reminded the main character that he still has a task that he needs to complete in three days, but Yomlo confidently answered her that he had everything under control. The Supreme System informed Yomlo that the spirit army was in Digosan, but they are all spiritual warriors from the battlefield, so you should be careful. Yomlo replied that he was all that was needed, but first he needed someone to meet. At first, the main character wanted to help another person who was extremely important to him, all the more so in regard to unfair construction. At that time, the foreman was on the construction site with his subordinates. He ordered them to raise everything here to the ground. The workers immediately began smashing and breaking everything that came in their way, worthless beings without any meaning in life. Suddenly, an older man, whose name was Alvin, ran up to them and shouted at them to immediately stop making a mess here. He said that they would not succeed as long as he was alive. 
One of the workers put a knife to his throat and told him that something might happen to him if he continued to prevent them from doing their work, said one of the workers. The foreman decided to hurry up his poor workers as he still had an important meeting ahead of him, for which he was in a great hurry. Unexpectedly for everyone, the engine of a powerful excavator started and began to make chaotic movements. It was as if a child was sitting behind the wheel, pressing all the keys he saw in front of him. The workers were thrown in different directions by the bucket of the excavator. They started running away because they couldn't understand what was happening. They were even more interested in who sat behind the wheel of their excavator. The foreman shouted at the driver to stop immediately and stop maiming his workers. He was enveloped in a frenzied anger. The driver just calmly replied that he would accept his sincere apology. And he said that he just got confused, because there are so many keys. But he promised to make amends immediately. The foreman could not understand who the hell this scumbag was, and he ordered his subordinates to immediately bring him to him. It seemed that his saliva from rage could flood half the city. The workers immediately went to follow the order of the foreman and decided to surround the excavator from all sides so that the villain would have no chance. Lord Yomlo was at the wheel at that time. He had only one goal, to destroy all these scoundrels so that they could no longer do illegal things and abuse innocent people. The main character immediately took the control panel and with the help of a bucket began to scatter waste in different directions. Alvin, who was watching, couldn't understand what the hell was going on but he liked it very much and decided that it would be better not to interfere in this joyful process. The excavator, after dealing with the workers, began to drive straight at the brigadier, trying to catch up with him. Yomlo just wanted to bewitch him and send him to hell for eternal torment. The foreman took desperate measures and offered the main character to get out of the excavator and talk to him like a man if he is not a coward. This was the last hope of the scoundrel who wanted with all his heart to stay alive. How unexpectedly the excavator was silenced and the door was simply knocked out from the middle. After that, Lord Yomlo came out of it. He decided it would be a good idea to play with this rogue a little more. He decided to give him one last chance to show his capabilities and deal with him in a manly way. Yomlo looked extremely confident in his abilities, but the brigadier said that he was a master of oriental martial arts and now he wanted to show him his physical capabilities. His eyes were filled with rage. He rushed straight at Yomlo, and the brigadier threatened to knock all the bits out of him today. He was clearly confident that he would easily defeat the insolent young man. But it didn't last long. In a matter of seconds, without any problems, the main character pushed him aside. The foreman had no chance. After that, he turned to Alvin and asked him if he did not expect to see him again. It was his boss that he worked for when he was still alive in this world. Boss couldn't believe his eyes. He didn't expect to see Ben now. His former employee said that he was fine. He was clearly convinced that his former boss was worried about him. Alvin thought he had been killed somewhere on the street and asked him why he hadn't told him earlier that he was fine. The boss angrily shouted at his former employee, but deep down he was happy to see him alive again. The main character noticed in him his favorite bottle of alcohol which he constantly drank throughout his life. And he said that he no longer needed this bottle and decided to take it from him. Actually, it wasn't alcohol. This is the treasure that Vincent left. It is called Hongju. If a martial arts man drinks it, it will double his internal strength and triple his energy. Alvin said that the main character has no conscience and wondered why he decided to visit him. But Yomlo calmly replied that there was no need to rush anywhere and promised to tell everything later. They decided to move to the middle of the building to continue their conversation without extra ears. Yomlo asked the former boss what was going on here and why someone decided to demolish this innocent kindergarten. Alvin told him that the fever of new buildings had reached their city. They are forced to do it. Although they have been here for many years and everything was fine with everyone, they had to agree, because otherwise they would have just killed him. The main character asked him who is the developer and responsible for this construction. Alvin replied that it was most likely Mr. Travis's handiwork. He is a well-known local businessman. Yomlo said that he would see to the solution of this problem and promised to do everything possible so that no one dared to disturb them again. He already had an idea how to solve this issue and promised to call him as soon as some result appeared. 
The Supreme System informed the protagonist that Travis was going to hold a party at the Syndicate Hotel and also reminded him that he did not have time to deal with these matters right now. Yomlo was clearly convinced that he still had enough time to visit the Syndicate Hotel and at the same time complete the main mission that had brought him to the world of the living. He got into the excavator and went to the city. His goal was the Sinidicat Hotel. At the same time, he needed to bypass the evening traffic jams that flooded the entire city. The Supreme System informed him that he could activate Wandering Soul Mode to avoid the traffic jam problem, and it would only cost him 100 points. The main character could not get used to paying so much for everything, but he had no other choice and agreed to activate this mode, although he did not hide his dissatisfaction with her pricing policy. Wandering Soul Mode was successfully connected, and 100 points were deducted from his balance. It was better than wasting time in traffic. This allowed Yomla to drive through the evening rush hour unhindered and save some of that precious time. At that time, the events took place in the Syndicate Hotel, which was located in an elite area of the city. One of the men in the office was nervous because he could call the brigadier, who had not picked up the phone for several hours. He was worried that something had happened to him, but he did not know how to check it. But the other man decided to calm him down a little and said that nothing could happen to him because he is a master of sports from Oriental Martial Arts and can stand up for himself. Suddenly, their bodyguard ran into their office and informed his boss that the brigadier's team had returned to the hotel and asked if he could take them to it. Mr. Wen ordered him to lead them here immediately. He eagerly awaited an explanation of what had happened and why they had not been in touch for so long. Yomlo entered the room with his assistants, but Ven, who was in charge here, did not understand anything yet and was clearly convinced that these were the brigadier's men. He angrily asked them where their brigadier was and why he had not answered his calls for several hours in a row. This has never happened before. The main character decided to calm down the angry businessman and said that he should not worry so much because nerve cells do not regenerate and said that the brigadier is also in this room. Yomlo dropped the huge bag he had been carrying on his back all this time to the ground. After that, he opened it and showed everyone present the brutally severed head of the brigadier. Mr. Wen didn't want to believe his eyes until the end and hoped that it was just a bad joke. But the realization came extremely quickly. The main character asked him if he did not recognize his personality. The businessman immediately remembered that it was Mad Dog. He could not understand what he was doing here and why he was still alive. Wen asked him what he needed, but Yomlo was not going to answer him such a stupid question. Although this wealthy man had a lot of security, she is unlikely to be able to help in any way today. Wen was extremely angry that the main character so simply called him by his first name. Only an extremely limited number of people could afford it, and Yomlo was clearly not one of them. Wen decided to hit the protagonist in the face, but the Lord easily caught his hand and began to squeeze it tightly. It was a fatal mistake of a businessman. His fate was already decided. One of the men, who was also in the room, ordered the protagonist to immediately release his boss before it was too late. Or they'll have to shoot him right here. Mr. Wen's bodyguards pointed their guns straight at Yomlo and his assistants and brought their weapons to combat readiness. All they had to do was pull the trigger. They eagerly waited to test and find out who was stronger, the bullet or human flesh, but the guards did not yet know what awaited them in the near future. The main character was ready for such a development of events and invited them to take a risk and check what their guns are capable of. After all, in any case, he will remain alive. After that... Yomlo ordered his servants to deal with these insolent bastards and show them their power. The assistants of the main character quickly rushed to carry out his order and headed straight for the guards with trunks. The guards started shooting at them in return. They were sure that they would easily defeat such pitiful, unarmed people. But surprisingly, the bullets penetrated the bodies of the assistants all the way through and did them absolutely no harm. One of the guards in a panic suggested that it must be some kind of ghost because even bullets cannot destroy them. Yomlo's assistants approached them directly and began to bite them with their sharp teeth. They tore their bodies to pieces. Mr. Wen could not believe his eyes and thought that he had lost his mind, because this could not be the case. These were supernatural forces beyond their control. He begged them to stop immediately. After Yomlo's assistants dealt with the guards, 
they turned their attention to the unfortunate businessman, who was at a dead end and did not know what to do now. The assistants could only carry out the orders of the Lord of Yomlo, and he asked them to bring him this scoundrel. He wanted to have some fun with him one last time. Mr. Wen began to beg for mercy and promised to give him whatever he wanted, if only he would let him live. The main character decided to take advantage of such a chance and said that for ten million he could save his worthless life. It was a perfect moment for Yomlo. Wen immediately agreed to give him all his money because he was too young to die so senselessly in his prime. In addition, the main character ordered that his people never again disturb the kindergarten, which they wanted to demolish today. And he said that if they ignore this order, he will definitely return and finish his business. Mr. Wen promised him that no one would bother Principal Alvin again. And as a sign of respect, he promised to throw another five million on top for the inconvenience caused. He had never felt so scared before. The main character started to like it. He reminded him once again that he was the Lord of Yomlo. And if he chose to break his promise, he could say goodbye to his worthless life. After that, he headed for the exit with his assistants. As soon as they left, Wen picked up the phone and started calling his boss. He complained that a man who called himself Yomlo came to visit them today and caused them many problems that could ruin their business. The boss told him that he would take care of it, and he said that today he has an important meeting planned, which he also needs to attend. In the meantime, he will try to find out some information about this Yomlo. Mr. Wen answered him that he would definitely come to the meeting, and he was already impatiently waiting for the moment when this Dubin Yomlo would beg for mercy before them on his knees. He couldn't believe that Yomlo was trying to intimidate them. He also demanded money from them. Mr. Wen already knew that they would not pay him a penny. The story continues at Mr. Signet's Mountain Villa. In the room was a young girl, Julia, and a man who called himself Mr. He. Julia asked him if he really liked Olivia but he assured her that she was much better than that fool. He could put up with the fact that she dared to refuse him. It was clear that he was extremely annoyed by this fact, because no one can do whatever they want. Julia sensed this perfect moment, and in time invited him to have a little fun with her. He immediately agreed to her proposal. Suddenly, a guard's voice was heard from outside the door, alerting Mr. He that Olivia had arrived at the estate and saying that she wanted to apologize to him. Julia said that it would be better if she was not allowed in the middle so as not to give vain hope. Moreover, she had known her for a long time and understood that nothing good should be expected from her. Mr. He disagreed with her assumptions and said that if she had already come to them, it was the perfect time to have a little fun. It was clear that he already had a plan for revenge. He added an unknown strange liquid to the drink glass, which was intended for Olivia, because she dared to refuse him. He said that it would not be so easy for her to get his forgiveness. He wanted to see how she would debauchery in front of him, to get great pleasure from it. The guards immediately led Olivia into Mr. He's room. She didn't expect Julie to be with him as well. Mr. He said ironically that they met again. At that moment, he continued to pathetically smoke his expensive cigar, and he began to be angry with her. Olivia immediately began apologizing to Mr. He for her inappropriate behavior. She admitted that she was wrong that day, and she hoped that he would be able to forgive her. She was in complete despair and was ready for any punishment. Julie intervened and abruptly interrupted her speech. She wanted from now on to talk about everything with her only, not Mr. He. She thought that this little girl was not worthy to communicate with such a powerful man. Olivia immediately began begging her for another chance to honor their old friendship. She wanted to resolve this conflict at any cost, because her whole life depended on it. Julie continued to think of her as an ordinary, naive fool. She continued to argue with Olivia and reminded her about the local laws, which have no exceptions for anyone. Mister. He decided to interrupt their heated discussion and intervened in time. He said he wasn't that petty and would happily give her another chance and some of his regular customers to serve. He invited Olivia to sit down and enjoy the tea he had brewed especially for her and he said that for today it is enough to talk about work and temporary difficulties that may arise in the process. Olivia was extremely grateful to him for another chance and the opportunity to continue working for him. She reached out with her hand to take the tea that was standing in front of her, when suddenly 
something incomprehensible happened. The ghost, whom Yomlo ordered to protect Olivia, broke the mug into small pieces. He knew that it contained a powerful aphrodisiac that Mr. He had secretly added to it before she saw it. The girl could not understand what happened and how the broken mug ended up on the ground in the first place. She thought that it was her fault and apologized once again, this time for her clumsiness. But this made Julie extremely angry, and she turned to Mr. Hay that this girl was just bullying them, and they needed to get even with her immediately, once and for all. This time, the pimp agreed with her and decided to call security immediately. He already had a plan to deal with this insolence. The guard immediately entered the room and asked what his order would be. They were ready to do any of his errands for a good fee. He pointed at Olivia and instructed them to kill her immediately. He wanted nothing more to do with her. Such a decision was an unexpected surprise for her. She clearly did not expect that today would be the last day of her life. After all, she is still too young to die. Olivia began to make excuses and again begged for forgiveness. But Mr. He's decision had already been made final and was not subject to discussion. Julie was glad that this filth was finally going to die. She has been driving her mad for a long time, and here is an opportunity to remove her once and for all. Circumstances are developing as best for her. The two guards immediately rushed to carry out Mr. He's order and were about to grab Olivia suddenly. A tuft of hair, which Yomlo had given her as a talisman, began to emerge from behind Olivia's head. She didn't know then that it was a ghost that would try to save her life. He had only one option on how to do it. For this, he needed to kill the attackers. Therefore, he immediately wrapped himself around the necks of the guards and began to strangle them with all his might. He was lucky that the attackers did not expect such charms. Even Olivia couldn't understand what was happening. She had never seen anything like it in her life. The ghost looked behind the girl's head and said that he was protecting this defenseless child on the orders of the Lord Yomlo, and said that whoever dares to offend her will surely die in the worst torment. He lifted the guards into the air and proceeded to strangle them by the throat, they were doomed to die. Mr. He's order turned out to be the last in their lives. This was not the end they expected to see. Mr. He screamed in fright that this ghost had appeared in his estate. Julie still didn't understand anything and watched what was happening in fear. The guards fell dead to the ground without consciousness and any signs of life. The ghost successfully executes the order of Lord Yomlo. The other two were next in line. He looked at their frightened faces and said to Mr. He and Julie that if they wanted, they could say their last words before dying. They were even more frightened and began to quickly run away from him. Julie hoped that her pimp would save her from danger, but at that moment he had no interest in her. He tried to save his life, but the curls of the ghost's hair were faster than him. He successfully wrapped around him and managed to detain him in time before he ran away. The ghost angrily said that today no one would be able to escape so easily and avoid punishment for their bad deeds. This time, Julie switched roles with Olivia. She immediately understood that no one was going to save her and began to beg her for forgiveness. She said that she was wrong and asked the dark ghost not to kill her. Olivia watched in frustration at how ridiculously she begged for mercy. Only a few minutes ago, she thought of her as her friend, but now... She knew her entire essence. At that time, the ghost said that his power was enough for everyone and crawled with his deadly curls of hair to Julie. He said that now her body is his property. Julie's body was completely covered in ghost hair. Her fate was already completely in his hands. Whether she would survive depended only on him. The ghost said menacingly that today, on this beautiful day, he would receive a new soul, which he had dreamed of for a very long time. And in a moment, something happened that no one expected. The ghost unexpectedly assumed Julie's appearance. He absorbed all her inner energy and was now unrecognizable. Mr. He immediately began to beg him not to touch him and promised to give him all the treasures he had earned in his entire life. He had a huge zest for life. Suddenly, an unknown magical force permeated the ghost's body. It was clear that someone had cast a powerful spell to bind the ghost's power. His chest literally began to burst from the anti-super-being spell involved. He felt excruciating pain that shot through his entire new body. An unknown magic began to completely envelop his body. The ghost couldn't even move from such powerful spells. As it turned out, it was the handiwork of the priest, Ginshin. He slipped into the room while the ghost was busy having fun with Julie. 
Mr. He realized in time that this was probably his last hope and began to plead with the ginseng priest to save him from that demon. The priest realized that he had appeared exactly where he was needed in an extremely timely manner. He was interested in what happened here. Mr. He explained to him that he was just an ordinary businessman and that if he really helped him, he was willing to pay him any amount. He was ready for any conditions, if only not to die before time. The ghost told Olivia to run from here immediately because it might be too late. Even though he was completely shackled, Olivia's safety was his highest priority. Priest Ginseng decided to himself that he would save this unfortunate Mr. He for free. His only principle was not to kill living people, but this did not apply to ghosts in any way. The priest took out a magic card with a spell with which he wanted to send the ghost to hell. It was the perfect chance for him to test his skills. He decided to send him to the place where all the ghosts who were lost in the living world are. The decision was made instantly, but the ghost was not going to give up just like that, and he hoped that Lord Yomlo would appreciate his efforts. He decided to wrap Olivia in his curls of hair. He had one last idea that could theoretically save them. He made her a cocoon and started running away with her. He desperately tried to save her from the danger that awaited her in this terrible place. Mr. He shouted angrily that they could not be allowed to escape so easily without any punishment. After the appearance of the priest, he felt much braver than before. But Priest Ginseng had the situation completely under his control. He knew that they would not be able to escape. The ghost managed to run out of the estate with Olivia. He thought they were lucky to escape as it was suddenly right in front of them. A yellow magic barrier appeared. It was a magical spell that the ginseng priest had used to prevent them from escaping. The ghost decided to try to break through the barrier with his new body. He picked up speed to increase his chances of success. He used all his strength and energy to try to break the barrier. But nothing came of it and it all turned out to be in vain. After the collision with the magic barrier, he only left deep burns on his body, which appeared after such a powerful collision. The priest watched the actions of the ghost and did not understand why he was ready to spend all his energy to save this girl. If the ghost continues to break through the barrier with its body, then its soul will simply dissipate into nothingness. The priest decided to end it before it was too late and decided to use another magic spell after which the powers of ghosts began to leave his soul. It was an extremely powerful spell that drains energy and strength from super beings like him. Olivia was in utter despair and ordered him to leave her and escape before it was too late. She felt extremely sorry for him. But the ghost dutifully followed the order of Lord Yomlo and said that she needed to escape and his task was to get her out of here to a safe place. But while they were arguing among themselves, it was already too late. The spell took too much of his strength. His last words were an apology to the Yomlo kings for failing his task and thus failing him. His eyes were completely empty. After that, Mr. He spoke to the priest to bring those rascals to him, but he answered him that he was here only to expel evil from this world and not to fulfill his own whims. After that, Mr. He ordered his surviving guards to bring them to him. He didn't care if they were alive or dead. The priest said to the ghost that if he remained in Julie's body, he would certainly harm both himself and her. And he said that he did not know what his true purpose was, but that a man and a demon would never be used in the same body. Devastated, the ghost asked him if he was afraid that karma would one day catch up with him. The priest was struck by such impudence, so he decided to put an end to this show immediately. He swung his magic blade at him and bid him farewell. He hoped that he would become a good person again in the next life. But suddenly, an unknown magical force threw the priest aside and knocked him to the ground. It was Lord Yomlo who appeared at the last moment to save the broken ghost. He had already lost all hope of salvation, but the appearance of the main character inspired him again, and he continued to fight for his existence. The priest was surprised and could not understand when this unknown demon managed to appear so imperceptibly. Jin Sang was no longer waiting for new guests. Now it became clear to him why the ghost was so bold and insolent. He saw that he was cared for by an even bigger and more powerful demon than there could be. Yomlo started mocking him and told him that none of them were demons, and he said that he should better study the world in which he lives. The priest answered him that he could see through demons. He scanned it and issued a report from which it was clear that Yomlo died in his youth. About a few years ago, moreover, 
An ordinary person could not have such a powerful force. The main character answered him that it was a pretty good analysis for a mere mortal, and he asked him if he really wasn't afraid of his power. The priest explained that he had nothing to fear because he had already driven demons to hell more than once, and he said that the same fate awaits him. He wanted to check what such a rare and powerful demon as Yomlo was capable of, and decided to use the technique of golden swords. This was his favorite technique, which managed to get rid of more than a dozen dark demons. The priest directed a dozen swords at him to completely destroy Lord Yomlo. He believed that this would be enough. Eight magic swords flew at the young king who did not even think of moving from his place. He just obediently waited for his fate. He himself was interested in feeling the power of the opponent. After the hit, a huge column of dust rose up. It seemed as if there was nothing left of the Lord. Mr. He watched in awe as the priest expertly dealt with such a powerful demon and was extremely impressed with his skills. Yomlo suddenly found himself right behind priest Ginseng and said that it was an extremely good move but not enough to harm him. The priest did not even have time to recover from such a sudden appearance, as Lord Yomlo carefully, with only his fingers, hit Ginshin on his old left cheek. This blow was enough to knock him back several meters. This was a real surprise for him. He had never faced such powerful opposition before. Priest Ginshin did not know that Yomlo possessed such enormous power. He was lucky that he had a golden magic amulet with him, which absorbed some of the force of the blow. Yomlo only sarcastically asked him if he was all right and how he was feeling now. The ruler behaved extremely confidently and impudently. Therefore, the ginseng priest immediately wanted to take revenge and decided to try another magic spell that he had never tried before because it required an extremely high amount of energy. He raised the three orbs into the sky and the synchronization that took place between them caused a yellow magical yin-yang, which sent a magical yellow glow at Lord Yomlo to completely burn him out of this world. But it had no effect on Lord Yomlo, as if it were ordinary sunlight. If the priest wants to defeat him, then he needs to come up with something more powerful than simple children's toys. Ginseng thought that this is the same demon lord who has lived for over 10,000 years and managed to absorb the energy of innocent souls. The huge sword that passed through the magical yin-yang was supposed to completely destroy Yomlo, but the protagonist continued to stand motionless without any problems. He decided that it was time to end this cheap display, especially since he did not have as much time as he would have liked. The Lord performed his favorite spell. His body began to be enveloped in black magic. He wanted to demonstrate his powerful strength and inner energy to the priest. He accumulated a sufficient amount of magic and began to spin the flywheel of his magical powers, and in a matter of seconds, he crushed the ginseng magical blade hanging above his head with absolute ease. After that, the sky was covered by numerous lightning and thunder. The priest could not believe his eyes. Never before had he met such strong and powerful dark world demons. Ginseng became extremely angry and said that it was simply impossible. He could not understand what the hell kind of mighty warrior met him. The ghost, who barely survived his last duel, watched with rapt attention the power of his master, Yomlo. Mister. He lost all hope and decided to sneak away from there. He knew that if he was caught, his death was inevitable. Therefore, he should have acted immediately. But Lord Yomlo fully controlled the entire situation that was happening around him and noticed his intentions in time. He picked up a stone from the ground and threw it directly at Mr. He. After that, he said angrily that no one had let him go anywhere, and he said that it would be better if he stopped making stupid decisions now. The protagonist approached the ghost and asked him what was going on here and where Olivia was. He told him that Mr. He wanted to kill her, but he managed to get her to safety in time. The master praised him for such ingenuity. After that, he approached Mr. He to ask him if he had anything interesting to tell him. But the poor pimp could not understand why he got all these torments that he had to go through today. Yomlo understood that it would make no sense and silently picked him up by the scruff of the neck. Mr. He began to beg for mercy again and promised him a lot of money if only he would pardon him. But Yomlo was not interested in his money. He wanted something completely different. He angrily answered him that on such a beautiful evening there was not enough bright fireworks in honor of such a great holiday. Mr. He still didn't understand what he meant, but in a few seconds he would know everything. 
and he will not like it very much. To everyone's surprise, Yomlo pulled Mr. He's soul out of his body, and he said that she was in a rather terrible condition, which was not surprising. After that, he threw her into the sky with all his might, to get at least some moral satisfaction from such a nobody. With the help of magic, Yomlo managed to turn his pitiful soul into an evening festive salute. He himself did not expect that such a beautiful firework could come out of Mr. He. The Supreme System enthusiastically told him that he still knows how to really have fun, and she informed him that Genshin had found an entry-level longshot technique that belonged to the Bowden Technique collection, which no longer belonged to him, so it could be safely taken away. Yomlo walked over to the priest, who fell to his knees in front of him, after seeing that Mr. He had just set off a celebratory firework. He begged him to atone for his guilt and said that he was ready to do anything for him. But the Lord simply silently, with the help of magic, took out from the priest all the books that he managed to find in him. These were two books with new, powerful, magical techniques, which was extremely appropriate for the main character. He said that he definitely needs to learn these techniques, and he asked the system what he needed for this. She informed him that there are five levels in the destructive luncheon technique, and 200 points are required to fully master it. Yomlo agreed to such conditions. The Supreme System deducted the necessary number of points from his balance, and in just a few minutes, Yomlo managed to learn all the new spells he found. The priest could not believe his eyes that the protagonist had managed to learn the luncheon technique so quickly and easily. After all, he practiced all his life, but never managed to fully master it. The Supreme System informed the main character that he can exchange the Bowden Technique collection for 8,000 points, but he didn't want to do that, as these were extremely powerful techniques that could be useful to him in the future. The study of Bowden Techniques to the maximum level was successful. 700 points were deducted from his balance. The priest couldn't believe that the main character had mastered the Bowden collection technique completely and was not rejected. He suddenly remembered that the apparition called him Lord Yomlo, but at that moment he did not attach much importance to it. Ginseng realized that if this was indeed Lord Yomlo, then he had no chance of defeating him in a fair fight. He knew that he was an extremely powerful warrior. He decided that it would be better if he recognized his majesty and began to worship him. For this, he fell on his knees in front of him and began to beg for forgiveness. The main character smiled at him and told him that he was not as stupid as he thought before. He is lucky that he knows how to admit his mistakes. The priest who was kneeling in front of him answered him that he was glad to see him and said that he understood everything and now he was very sorry that he dared to offend him. He was ready to suffer a just punishment for his actions. The protagonist silently continued to look at him and decided that he could be useful to him in the future, but he did not want to let him go unpunished, and he curiously asked him how best to punish him. He had the option of putting him in an 18-layer prison or simply frying him like a stinking patty. Usually priests are not as aggressive as ginseng, but he is probably just an exception. The demon fighter begged not to punish him so harshly and explained that he had no choice because he was being blackmailed by Mr. He, but he was willing to atone for his guilt. After that, Yomlo ironically asked him how he wanted to do it. It was clear to the priest that he could not be surprised so easily. The main character asked him what he could offer him to at least somehow atone for his guilt. The priest Ginseng answered him that when he let her go to Libya, he read on her face that two huge troubles would await her tonight. It was necessary to save the girl before it was too late. Yomlo asked the ghost where she had gone, but since he was trying to save her as soon as possible, he did not have time to ask where she was going. After that, the priest said that she went to a lonely mountain, but there are so many strong demons living in those lands that Lord Yomlo does not have enough strength to deal with them alone. The protagonist asked the ginseng to tell him everything he knew about those lands, and he said that this would probably help a little to atone for his huge guilt. The priest told him that the locals call this place a mountain from which it is impossible to get out. According to legends, anyone who gets there mysteriously disappears. Entire expeditions were even sent there to search for the missing, but none of them ever returned. And he said that since those times no one has gone to that mountain. 
Although Ginseng's abilities are not enough to dispel the powerful magic of the mountain, he is willing to risk his life to save that girl. After that, Lord Yomlo said that from now on he was his servant, a servant of the king who goes against the will of heaven. It was an extremely great honor for him to serve King Jomlo. Therefore, from that moment on, they became supporters of the main character with a ghost. They had little time, so they needed to leave immediately to save Olivia from imminent danger, who at that time wandered alone in the dangerous forests of the Lonely Mountain, and she did not yet know what would be waiting for her ahead. She found this place quite interesting and picturesque. At first glance, it was an ordinary forest like any other. As Olivia walked, she thought back to today and realized that no one would believe what she had seen today. She was especially surprised that demons are not as scary as others tell about them. Suddenly, behind her, someone reached out their dirty hands to her face. She did not even have time to understand what had happened. It was a scary stranger who covered her mouth with his old hands. She could only watch silently. The stranger reported to the commander that the girl was fine and said that he did not yet know about her intentions. Those were the last words she heard before she passed out. When she regained consciousness, she saw in front of her two silhouettes of unknown beings looking directly at her. One of them asked her if she had woken up yet. As it turned out, these were ancient skeletons that lived on a lonely mountain. Olivia looked at them in horror before she began to scream frantically in terror. She had never seen such monstrosities before. She began begging them not to kill her and began pushing herself off the ground to try to escape. But it was a waste of energy. They began to calm her down and told her that she had nothing to worry about as long as she didn't do anything stupid. Suddenly, a third skeleton who was their main one came up to them and said that they really weren't going to hurt her if she behaved politely. And he said that although their appearance is definitely extremely frightening to everyone, he suggested that she wait and see what they might be like in reality. As it turned out, they can change their true appearance. And in front of her stood not a terrible skeleton, but a man of incredible beauty. His name was Vaktang, and he asked her what she had forgotten and why she had come. Olivia had not expected that demons could be so beautiful and change their appearance so quickly. She only answered him that they were lucky that she had an extremely healthy heart, otherwise it might have stopped from fear. But he continued to reassure her and said that they did not threaten her with anything. And she was extremely lucky that she met them, because otherwise she could have been in extremely great danger. After that, she asked them where she was now and what kind of place it was. It was clear that she was an extremely curious girl. Vaktang explained to her that this place was called the Great Lonely Mountain, and I asked her how she managed to get here in the first place. Olivia had heard legends about this place before and knew that no one had ever returned alive. At first, she couldn't even believe that she was here, and she explained that she got here due to the usual carelessness, and she added that she did not know that it was a lonely mountain. But by Vaktang's reaction, it was clear that he did not believe her words. Suddenly, one of the servants shouted at them that they were doing bad things and said that an uninvited guest was approaching them. Vaktang immediately felt the strong energy of this girl. But now he needed to take the initiative into his own hands. He began to command his assistants and ordered a few to remain with her to guard her while the rest should go with him. She still didn't know what it meant to have an extremely powerful inner energy and didn't fully understand what Vaktang meant. At that time, Lord Yomlo, a ginseng priest and a ghost, went in search of her. Although the main character felt extremely powerful female energy, he could not understand where it was coming from. He asks the system if it can now tell him where Olivia is. She informed him that the girl was 150 meters away from them, and she added that there are some unknown creatures with her but nothing threatens her life yet. The protagonist said that they should speed up immediately. They now at least knew which way they needed to go. At that time, the skeleton that was next to Olivia told her not to go anywhere, because the demon that is approaching them is a real killer. Although she did not know the Watchman at all, but for some reason she was worried about him and hoped that everything would be fine with him. A demon approaching them bade them come out and boldly accept their certain death, in his hands was a magic blade. He came to them because he was clearly convinced that they had something for him, and wanted them to give it to him immediately. Vaktang, who was in the cave, answered him that the only thing he could offer him now was to make a cappuccino and run a hot bubble bath. 
The demon answered him disgruntled that he had become too insolent and would definitely pay for his words. Maybe it will happen even today. After these words, Vok Tong boldly went out to the demon with his warriors. In his hands, he also held a magic blade that he was eager to use. The demon then asked him if he really wanted to join them. He demanded an honest answer because although he considered him a brave warrior, his ruler had long since given up on him. And he said that he just needed them to give him that girl. He needed human blood to replenish his energy. And since they had such a rare opportunity to meet, they could use it to their advantage. He believed that it would be better if they united instead of fighting senselessly. He offered him to join his army and fight together. But Vok Tang harshly answered him that he was not going to take his side. He knew that the demon had already taken too many innocent lives, and his principles could not so easily ignore that fact. At that time, Yomlo and his team found themselves on a hill and saw in the valley a large number of warriors standing opposite each other. He asked the systems if they really got where they needed to go. The protagonist could not understand what was happening here, but it was obvious to him that now these two armies would have a fair match. The Supreme System counted and informed him that it had discovered 125 hero souls here. Yomlo asked her in surprise what it meant. He had never heard of them before. After that, the priest explained to him that the souls of the heroes are dead warriors with the highest fighting spirit, and also that they are not demons, although they look like them. Only strong warriors with powerful masculine energy become the soul of the hero, and for this they need about 100 years of evolution, and only after that the hero's soul is born. The main character said after that that he would be extremely sorry if any of them were destroyed today. After all, you will have to wait 100 years again to get a new hero's soul. In the meantime, Vok Tong told the demon that they would not be able to come to an agreement so easily, so it was impossible to avoid a duel, and he ordered his soldiers to prepare for battle. The demon realized that Vok Tong was extremely stubborn after all. Therefore, he hoped in vain for a peaceful resolution of the conflict. The invader knew that he would need Olivia, whom Vok Tang found first in these forests, but he believed that she was worth taking to replenish the reserves of his inner energy. Skeletons just decided to engage in battle with opponents who outnumbered them. Suddenly, the main character intervened in their fair fight and ordered them to stop because no one allowed them to fight. It was the most tense moment. The demon considered himself lucky that this unknown man had intervened in their fair match, and he believed that the heavenly forces would help him today. This day will be the day of his elevation to the next level. He decided to attack Yomlo to get his deserved reward. He thought it would be an extremely good warm-up before such an important match. Vok Tong decided that he needed to be stopped immediately before it was too late, and immediately went into battle with the demon. But his strength was not enough, so he could not so easily cope with the powerful demon which easily scattered him and his soldiers in different directions. The protagonist thought that this monster was too mad. He had never seen demons so stupid. The priest told Yomlo to give him a chance to prove himself and took his magic card out of his pocket. With the help of the card, he built a magical barrier that was supposed to stop the demon and protect them from his magical techniques. But that wasn't enough to stop him. He wanted to destroy everyone who got in their way. The demon easily crushed his barrier and threw the priest aside with his magic sword. It was too expected for him. He said that the unfortunate monk could not be his rival. Anger filled his inner energy, and he again rushed to Yomlo in battle. He had only one wish, to destroy him as quickly as possible. The demon said to Vak Tong that he had seen how easily he would now destroy this insolent weakling. He was clearly confident that he could handle this without any problems. After that, Vok Tong ordered his assistants to take care of the strangers while he tried to stop the demon, who had completely lost his fear. The main character really liked Vok Tong's moral qualities. He had not seen such desperate warriors for a long time. Meanwhile, Vok Tong spoke to the dark demon to come to his senses and stop creating danger for everyone present, and said that he could not allow him to kill innocent victims again. He was ready for the most important match of his life. Vok Tong decided to strike first and swung his magic blade at the demon. But in a moment, his blade was crushed into small pieces, which was unexpected for Vok Tong. He believed that he had been ready for a duel with him for a long time. 
But after that, Demon told him that he didn't want to kill him at first and hoped that he would join them someday. But it was taking too long. He was sorry to be wrong. And he said that today, Voktang will definitely die. He swung his blade at him. And there were literally a few centimeters left to deal him a fatal blow. Suddenly, something unexpected happened. Lord Yomlo stopped the magic blade with his bare hands, and he said that he would not allow him to kill innocent people. He didn't want to kill him either, but he had no choice. The demon could not believe that a bunch of miserable monks wanted to kill the mighty him. He decided that they were tired of living and wanted to say goodbye to their lives as soon as possible. He swung his left arm with all his might to strike Lord Yomlo. The demon was clearly convinced that this would be enough to send him to the world of the dead. But the blow was too weak to harm him in any way. Yomlo continued to stand motionless, as if it was an ordinary bite from a small insect. The demon couldn't believe that he had withstood his mighty blow. He was convinced that this man was not as simple as he had previously thought. The protagonist decided that it was now his turn to strike and told the demon to look up. Yomlin's magic cube was already above his head. These were the skills of the main character, which he decided to demonstrate to new opponents. Never before had the demon seen such powerful energy. He couldn't even move. He understood that such a powerful energy could not be controlled by an ordinary monk, and he made sure that this Yomlo would not be an easy opponent. Lord Yomlo completely destroyed the cocky demon, a body that seemed to have simply dissolved into the universe. But the Supreme System said that this trick cost him 1,000 points. He felt sorry that he had spent so many points on such a trifle which the Supreme System instantly deducted from his balance. After such an easy match between them, the priest said that from now on, Lord Yomlo would control every intention of the survivors here. The main character said angrily that those should have been his words that he wanted to say. But it was already too late, and he only looked menacingly at Ginseng and ordered him never to do such a thing again. Vaktang heard the priest say Yomlo's name and couldn't believe it was actually happening. The protagonist informed him that they came here to find more than just this girl they managed to meet in this forest, and explained to him that he came to this world in search of warrior heroes. After that, he offered him to join his team to conquer other worlds together with them. Vaktang could not believe his eyes. He thought it was some kind of joke. After all, such offers only come once every 1,000 years. Lord Yomlo advised him to think carefully before answering as such an offer would only be valid for a few minutes, and he said that whether he will continue to live will depend on his decision. Yomlo used such a powerful spell against the demon that Vaktang couldn't even move by this time. This is how the power of God Death looked like, and he did not understand why he was chosen by the main character. But he decided to accept his offer, and from now on became a loyal servant of the Lord Yomlo. Together with him, 120 Vaktang soldiers came under Yomlo's control. The Supreme System reported that this allowed him to successfully complete the mission Return of Steadfastness, and she can now activate the military camp setting. Yomlo asked Vaktang how long they had been living in this mysterious forest. He told him that they had been here since the beginning of the Tang Bao era and right up to the present day. Yomlo calculated and realized that this has been going on for about 300 years of human life, which was considered an extremely long period. While they were talking to each other, the skeletons on their bones brought the unconscious Olivia and reported that she had lost consciousness from a strong flow of energy. The priest said that the only remedy that could help her was in his house, and said that without it, she could die extremely quickly, so they should leave at once before it was too late. Yomlo decided not to waste time and ordered the system to send new warriors to the netherworld. But she explained to him that he can stay in this world for only nine more hours, after which his soul will go into oblivion. He had little time and ordered to go immediately to get the necessary means in order to save the unfortunate girl who was lying unconscious all this time. They managed to quickly get to Jinseng's house and he immediately brought her the necessary medicine that can save Olivia. But for that, it was necessary to stuff them into her mouth. After that, Olivia's body began to fill with a natural blush, and her cheeks became human-like. The priest informed everyone that his medicine had worked successfully, and he said that now they have nothing to worry about. Olivia regained consciousness, and the only thing that prevented her was an extremely strong headache. She could not understand what was happening to her. But the main character calmed her down in time and said that now... 
she is completely safe and said that nothing is in danger for her now. He did not expect that they would see each other again. He understood that she had already suffered enough today. Olivia looked at him admiringly and was extremely grateful to him for saving her and asking absolutely nothing for it. He gently took her chin and explained that he had already saved her from danger twice, and he said that it would be nice if she thanked him for such a noble deed. Her body was flushed with a strong blush. Her eyes started to shine like never before. She had never felt so grateful. She felt incredibly hot, as if her body was on fire from the inside. The last time she felt this way was in the 10th grade. Yomlo could not understand what was happening to her. He thought she was starting to feel some pain, but he had no idea what it was. Olivia felt extremely ill. She couldn't even control her emotions how suddenly she wanted so much to make love. The priest said that he seemed to have given her too much medicine, and he was afraid that they could cause unpleasant consequences. But she suddenly threw her arms around the main character and passionately knocked him right onto the bed which was in the room. The ruler could not resist such an onslaught and instantly succumbed to such a temptation. He thought it would be too soon, but he really liked her passion. It was extremely unexpected for him. Priest Ginseng explained to him that it was all due to a side effect of the medication, and now her passion will be extremely difficult to curb because they contained a gigantic dose of aphrodisiac. Yomlo ordered everyone to leave the room, and said that he would help her satisfy her passion, and he said that he would handle it without any problems. He passionately urged her to come to him, because only he could save her from the pain that had plagued her for so many years. Olivia didn't think long and rushed to his lips. After that, they started kissing passionately. She was not waiting for this moment for about five years. That evening at Priest Ginseng's house, Lord Yomlo did help Olivia curb her passion and relieve her of the excruciating pain caused by the medication. The priest noted that Lord Yomlo also seems to have his weaknesses. He hinted at a weakness for the female sex. Yomlo was lying in bed at that time and thought that this was probably the best evening of his life. How unexpectedly the supreme system began the countdown. The time of being in this world has been exhausted and in 30 seconds it will be returned back. After that, she successfully teleported Yomlo, Ginseng Priest, and Ghost back to the protagonist's world. Judging by the position in which the teleported king landed, it was clear that he had been interrupted at an extremely inopportune moment. The main character started yelling at the system in displeasure and asked if it could wait a certain amount of time until he finished all his work. But she congratulated him on his return home and smiled slyly. She was glad that she was able to interrupt him at such a crucial moment. He reminded her that he still had nine hours in the other world, and he did not understand why the Supreme System returned him earlier. He ordered her to explain her intentions immediately. The Supreme System explained to him that he was still too weak and therefore could not fully control himself. Therefore, she was forced to return him to this world. The main character thought that it was too impudent on her part and decided to punish her for such reckless actions. He threatened her that now he will show her who is too weak here, and ordered her to stop immediately. When they ran outside, unknown magical forces appeared near Yomlo's shoulders, and it instantly caught his attention. It was the supreme system that congratulated him on the successful construction of the military camp and offered to see it. She wanted to focus on other things as quickly as possible. It was a huge, beautiful building that was admired by all the inhabitants of his world. Finally, really important objects appeared here. They all admired the new building together, and the main character asked the system where Voktang, whom he met in the world of the living, is now. She informed him that he was currently engaged in important training. But there was one more thing he should know about this world. Yomlo could not understand what she meant and asked her what else she had not had time to tell him. This surprised him. The Supreme System explained that for each warrior, ten points will be deducted from his balance every month, and for each new warrior, ten points will also have to be given. The main character became extremely angry, because now he has an additional 125 soldiers. And this meant that from now on, every month he would be forced to pay 1250 points, which is exactly half of his profit. He considered it extremely unfair to which the Supreme System told him that the more difficulties, the more motivation. This meant only one thing. You need to earn more to be able to cover all expenses. 
Yomlo thought about her words and began to think about where he could get even more points to cover all his expenses. After that, he unexpectedly mentioned the Nesset. The protagonist hoped that he had not forgotten him yet, and he decided that he should definitely visit him. And Yomlo decided to immediately go in search of him. He believed that he would definitely earn enough points with him. At that time, in the world of the Knesset, there were two men in a room. One of them reported to him. He said that was all they could find, and showed only two treasure chests. This was too little for the Lord of the Nesset. He now had to decide where to find even more precious artifacts, to become even richer. Suddenly, one of the guards ran into the room and shouted that they were in danger. He informed the ruler that messengers of the gods from the Gijaka Mountains had appeared on the horizon. They were already at the entrance to their estate, and he said that they had already managed to kill several of their soldiers at the entrance. The Gnesset realized that the people from the Gijak Mountains were again interfering with it, and decided that it was necessary to deal with them once and for all. There were only two of them, but they easily managed to tame three of his soldiers who were in their way. They came here to take revenge on the Lord of the Nesset. After all, he has been too insolent lately. He constantly stole other people's treasures and could not calm down. They had no choice but to get even with him once and for all. They knew that this arbitrariness was being done by the people of the Lord Yomlo, and today the inhabitants of the Gijaka Mountains decided to put them in their place. How unexpectedly a mighty warrior appeared before them, who was not like the pitiful warriors of Lord Yomlo. It was a seasoned Nesset warrior standing right on the roof in front of them. He was sent to deal with the attackers. The mighty Knesset, with just one glance, bound the movements of the people of the Hijak Mountains. They did not understand how this was even possible. It was an extremely powerful spell, and only the Chosen possessed this powerful magic. He angrily asked them why they had come here, and said that such wretched fools should not have ventured out of their territory. One of them told him that today they would destroy Lord Ramp and thus avenge all the people of Gir Hijak. The girl warriors were extremely determined. They were not afraid of any challenges that stood before them. They immediately threw themselves into battle with the Knesset and hoped to quickly overcome it. But it did not turn out as expected. The Knesset's view was fearless. He used contactless combat magic and channeled his strength to repel their attack. He didn't let them get close to him, and with his spell, he easily pushed the girls away who didn't even have time to do anything. His reception was too powerful. One of the warriors remarked that they should be more careful because his techniques were too fast for them. She was sure that these were techniques of black magic. He told them that he would not allow them to destroy the Lord of Yomlo as he had sworn allegiance to him, and he offered them to sow before it was too late. But he explained to them that if they told him about the location of the mountain lord Hijak, he promised to leave them alive. But if not, then he would personally destroy their entire tribe, and said that if they want, they can become my wives. After that, he started laughing hard right in their faces. The girls were kneeling in front of him at that time, but he suddenly felt that something was wrong. He turned his gaze to the side and saw that he had more opponents. He realized that it would not be as easy as he had hoped. They pierced the girl warriors through their heads. After that, they had no chance to survive. A perfectly round hole was left in their heads from the weapon with which they were killed. The Nesset angrily said that he did not allow anyone to touch his girls, and decided to definitely take revenge on them. Several women of incredible beauty began to approach him. One of them couldn't understand why there were so many idiots in these parts who didn't understand the whole situation. The Nesset could not believe its eyes. These were the Tonshin angels who were known for their cruelty and power. One of them spoke to him to tell her who helped him break the spell of life and death. They knew that only an extremely powerful wizard was capable of such a thing. He answered her that she was no longer his puppet, and he explained that he is no longer the same Knesset that he was before, and he said that he was no longer afraid of them. The Tongshan angels did not expect him to be so stubborn and brave at the same time. The Knesset had seen firsthand that the Tonshin angels were extremely powerful, but today he wanted to take on them himself with his new powers. They just calmly looked at him and decided to start saying a secret spell to defeat this arrogant man. One of them instantly prepared for a duel and directed her charms at him. She knew that he would be an easy target and would be able to destroy him without any problems. The attack was moving so fast that it was literally chopping down trees in its path. Her blow was too strong for him. 
after which he hit a tree and barely got up to sit down. This was a real surprise for him. It was the legendary blow of the six sons of the Tongshan angels. This is an extremely powerful blow after which the Gneset began to cough up blood. She hoped that the Gneset would be stronger and at least somehow manage to surprise her with its skills. But he could not withstand even the first blow, after which he could not put up any resistance. But for his courage, they decided not to kill him, but simply take him to the afterlife. But suddenly they heard someone start calling the Gneset. It was Lord Yomlo who saw so many beautiful girls around the Gneset. He was happy about this and decided to join them. The Gneset saw the main character and began to beg him to save him from these scoundrels. It cost him a great deal of effort. One of them realized that it was Lord Yomlo and refused to believe it until the end. She had only heard of him from the legends that had come down to them and said that no one could behave so impudently as he. It was clear that she did not fully understand his power. But she was lucky that the chief had never seen Tongshan angels before and didn't know what they looked like. The Yomlo the Nesset was talking about was nothing like a martial artist. But they were interested, because maybe he has some special techniques that he can use against them. But they decided that they did not have time and one of them ordered the others to capture him immediately. The protagonist was surprised by the fact that such beautiful and delicate flowers can be so fiery. He should certainly cool their ardor. Lord Yomlo used his speed and agility, then a whirlwind flew between all the angel girls. As it turned out, he managed to take away all their inner strength from them. The main character managed to add as much as 25 years of powerful inner strength. The warrior girls glared at him as their powers left their bodies. They did not even notice what had just happened. He mockingly told them not to worry too much because he is not an evil warrior. One of the girls asked him in surprise, did he dare to use the techniques of small step and spirit of the North Sea? She knew that there was only one person in this world who could do that, and that was Boundless Zen. She thought the main character was his follower. Yomlo confirmed her assumption and said that it was all true. She thought that if he could use these two techniques and dispel life and death spells, then he must be somehow related to the hermits. And she asked him, who is his master? The protagonist was extremely amused by this information and laughed right in her face. He explained to her that there was no one in this world who could be his master. They couldn't believe that he had such a strong inner energy. The angels did not understand who he was and why he had such a powerful but bad aura. They decided to say goodbye to him and said that they will definitely meet you again. But right now, they need to leave him immediately, as they have more important things to do. Yomlo angrily told them that their next meeting would be their last if they misbehaved again. The Gneset was overjoyed to see Lord Yomlo, for he had just saved his life. Since he did not cope with the task of the main character, he wanted Lord Yomlo to punish him. But Yomlo reassured the Gneset since it had no chance of dealing with them. He examined his injuries and wanted to help him. To do this, he ordered his submissive system to immediately heal the damage to the Gneset. The restoration of the body was successful, and she removed ten points from his balance. The Gneset could not believe its eyes. His injuries healed instantly. He knew that Yomlo was extremely powerful, but such divine techniques made him admire him even more. Yomlo told him that he came to him for a reason. The main character wanted to make sure that his order was successfully executed, and asked him how things were going. The Gneset invited him to the estate and replied that he would now show him everything. He was satisfied with his result. He showed him all the treasures he had managed to find. The Supreme System assessed the contents of the chests and found that there were Level 2 Iron Fist Combat Technique, 15 Level 1 Treasures, and 8 kinds of treasures. System assessment was 90 points. Yomlo ordered to learn the Iron Fist's Combat Technique and leave the rest of the treasures here, and he said that everything that was left should be exchanged for points. He mastered a new skill in no time. It cost him 35 points, but he only got 30 points from the trade. It didn't matter at all because the main character felt as if a huge force rushed from his hands. He immediately decided to test his new skills and aimed at the wall of the estate. She had no chance. Lord Yomlo's forces didn't even feel her as she broke through so easily. The main character was pleased that he managed to learn such a powerful new technique. The Gneset was frightened and told Yomlo that he might not have been able to get enough resources, but that was all he could find in these parts and promised to make amends. 
Yomlo answered him that he already knows where many treasures can be found, and he said that this is Mount Gijaka. The Gneset knew about this mountain. According to legends, there is a treasure cave on Mount Gijaka, which contains martial arts books and other rare artifacts. But the forces of the Gneset were not enough to fight the creatures that reside there. Yomlo asked to be taken there, but the Gneset did not know the exact location because the location was top secret. Yomlo headed for the exit and ordered the Gneset to go with him. It was clear that he already had a plan of action. He asked Sistema if she knew where the treasures of Mount Gijaka were and asked to send him there with the Gneset. The protagonist ordered him to give him his hand. The Knesset did not understand what Yomlo was going to do with him now and was not jokingly afraid of these actions. He had already begun to beg for mercy because he was clearly convinced that Lord Yomlo wanted to kill him. But this was not part of the main character's plans. Other things awaited them. The Supreme System instantly teleported them to Mount Gijaka. De Jomlo wanted to find precious treasures. They found themselves on a snowy mountain and began to look around. They were trying to figure out where they needed to go. To speed up his search, Yomlo asked the systems where exactly the treasures of Gijak were located. She explained to him that no one knows the exact location, but they must be within a radius of five kilometers. Yomlo did not particularly like this information, but he had no other options, so he was forced to search for himself. Ahead, Yomlo noticed a cave and suggested that the Nesset go there first to at least hide from the snow and plan further actions. It was a lonely cave that was right in the mountains, not far from where the Supreme System had teleported them. They did not expect that the cave would be so spacious. They thought that maybe this is the place where the hidden treasures are. The Nesset decided to run ahead to scout the road and make sure that the king was safe so that he would not be in any danger. On his way, he came across an unusual egg of enormous size. How impressive it shone, as if enchanted. Yomlo began to explain that it looked like a hijack egg. It is because of this that this mountain got its name. The main character thought it was their nest. A giant bird suddenly appeared, which looked like a giant eagle, and said that it could smell death. He had red, devilish eyes and thick, pure white feathers. The bird looked angrily at the uninvited guests and seemed to devour them with its demonic eyes. Yomlo and the Nesset began to quickly run away from Gijak in order not to lose their precious time to save themselves. Travelers did not expect that the bird could be so huge. Compared to him, they were the size of tiny ants that had wandered into someone else's territory. The Nesset said in fear that they would end here because this bird wants to eat them. He didn't want to become bird shit, so they needed to come up with something immediately before he caught up with them. Unexpectedly, they saw a hiding place in the cave and immediately ran to it to hide from the giant hijack bird. The Nesset decided to ask the main character why he didn't just kill him with his powerful techniques. Yomlo answered him that you can get huge money for this bird, but most likely he was just sorry to kill such a bird. The Knesset was relieved to say that he was extremely lucky to have Yomlo with him. He had no idea there were such big Gijak birds. An unknown man, who unexpectedly also found himself in this hiding place, agreed with the words of the Gnesset. The Nesset, surprised, asked him who the hell he was. He only now saw that they were not alone. The unknown man introduced himself as Vincent. He was a nomadic trader and knew the area extremely well. He curiously asked them if he understood correctly that they were looking for the treasures of Gijak. The protagonist, immediately after these words, asked him if he knew the way to the place they needed. He hoped that this man would help them get to the treasures. Vincent began to tell that Mount Gijak was not like another world, because there had never been wars or battles. Many people have tried to find treasures here, but no one has yet succeeded, as the road to them is extremely difficult and dangerous. Yomlo continued to look at Vincent with interest and listened to his conversation. Vincent said that they were lucky to find this particular cave because no one had ever been able to go this far. The hijack bird they saw in the cave is extremely powerful, and because of that, it is difficult to tame, especially in its lair. The Gnesset asked him if he would help them find the treasure, or just lead them to the treasury. For him, going there is the same as going home, and so he easily agreed to this offer. Only first he needed to check the sincerity of your intentions. He still distrusted them. The Nesset immediately took his hint and offered to pay him 30 coins if he would help them. But Vincent told him that 30 coins was too little for such work. 
He told them his price, one hundred coins, and said that if it was too much for them, then he would rather leave them here so that they can find another person who will agree to help you. He was about to leave them when Yomlo suddenly said that they agreed to these conditions. Moreover, he promised to pay him double the price after he successfully guided them to their destination. The chief gave him a rare golden artifact to confirm the seriousness of his intentions. Vincent did not expect such a generous payment. This greatly alarmed him, but now he had no other choice. After that, he bade them follow him and said that if they did not go the wrong way, they should be all right. Vincent explained that the place they were looking for was not in this cold cave, but in a warm, pleasant place nearby. Vincent thought that they had fallen for his hook so easily, and he decided that he no longer wanted to hold a ceremony with them. He has already come up with his cunning plan to fool them. There were various branches throughout the cave, and if you turn in the wrong direction, you can get lost forever. And the corpse smell only confirmed this assumption. Vincent said that this branching was exactly what they needed. He lit a torch to see where to go next. After all, it was extremely important not to get lost here. Yomlo asked him if he was also one of the people of Hijok Mountain. He wanted to at least somehow dilute this boring atmosphere. Vincent told him that he was from another city, and here he just knew the area. Therefore, you can navigate here without any problems. He led them to a stone wall made of blocks and said that they had arrived at their destination. The Nesset began to suspect that they were being tricked and angrily said that he would not be able to do anything. He hinted at Lord Yamlo's power, but Vincent didn't get it. He said that they have already come, and that is where they will end. And he said that they can now say goodbye to their lives, after which he clicked on one of the blocks. Between them, a heavy stone partition instantly began to descend from above, separating them on different sides. The Nesset shouted at him through the wall that he would definitely pay for his lies. He threatened to cut him into little pieces as soon as they got out of here. Suddenly, the walls began to move towards each other, and it was clear that in a few minutes, they would simply crush Lord Yomlo and the Nesset, who were trapped. The Nesset tried to smash the wall with a magical blow, but it was in vain. His strength was not enough for such a thing. He could not believe that after such a powerful blow, not a single mark remained on the wall. Vincent said that any attempts to break through the wall are pointless. After all, this is not an ordinary stone, but it is additionally mixed with Xuan metal, which is the hardest alloy that exists today. And he said that only God can break this wall. They have the opportunity to say their last words before dying, and then they are simply crushed by the weight of the super-strong alloy. The main character was disappointed by such a dirty reception and ordered the system to immediately switch their places with Vincent. She informed him that it would cost him one point and immediately began to follow the main character's order. Their bodies began to teleport. This came as a real surprise to Vincent, who thought he had beaten them. But in a moment they switched places, and now he was no longer so brave. Vincent looked around scared and tried to understand how he ended up here. Yomlo mockingly asked him if he was now satisfied with the situation in which he found himself because of his stupidity. Vincent began to plead with the protagonist to save him and promised to lead them to their destination without any conditions. Lord Yomlo decided to trust him again and used the ghost technique to pull him out of his death trap. The Nesset asked the ruler why he hid him, because it would have been better if he had just died in this. Yomlo answered him that this man could still be useful to them. Vincent at that moment was lying in front of them unconscious and leaning against the wall. The Gnesset decided to wake him up and began to shake his head to bring him to his senses. Vincent quickly came to his senses and started thanking them for saving his miserable life. He was now in great debt to them and asked them how he could atone for his guilt. The Gnesset told him that he was just being honest with us, but if not, then his master knows one thousand ways to make him suffer for the rest of his life. The main character said that they should immediately go in search of precious treasures. On the mountain itself, in a secret place, there was a huge palace of Gijaka. It was home to the Tanshan angels, whom Lord Yomlo had met earlier when he saved the Nesset from their attack. Thoughts about Lord Yomlo could not get out of her head. She thought and could not understand why she had not heard anything about him before. But unexpectedly, the woman who took care of them interrupted her thoughts and said that it was already lunchtime and therefore it was time to take human blood. And she also added that she herself found a person for this and checked him through strict selection. But additionally, she asked her to make sure of the choice of the candidate herself. She brought the sacrifice to her, 
and the angel asked her what she could do with it. The servant answered her that she could do anything with her, and if she needed something, she just had to give an order. The victim was extremely submissive and ready for anything. Angel was extremely pleased with her answer, but the victim still did not know what she was brought for. An evil spark shone in Angel's eyes. After that, she took a special knife in her hands and silently walked up behind the servant. She placed it against her throat. And with one confident movement, Angel cut her throat. Splashes of blood flew in different directions. After that, she poured the freshly extracted blood of another of her victims into her glass. More than a hundred people have been killed on her account. Angel used their blood to quench her thirst, and it was vital to her. Now it's time for her training. Her gaze became even more vicious, and she needed to direct her energy somewhere. At that time, Yomlo, Knesset, and Vincent approached the big canyon. Vincent said that on the opposite side was the place they needed, and he said that the local people have a secret technique of controlling birds. This is how they cross. But since this is beyond the power of ordinary people, he cannot lead them further. Yomlo suddenly used some of his magic tricks on Vincent. Then a pillar of magic rose up around them, and they threw into a deep canyon the body of Vincent, who wanted to kill them in a cave on a snowy mountain. At the end of the flight, he shouted that he had kept his promise and helped them reach the treasury. He couldn't understand why they did this to him. He was now clearly convinced that they were two ungrateful scum and vowed to become a ghost and haunt them for the rest of his life. The Nesset asked Yomlo why he still decided to kill him. He thought that the Lord had forgiven this man back in the cave. The main character answered him that it is dangerous to leave scum like him alive, and that's why such a punishment is mandatory. Moreover, he lacked a punching bag in his new military camp, and asked the system to take care of it. In order not to waste time, they headed in the direction indicated by the late Vincent. Suddenly, they saw a bright light at the end of the tunnel. Yomlo thought that they must have reached their destination, and he turned out to be absolutely right. This was the place they were looking for, the place of Gijak's treasures, as well as the abode of the Tanshan angels. The Nesset enthusiastically said that they will definitely need to take all the treasures that are here. Yomlo answered him that there were so many beautiful girls here and said that he would be sorry to kill them all. They need to do something about it. Yomlo instantly had a great plan in his head. He decided to change his playing style a bit and use their acting skills. He asked that the Supreme System turn them into helpers of the angels. This was another cunning plan of his. The Supreme System followed his order without any further questions. She deducted 20 points from his balance and transformed the heroes with magic. On two extremely sexy assistants of the angels, and she reported to him about the successful completion of the reincarnation. According to legends about the Tanshan angels, it was said that they always train at lunchtime. Angels are extremely good warriors, so there should be an extremely high number of good artifacts found in their hordes. The Nesset could not be more pleased with his new incredible figure and appearance. Yomlo sharply told him that they should go, and not stand and waste precious time. And together, they went to the Palace of Angels. On the way, the Gnesset begged Yomlo to teach him some of his powerful tricks. The main character answered him that it will all depend on how he behaves, and ordered not to give them a chance to reveal their plan before it was necessary. At that time, the assistant led the angels to practice and told the guards to follow, so that no one dared to disturb them until they finished. The guards always kept order and calm during the angels' training sessions. It was their sacred duty that no one disturbed them. The Knesset was afraid of the guards, and said that it would be better if they sneaked into the middle. But Yomlo reminded him of their magical reincarnation, and said that they had nothing to fear as long as they had such an appearance, because no one would recognize them, and confidently went forward. The guards saw that the reincarnated Yomlo and the Gneset had already approached them and instantly knelt down to pay them honor and respect. Yomlo and the Neset passed through the center unhindered, and no one even suspected anything that something was wrong with them. Suddenly, the Gneset heard some female voices coming towards them. What he saw, he could not even imagine in his best dreams. He did not believe that the angels would take a bath with him, even half-naked. For a second, it seemed to them that they had entered a man's paradise. They were both extremely pleased with what they saw. The Gneset wanted to stay here forever to constantly have fun with such attractive girls. The angels noticed that their assistants came to them and greeted them. 
The gift of speech was taken away from the Gnesset, he could not even say anything in response to them. How unexpectedly, another assistant ran after training to the angels, and angrily said that they have not yet practiced all the techniques they need to master. One of the angels ordered her to shut up immediately in an extremely rude manner. She was clearly unhappy with this reaction. The assistant decided to ask what happened to her. It was an extremely atypical rudeness that could not just appear. She was infuriated that the assistant thought that she was negligent in her training. She told her that someone broke into the castle, and she still doesn't know anything about it, and she ordered to immediately send security to find these scumbags. The assistant could not understand how Angel could find out about this, because she was in training all this time, but she immediately swore that she would definitely check it. The assistant decided not to waste time and immediately ran to the guards to give them an order to immediately find the insolent guests who dared to enter this sacred estate. Yomlo, who saw all this, thought that this was the perfect chance and was the first to turn to security. He ordered them to lock the treasury so that no one could enter or leave it. The protagonist told the guard to immediately attach additional security to the treasury and not let anyone in. The Nesset remarked that his lord had stepped into the role exceedingly well, but he did not see why he should order them to guard the treasury even more closely, as it would complicate their plan. The main character answered him that he has a cunning plan, how to take over everything without any effort, and asked to trust him. He is sure that they can become full-fledged owners here, and he already has an idea how to do it. They went to search the palace. The Lord was looking for what he needed, and quickly found it. To realize his plan, he needed to get to the lonely angel who was in this estate. She sat and practiced the technique of eternal youth, and she had no idea that today everything would radically change in her life. The protagonist ordered the system to change the appearance of this angel to the appearance of the Gnesset. She informed him that it would cost him ten points, and added that the spell would last exactly sixty minutes, after which she would transform back into an angel. In a few seconds her appearance was successfully changed. Now Angel looked like a hostile stranger in his own palace. After the reincarnation, Yomlo and the Knesset went into the room she was in. It was the same angel they dealt with near the palace of Lord Yomlo, and which almost killed the Knesset. After they passed in the room, the Knesset told her that they had finally met again, only under completely different circumstances. She could not understand who it was in the body of her assistant. This caught her by surprise. The reincarnated Nesset, with a smile on his face, told her that from now on, he is she. She said that it was simply not possible. She couldn't believe what was happening until the end. Unexpectedly, she realized that her voice had changed tremendously. The Gnesset was satisfied with the situation and asked her whether she would sit there confused or would finally call someone for help. After these words, a cry for help was raised throughout the palace. She screamed with all her might that she found strangers in their territory. Angel couldn't believe to the end that they dared to steal her appearance and, moreover, change it to a man's. Suddenly, she looked towards the door and saw that another assistant had entered the room. Angel understood that it was Yomlo, whom she saw for the first time near His Majesty's estate. She angrily asked him what he had done to her. She wondered what he was up to. Yomlo answered her that it was nothing special and said that they just decided to transform a little. He assured her that everything would be fine with her and that she had nothing to panic about. This angered Angel for no reason, so she decided to use her powerful charms to deal with these scum. She spoke and began to attack Yomlo with a magic crystal. The Angel directed the full power of the spell directly at him. Nesset wasn't kidding because he knew it was a life-and-death spell that had destroyed before his eyes dozens of the mightiest warriors he had ever met. But for Yomlo, these were children's tricks. With the help of the magic sphere around him, he easily deflected the spell without any problems. Angel looked at him in surprise and began to realize that magical energy was protecting his body from her spells. And because of that, she can't do anything with him. Suddenly, Angel's assistant ran into the room with several guards who heard her scream a few minutes ago. The reincarnated Nesset pointed a finger at the reincarnated Angel and told them to immediately seize this scum who dared to interfere in their realm. She decided that she would not give up under any circumstances and warned them not to even think of approaching her or she would have to use the life and death spell again. The assistant didn't know it was an angel and couldn't believe that a stranger could use the life and death spell that was only available to Tonshin angels. 
The Nesset was appalled by Angel's brutality. He was surprised that she was willing to use this deadly spell against her own people. That is why they will have to take this place completely under their control in order to finally bring order here with these powerful techniques. After that, the reincarnated angel turned to Yomlo and said that although he can steal her appearance, but without her knowledge and charms, it's all in vain. She started attacking him again. The assistant could not understand what was happening here. Now it became clear to her that it was not clear who was who. The reincarnated angel said that she would now test him against her spells, and she swung at him with all her might. It was clear that she really wanted him dead. The angel flew straight at him at breakneck speed. But Lord Yomlo stood unmoved. He was completely confident in his own strength and understood that he would repel this attack with ease. Their forces collided with each other. Angel couldn't believe that he managed to stop her reception with only his one hand. In the encounter, the overlord protagonist once again took her energy, which she regenerated from the blood of her victim. Angel was not jokingly angered by this cunning trick of his. It pissed her off that he had used this technique again for the second time. Yomlo received internal energy in five years, and the replenishment was completed successfully. Angel did not understand where in this world such a powerful master appeared, who even knows how to use the technique of the North Sea. The main character was already fed up, so he decided that it was necessary to end this show as soon as possible. He headed straight for Angel. His eyes glowed like those of a demon. Behind his new body appeared the silhouette of a fierce monster. Angel began to realize that he was not an ordinary person. The fist flew at the speed of light straight into the face of the reincarnated angel. She understood that she would not be fast enough to dodge the blow. The fist stopped right in front of Angel's face, but the force with which it flew caused her face to flinch from the energy it created. After that, he mockingly asked her how she felt about such new impressions. Angel's body began to shake wildly. She felt fear for the first time in a long time. She couldn't believe that his skill had reached such a high level. This was a real discovery for her. He looked her straight in the eyes and asked if she now wanted to become his subject and continue to glorify his majesty in this world. The main character offered her to join the team of Lord Yomlo. This proposal made her extremely angry. She did not want to obey some Yomlo, and she answered that he might not even dream of such a thing. The main character told her that she shouldn't be so stubborn, so it could end badly for her. Suddenly, something strange started happening to her body. She seemed to be torn from the middle, and she began to release her magical energy. Angel finally managed to get back her beautiful body, which the main character took from her. Yomlo could not understand how she managed to regain her appearance. The Supreme System informed him that some unknown bug had occurred, and the reincarnation spell had been canceled. The assistant who stood all this time and watched them, she did not understand how a foreigner managed to turn into a Tunshan angel. After that, she said that she would never bow her head before such worthless creatures as him and rushed to attack him. Enraged, Angel decided to use another of her powerful techniques, which was supposed to destroy the aliens. She directed her charms and all of her inner energy directly at them. Angel used her most powerful strike, which began to demolish everything in its path. But even this technique failed to leave a single scratch on their bodies. She couldn't believe it was all happening in reality. Yomlo and Nesset, without any damage, managed to repel her powerful blow. Angel angrily said that it was impossible. No one had ever managed to survive such a thing before. To everyone's surprise, Yomlo started saying strange things. He said that it is extremely sad when a loved one leaves you, and looked straight into her eyes. Angel angrily replied to stop talking nonsense. She could not believe that he knew about what happened to her with Senate. But Yomlo decided to continue and assured her that he fully understood what was going on in her soul because he was in the same situation. The main character began to remember how in a past life, when he was still an ordinary mortal, he was rudely rejected by a girl whom he loved very much with all his heart. After this heartless rejection, his world shattered into a thousand pieces. He was constantly troubled by helplessness and loneliness, as well as constant anxiety. Even the process of breathing has become a real burden. He said that if there is only one life, then you should not waste your time on one tree, if there is a whole forest. Angel answered him that if she really had a whole forest, then everything would be completely different. These were extremely good words. She did not expect that he could be so vulnerable too. 
Angel admitted to him that she underestimated him and said that she could not be his rival, and if he wanted to kill her, then let him kill her. But she had one question that confused her. She asked Lord Yomlo who he was and where he learned so much. The protagonist answered her that he is the Lord of Lives, the huge and terrible Lord Yomlo, and in this world they can consider their true God. These were extremely pathetic words, but he repeatedly proved his power to her. Therefore she said that now he can kill her and added that she has already completely resigned herself to her fate. The assistant began to be extremely worried about Angel's life and was not jokingly scared. She didn't know how to help her in this situation. Therefore, she decided to kneel before Yomlo and began to beg him for mercy for the angel. It was her duty to take care of her, because if it weren't for Angel, she too would be in the dead realm. Angel said to the main character that this case does not concern her assistant, and if he was going to kill her anyway, then it should be done with dignity. But killing Angel was not part of his plans. Yomlo was not a ruthless killer. From that day they all belonged to him, and he swore to protect them, and in exchange he asked to be led to the treasury. Angel decided to agree to this offer, and without any hesitation led them and the Nesset to the treasure cave and told them that now they could take everything they needed. In the treasure cave, Peak's second-level martial arts treatise, Techniques, Heart's Bliss, Tonshin Strike of Six Suns, Tonshin Plum Tree Break, White Rainbow, and several others were discovered. Also in the cave were a rock flower and an iron stone of winter. The Supreme System explained that the Iron Stone of Winter can be turned into a fourth-level material, which costs 10,000 points per kilogram, and the rocky flower grows in hell, in places where yin and yang intersect. The cave was so deep that at first one could not even see its end. Yomlo looked at the cave and was happy, because very soon he will become extremely rich. The protagonist took all their treasures, and now decided to improve his skills of Six Suns Tongshen Strike shine and life and death spell to the highest level. The skill enhancement process was successful and it cost him 200 points, which the supreme system deducted from his balance. But now the 10th level of the shining technique gave him even more powerful inner strength. After that, he took another book that contained the best techniques and handed it to the Gnesset so that he could study them. The Gnesset was extremely impressed by the generosity and kindness of its Lord Yamlo and asked him if he could be of any use to him now. The protagonist ordered him to ask the angels to prepare the best food and drink they had. He wanted to celebrate all this well after returning from the cave. And in order not to waste time, he immediately went to a deep cave to see what treasures he managed to get. There really was no bottom in this cave. I got the impression that this is not a cave, but a path straight to hell. But this did not scare the brave Lord Yomlo at all. The main character landed on the bottom, and there were many beautiful flowers around him. The Supreme System explained that these are rock flowers. Extracting magic pollen from each flower costs 10 points. Then they can be planted in their world. And she added that thanks to powerful energy, they grow extremely fast. Yomlo ordered her to immediately begin the process of moving this find to his world. He said that these treasures have been waiting for him for an extremely long time, so not a single second should be lost. The Supreme System successfully extracted the rock flower pollen. There were 60 flowers in total and she said it would cost him 600 points. And she immediately began the process of moving as Lord Yomlo commanded her. The main character thought that the Iron Stone must also be somewhere nearby and went in search. Having walked a little further through the cave, he found what he was looking for. The towering magic pillars were iron stones. From them, you can extract the lead of the fourth level and if you sell it, you can get as much as 5,000 points for its balance. It was even more than Yomlo expected. He decided to exchange half of the lead and keep the rest as raw material. This exchange was completed successfully, and Yomlo instantly received 2,500 points on his balance. He became interested in what else could be found here and continued to explore the cave to discover even more treasures. Unexpectedly for himself, he came across a broken space. After that, he received a temporary mission research. The task was to investigate the territory and understand why a broken space appeared here. Reward plus one level to the seal of Yomlo. The main character was happy about such a task because increasing the level of the Yomlo seal cost 50,000 points. It was a truly generous reward. 
Yomlo thought that Sistema liked him so much that she decided to give him such an expensive gift. The main character looked into the depths of the cave and became extremely interested in what was waiting for him ahead. Yomlo continued to explore the cave and unexpectedly came across something strange. This surprised him immensely. In the bottom of the cave there was an ancient tomb. He thought that there must be many treasures in it. And in order not to waste time, Yomlo quickly went down and ran to examine his new find, which stood alone in the middle of the clearing. The protagonist asked the system to explore this building and tell him what was inside. In a few minutes, she reported back to him and said that the middle was revealed. Jade's soul is a material of the fourth level as well as a material of the second level, uncut stone, and added that the value of the latter is one and a half million points. This figure completely shocked Yomlo. He imagined this number of points as a pool of money. This became a real jackpot for him. Yomlo decided that he must take it all away and decided not to waste a single second. He immediately went to the tomb. But the Supreme System informed him that it would not be able to exchange it because these things still had their rightful owner. This information made Yomlo extremely angry. His eyes showed his extreme rage and irritation at this fact. And she added to all that the owner of these things is now in the middle. Now everything will depend only on the skills of the main character if he wants to defeat him. Suddenly, an unknown being who had been watching Yomlo all this time said that he should go with him. The protagonist turned his gaze to her and asked in surprise what she meant. Suddenly, lost souls came out of the darkness. It was similar to the fact that it was some kind of family and they all approached Yomlo together. The protagonist was surprised and asked the system if this was the threat she told him about. They were a few lost souls who didn't look dangerous. Suddenly, one of the souls said that they were destined to meet, and finally it happened. Yomlo could not understand what was happening and asked him in surprise what they meant and who they were. The soul explained to him that they are the deceased clan Shart, who due to certain cataclysms were closed here forever. Yomlo distrustfully asked them what kind of dead clan Shart they were, because he didn't know anything about them. Soul asked him if he had ever heard of the Crimson Blade before. Yomlo said that it was the first time in his life that he heard about this and asked why they decided that they were destined to meet at all. He still could not understand what they wanted from him. Soul explained to him that the Crimson Blade was their family heirloom, and she added that this blade is extremely sharp and can cut anything. The Chart family became a victim of bandits who wanted to take this blade from them, but they did not know that it only works in the hands of a member of the Chart family, and if this blade falls into the wrong hands, Great trouble will happen. In order to prevent the blade from falling into the wrong hands, the head of the family sent them here to this desert place. Unfortunately, he was killed, but they remained here forever. Yomlo was surprised by this story. For some reason, he could not remember that it was written about in the annals, and this seemed extremely strange to him. The soul began to beg the main character to save them and save them from this eternal torment. Suddenly, the young spirit interrupted him, and told him not to humiliate himself before anyone. She believed that their family should not ask for help from others, because they can take care of themselves. She said that Yomlo does not have any abilities, and it will be difficult for him even to stand up for himself. The main character was extremely angry at these words, and decided to threaten 18 with Orb Prison if she didn't stop talking nonsense immediately. Chand, who was her uncle, told him not to listen to her madness and he promised that they would definitely punish her. He said that they had been here for an extremely long time, when suddenly he was interrupted by a strange sound. The protagonist was surprised and asked the soul what it was. He felt that something had to happen now. Chan said that now a monster will appear here which went on a hunt. Therefore, they should immediately hide while they are alive. Souls rushed to flee in different directions. They knew that a demon would appear now, and therefore they were extremely afraid of this meeting. The young soul asked her relatives if they were tired of always hiding and being afraid. She believed that it was high time to take revenge on him for all the injustices. How suddenly a terrible red snake appeared and began to quickly approach them. The young soul said that she was tired of being constantly afraid, and added that sooner or later he would eat her anyway. She was completely resigned to her sad fate. She screamed angrily at the red snake to kill her and finally end her torment. She looked her straight in the face. The monster had already almost swallowed her. She had already closed her eyes so as not to see her death, how suddenly the unexpected happened. 
Lord Yomlo easily pressed the demon to the ground with one foot, and he asked what kind of vile creature it was that everyone was afraid of. The souls stood and were amazed at how easily the main character was able to tame the monster that had scared them for so many years. They called him the Ghost Hunter. Yomlo asked in surprise why they called him that. It seemed strange and incomprehensible to him. Dusha Chand explained to him that this ghost's energy was being absorbed by their crimson blade, and so he had to quench his thirst with souls in order to survive. This place is his hunting ground. They wanted to repel him, but they did not have enough strength to defeat him. But now, they are ready to fight together with Yomlo. The main character was glad that they finally had courage. Yomlo said that if he still got involved in this case, then a few assistants would certainly not hinder him. He ordered them to prepare for a duel that would decide their future fate. He promised to help them, but he said that for future battles they will not be without weapons. The protagonist asked the system to pick up a powerful ranged weapon for them. She showed him the arsenal of weapons she could give them. The main character was confused as to why she didn't give it to him earlier. The Supreme System said that each machine is worth 100 points and is issued for two hours, and added that each cartridge is worth 10 points. It seemed extremely expensive for Yomlo. The niece asked in surprise what kind of weapon it was. She had never seen such a thing before, so she was quite surprised. Yomlo explained that this is an AK-47, an extremely powerful and simple machine gun, and said that to use it, you only need to pull the trigger, but before that, aim the sight at the enemy. The Supreme System gave them one machine gun each. Yomlo said that it was time for their hunt, and he said that today there is no need to feel sorry for anyone. Yomlo looked at the old building and asked the soul if a monster was hiding inside. They answered him yes and decided to go there with him. The protagonist did not expect that it would be so spacious inside. After all, the building looked very small from the outside. After he walked inside, Yomlo noticed a strange inscription on the wall that dated back to the year 6786. This seemed extremely strange to him, and he decided to ask the spirits if they knew what this ancient inscription meant. But unexpectedly, the Supreme System interrupted him and warned him to be careful in this unfamiliar place, because if something happened to him, she would not be able to save him. Uncle Chand, who was holding a ready weapon behind his back, suddenly sensed danger and asked his niece to be more careful. But she calmly told him that everything would be fine with her, so he shouldn't worry too much about her. Unexpectedly for everyone, the Supreme System discovered the lost soul of the deceased and said that he had a third level of danger. The soul of the deceased spoke to them that they were all traitors and looked them straight in the eyes. He was shaking with hatred. Yomlo saw that it was some extremely strange skeleton and asked him if he was the head of the family of the Shart clan. The skeleton told him that the main character was too brave for such actions and said that the bloody blade belonged only to him, so they were not worthy to possess it. Yomlo answered him that he was not interested only in the blade, but in all the valuables that were here. The skeleton spoke to the lost souls that if they dared to betray the Shart family, he would surely punish them now. Uncle Chand answered him that he too had once promised never to stick a blade in his loved ones and swore to protect them, but somehow they became his victims and said that today was the last day that he would be called the head of his family. He took the machine gun in his hands and said that today they will be forced to fight for the Shark Clan and for the lost innocent souls. Chand vowed to destroy him for all the sins he had committed. Lord Yomlo listened to his speech and advised that now was their best moment to show their true anger and avenge the innocent people. After that, the skeleton said that today they would finally have a spectacular fair match to find out which of them was the real winner. He also asked the lost souls if they really thought that Yomlo would help them get back what they had lost, and said that they were extremely naive, so they shouldn't get on their knees and beg for mercy afterwards, because he would never forgive them. The main character answered him that he was really not interested in these pitiful good-for-nothings. He explained to him that he simply wanted to take away the riches that should now belong to him from today. The skeleton sarcastically answered him that he would definitely help make this dream come true. He was already tired of this useless chatter, so he started using his certain magic tricks and managed to turn into a terrible demon in no time. 
and with the help of a dark cloning spell, he managed to create his ghost heads. Uncle Chand understood what was about to happen and said that everyone should be extremely careful because danger was waiting for them. The skeleton menacingly ordered his minions to tear to pieces anyone who got in their way. Yomlo said with a smile on his face that now they would see if these cloned monsters could carry out their master's order and prepared to meet them first. The ghost heads immediately went to attack Lord Yomlo. They were just a little bit away from starting to gnaw the main character's body. How unexpectedly he ordered his soul companions to open fire on them with their automatic weapons that the Supreme System had given them. They immediately followed his order and used their weapons. The souls opened an automatic cue from all their barrels, and the bullets began to pierce through the ghost heads. They had no chance against such a powerful weapon and simply dissolved into the air. This was a real shock for the skeleton. There were no traces left of his monsters literally in a few seconds. He did not think that such a thing was even possible. After this, Uncle Chand enthusiastically said that these weapons were simply incredible, and now he had no doubts about their victory. He said that it was time to completely wipe this nobody off the face of the earth and finally get revenge on him for all the years of bullying them. The Shart family fully supported his idea. They couldn't believe they had made it this far. Yomlo angrily yelled at them not to waste their bullets. He remembered how expensive they cost him and did not want to spend so many points on this matter. But his words were ignored by Clan Shart, and they all together opened the automatic line and began to empty the horns of the AK-47 that Yomlo had given them. They fired all the bullets right at the demon. It should be noted that not a single bullet flew by. They were sure that he would have no chance of surviving such a powerful volley. But to their surprise, the bullets could not harm him, and after that he asked them if that was all they could do. After all, this is not enough to destroy him. He decided not to wait for their response and began to approach them at breakneck speed to launch his counterattack. Uncle Chan's nephew was the first to stand before him. It was a young boy with an appearance that was not jokingly frightened by such actions of a demon. As it turned out, he had no chance to resist him, and literally in a second he cut him into small pieces. The skeleton asked them if they really intended to kill him with those toys, and said they were pitiful weaklings who could never kill him like that. Uncle Chand had not expected that the demon was now able to move so fast. The skeleton said that their last glimmer of hope was extinguished and ordered them to surrender immediately. He was clearly convinced that they had no chance against him. Unexpectedly, the main character interrupted him and said that these were not all the surprises for today and asked him how he was going to pay for the ammunition spent on him. The demon angrily asked if Yomlo was absolutely sure that he wanted to die today. He was absolutely sure that this young man would not be able to harm him in any way. So he quickly rose high into the air and swung his magic blade at him. He decided to use his favorite magic technique, which was definitely supposed to destroy the main character, but when he looked down, he saw that Yomlo was nowhere to be found. The demon couldn't understand how he managed to disappear from his sight so quickly. Unexpectedly, the protagonist was already behind him and began to praise him for a good attempt and said that he almost hit him with his attack. The demon couldn't believe that Yomlo had successfully dodged his blow, and therefore it became a real shock for him. The souls of Shart were no less surprised than he was. They knew that Demon Laner's speed was faster than anyone in this dimension, but Yomlo was even faster. Laner could not believe his eyes and said that it was simply impossible. No one had managed to surprise him so much before. He could not accept such a failure and decided to attack Yomlo again, this time to destroy him for sure. Laner was closing in on him with incredible speed, and he was clearly sure that everything would work out for him now. He said that he had been training for this moment for about 100 years, and therefore there was no one who could be faster than him. But Lord Yomlo managed to slap him and told him not to say such nonsense to him anymore. The Shart Souls were even more surprised. They watched the power of Yomlo and could not believe their eyes that this was actually happening. The slap that the main character inflicted threw Laner several meters, but he managed to keep his balance and stand on his feet. He told the main character that it was impossible. After all, no one alive can develop such speed as him. It became clear that Yomlo's skills made him extremely angry. The demon Laner admitted that Yomlo was a pretty strong opponent and said that he was really sorry to have to kill him. He decided to use his most powerful technique that he possessed. Yomlo watched Laner create clones and tried to figure out what trick he was going to use this time. 
Uncle Chand immediately understood what trick Laner wanted to use and was no joke scared. He did not believe that Yomlo would be able to resist the demon's dark magic. In no time, Laner managed to create many clones of himself. He had a plan to confuse Yomlo and thus defeat him. Uncle Chand, with fear in his eyes, realized that the demon still managed to learn the technique of shadow cloning. And Laner's clones immediately rushed to attack the main character. They had only one goal, to destroy the Lord of Yomlo at any cost. They closed in on him in seconds and brought their blades to his face. It seemed that he had no chance of surviving such a thing. One of the clones shouted that no one would dare stand up to Laner and asked the main character if he was really ready to die in this way. Lord Yomlo just stood and smiled. He was curious and asked them if they had already thought of what words they would say before their death. There was no fear in his voice. He held the machine gun that the Supreme System had given him earlier and asked them if they were ready to accept his just punishment. He decided not to waste much time and immediately began to test the weapon in battle. Yomlo pulled the trigger and fired about a hundred bullets at them. The bullets were flying so fast that the clones had no chance to dodge it. They did not even have time to react to such an unexpected step for them. Bullets literally pierced their flesh, but that was not all. When the main character fired his last rounds, they reached Laner, who did not have time to do anything about it. And now, the reconnaissance mission was considered successfully completed. He received new rewards. Yomlo's seal increased by one level, one zero 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 points, and a bloody blade. This is a level six weapon that could be exchanged for 100,000 points. Yomlo was satisfied with his result, and he was glad that now he can get so many points. The souls of the Chart Clan could not believe that the main character had dealt with Laner so quickly and easily. Now they were sure that he was not an ordinary person, but a super being. After that, Yomlo told the system that its information was not entirely accurate because he hoped that the opponent would be much stronger. Now he ordered her to exchange all the treasures she found for points, except for the blade. She decided not to answer him, but simply to follow the order. For all exchanged items, Yomlo received more than a million points. He already knew where he would spend them. Unexpectedly for him, the Supreme System informed him that this space had begun the process of destruction, and she explained that now he has exactly ten seconds to escape, and if he doesn't have time, then the probability of survival is zero. After her words, he noticed that the exit in the space began to close. He needed to escape immediately. The main character ordered the system to bring him home and not to forget the treasures that he will have to exchange. But she informed him that this order could not be carried out in this way. Yomlo asked in surprise what she meant. The Supreme System explained to him that he is still too weak and cannot carry two things at the same time. He needs to choose one thing. It was an extremely difficult choice for him. The Shart souls, who had been standing by the side all this time, were watching him. They didn't think it would end like this. The niece said that if it were possible, she would like to serve Yomlo in her next life. Meanwhile, the Supreme System spoke to the protagonist that he has a choice to either save the points he earned or save these souls that have nothing to do with him. He had to choose as soon as possible because there was very little time left. Yomlo replied that he did not want to choose, but the Supreme System explained to him that if he did not choose anything, then it would all just stay here, and he would be returned home with nothing. But the main character continued to insist, and said that he wanted to keep everything for himself, but the Supreme System was adamant, and angrily told him that he should choose only one thing. The space around him was collapsing at a tremendous speed. He had only five seconds to make the right decision. Uncle Chan said that they would all be drawn into the abyss now, so something had to be decided immediately. The Supreme System believed that a few small souls were not worth risking because of them, and advised Yomlo to choose points that she could then exchange at a favorable rate. But the main character did not consider it a profitable exchange. He answered her that he could not do so, and let the other kings laugh at him. But he wanted to save them. It was his final choice. From his point of view, this is keeping calm on the edge of risk. Suddenly, the Supreme System remembered that there was another option. She said that the previous king had prepared a spatial storage for Yomlo, and he could use it. So he immediately ordered her to move those souls and the treasures he had acquired there. 
the Supreme System immediately began to carry out his order. To do this, she needed to open a spatial storage. In a moment, a gigantic storage room appeared in front of the main character. After that, she said that this was the spatial warehouse that the previous king had left for him. The Supreme System explained to him that it contained some of the previous king's belongings, and now his belongings would also be here along with the souls. But the value of his things is nothing compared to what the previous owner left there. Yomlo realized that there might be precious artifacts there and asked to see what was inside. But the Supreme System was forced to refuse him, because at his level, it is still impossible to open the vault and said that for now, he can only put things there, but not use them. She explained to him that she would only be able to open the vault when his estate grew larger, and Yomlo's own level rose as well. The Supreme System said that he didn't want to talk about it before, but now he will have the motivation to earn even more points to open access to the rare artifacts that are in the vault. Yomlo realized this and compared this situation as a long-awaited coming-of-age gift. After that, he asked the system how many points he had left on the balance. She told him that he had 30,000 points left. This was more than enough for him, so a satisfied Yomlo requested that the Supreme System move him to the estate. In a few seconds, she successfully moved him and he was back in his world with the system. Yomlo stood thoughtfully, so the Supreme System decided to ask him what he was thinking about. Yomlo replied that he was thinking how he could improve his world even better. He asked her how much it cost to upgrade the Wheel of Ascension and the Yellow Fountain. The Supreme System told him that upgrading the Wheel of Ascension costs 10,000 points, and upgrading the efficiency of the Yellow Fountain costs 5,000 points. It was exactly half of all the points he had, but he wanted to move on, the more it would increase his points income. So he immediately ordered her to improve these buildings. The system deducted 15,000 points from Yomlo's account, and the level of locations was successfully improved. The main character was clearly convinced that now he could become even richer, and gradually he will be able to reach the moment when he will finally be able to use the storage. Suddenly he heard cries for mercy, and at first he could not understand who was shouting so much and asked the system what was going on here. The Supreme System said that it was because the main character had recently given Vincent to Vaktang as a trophy, and she explained that because of this, Vaktang has recently become extremely nervous. Meanwhile, Vincent hung upside down. He begged for mercy and admitted his mistake. He did not yet know that the mighty Lord Yomlo had already returned from his mission. Vaktang told him that this order of the Lord of Yomlo was a punishment for his guilt. The hung Vincent began to plead and said that he would like to become their faithful servant. But Vaktang did not believe him and angrily said that he would not allow him to deceive people anymore. Vaktang swung his mighty fist at him, and with a powerful series of blows he began to hammer Vincent's body. This was his punishment for deceiving Yomla on the snowy, lonely mountain. One of Yomlo's assistants informed Vaktanga that his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills had improved significantly. It seems that such training was beneficial to him. Vaktang's fists were already itching with impatience. He was waiting for the moment when they would have to deal with real enemies to be able to test their strength. But the assistant answered him that Lord Yomlo had his own plans and all they needed to do for now was to train for the upcoming matches. Yomlo intervened in their dialogue and thanked his assistant for the excellent military training of his warriors. The assistant humbly greeted Yomlo. He was really glad to see him and asked him when Yomlo would give him the bow, the bow, and the horse. The main character was surprised by such an unexpected question. It was difficult for him to answer because keeping a horse was too expensive a pleasure for him. In general, maintaining an army has been an extremely expensive pleasure since ancient times. But Lord Yomlo promised him to solve this issue and assured him that he would definitely solve this problem. Yomlo's assistants humbly bowed their heads and thanked him for his kindness. They are lucky to have such a sensitive leader. Yomlo was forced to leave them and finally said that he did not want to distract them from their training and reminded them that they always have many enemies, so they must always be ready. The main character asked them to always be ready to repel enemy attacks because only they can be trusted 100%. Lord Yomlo summoned System to him and asked her if there are any tasks to earn more points. She answered him that, unfortunately, at the moment she does not have any active tasks for him, but she said that he could upgrade his estate to level 2 and get the Mission Stone and the Wanderer Mission. 
He can also get points for this task. Estate improvements cost 15,000 points. Yomlo pondered the system's words, especially the mission he could earn points for. The Supreme System also added that if he successfully completes the Traveler mission, he will gain access to hidden tasks that bring more points, and there is also the possibility of obtaining a rare artifact. This information greatly pleased Yomlo, so he happily ordered his estate to be immediately upgraded to the second level. The Supreme System obediently obeyed and began to carry out his order. She wanted to please him, and with the help of her magic and 15,000 points, she instantly leveled up the estate. Now it was a much larger and more beautiful estate, like a real king. The main character admired this incredible palace and could not believe that it was really his property. The Supreme System ordered the master to follow her. She wanted to show him something. She showed Yomlo a stone with missions, which was located right next to the estate. But he was surprised when he saw that it was somehow broken. The Supreme System assured him that despite this, it could still be used. The main character asked her how to use it now because there were no inscriptions or instructions on it. The system didn't like that Yomlo looked so disappointed and decided to cheer him up a bit. She said that in order to gain access to the Traveler mission, he needs to put his inner energy into the stone. Yomlo decided not to waste time and immediately got down to business. For this, he raised his right hand and came and began the process of interaction with the main character. Yomlo instantly felt the stone begin to absorb his inner energy. The stone with the missions began to radiate a clear consciousness, and within a moment, the mission of the Traveler. Prince Cuckold appeared on it. Yomlo needed to find a disappointed man, and for this mission, he can get 50 points, as well as unlock access to the following tasks. The main character was disappointed by such a stupid task and such a small reward. He expected a more generous prize. But the Supreme System assured him that this was only the beginning, and promised that there would be more to come. In addition for such small tasks, he can send his servants to do it for him. Yomlo understood that such an opportunity should be used, so he decided to send his assistant, the Nesset, to this task. He decided that this would be a great chance to test his strength. The Nesset at that time was on the lonely mountain with the Tanshan angels and had fun with them. They were swimming in the pool and talking about Lord Yomlo, when suddenly the Nesset began to disappear somewhere. Meanwhile, in those parts, a disappointed man sat sadly in the Valley of Eternity by a tree. He could not understand why the woman he loved with all his heart had betrayed him. He wanted to understand why that man was better than him. How suddenly, a naked Knesset, who had just been sitting in the pool with the Tanshan angels, teleported from the side next to him. He could not understand why he ended up in the middle of the forest, even next to an unknown man. The sad man angrily asked where this wretched savage had come from, and said that the Valley of Eternity was no place for such perverts as the Gnesset. Although he was also surprised no less than the sad man who began to believe that this was his evil prank. He swung his right hand at him, and said that he had never been so humiliated. It was clear that he wanted to kill the Gnesset. He hit him right in the body, but luckily the Gnesset managed to put up a block that stopped the man's blow in time. The sad man was surprised that he turned out to be such a strong warrior. When the Gnesset realized the seriousness of the situation, he prepared for a fight and told the man that he would not play with him here. The sad man from the Valley of Eternity realized that the Gnesset is a subject of Lord Yomlo and helps him find the treasures. But since the sad man did not have any treasures, then he thought that Yomlo's target was himself. He quickly told the Gnesset that he was not his rival and that there was nothing in the world that would stand in his way. But it was already too late. The Knesset was clearly determined to fight and wanted to take revenge on him. The Knesset immediately decided to join the battle and launched an attack on the sad man. He wanted to show him what he was capable of. The sad man immediately realized what a powerful inner strength he had. He was clearly convinced that the Knesset would easily kill him now. Finally, he shouted that he was Zhong Wan, and even after death he would be willing to serve King Yomlo until the end of his days. Nesset's fist almost reached Zhong Wan's face when he suddenly heard an inner voice explaining to him that he had moved him to the Valley of Eternity in order to find Zhong Wan and not harm him. The Nesset realized that these were the voice and words of Lord Yomlo, and Zhun Wan was the man he was about to destroy. But it was already too late. The Nesset could not stop its mighty blow, after which... Zhang Wan's body was instantly thrown several meters away. 
The Nesset was startled by the force of the blow he dealt the sad man, and I thought I killed him. Due to the fact that the Nesset serves King Yomlo, his own level has risen to expert, and his powers are now greatly increased. Frightened, the Nesset ran to Zhong Wan to make sure he had not killed him, but the sad man did not regain consciousness. The Nesset began to shake him and begged him not to die. He felt extremely sorry for the sad man. The Nesset realized that he needed to find some medicine to stop the bleeding. There should have been herbs nearby that could help Zhong Wan. Nesset ran to look for herbs in the forest and subconsciously asked the man not to go anywhere, although he was still lying unconscious. Jun Wan was extremely surprised by this fact, because only a few minutes ago, the Knesset had tried to kill him with his own hands. At the same time, the Supreme System and Yomlo stood in front of the stone. Suddenly, a message appeared on it that the target was successfully found, but the next task cannot be unlocked because the target is now in a coma. Yomlo realized with annoyance that the Gnesset had done something again, and I thought that he should not have been entrusted with this task. Meanwhile, the Knesset leaned over Zhong Wan to listen to his heartbeat, but it was extremely weak and the pulse was almost not palpable. To everyone's surprise, a whole tree fell directly on the head of the Knesset. He clearly did not expect such a reason. The tree simply crushed the Nesset's body. He did not understand how it could happen that some unknown force acted on a tree that had been growing here for many years. But it was Lord Yomlo, and he was displeased that the Nesset could not cope with such a simple task and angrily spoke to him to choose his own punishment. The Nesset tossed the tree aside and quickly began to make excuses. He said that Lord Yomlo did not understand everything as much as he thought, and he promised that he would fix everything now. After that, the protagonist asked him what exactly he meant. The Nesset began to explain that Junwan was still alive, but he was in a deep coma. But if he gives him the necessary medicine, he can save him and atone for his guilt. Yomlo answered him that he did not have that much time and asked him to just show him where Junwan's body lay and ordered him not to do anything else today. Nesset meekly took Yomlo to Junwan, and already with the help of his magical skills, the main character began the process of his healing. Junvan instantly opened his eyes and saw the Gnesset in front of him, together with the Yomlo Lord himself. He could not believe his eyes that the Lord was in front of him. It was too great an honor for him. The Supreme System informed the protagonist that since the target had survived, then the next mission, Revenge, is unlocked. It is necessary to help a person become a strong warrior and help defeat the enemy. Mission reward, 1,000 points. Yomlo turned to Junvan and told him that he had come to save him because a woman betrayed him and gave him someone else's child so that he would raise her instead of his real father. These words hurt him exceedingly, and he answered him that he would rather let him die than remind him of his wretchedness. But Lord Yomlo was unmoved. He promised Zhongwan to help him become much stronger and guide him to the true path and he said that he could help him become ten times stronger in order to quietly take revenge on his wife. But Zhong Wan refused his prescription. He did not want revenge for his wife because he is clearly sure that she still truly loves him deep down. But Lord Yomlo answered him that this is not just advice, it is his order, which is not open to discussion. The main character realized that he needed to show the true nature of his wife, and he already knew how to do it. Yomlo instantly had a plan to get his wife out on the water, and in order not to waste time, they immediately went to her home. When they were near her estate, Yomlo began to call her and told her that a big trouble had happened. She came out of the house and asked him what could have happened to make him shout so frantically all over the street. Yomlo began to explain that her husband had been poisoned and was now on the verge of life and death. The woman pretended that this information became a real horror for her, and she even managed to show her concern and fear regarding this situation. Her acting was at an extremely high level. Yomlo continued to tell and said that the body of her husband, Zhong Wan, was found unconscious just on the road. The woman continued to show her fake emotions of suffering and compassion. Yomlo noted that she was a really well-groomed and extremely beautiful woman. It now became clear to him how she managed to manipulate Zhong Wan as she pleased for so many years. The woman approached the unconscious body of her husband and began to feel sorry for him because she was worried about who would continue to provide for her throughout her life. Yomlo knew that all these emotions are an ordinary acting game, but he had a plan how to bring her to clean water. 
and show its essence to Junvan. He told her that her husband had been given the necessary medication, but now there was a good chance that he would remain disabled for the rest of his life and that he would need constant care. These words struck her extremely hard. She perfectly understood that she did not need him in such a vegetative state, so she came up with a clever plan to get rid of it. She thanked Yomlo for saving her husband and said that she was too weak for such a difficult challenge. And she added that she wants to leave Yomlo to fulfill all his whims. It was a clear flirtation that she didn't even hide. The woman said that she does not want to spend her whole beautiful life caring for a disabled person and suffer until she dies of torment. Zhang Wan heard all her dirty words and understood the true essence of his wife, whom he loved more than anything in the world. But this was the last straw even for him, so he immediately ordered her to get out of here. The woman realized that she was just being tested for loyalty and she completely failed this easy test. Yomlo stood satisfied and glad that he managed to bring Jun Wan back to reality and show him the truth about his wife. She angrily began to shout at the man that he should be grateful to her, if only because she agreed to marry him. But she understood that there was no way back and she would have to leave this place forever. The Nesset expressed its sympathy to Jun Wan. After all, living for so long with such a bitch woman is a real hell. Yomlo told Jun Wan that from today his new life begins and promised him to make him a real man, after whom all the most beautiful girls in this valley would run. It is worth noting that Yomlo already had a plan and knew what he needed to do, so he took his magic bullet to begin with and launched it directly into Zhang Wan's body. It was a capsule of Lord Yomlo's power. Therefore, in a moment, Zhang Wan's body became incredibly strong and in relief. It's like he's been working out in the gym all his life. The sad man realized that he felt an incredible influx of strength and energy that filled his inner body. Yomlo said that he gave him a 30-year reserve of strength and additionally handed him two more powerful techniques that he kept just for this occasion. Zhang Wan knew that these were high-class spiritual and physical martial arts techniques that had been kept by the Tonashan angels for many years. These were extremely rare artifacts. The Nesset told Jun Wan that from now on the Tanshan angels would faithfully obey Lord Yomlo, who had defeated them with his intelligence and cunning. The man could not believe his eyes, and until the end could not realize that this was really happening to him. He decided to sincerely thank the Lord of Yomlo, and swore that from this day on he would forever serve him faithfully. The protagonist replied to him that he was giving exactly two weeks to master these two techniques and now announced the beginning of forming new tyrannical plans to conquer this tiny valley. He had little time, so he said goodbye to them and went on to his important business. Zhang Wan did not understand what tyrannical plans Yomlo had in mind, and he said that he would never have believed that there were such powerful beings if he had not seen them with his own eyes. The Knesset replied that he too admired Yomlo's power and said that he was extremely fortunate to serve Yomlo's lord as well. Enraged, the ex-wife of Zhang Wan went to Dal and on the way constantly complained about her difficult fate that had befallen her. Suddenly a strange carriage stopped in front of her in which an unknown young man was sitting. He asked her to stop and offered to listen to his generous offer. He said that since he knew that she was going to Dal and the way there was not very close, she just needed a carriage that would easily take her to her destination. Surprised, the woman asked how he knew she was going to Dal and asked him why his carriage did not have horses like ordinary people. He answered her that now it is absolutely not important. The man promised her to take her wherever she needed for one bar of gold. The woman was offended and said that a gold bar was too much to pay for a taxi service and asked him to leave her alone. But the unknown man did not want to give up so easily. He said that his carriage was extremely fast and promised that he could get it to Dal in 15 minutes. The woman refused to believe it. She knew that the distance to where she needed to go was at least 100 miles, and even the fastest horse in the world cannot cover this distance in 15 minutes. Therefore, the man decided to offer her a deal. If he does not manage to deliver her in 15 minutes, then he will give her exactly 10 gold bars. The woman decided to accept his offer because she was sure that she would win in this easy dispute in which he had no chance. The woman got into the carriage, and the man immediately gave the order to go to Jean's estate. The woman did not recognize that this unknown man was the disguised Lord Yomlo, who decided to teach her. The assistants, who were in an invisible harness, immediately began to carry out his order and headed to the specified destination. 
Only in the carriage, the woman realized that they were trying to kidnap her when she heard where Lord Yomlo ordered to go, but it was too late to run away. Jean's estate was guarded by two guards. For them, it was an ordinary weekday, so she did not suspect any trouble yet. How suddenly! They saw in the distance how an unknown carriage without horses in a harness was coming straight at them at breakneck speed. One of them gave orders that whoever it was should not disturb King Jean and ordered the carriage to stop immediately. But it was already too late. The carriage flew straight at them at full speed. It became clear that they had no chance to survive. Meanwhile, on the territory of the estate, the monk approached Jean. He noticed that the prince was extremely upset and asked him what was bothering him so much. Jean was glad that the monk asked him about his affairs and replied that he had a bad feeling that something terrible was going to happen today. So he asked the monk if he could help him in any way. The monk began to reassure Jean and assured him that the estate was guarded by an unusually large number of soldiers, which the monk personally commanded. He reassured him and said that not a single soul would be able to get inside. He didn't have time to finish his sentence when he was suddenly interrupted by a loud crash behind him. The empty carriage flew straight into the territory of Jean's estate, and she shocked them, no less than the guards who did not survive after the combat encounter. It seemed strange to Jean that the carriage had no horses. He couldn't understand how she managed to get here, past the echelons of security guarding his estate. The monk realized that he did not have time to completely deploy all the soldiers throughout the area, so the carriage managed to find a weak point to enter the middle. But that was not the only thing that bothered him. He felt that an extremely large amount of energy was concentrated around the carriage. He said that it must be a powerful carriage spirit. But then, the monk decided to calm down the frightened Jean and said that he had nothing to worry about because the ordinary carriage did not pose any threat to them. He was clearly confident that he could handle the uninvited guests who disturbed her on this beautiful day on his own. And he said that he had special seals to expel demons, which would be enough to destroy these brats who dared to invade their territory. Yomlo got out of the carriage and asked them which of them was Jean. The enraged monk started yelling at the main character and asked him how dare he even ask about the Taki after so brazenly barging into their estate. The monk decided to start chanting his magic spell out loud, with which he wanted to harm Yomlo or even kill him if he was lucky. But the main character decided to immediately strike him with a powerful blow, with which he successfully knocked out his teeth from his strong jaw. The blow was so strong that it threw the monk right into the wall that was not far from them. He didn't even have time to react to deflect such a powerful blow. Jean was immediately frightened by the ease with which Yomlo managed to send the monk to a quick knockout with one punch. After that, the main character said that this insolent monk behaved too noisy and he could not resist not to teach him. Yomlo said to Jean that he had come just for him and looked angrily straight into his eyes. Jean began to ask the main character who he was and why he broke into his estate so unexpectedly. He could not understand what was happening. Yomlo answered him that now it does not matter who he is, but he did not have time to finish his speech as suddenly Jean interrupted his speech and began to shout to him displeased that no one dares to communicate with him in such a tone in his own estate. Jean had an insane desire to kill the main character right now. He decided to launch his magic seal at him with a surprise. It was a white ball covered in a white spell that was supposed to explode right next to Yomlo and stun him. The ball with the magic seal began to approach Lord Yomlo, but he still did not react to this pathetic prank. In an instant, the orb broke open and a red liquid that was very similar to demonic blood began to spray in different directions. The red liquid affected Jean himself. He stood silently stunned, because he himself did not know what kind of liquid was inside the white ball, because it was the first time in his life that he had used it in this way. The monk apologized to Jean for not warning him earlier, but he immediately calmed him down and explained that it is normal chicken blood that is not dangerous. But Jean was more worried about the sudden disappearance of Yomlo. He could not understand where he had disappeared from sight so quickly. At that time, the monk decided to investigate the abandoned carriage of the main character. She did not give him peace. Therefore, he decided to cover the entire carriage with his magical seals. The monk planned to burn her and then fry a juicy steak on her. While the monk and Jean busied themselves with the carriage and looked for matches, 
Lord Yomlo watched silently from the sky as they pitifully attempted to deal with him. The protagonist's assistant asked him for permission to teach them, but Yomlo already had his own plan for them. After several unsuccessful attempts, they still managed to set the main character's carriage on fire, and she began to burn brightly. But it was an unusual fire. It is a magical fire that will burn until it burns the whole carriage to the end and leaves only ashes. Yomlo watched this calmly and ordered the Supreme System to place John inside the carriage to Zhang Wan's ex-wife. After all, it was with him that she constantly cheated on her legal husband. The Supreme System immediately followed the order and managed to successfully move Jean into the carriage. As soon as he realized where he was, he immediately began to call for help and beg for the salvation of his innocent soul. The monk did not notice the disappearance of Jean and told him not to believe these sounds. He thought that these evil demons were reproducing the voice of his master and thus wanted to confuse them. After that, he looked at the place where Jean was standing a moment ago and could not believe his eyes. After all, he was no longer there. Meanwhile, in the carriage, Jean saw his mistress and could not understand what she was doing here, but he was even more interested in how he too ended up here. Finally, the monk realized that the voice coming from the carriage was his master Jean begging for help. He shouted to him from the carriage that he could not open the door from the inside and asked the monk to immediately extinguish the fire, which was engulfing the carriage extremely quickly. But it became a real challenge for monk. He knew that the carriage was set on fire by a special fire that could not be extinguished without special knowledge. The monk shouted to Jean that now he will try to call someone for help and will certainly save his majesty. Yumlo watched them with satisfaction. He wondered how they would get out of this critical situation. While the monk was looking for someone to help, Jean asked his mistress how she ended up here. She replied that she did not remember this, because when she got into the carriage, she lost consciousness and woke up from the fact that the carriage quickly began to heat up from the fire. Jean aggressively answered her that it was because of her that they ended up here, and he ordered her to get out of here immediately, or he himself would kill her right now. But it was to no avail. The door to the carriage was firmly closed and it was impossible to get out of it so easily. The woman began to suffocate from the smoke that was already entering the middle. She could not believe that they would die in this way. The mistress wanted to live very much. Suddenly, a magical purple glow appeared in the carriage. They watched him in amazement and hoped that this was a miracle that had come to save them. But it was another Yomlo trick. He decided to give them a sword and said that the first one to kill another would get out of the carriage alive. The main character knew that only before the fear of death, people show their true essence. They sat facing each other, and between them lay a sword in the middle, which would allow only one to get out. Jean and his mistress looked at each other. They have only now realized how meaningless material wealth is at such times. But it seems that Jean has already made his choice. He looked her straight in the eyes and asked her forgiveness for all their trouble. After that, he took the sword in his hands, and while his mistress watched in horror what he would try to do next, Jan pressed the sword to his body and said that he would never be able to harm her. And if anyone really needs to die, it will be him. The frightened woman began to beg him not to kill herself. She didn't want him to die right in front of her. Jomlo was surprised by the fact that Jean was ready to sacrifice his life for her sake. By this, he changed the conditions of the suicide task. The woman angrily said that it was all her fault and began to beg him to kill her. She wasn't ready to let him die in this situation. Jean hugged her tightly and replied that he could not kill her. The only thing he can offer her is to die together on the same day as they once dreamed. But suddenly the carriage disappeared along with the fire and they found themselves right on the street, hugging each other. Yomlo said that Jean turned out to be too selfless and ready to sacrifice his life for the sake of a loved one. This greatly inspired Yomlo, who clearly did not expect such a final. Jean asked the main character who he was and what he was going to do now. He did not yet know that in front of him stood Lord Yomlo himself, who had come to their world. He answered him that he was now an ordinary man working for Lord Yomlo. The main character did not want to tell him about himself, so he decided to lie in this way, and said that he has a surprise for them. It was a letter inviting him to duel with Zhang Wang. It stated that the match was scheduled for next week. 
The woman was extremely surprised and could not understand when her ex-husband managed to meet Yomlo. Jean was surprised that such a worthless person dared to challenge them to a duel. He was clearly convinced that Zhang Wan had no chance in a duel against them. But Yomlo said that if Zhang is so clearly confident in his abilities, then he will have a chance to prove himself in a fair match, which will definitely take place. Zhang still did not consider Zhang Wan to be a worthy opponent for him, because he knew that he was the most miserable person in their valley. He decided to try again to drive away Yomlo, and now he threatened him with his soldiers who, in his opinion, had every chance of destroying him. But the main character warned Jean that some people whom he considers worthless can surpass all his expectations, and asked if he is really not afraid to accept a challenge to a duel. Jean replied that never in his life such a miserable warrior as Zhang Wang could defeat him in a fair fight, but he was more surprised that he challenged him to a duel. Yomlo replied that Zhang Wan had challenged not only him, but also all other strong men of the city who wanted to test their strength. And suddenly, many magic balls appeared in the sky and flew to different points of their city. Jean looked up in surprise and could not understand what was happening. After all, he had never seen such a thing before. The magic orbs in the sky turned into letters inviting all the city's strongmen to a fair match with Zhang Wan next week. The letter said that in exactly seven days, Zhang Wan is waiting for everyone who is clearly confident in their abilities. He promised the one who can defeat him a lot of gold. The former woman could not believe that Zhang Wan would do such a thing. She believed that he decided to die in this way because he was never famous for his physical skills. At that time, Zhang Wan continued to sit silently in the lonely forest and train his consciousness. He started recalling all his past failures that he had in this life. One of the memories was the situation with his wife, who did not want to satisfy him in bed and simply coldly drove him away from her. This situation created a lot of self-doubt in him. Even now, it greatly depressed his dignity and libido, although about 15 years had passed since that moment. Junwan told the Knesset that it was all futile and that he would never be able to overcome the fear of his worthlessness. Unexpectedly, Lord Yomlo appeared at his training and said that it was Zhang Wan's inner demon that was not allowing him to overcome his fear. Yomlo believed that the mockery and contempt he had endured for many years had destroyed Zhang Wan's confidence, and now he himself began to believe in something that was worthless. The main character said that the training will not bring real results as long as Zhang Wan thinks about his worthlessness. Yomlo decided to help him regain his dignity. He asked him how long it had been since he had left the lonely forest and had not been seen in public. But it was already clear to him that this was too huge a period of time. So he ordered the Nesset to burn the place down forever so that no one could shut himself up here. This order surprised both the Nesset and Junwan. They did not understand what the king was up to. But Yomlo already had his own plan. And he told Zhongwan that from today, a new life will begin for him in which there will be no place for his worthlessness and wretchedness. After these words, they went to an extremely strange place. The main character wanted to make Zhang Wan a real man, and for this he needed extraordinary methods. Yomlo began to explain to him that his insecurities appeared because of his ex-wife, and now only another woman can cure his mental weakness and self-doubt. Zhang Wan still did not fully understand what Lord Yomlo meant, but it seems that he had no other choice. The main character told him that a new life would begin in this place, and he hoped that Zhang Wan would emerge from this as an extremely strong and self-confident man. Yomlo said that today is his battlefield, which he will have to go through to become what he should have been a long time ago. Zhang Wan was extremely inspired by Yomlo's confidence, so he believed everything he told him. At the entrance, they were happily greeted by a friendly middle-aged woman. She has worked at this place at the reception for many years in a row. She remarked that it was the first time she had seen them and assumed they were not local. Junvan and Yomlo came to the largest bordettes in this valley. The woman guaranteed them the highest level of satisfaction, but doubted their ability to pay. Unexpectedly for her, the main character pulled out two huge wads of money that should have been enough to completely buy the place along with their staff. The woman looked at them with admiration and immediately ordered her girls to go down to the guests so that they could choose who they wanted to try today. And in a few minutes, four young girls appeared in front of them who were ready to fulfill any of their wishes. 
Zhang Wan saw them and admired their beauty. He considered them goddesses of beauty who had come down to earth today to satisfy his desires. But Yomlo realized that Zhang Wan had seen very little in his life, if even these not-so-pretty girls seemed like goddesses to him. One of them approached Jun Wan and began to admire his wealth and nobility. She said that she really liked his strong shoulders, and especially the security she felt around him. These words unexpectedly moved Zhang Wan extremely. No one had ever said such a thing to him before, and he began to sob wildly from the emotions that had flooded him over all the previous years. Yomlo was surprised that it was possible to move him with just a few words. But he was clearly convinced that the lies the girls were telling him were the best medicine for Zhang Wan right now. Suddenly, insolent strangers entered the brothel, and in disgust, they ordered everyone to leave because this place is closed today for special maintenance. Yomlo calmly watched and waited to see what further actions these uninvited guests who dared to break into his territory would take. They were well-known warriors in this valley who ordered all outsiders to leave the brothel immediately and threatened to use their force if they were disobeyed. The woman at the reception knew whose people these were and advised the protagonist to leave the brothel as soon as possible to avoid problems. These were the strongest tyrants of the city. They ran the largest bodyguard division in this valley and no man could resist them. The woman at the reception greeted them and told them that they had not visited this beautiful establishment for a very long time. Chief among them was Mr. Bao. He answered the woman that they had a lot of trouble today, and that's why he decided to reward his people. He looked at the men and ordered Yomlo and Zhang Wan to be expelled immediately. She quickly turned to them and said that Mr. Bao had booked all the seats today, so all she could advise them to do was get out of here. Yomlo clearly wasn't going to run away so easily and replied that he also booked everything today and advised Bao to get away until he readied him. One of Bao's warriors approached Yomlo and began threatening him with death if he did not leave this brothel immediately. Yomlo, with the help of a non-contact technique, broke his finger and turned his hand to the other side. And he answered him that he would definitely take advantage of his offer in the future, but today he has completely different plans. Yomlo was surprised that some people enjoyed looking for trouble so much. The actions of the main character made the Bao warriors extremely angry, and they decided to teach him. They were sure that they would easily defeat Yomlo because they outnumbered him. The warriors immediately engaged in battle with the main character and began to attack him from different sides. But Yomlo easily, without any effort, repelled all their attacks, after which he successfully hit them in the face. Yomlo's kick easily pushed the attackers in different directions. They screamed from the pain that the main character caused them. The warriors present in the room were surprised by Yomlo's powerful skills and were sure that this young man was not an ordinary guy, as he could appear at first glance. The woman at the reception was stunned by the actions of the main character. She thought he must have some kind of powerful patron if he was so confident with the strongest warriors in their valley. She decided to take the situation under her control and offered them a solution to the problem. The woman said, Let the best girl, who only she has, choose the one she likes the most. Bao also couldn't understand who was covering for this brave young man, but the unusual technique surprised him, so he decided to be careful for now and agreed to the terms they were offered. The protagonist also positively accepted the decision of the woman at the reception but he decided that this was the perfect time for Zhang Wan to show himself. The woman immediately invited Yana, who was the most beautiful girl who worked for them, and she said that she herself would choose the winner with whom she would spend this unforgettable night. In a moment, Yana went downstairs to join them. She was an extremely fragile girl with a picturesque beauty in this valley. Bao recognized her immediately. He too found her incredibly beautiful and admired her fragility every time he saw her. On the contrary, he was very impressed. He had seen enough different beauties in his life, and Yana was not the best of them. As it turned out, she was the daughter of a woman who worked at the reception. She asked what happened here and for whom she was called. Mother explained to her what was the matter and said that she needed to choose one of the men who are present here, whom she likes more, in order to resolve the dispute and preserve their health. The main character liked his mother's trick. After all, if something does happen, the blame will fall entirely on her daughter's choice. Yana also understood that her mother had shifted all responsibility to her.
She immediately looked at Yomlo and could not understand why she had never seen him in these parts before. Unexpectedly for everyone, the protagonist raised his hand and said that he wanted to change his candidacy. This was his plan to make Zhang Wang a real man. This decision shocked Bao and Yana's mother. Surprised, she asked him who he wanted to change his candidacy to. Yomlo began to persuade Zhang Wan to do so and assured him that it was time to show himself. He was very upset by this decision, and he even wanted to go to the toilet from the stress. Bao watched them and couldn't believe that Yomlo wanted to replace himself with this worthless man. He didn't even take him seriously. After that, he started laughing loudly and asked Yomlo if he really wanted to replace himself with this bastard. He was absolutely sure that no one stood a chance against him. Zhang Wan tried to find out from Yomlo what exactly he would need to do, but it was all in vain. Without any explanation, Yomlo only wished him luck and said that he would not lose his only chance to show himself. This made Bao extremely angry. He could not understand how he could be put in a row with such a nobody. But the protagonist watched silently. Now he really wondered who Yana would choose today. She froze in panic and could not believe that right now she would have to choose between two freaks. The further fate of their institution will depend on her decision. Bao continued to struggle with this situation and yelled at Yomlo to come to his senses immediately. But the main character just looked at him with a cold look and answered him that it is better to shut up and wait for the young girl's verdict because now everything depends on her. This stunned Bao. He felt this cold gaze which gave him a strange feeling. This look reminded him, the look of a dead man. This time he was really creeped out by him. The main character told Zhang Wan that this is his real chance to conquer this girl, so he has no right to make a mistake. But the unfortunate Zhang Wan could not understand how exactly he could subjugate Yang to him now. After all, he had never done this before. Yomlo ordered him to use this chance to find out how he would really look in the eyes of this girl. Before that, the mother warned her daughter to be more careful. The woman believed that Yomlo actually came with bad intentions and had now specially changed places with this worthless person. But Yana did not feel any danger and assured her mother that everything would be fine with her today. She turned to Bao and Rongwan and asked why she should choose one of the two. She meant for each of them to show their strengths. Bao decided to immediately take out a huge amount of money from his pocket and thereby tried to impress her. He began to brag about them to Yana and said that he can satisfy any desire if she chooses him today. But it did not surprise her at all. She turned her gaze to Zhang Wan and asked him what he could do to impress her. Unfortunately, he had nothing to impress her with. He didn't have much money or good looks. He answered her that he was an ordinary man, Zhang Wang. This name was extremely familiar to Bao. He had heard it somewhere before, but he couldn't remember exactly where. Suddenly, one of the people present reminded that this is the same cuckold Jun Wan whose wife was constantly cheating on him, and began to laugh at his insignificance. Bao immediately understood who it was, and he couldn't believe that this nobody was going to spoil his plans for tonight. He was clearly convinced that Zhang Wan had no chance. Yana was disappointed by such men and did not want to choose anyone. She advised them to go home because she would be extremely sad with them. Her refusal scared Mom extremely and made Bao very angry. He could not believe that he had been rejected by a cheap hooker. But he wasn't going to give up just like that and firmly grabbed her hand. Bao threatened her that she is obliged to serve him, as he is her client today, and who pays a lot of money for this pleasure. This made Zhang Wan extremely angry, and he told him to let her go immediately, because she had no desire to be with him. But Bao was not going to take these words seriously. He was clearly confident that he would not be punished for such behavior because he was under the protection of Emperor Jean, who was the most powerful person in this valley. Rong Wan continued to glare at Bao's impudence. He was annoyed by the injustice towards the innocent girl. Suddenly, Bao laughed right in Rong Wan's face and said that there was nothing he could do to him because if he had any courage, he could try to hit him right now. But before Bao could finish his words, Rong Wan's fist silenced him and knocked the teeth out of his vile jaw, which was already crooked from the unexpected blow. The attack was so powerful that he managed to throw Bao to the other side of the room. Such boldness stunned the Bao warriors. They could not believe their eyes that this had actually happened. Yomlo knew that this moment would come sooner or later. After all, when a weak person gains strength, 
He releases an incredible amount of energy. This is an eternal truth. Bao recovered from the unexpected blow and became extremely angry. He couldn't believe that anyone had the courage and strength to hit him. He began to threaten him with reprisals. Bao was heading straight for Rongwan to strike back at him. But the former used a special technique taught to him by Yomlo to no avail. Zhong Wan literally slammed his huge palm to the ground. Defeated, Bao was unable to wince after such a devastating blow and continued to lie unconscious on the ground. Zhong Wan was frightened by his own new possibilities. He did not know that now he has become so strong and powerful. Looks like he's going to have to learn to control himself. Everyone present was shocked by what had just happened. He made a special impression on Yana. Now she said that Zhong Wang was quite an interesting man. Zhong Wan apologized to the main character for not resisting and causing him trouble. But Yomlo answered him that now he must manage this situation himself. The man looked at him in surprise. He could not understand exactly what Yomlo meant, but it looked like Bao didn't survive such a devastating blow from Rong Wang. News of Bao's probable death quickly reached Jean's estate. One of the people present who was in the brothel ran and immediately reported this to Jean's soldiers. The head guard, surprised, asked him if he was absolutely sure of this information. It was clear that it was very difficult for them to believe this. But the eyewitness answered the soldier that it was an extremely powerful blow. It seemed as if a crowd of wild animals ran over it. Bao didn't even have time to react to parry the attack. And he said that it was done by a man with an elongated face, who literally knocked Bao out with one blow. It became a real shock for everyone who was present at that moment. The soldier was interested in the fact that it was a man with an elongated face. Therefore, he decided to ask who exactly dared to do this. The eyewitness answered him that there were two of them. He was referring to Lord Yamlo, but since he didn't know about him, he didn't know how to properly introduce him. But he promptly remembered that he had their portraits, because their appearance was extremely memorable to him. He showed him a freshly painted canvas with portraits of the attackers. Soldier Jean immediately recognized their appearance. This portrait was extremely accurate and detailed, so he had no problem remembering that he had already seen them this morning at the estate. The messenger explained that the one with the elongated face was Zhang Wan, who had now become extremely strong and cruel, and the one standing on the side had extremely strange techniques, but he did not introduce himself to anyone. The soldier remembered that Zhong Wan was the madman who challenged the whole city to a duel and decided that it was necessary to immediately report this to the Lord John. Meanwhile, at the bordel, Yomlo and Junwan started walking towards the exit. The main character was impressed with his new skills and praised him for such a beautiful shot. An angry woman at the front desk began to scream frantically at them. She couldn't believe they were just going to leave like that after everything that had happened here and she began to complain to them that the two of them destroyed all their property that was here, and swore to kill them for it. There was despair in her voice because she was on the verge of bankruptcy. Yomlo felt sorry for this unfortunate woman, so he decided to appease her and gave her a bill of 20,000 notes, which was quite enough to cover all the inconvenience they caused her during their presence. Such a generous compensation moved the woman extremely. She apologized for her rudeness and asked how she could make amends to them. Yomlo ordered her to bring them delicious food and good drink. He wants to celebrate today's victory. The woman decided to ask what exactly he wanted to celebrate. The main character answered her that today is a real holiday and said that finally the strongest man has appeared in this valley. These words surprised Zhong Wan, and he decided to ask Yomlo what exactly he meant. After that, Yomlo gave him a card that was supposed to explain everything to Zhong Wan. But the surprise did not disappear from his face. It was a card on which it was written that Zhong Wan had challenged all the strongmen of the city to a fair fight in the center of the city. But the man still did not believe in himself enough to make such powerful challenges. He was lucky that Yomlo wasn't one of those people who just seemed like that. He walked over to Rong Wan to encourage him. And he said that today he managed to show himself as a real man who is not afraid of anything. And so now it's time to prove your true courage to everyone. Zhong Wan was extremely moved by his words. He decided to bow before the new ruler and said that he was the only one who took him seriously and promised him to always remember Yomlo's kindness. 
The main character emphasized to him that now the most important thing is to continue to train diligently in order to learn all the necessary skills of a true warrior. Yana suddenly intervened in their dialogue, wanting to say something to Junvan after he saved her from the ruffian bow. He looked at her in surprise and wondered what she wanted to tell him. Yana was extremely grateful to Zhong Wan and apologized for thinking badly of him from the beginning. She said that she would serve him well today and fulfill all his wishes. After all, compared to that bunch of nothing, Jun Wan behaved like a real man who was not afraid of anything. Her words struck him extremely hard. No one had ever said such words to Zhong Wan before. He couldn't believe that this was actually happening to him and not his dream. At that time, in John's estate, Zhong Wan's ex-wife sat confused and did not know what to do next. Jean went into her room and asked why she was sitting here so sad and what was bothering her so much. She answered him that she and Zhang Wan had become strangers a long time ago, but what was happening now really alarmed her very much. She noticed that he had changed a lot since the moment when the unknown Yomlo appeared, because before he had never even quarreled with her. She said that she was worried that Yomlo wanted to do something bad to Zhang Wan. She was especially worried about this public challenge to a fair match between all the strong. Jean began to assure her that he was not afraid of a duel with him. He clearly believes that Zhong Wan has no chance against him. But Yomlo warned him. He didn't know what else he could do. Every day his appetites only grow. Jean was serious. He decided that they couldn't be allowed to do whatever they wanted because they could create too many unnecessary problems for them. Frustrated, the woman asked him why he couldn't just destroy him and finally put an end to it. Zhang completely agreed with her, but he said that it was necessary to wait for the right moment and not to act hastily. The woman asked him what moment he meant. She could see that Jean was up to something, but she couldn't understand what exactly. He went to the window and said that his inner premonition told him that soon this moment would come and they would arrange a real bloody revenge on them. Suddenly, one of the soldiers entered their room and said that he had important news for Jean. He told them that Rong Wang had beaten Bao very badly, and now no one knows if he is still alive. This information stunned Jean. He couldn't believe that Rong Wan was able to beat a man as strong as Bao to death. No one else in this valley had managed to do this before. The soldier reported on the full combat readiness of the army, and now they were only waiting for Jean's order. This information about Zhong Wan really shocked his ex-wife. She hoped it was some kind of mistake. She was certain that Rong Wan would never have the strength to defeat Bao. After this news, Jean ordered his soldier to gather an army and go to that brothel to capture Jun Wan only alive. He had his own plans for him. Jean hugged his mistress tightly and happily said that this was extremely good news for everyone except Bao. If it turned out that Zhong Wan had indeed beaten his strongest warrior together with Yomlo, then this could serve as a just cause to destroy them forever. The mistress pretended to be really happy and offered Jean to drink alcohol, which she had prepared herself while he was gone. But before serving, she imperceptibly poured an unknown poisonous substance into the glass. After he drank it, Jean immediately lost consciousness and fell to the ground unconscious. It was her secret plan. She knew that Zhong Wan no longer had feelings for her, but she realized that she could not live without him and immediately wanted him back. The woman immediately ran out of the estate to get to Zhong Wan before Jean's soldiers did. In the meantime, Yomlo and Jun Wan had a quiet dinner in the brothel. Yana romantically began to feed her hero, who saved her from the danger that threatened her, and sweetly asked him if he likes the way she behaves with him. Of course he liked it. Yana said that she liked his courage very much. Rongwan still couldn't believe that all this was actually happening to him. The main character has already begun to even consider himself a love cupid, and it really pissed him off. Suddenly, a woman from the reception ran to them and said that one woman wanted to see Zhang Wan, but for some reason she was extremely angry and wanted to destroy the place. It was Zhang Wan's ex-wife who barged in on them uninvited. She was really extremely angry and started screaming at her ex-husband frantically. She angrily asked him how he dared to contact these unclean women after everything that had happened between them. Yana realized that it was Zhong Wan's ex-wife and interrupted her. She told her that they were doing real art, not just selling their own bodies, so I don't know where she saw the dirt here. They met each other with evil looks. The former woman was ready to literally tear her into small pieces. 
But Zhang Wan intervened in time, and he told her that if she came just to clarify the relationship, then she should immediately leave them alone and stop bothering about such small things. The woman told him that she had heard about their fight with Bao and now wanted to save him. She believed to the last that Zhong Wan was not involved in this, but that it was the handiwork of a stranger, Yomlo. And she warned her ex-husband that Zhan was going to kill them both. The protagonist answered her that they would be attentive and careful. He was looking forward to their meeting. The former woman replied that there was no point in confronting Zhan because it was the same as going to certain death, and she said that they could still escape. These words made Zhang Wan extremely angry, and he slapped her extremely hard on the face. He never even thought that he would ever be able to hit his beloved. She put her palm to the place of impact and could not understand why he hit her, because she just wanted to save his life. Deep down, she knew that she still loved him. But Zhang Wan was not touchy. He angrily ordered her to leave them immediately and never to appear in his sight again. A woman seeing his gaze for the first time can be so filled with murderous desire and anger. She realized that this was no longer the Zhang Wan she knew before, and angrily answered him that in this case very soon he will beg for mercy from Jean, because his best soldiers will soon arrive. Her words extremely scared the girls from the brothel. They were afraid of Jean's army, and did not know what they should do now to save themselves from this disaster. But this did not frighten Zhang Wan, because now he was clearly confident in his abilities and said that he could handle them himself and wanted to go to meet them. But Yomlo told him to take his time. After all, he had his own plan for them. From the point of view of the main character, it was clear that he was up to something evil. He said that there was no need to go to them, but let them come here themselves and that he would now summon the help they needed to deal with these enemies. Zhang Wan did not understand exactly what Yomlo meant and watched with interest what he was going to do now. But the woman at the front desk decided they didn't stand a chance against Jean's best warriors and started running to save herself. She had already opened the door from the brothel when suddenly right in front of her at the entrance, Jean's senior soldier, who called himself Theo, was already standing. He was with his army, and angrily warned her that today no one would get out of this brothel alive without his knowledge. It was obvious that he had come here on Bao's orders. The woman quickly began to excuse herself in front of him and said that she was just coming to get him to inform that those whom his emperor was looking for were already in one of the rooms. In the hall of the brothel, Theo saw Bao's unconscious body lying straight on the ground after the duel with Rong Wan. Theo was very shocked by what he saw, and he said that now Zhang Wan has become much stronger than he thought. But Bao was not dead yet, and began to make sounds that resembled words. It became almost clear that he was asking to be saved. Suddenly, Lord Yomlo appeared in the hall, and asked what they were doing here. He decided to praise the player for the result of Rong Wan's match, and pointed to the barely alive Bao. Teo ordered his soldiers to immediately arrest anyone involved in the beating of their warrior Bao. He wanted to capture them and deliver them alive to his emperor. But unexpectedly, the protagonist began to summon his spirit army and ordered them to immediately appear before him. After that, a magical black space appeared behind him, which was a portal for the spirits he summoned from his world. The soldiers stood stunned and could not understand what kind of magic Lord Yomlo had used. They had never seen such powerful machinery before. Yana, who was in the next room, heard a strange noise that clearly emanated from the hall of their brothel, and she already wanted to check what was happening there. But Zhang Wan ordered her to obey his lord Yomlo and not to leave this room until the first rays of the sun appeared in the window. Meanwhile, the soldiers of Bao, unexpectedly, something began to settle in their midst. These were the spirits that Yomlo summoned with his magical abilities. The woman at the reception thought that this was unknown black magic and did not understand from which world this strange guest who called himself Lord Yomlo came from. But in a moment, the spirits summoned by the main character already inhabited the bodies of these unfortunate soldiers. After that, they greeted Lord Yomlo and said that they were glad to see him again. The woman heard from the corner of her ear about Lord Yomlo and could not believe that it was really him. She had heard of his power, but never thought he would appear in their valley. 
She began to apologize to him and swore that she would never interfere with him again, but on the contrary, would help her in everything. Yomlo promised her that nothing would happen to her if she behaved well. For proper behavior, he will save her life. But the protagonist decided to reveal one secret to her and said that she had 99 days left to live and advised to conduct them with benefit for society. The woman did not want to believe that it was true. She believed that this was just an inappropriate joke of Lord Yomlo. Meanwhile, Yomlo and his spirits decided to go to Jean's estate. He was clearly convinced that there could be many valuable things that would make him rich. After that, he ordered his army to move all the valuables they could find in the estate to this horrible brothel. On the morning of the next day, one of Jean's soldiers ran to his room to tell him about the trouble that had happened. When he successfully found Jean in his bedroom, he immediately announced that something very serious had happened. Jean calmly asked him why he was panicking. He hoped that this was news about the successful completion of the task of detaining Zhang Wan. But the truth was completely different. The panicked soldier began to tell him that the army that the emperor had sent to capture Zhang Wan had betrayed him. He believed that they were most likely bewitched by forbidden magic. The soldier asked Zhang what his further orders would be, but his emperor was already furious with this information. After that, the soldier said that it was not all bad news. He really didn't want to upset Jean anymore. But the emperor sensed something bad and immediately ordered him to tell everything he was hiding. The soldier informed him that the estate had been completely robbed that night. All their valuables were gone. And he said that now, according to the legend, after the visit of the Lord Yomlo, not even the smallest blade of grass will grow on the ground. It seems their valley was doomed. Jean did not want to believe the words of his soldier to the last, and he could not understand how Yomlo managed to do all this in such a short period of time. After this information, the emperor became extremely angry and wanted to immediately take revenge on him. Jean swore he would cut them to pieces. He took his golden signet and ordered it to be taken to their lord and to beg him to send the best army he had as quickly as possible. Rong Wan, meanwhile, woke up completely kissed from head to toe after a passionate night with Yana, who thanked him very sincerely for saving him from Bao. He joyfully descended from his room to find Lord Yomlo, but what he saw in front of him completely shocked him. He did not understand where this could come from. It was a huge mountain of gold coins lying in the middle of the brothel. The main character explained to him that these are all the riches from Jean's estate that they managed to find, and now they all belong to him. Yomlo was actually an extremely generous young man. Zhang Wan couldn't believe his eyes and asked Yomlo if it was all really a joke. The main character became almost a new father for him, who gave him a new life. Yomlo said that probably right now Jean is rushing here with the intention of taking revenge on them and tearing them to pieces. But this assumption did not scare Zhang Wan at all. He was fully prepared to meet Jean to test his new powers on him. In a moment, Jean ran as fast as he could to the brothel where Yomlo and Junwan are now. In front of the entrance stood his former army, which now obeyed the main character. Jean looked them straight in the eyes and angrily called them pitiful traitors who dared to rebel against him and unite with this worthless Yomlo. The former soldier answered him that he would not allow his new master to be insulted so easily and threatened Jean with death if he continued to speak such insulting words. Jean was angry that they now called their master Yomlo, and he promised them that he would punish anyone who betrayed his oath before him, and he said that he was giving them the last chance to atone for their guilt, and if not, then soon the army of their supreme ruler would come here and destroy all those who had gone over to the side of evil. But his former army did not even want to listen to him. One of them decided to teach poor Jean a lesson and punched him right in the face for choosing to offend them so badly. The blow was so strong that the skin on Jean's face was covered in waves. He didn't even have time to react to a blow of such force. Jean could not understand how in just one evening they managed to become so strong. He understood that this was the magic of a black leader. Yomlo went to Jean on the street and greeted him joyfully. It was already their second personal meeting, only now there were significantly different circumstances. Jean immediately turned to Yomlo and said angrily that their appetite had become too great, and he threatened death for stolen valuables from his estate and recruited soldiers whom he managed to lure to his side. 
how unexpectedly Junvan came out to them who wanted to see him again, only now a completely self-confident man. He turned to Jean and said that he had endured all this abuse from him for too long, and today was the day when he would willingly take revenge on him. He just wanted to kill him. Yomlo suddenly remembered that Junwan had challenged Jean to a duel that was to take place in exactly six days in the main square of their valley. But for Jean personally, they were ready to hold this fair match right here and now, after which the winner will receive 100 gold coins. But Jean was not interested in money and the tournament at this moment. He wanted to kill Zhang Wan right now for free. The desire for revenge completely clouded his consciousness. He began to use his magical skills and uttered a spell, after which he launched a frenzied attack on them. First, he directed his magic strike directly at Yomlo to completely neutralize the most powerful opponent. But the main character managed to easily dodge such a blow from Emperor Jean, who was extremely surprised that he managed to escape his powerful charm so easily. Yomlo announced the start of a fair fight. He was clearly convinced that Jean had no chance of beating her in a fair fight. Junwan asked Yomlo for permission to get even with Jean himself, who had humiliated him in front of everyone all his life. After that, he gathered all his strength into one and directed his powerful blow at Jean. It was so strong that the wind that arose from the blow raised dust towards them, but this time Jean managed to dodge such a powerful attack. He had time to realize that Zhang Wang had become so strong that if it wasn't for his reaction, he wouldn't have been able to deflect his blow. But that didn't stop Zhang Wan. He decided to continue attacking Jean further and decided to use all the strength he had at that moment. But Jean managed to notice his weak point. Although Zhang Wan has now become extremely strong, he currently lacks reaction and speed. So he decided to use his magic technique against him to prevent him from coming into close contact with him. Zhang Wan didn't manage to dodge the attack, and the Emperor's magic hit him right in the face. After such an attack, Zhang Wan's body was pushed back several meters, which made it possible to increase the distance between them, as Jean wanted. Meanwhile, all the strong men from the entire valley gathered around them, whom the protagonist on behalf of Zhang Wan had previously invited to a fair duel with a reward of 100 gold coins. But the blow was not able to overcome Zhang Wan's desire for revenge. He was well aware of all Jean's tricks and was ready for such a development. Zhang Wang began his preparations to use his new technique, which was sure to destroy Zhang this time. He was going to use the ancient technique of the Elian family and promised Zhang that he would definitely destroy him with dignity. He said that he only managed to learn this technique today, but it wouldn't stop him from using it against him. Jean couldn't believe that he managed to master this complex technique so quickly. He himself managed to learn it only after many years of hard and exhausting training. Zhang Wan decided to waste no time and finally prove his mastery of his new skills and began to use the Elian technique. In an instant, the powerful magic was ready to be used, and he immediately channeled all of his accumulated energy into destroying Zhang. The blow threw Jean with all his might into the wall behind him. Even after that, he could not believe that Zhang Wan managed to master such a complex technique in just one day. He turned out to be more capable than Jean who spent almost his entire life on it. The observers who were there were also amazed by Zhang Wan's new abilities. They even began to doubt whether he was really a living person and not a dark demon who had been hiding his energy all along. But this was Yomlo's favorite technique, to reproduce the opponent's techniques better than they themselves managed to do. Afterwards, Jun Wan approached Jean and asked him what it was like to be defeated by someone he had considered worthless all his life and ordered him to prepare for death. At that moment, Jean understood that he had no chance of defeating him. But before he died, he only wanted to know how Zhang Wan had managed to master the Elian technique so quickly. But unexpectedly, they were interrupted by three unknown monks who managed to interrupt Zhang Wan's plans. They menacingly asked who had given them permission to mercilessly kill Jean. And they said that as long as they are monks here, no one is allowed to make a real mess here. But they didn't even have time to finish the conversation, as suddenly the fist of the Lord Yomlo, at a great speed, dealt a devastating blow to all three unknown monks. And after that, he told them to get out of here while they were still alive and able to do it. Meanwhile, Jean decided to take advantage of the unexpected visit of the monks. And while everyone turned away from him, 
he began to run quickly to save himself from certain death. Jean ran straight into the crowd, but they did not allow him to escape, but gave him the weapons they had so that he could continue his duel. He was forced to stop and saw that now there was a whole arsenal of weapons in front of him, with which he could still try to kill Zhang Wan. But this dishonest and unjust gesture did not please Jean, who wanted with all his might to simply run away from the battlefield. He said that he remembered all those who stood in his way and threatened them with death in the greatest torment. He took the iron sword in his hands and understood that even with it, he still would not be able to defeat the mighty Zhang Wan. The only option left to him is to bide his time until the overlord comes to rescue him. Jean wanted to pounce on Zhang Wan while he wasn't expecting it, and attacked him from behind with the sword the Watchers had given him. But it did not come as a surprise to Zhang Wan. He figured Jean would be able to come up with something better than just pathetically attacking him with a sword. Suddenly, Junvana's ex-wife ran to the square. She quickly and imperceptibly slipped through the crowd onto the battlefield. Day saw that Zhang Wan and Jean were fighting each other in a duel to the death. Despite the large number of people watching this spectacle, it was somehow too quiet here. She thought it was some kind of trap for Jean and wanted to stop this fair match at once before there was any trouble. To everyone's surprise, Zhang Wan grabbed Jean tightly and pressed him against his body. But the important thing here was that Jean's sword was now in the hands of Zhang Wan, who discreetly withdrew the weapon. No one could understand what had happened. Even for them, it was a real surprise. They almost got sick of each other. Suddenly, Jean realized that the sword was now in the hands of his opponent. He didn't even notice how it happened. Only Yomlo realized that Zhang Wan had used a substitution technique that combined all previous combat techniques. With its help, you can stop an enemy attack. This is a clever technique that allows you to take any weapon from the enemy, especially when he is not expecting it. Zhang Wang decided to make fun of his pitiful opponent one last time and suggested that he use all his techniques in turn and he would try to repeat them. Jean did not seem to like this idea and he suggested that he talk a little. He tried to bide his time until the master appeared. It really was his last hope. Jun Wan's ex-wife ordered them to come to their senses before they killed each other and stop this senseless fair match. She began to plead with her ex-husband to stop this fight and promise to accept any punishment from him instead of Jean. Zhang Wan listened to her, but he was only interested in one thing, whether it was true that the child they had raised together all their lives was actually Jean's child. And he said that if she answered honestly, he would feel sorry for him. From her reaction, it became clear that these gossips are pure truth. The child they raised together was from Jean. After this, Zhang Wan was completely disappointed in his ex-wife. He couldn't believe that she could hide this fact from him. Now he decided to use a special technique of breaking up the relationship, so that they no longer have anything in common in this world. The woman began to cry and repent for deceiving him all her life, but it was already late and there was no way back. Meanwhile, the Supreme System informed Lord Yomlo that he had completed the Wanderer's quest and had successfully received 1,000 points on his balance. The stone in his world began the process of being restored into one. All the lost pieces that were missing before were gathered from all over the universe. And after that, the rock was assembled into a single monolithic stone with tasks. This was the beginning of the launch of hidden missions for which he could receive generous rewards. The Supreme System was sure that the main character would like the new tasks very much. The new hidden mission was called Choice. Due to the clash of enemy armies, a war will begin, and Yomlo must choose a side. If he helps Tibetan troops capture the Dal Valley, he will receive 100,000 points and unlock Inferno. If he chooses another side, he will also receive 100,000 points and a new item. Both awards were very good, but the choice remained only for Yomlo. He had to choose the good or bad side for which he would have to fight. The protagonist ordered his warrior to stay here and wait for news from him. After that, Yomlo left them in an unknown direction. A barely alive Jean asked Zhang Wan why he decided to keep him alive instead of killing him. Zhang Wan answered him that this was his punishment. He wanted him to experience what it was like to be alive when death seemed so much better than a worthless life. Zhang Wan didn't even notice Yomlo leaving them. He did not understand where he could disappear so quickly from his sight. 
Meanwhile, the Lord has already gathered his huge army, and the commander reported to him that their army was ready and waiting for his order. The Lord said that Lord Yomlo's gang was wreaking havoc in the Dal Valley. At first he wanted to ignore it, but he thought they had gone too far, and now you can't just leave it like that. Lord Yav stood before his army and ordered them to immediately go to the valley to destroy Lord Yomlo's gang. Suddenly, his warrior, who was guarding the territory, ran to them on the square, and in a panic informed the Lord that they were surrounded by the Tibetan army. The ruler could not understand how the troops managed to surround his estate along the entire perimeter. He feared that this meant an extremely quick end to his reign. Unexpectedly for him, Lord Yomlo appeared in the square and told the emperor that he was too slow in his decisions. He reported that Jean was already completely crippled. The emperor's army became indignant and asked him who he was that dared to come to them so easily. The main character answered them that he is the lord of Yomlo. His gaze was calm. He was clearly confident in his abilities. The lord could not understand how he managed to get into the closed area of his estate, which is guarded by his best warriors and asked him what he was going to do next. Yomlo answered him that he had come to discuss new conditions and further fruitful cooperation that would be beneficial to both of them. The enraged lord shouted that no one in this world could dictate terms to him, and he ordered his soldiers to immediately seize this fool. But the protagonist calmly reacted to such a reaction and answered him that since the lord is not able to protect himself, he came to help him overcome their common enemy. The Lord asked Yomlo how many men he had brought with him to cope with this task, but the main character answered him that it was neither too much nor too little. Himself. He believed that this would be quite enough to successfully repel the threat. The Lord continued to look at Yomlo and could not believe that he had come to him alone without any escort. The monk standing next to the emperor expressed his opinion on this matter. He was clearly convinced that since Lord Yomlo was so bold, he was most likely being covered by the Tibetan army that had already surrounded their estate, and he said that he most likely came just to find out about the situation here. He believed that he could not be let out of here alive, because it would shake their security. One of the soldiers could not stand such insolence and immediately rushed to attack Yomlo. He was clearly convinced that it was because of people like our main character that he lost his father, whom he still cannot find. The warrior was clearly confident in his abilities and decided to immediately finish off Yomlo with his own hands. Unexpectedly for him, Yomlo clapped his hands hard. It was another trick of his that he adored. Right next to the soldier, first of all, a huge dead hand of an unknown creature, which appeared in this world from the afterlife, climbed out of the ground. This surprised the warrior who was just about to destroy Yomlo. But now he just froze in place and couldn't even move. When the unknown creature fully surfaced, it was clear that it was the skeleton of a fallen warrior. The soldier did not understand what kind of evil spirit crawled out right in front of him, and he decided that this was a huge danger for him. He decided not to waste time and confidently cut the skeleton in half with his sword. But the creature managed to tell him before his death that he was a very naughty son. The skeleton's voice seemed extremely familiar to the soldier. This voice was very similar to the voice of his father who had died in battle many years ago. Yomlo answered him that with the help of a magical technique, he summoned the spirit of his late father and returned his consciousness to this world. The protagonist's answer shocked the soldier, after which he immediately recognized his father's armor and realized that he had just cut his father's body in two with his own hands. The soldier could not fully believe Yomlo. He did not know that there was such a magic that could bring the dead back from the other world. After that, Lord Yomlo ordered the system to restore the old commander's body. It cost him ten points, and she informed him that the duration of the effect was exactly two hours. In just a moment, the body of the old fallen warrior was completely restored. There was no trace of his son's blow. The main character said that he returned his father's soul, and now it would be nice to thank him for such a gift. The soldier removed his helmet from his head. He could not believe his eyes and decided to ask the spirit himself if it was really his father. They started running to meet each other. How long his son, who loved him immensely, had waited for this. Tears began to flow down his cheeks. He could no longer contain his emotions. 
His father sternly ordered him to stop crying and reminded him that it was his greatest honor to die on the battlefield. This strictness and fiery character finally convinced the son that in front of him was his real father, whom he had not seen for many years. The warrior hugged his father's leg and began to beg him to punish him. The soldier thought that he was unworthy to be the son of such a famous warrior, and he said that it was too great an honor for him. This was a discovery for the Lord himself. He too had never seen such magic exist before, and asked the main character alive whether the father of this warrior is dead now. Yomlo replied that he is now an ordinary ghost who died tragically on the battlefield, but could not come to terms with it, and so now his soul is still in the human world. And he said that let the father tell his story himself. The dead soldier said that he died because of his inattention. He did not expect that otherworldly forces would fight against him and his troops. They stood to the last but could not hold back the onslaught of the fierce enemy attack. He believed that it was entirely his fault. Some unknown sorcerer joined the Tibetan army. There were legends that he gave them great power. With his help, they became much more powerful and killed everyone and everything in their path. He was called the living embodiment of the Lord Gamlo. The last phrase aroused considerable interest in the main character. After all, it reminded him very much of his new name, which was very consonant. Yomlo turned to the old commander and invited him to go into battle with them to take revenge on his enemies. This was a real chance for him to show himself again on the battlefield. The old warrior did not hesitate for a second and promised to smear each of their skulls on the city wall. The Lord joined the conversation and said that if they would help him save the people of Dal, then he would be extremely grateful to them and asked how many men and horses they needed to successfully carry out this order. Yomlo answered him that he did not need any of his soldiers. It will only be necessary to fulfill a few of his conditions after victory. The Lord asked what conditions he meant. He was very interested in the protagonist's answer. Yomlo quickly flew up to the Lord and whispered his terms to him. No one heard exactly what he asked for, so it remained a mystery. The overlord said that it was too much, but if he really managed to bring the head of the enemy commander, then he would agree to fulfill his terms. Yomlo assured the lord that they would handle everything before dinner. He was sure of it like never before. After that, the protagonist turned to the old commander and said that it was time for them to go. After a dialogue with the master, the supreme system told Yomlo that he was the kindest person she had ever met. The old commander's son also wanted to go to battle with his father, but he ordered him to stay here and guard the estate so that no harm would happen. The Lord wished them luck before the brutal duel and said that he was looking forward to their return. Yomlo began the magical process of teleportation, and in a moment, he disappeared together with the old commander. The Lord still couldn't believe that the mighty Lord Yomlo had actually agreed to help Dal Valley. According to the Overlord's analysts, the city was defended by less than 20,000 soldiers, which was far too few to defeat the Tibetan army if something suddenly went wrong at Yomlo. At that time, an enemy sorcerer, who called himself the living embodiment of Lord Gomlo, was approaching the Valley of Dal. He was accompanied by an innumerable army of Tibetan warriors who destroyed more than one army on the way to the city. In his hands was a magic ball that looked very similar to the Supreme System. He told her that soon he would conquer the Valley of Dal and all the innocent blood would be theirs. Suddenly someone's voice asked what kind of small ball it was. The sorcerer angrily answered him that in the middle of this ball lives Lord Gomlo, who is temporarily locked in it by someone else's charms. After that, he looked to the side and began to stare in amazement at the stranger who had the courage to ask him such a question. It was Lord Yomlo who introduced himself as an ordinary passerby from the Dal Valley. He said that he was just passing by when he unexpectedly saw such a huge number of soldiers approaching the city. But the enemy sorcerer did not believe his words and ordered him to immediately confess what he was doing here and who he was. Jomlo replied that he had succeeded in scaring him, but he said that he was not sure that King Gomlo would really like him. The old sorcerer felt an extremely strong energy from the stranger and invited him to join them. He promised Yomlo fame and wealth that would last him a lifetime. The sorcerer did not have time to finish his speech when Yomlo's powerful fist hit him right in the face with all its force. Yomlo's powerful blow threw the sorcerer high into the air. He clearly did not expect such unexpected insolence from a stranger. Recovering from the blow, 
The sorcerer realized that nothing good would happen to him and promised him an extremely slow and painful death. The main character answered him that with his blow, he dissipated all his evil energy. And he said that after that, he had only a few days left to live, and then death would come. The sorcerer really felt a warm flow of energy through his body and asked him what started to happen to him. Yomlo explained to him that because cold energy often roamed through his body, he had constant health problems because of this, and most importantly, that his inner strength had completely disappeared. The sorcerer listened attentively to Yomlo, but could not understand why all this was happening to him. Yomlo explained to him that it was all because of the magic ball in his hands. Her dark energy slowly consumes his body, and through this, Gomlo gains the power of the evil sorcerer's mind, but in time, he still completely takes over his entire body. But the wizard refused to believe Yomlo. He believed that he wanted to steal from him this magic bullet with Gomlo inside, and I didn't want it to happen in reality. The main character assured him that he was not interested in it. He said he could save him, but if he didn't need to, then there was nothing more for them to talk about. Unexpectedly for the wizard, Yomlo managed to interest him, and asked him not to leave him. Yomlo asked him if he really changed his mind and now needs help in this situation. The wizard wanted to know how he could save him, but he threatened that if he decided to deceive him, he would never be able to get out of here alive. In his hands, Yomlo held a vial with an unknown substance and showed it to the sorcerer. He explained to him that it was a medicine that Yomlo had made from liquid materials that could solve the sorcerer's problem and he said that he was ready to sell them to him for a certain reward. The sorcerer asked if it was a medicine that could save his life. He had never heard of them before, so this made him extremely wary. The main character explained to him that he created them using extremely rare ancient pharmacist's equipment. But these medicines had one nuance. It is a terrible smell that cannot be overcome by any flavorings. The unpleasant smell from the bottle was sharply felt by all the soldiers who were nearby. The medicine smelled like real shit, which could be heard a great distance away. The sorcerer did not believe Yomlo and said that he was deceiving him. He did not believe that medicine could have such an unpleasant smell. But the protagonist calmed him down and explained that good medicine is always unpleasant. This is their main sign of success. The old wizard asked what he wanted in return for this miraculous medicine that could save his life. Yomlo said that the sorcerer must have found many valuable things on the way to Dal Valley, and asked him to hand over all the found treasures to him. The old sorcerer did not want to accept such a huge price. In his opinion, it was too much. But the main character answered him that he would die soon without these medicines and would not be able to use his precious finds one way or another. And he said that according to his feelings, the sorcerer will easily conquer the Valley of Dal because they will not have enough troops to repel their powerful attack. And in this glorious city, there must be even more riches than he found on the way before this. The sorcerer agreed with Yomlo and gave him a map where he hid all the looted items during their entire journey. The protagonist answered him that this was an extremely wise decision and gave him a bottle of medicine that was now supposed to save his life. The sorcerer immediately drank the entire contents of the vial for his salvation. Although the cures smelled like shit, they tasted even worse. The sorcerer realized that he had just been tricked and, on top of that, publicly forced to drink other people's feces. Yomlo asked him if it was tasty. The protagonist simply mocked the unfortunate and deceived sorcerer. Lord Yomlo thanked him for such generous hints as to where the treasures were and quickly fled over the horizon before he caught him. The sorcerer began to shout angrily and could not believe that this scumbag had deceived him. He asked the magic ball with Gomlo inside for help, but he realized that he was not there either. Lord Yomlo also managed to swallow the magic orb before running away from him. Enraged, the sorcerer ordered his troops to catch up and capture this scum immediately. He vowed to strangle him with his own hands. Yomlo was running away from them in the middle of the field when suddenly he saw a rather familiar face in front of him. It was the Nesset who also immediately recognized his master, Yomlo but he did not fully understand what was happening now. The main character could not understand why the Nesset came here to this valley. He didn't expect to see him here, and Yomlo sharply asked him why he decided to come here. After all, he was not invited. The Nesset replied to him that since he had successfully completed the task, he thought he might go to the Dal Valley to help his master. 
He asked Yomlo who he was running away from so frantically. The main character explained to him that right now he is being chased by several fools and so he is trying to escape from them. The answer surprised the Knesset extremely. He wondered what kind of people Yomla was running away from rather than meeting them in a duel. The protagonist replied that he simply did not want to sink to their low level. He considered himself much better than them. The Knesset decided that this was its chance to save Yomla, and he said that he himself wanted to deal with these scoundrels who dared to threaten their master. He looked in the direction from which Yomlo was running and saw that directly from there, a huge horde of angry warriors was rushing towards them who definitely wanted to kill his master. The main character explained to him that these are the same scoundrels who are persecuting him and offered him that if he wanted so badly, he could try to defeat them. The Nesset did not expect to have to fight against such a huge horde. This situation scared him for nothing because he would not have coped with so many soldiers at the same time. The army began to shout menacingly at them that they would surely kill them as soon as they caught up. They were rushing straight at them with great speed. The Nesset, frightened, said that after what he had seen, he wanted to take back his words and said that he wanted to join Yomlo to escape together. The protagonist replied to him that in that case they should flee immediately before it was too late, and they caught up with them. They started running again and managed to disappear over the horizon. The army stood in a stupor. Again, they couldn't fathom how these scoundrels managed to disappear so quickly right in front of their eyes. Meanwhile, Yomlo and Nesset managed to run to the nearest forest which was on their way. The Lord told the old commander that this is a bamboo forest that contains a lot of powerful energy. Therefore, this place is ideal for him to pay tribute to all his comrades who died in an unfair fight. The old commander sincerely thanked Yomlo for such an opportunity and promised to destroy everyone until the last drop of blood and until the last scoundrel was punished for his villainy. The Gnesset began questioning Yomlo about how he ended up in this strange situation. After all, when he last saw him with Junvan, they went to a brothel to relax with the girls. The chief answered him that it was a very long story and promised to tell it later. After that, Lord Yumlo ordered one of his assistants to appear here immediately. In a moment, the assistant followed his order and also appeared in the bamboo forest. Yumlo explained to him that soon a huge Tibetan army would arrive here and ordered him together with the old commander to kill them all until none of them remained alive. The assistant clearly understood his order and promised to do everything in his power to destroy as many enemies as possible of his master, who entrusted him with such a task. The old commander thanked Yomlo for this opportunity he had given him. After all, taking revenge for all his comrades was his biggest dream since the moment of his death. After that, he asked Yomlo how he could thank him for such a generous chance. The main character answered him that it would be enough to simply bring the skull of the living old sorcerer who behaved too confidently with him. The old commander promised to cut off his head with his own hands and bring his remains to his master. Yomlo gave his assistant a map with the treasures that the old sorcerer managed to loot, and he ordered to take helpers to take everything they could find according to those coordinates on the map. The protagonist was clearly convinced that it would be a spectacular and very effective battle. He only had to wait for the right moment. He held the old sorcerer's magic orb in his hands and noticed that the whole time he had it, it was constantly flashing. Yomlo asked the system to scan the contents and tell him what was inside the sphere. The supreme system instantly began its inspection of the orb and managed to discover that inside was a soul with the qualities of Lord Gamlo. It seems that Lord Gamlo was indeed inside. Meanwhile, the Tibetan army has already managed to reach the bamboo forest. When they saw him in front of them, they could not understand where he came from so quickly, because only recently there was an ordinary field here. One of the soldiers turned to the sorcerer and reported that if we take into account his previous military experience, then with a high probability, a real trap could be set for them here. The enraged old wizard replied that there was no point in doing so right now, as they were already well into the forest, and angrily said that he should have been warned earlier about such a danger. The soldier quickly realized his mistake and promised not to make such strategic mistakes in the future. After that, he suddenly saw someone in front of them. This was the old commander, whom they had unjustly destroyed many years ago. It was clear that now he wanted a just revenge for such an act. The old wizard immediately recognized the old warrior, 
and he could not believe his eyes, because he himself saw how this warrior died in that battle that took place so long ago. The old commander sternly told the sorcerer that he needed his skull, and for that he would have to destroy it. The old wizard told him that he had no chance of doing it himself, and angrily ordered his soldiers to kill him once more. The Tibetan soldiers immediately began to carry out the order of their master, and the first of them immediately went to attack the old commander. But with his proven blade, he easily tore through the first attackers who decided to attack him. It was too easy for him. After the old commander destroyed them, he suddenly became invisible to them. He was now in his ghost state, so they could not see him with their human eyes. The enraged wizard shouted that it was simply impossible, because they had only seen him a few seconds ago, and he hadn't even moved since then. The unfortunate sorcerer did not yet know what awaited him. The old commander said that he would take revenge for all his comrades whom they had unjustly killed, and immediately after that, he would be forced to go to the afterlife to join them. He rushed to attack the powerful army of Tibetan warriors. At that moment, the commander felt a great rush of strength and power filling his body. The soldiers watched the old commander's actions in fear and did not know what to do now. After that, the old wizard promised a reward of 200 gold coins to the one who kills this bastard. The thirst for money motivated the fighters quite a bit, and they furiously rushed at him to get such a valuable prize. But unfortunately for them, they met the same unfortunate fate as the previous attackers. He cut them in half with his sharp blade. The frightened old sorcerer again ordered the Tibetan soldiers to kill the old commander immediately. But this time, the soldiers refused to obey the order. They answered him that this warrior was too powerful for them and said that he had already killed a huge number of their people. Meanwhile, in the bamboo forest, Lord Jomlo placed the stolen magic ball on a stone and tried to see Lord Gomlo in it. The Supreme System explained that Lord Gomlo appeared here from a completely different dimension, and she said that he was expelled from the other world. Yomlo asked her if he is now in exile, why doesn't he just appear in this world in full body? Or is he afraid of something? The Supreme System explained to Yomlo that since he had already lost his master Gomlo's shell, he was forced to seal his inner energy inside this sphere so as not to waste it until he found a new shell for his body. Suddenly, the ball with King Gomlo managed to jump up and started running away from Jomlo. The main character shouted that he accidentally fired a bullet, and because of that, she managed to escape. The Supreme System said that it was necessary to catch up with him before he found a new shell. Meanwhile, the magic orb flew happily, and Lord Gomlo was now clearly convinced that now he would finally be able to find a new shell to regain all that he had once lost. The magic orb spotted the dead body of the soldier that had been killed by the old commander. There was an extraordinary amount of lost blood around him, which was the perfect environment for Lord Gomlo's new shell. The magic ball immediately began the process of reuniting with his body into one. The merger was successful. Now Blood Lord Gomlo has found himself a new perfect shell. The old sorcerer, who had been carrying him all this time, began to plead with him for salvation from the old commander, who was already about to kill him. The old commander was almost there to destroy the pesky old warlock when suddenly, Lord Gomlo decided to interfere with his plans and wrap the commander's body with his magical powers. But this was not enough. The old commander, without any problems, managed to get out of the bloody shackles that took him prisoner, and he said that today no one will be able to prevent him from taking revenge for the unjust death of his soldiers. Lord Gomlo took this as a personal challenge and decided to test what this old commander was capable of. The old commander immediately began to attack him because he wanted to quickly deal with him in order to finish killing the sorcerer. But Gomlo told him that a head-on attack was a very bad tactic and in response, he decided to use his bloody technique. He channeled his powerful energy that had been waiting to be released for so many years to stop the old commander. Gomlo's bleeding magic permeated the old commander's body through and through, and knocked him powerless straight to the ground. It was too difficult an opponent for the old commander, who could not stand up to such powerful techniques. But gathering all his strength, he said that he would never put up with this and would definitely take revenge, as it was a matter of honor for him. The old sorcerer watched the mighty Gomlo with fascination. He told him that it was not for nothing that he had the title of Lord, because only so easily can one strike the enemy with one powerful blow. 
Gamlo remembered all the feats that the old sorcerer had done for him and said that he could take his life, and it would be a great honor for him. But the sorcerer refused such a strange offer and answered him that he had not yet lived enough in this world. The weakened old commander spoke to the blood lord Gamlo that the real lord Jamlo would not spare him and destroy him. Gamlo answered him that according to his information, there is no Lord Jamlo in this world. But even if he was really here, Gamlo was clearly confident that he wouldn't be able to cause him any further problems, and said that there is no more time to play with him. It began to take all of his inner energy from him, like suddenly, someone's fist flew straight into Gamlo's face with incredible force, which really surprised him. Such a surprise. It was Lord Yomlo who easily pushed him away from the old commander and prevented him from taking away his inner energy. The old sorcerer watched in amazement at Yomlo's boldness. He was sure that it would be a very interesting match. Yomlo spoke to the Bloody King that no one in this universe could abuse his subjects with such impunity. Gomlo was surprised that he could not sense the approach of danger and asked Yomlo if he really knew whom he dared to hit. The main character answered him that he knows that this is Lord Gomlo, but it does not cause him any emotions and fear to be afraid of him. Gomlo rose to his feet and asked Yomlo that if he knew who he was, why did he dare to hit him? And asked him if he was not afraid of losing his life. The main character answered him ironically that he did it out of great curiosity. He had absolutely no fear of him and was ready for any challenge that lay before him. Gomlo answered him that he was the first to behave so impudently with him and asked him to at least give his name so that he would know who he was going to kill now. The main character introduced himself as the merciless King Yomlo and warned him that he had come to the wrong place with a vain hope of success. Now Gomlo understood why this scum treated him so brazenly and offered him a fair match for the title of true lord, since there cannot be two contenders for this honorable title in the same dimension. The protagonist confidently agreed to his proposal. This battle must go down in history as the battle of the two mighty lords of the earth dimension. The old sorcerer definitely supported Gomlo in this fight and began to complain to him that Jomlo was constantly insulting their dignity and said that it was time to deal with this scoundrel. After all, he never took them seriously. The old sorcerer asked Yu Gomlo to take revenge on him for all the insults he had committed against them. After these words, the main character ordered him to shut his stupid pelt and told him not to interfere in their conversation while they were talking to each other. Gomlo liked Yomlo's self-confidence. This gave him a special motivation to win and trample him underfoot. After that, he turned to the main character and said that it was time to show what he was capable of. Gomlo began to use the magical skills he possessed. He decided to use his special bloody technique and decided to strike first even though he thought attacking first was a very bad tactic. Gomlo directed his red energy at him to strike our main character. But with a special technique, Jomlo built a magic sphere to protect himself from Jomlo's spells and techniques. Only it didn't work for some reason against Gomlo's energy. His magic easily passed through the magical protective barrier and almost hit Yomla. Gomlo had already thought that the main character would not even have time to show what he is capable of when suddenly something unexpected happened. Gomlo's energy hit the empty space. Where Yomlo had just stood, there was only an empty place. He was struck by the speed of Yomlo's reaction and how suddenly he disappeared from that place. Yomlo asked him ironically if he was actually proud of this easy trick. At this speed, he had no chance to even touch the main character. Such insolence angered Gomlo even more. So he decided to use his other magic technique and launched his blood energy into Yomlo again. But this time the same thing happened again. The main character was no longer in the place where he was just standing. He moved across the lawn at the speed of light. Gomlo's reaction and charms could not keep up with him, so they could not harm him. Gomlo realized that Yomlo had a huge speed advantage and decided that he was wasting his inner energy. After that, he turned to our main character and asked why he does not attack him in return but only evades the attacks. He thought that Lord Yomlo was afraid of him. But while the protagonist was answering him, Gomlo decided to stealthily sneak up behind him and attack him by surprise while he wasn't expecting it. But it turned out to be useless. Yomlo immediately sensed his presence behind and instantly dodged his third unsuccessful attack. After that, Yomlo asked if this was all he was capable of. Several unsuccessful attacks failed to surprise him. Gomlo told him that he was too self-confident and said that he should pay attention to his hand. After all, his poisonous blood got there. 
Gomlo was clearly convinced that at this point the fair fight could be considered completely won. He explained to him that this special technique was called the blood prison. This meant that his body was now completely in his possession. Gomlo began to wrap his charms around Jomlo's body. It was supposed to completely constrain his movements and charms. And in a moment, the body of our main character was completely wrapped in a bloody sheet. Gomlo began to explain to him that as soon as his blood got on his skin, he immediately lost all ability to fight. This was his special power, the power of absorption. Gomlo said that he was really sorry that they didn't have time to get to know each other better, but now it was too late. Now he was going to completely absorb his inner strength and take it for himself. But Jomlo calmly looked at Gomlo and without any emotion, asked if this was the same trump up his sleeve that he had prepared for him. Yomlo's self-confidence made him extremely angry. He couldn't understand why our protagonist was so calm when he was almost completely defeated. The old sorcerer, who had been watching their match, asked Gomlo's permission to inform him while Jomlo's body was under his full control. Gomlo happily allowed him to do so. After all, he wanted to see how Yomlo would suffer before his death. The old sorcerer smiled slyly. He believed to the last that he would have such a chance to take revenge on Yomlo for everything he had done to him. He especially couldn't forget the incident when the main character fed him shit. The old sorcerer approached Yomlo and told him that he would do to him exactly the same as he once did. Gomlo watched this with disgust and thought, what abominable people there are in this valley. The old sorcerer spoke to the paralyzed Yomlo to open his dirty mouth. After all, he really wanted to take revenge on him for the smelly medicine that our main character gave him to drink in public. Jomlo, at the last moment, ordered the Supreme System to switch places with Lord Gomlo, who watched calmly. The process was successfully completed, and the Supreme System successfully switched their places right at the last moment. The old sorcerer did not have time to react to such a quick change and fed the crap to Lord Gomlo. When the sorcerer realized what he had done, he couldn't find the words that could even roughly describe his emotions. He began to justify himself to his master and asked him how he ended up here in the first place. Because Yomlo was standing here just now. Bewildered, Gomlo ordered him to immediately shut down the stupid Pelka. It only took him a few seconds to realize that Yomlo had somehow managed to use his charms despite completely paralyzing his body. An angry Gomlo tried to understand how he ended up here. He thought it was impossible because he had completely blocked the main character's powers. When Gomlo managed to escape from his own shackles, he asked Jomlo in surprise how he managed to do this trick, because no one had managed to escape from this trap before. But Lord Yomlo decided not to reveal his secrets to him and replied that he would not tell him anything. Let it be a secret for him. After that, Gomlo decided that if he couldn't absorb his energy and take it for himself, then he would just try to destroy him. He decided to use his secret ancient technique that he had never shown before. Yomlo watched this with interest and was waiting to see what other surprise he would prepare for him, because now he was tired of wasting time on this nonsense. Gomlo decided to try to use the secret technique of killing form. In a moment, his body turned into a woman's, and it immediately attacked him. This was her last chance to defeat Yomlo and deliver the finishing blow. She also said that she regretted that since she couldn't just absorb the main character, it was a waste of time to fight such a nobody like Yomlo. The secret technique she used allowed her to increase her speed by ten times. She began to spin around Yomlo with incredible speed. And after choosing the right moment, she decided to give him a surprise blow from behind. There were a few seconds left before their collision. Gomlo maliciously wished him death because she believed that she had already defeated him. How unexpected. Lord Yomlo blocked her blow with a single finger and told her that she had made so much noise. The main character advised that such a weak lord should be much more serious. Yomlo's power impressed her immensely. She couldn't believe that he had managed to stop her punch so easily. Unexpectedly for herself, she began to apologize to him for her behavior. She didn't even understand why she started doing it. Lord Yomlo sighed heavily. He was extremely disappointed by such a fair match. He expected that Gomlo would at least surprise him with his skills, which he had never seen before. But unfortunately, the miracle did not happen. After that, he said that it was now his turn to deliver his powerful blow. He began to build up his inner energy in order to inflict a crushing defeat on her in one fell swoop. Gomlo noticed that his gaze suddenly became extremely serious and felt the incredible density of his energy. 
Unexpectedly for her, snow began to fall directly from the sky in the forest and it became colder. The air temperature became freezing. Gomlo realized that Yomlo's dense energy was being used to use the dragon's special cooling technique. It became clear that she still underestimated her opponent. Yomlo dealt her a crushing blow after successfully accumulating his inner energy. Avoiding him was extremely pointless. The energy released during the impact could be seen far away. The main character was saddened that from such a strong blow, he will no longer have the opportunity to get to know her better. He believed that it was impossible to survive after such a thing. But Jomlo managed to return the defeated Gomlo back into the magic ball. His soul was closed again. The main character asked the Supreme System for advice on what to do with him now. She told him that the best option would be to destroy her forever to prevent his release. But the soul, which was locked again inside the ball, began to beg Yomlo for his last word. And she said that she was ready to join the team of Lord Yomlo and swore that she would serve him faithfully. And she noticed that he was the most powerful lord she had ever met. The main character asked to give him at least one reason why he should not kill her right now. This caught her in a frenzy. She didn't even know what to answer to such a question. After that, Lord Yomlo informed her that she had ten seconds to come up with at least one reason, and if she couldn't, he would just kill her. Gomlo did not want to die, and began to say that she wanted to take revenge on her offenders because all her servants died because of her fault. This interested Yomlo, and he asked her to tell him her story. But he warned that if she tells even a small lie, he will immediately crush her like a mosquito. Gomlo began to tell that she was the bloody Lord Gomlo, came from another world, in which she managed her estate well. Thanks to her talent, it became the best estate in the entire universe. Yomlo interrupted her and asked her not to be distracted by unnecessary information, but to get to the heart of the story. According to her, one day, the Dark Lord Domlo came to them, who had only one goal, to capture everyone. But she did not want to give him everything just like that, so she began to protect her possessions together with her assistants. But he managed to destroy the entire army, and only she managed to escape. The protagonist had never heard of the Dark Lord Domlo before, so he was extremely interested in this story. Gomlo said that she wanted to take revenge and destroy him with all her heart, so that the death of all her helpers would not be in vain. But to King Yomlo, this was not enough to keep her alive and said that her fate would be decided by the supreme system which had repeatedly saved him. Gomlo asked in surprise what he meant and about whom he was talking to her. The supreme system immediately informed Jomlo that she was the only supreme system of her kind, so she could not help him in this situation to decide Gomlo's fate. After that, he said that they would not be able to come to an agreement and he would definitely have to destroy her forever. But she interrupted him and said that she can transfer part of her points to him, but she has two conditions that must be fulfilled. Surprised, Yomlo asked what conditions she meant. She explained to him that she is ready to give him all her points and powers, but in exchange for that, she wants to get a body so that she will not be locked in this orb. Yomlo liked this deal very much, and he immediately agreed to them. He even unexpectedly had an idea how to make fun of the unfortunate Gomlo, who was now completely dependent on him. She immediately transferred to him all her techniques and techniques that she possessed, and she promised him that they would definitely come in handy in the future. In a moment, all her skills and techniques were successfully transferred to our main character. He became even stronger now. Gomlo explained to him that he could now control all of his blood flows, and at any moment, he could transfer all of his energy into the temporal realm and later be reborn again. After that, Yomlo said that he really enjoyed absorbing the skills of other lords. Gomlo thanked him for giving her a second chance. After that, the main character asked what her gender was, male or female. Gomlo replied that she doesn't have a specific gender. It depends on the skills she chooses to use. Yomlo replied that in that case, he himself would choose a new appearance for her. It was the perfect chance for him to express his creativity. The main character directed his skills at Gomlo, and at his discretion chose her body. Thick eyebrows and big eyes, thin waist, small mouth, curvaceous forms. When her body adjusted to these parameters, it turned out not at all the way he imagined it. Yomlo inquired from the Supreme System why this time it didn't turn out the same as the first time he chose her appearance. She explained that at that time he had certain restrictions, 
but this time there was complete freedom of choice. For some reason, Gomlo also did not appreciate her new body and appearance. She asked him to take it more seriously, but Yomlo answered her that he had done all he could and said that it would be better if it remained so for the time being. Gomlo began to beg Yomlo to fix her appearance after all. She didn't want to look like a scary scarecrow. The main character answered her that he had absolutely no time or desire to do it. He said that he still needed to immediately find the old sorcerer who had escaped without punishment. Gumlo told him that she would take care of him herself, if only he would try again and give her a new normal appearance. Yomlo told her that this is her chance to prove herself and if she succeeds he will definitely fix her body. She wanted to change herself so much that she immediately ran in search of the miserable old sorcerer. Meanwhile, he ran as far as possible because he understood that Yomlo would not forgive him for his insolence and would seek him even underground to destroy him. But Gomlo, who went in search of him, moved so fast that when she encountered the old wizard, she was able to push him back several meters. When he rose to his feet, he saw Gomlo in front of him, but he could not understand what had happened to her. Out of terror, he started screaming like a real cowardly girl. Meanwhile, the main character began the process of healing the exhausted old commander after the failed duel with Gomlo. After successfully healing, the commander rose to his feet and asked Yomlo how it was that he was so easily defeated in a duel. The main character replied to him that because he underestimated the power of his opponent, it led to such bad consequences. The old commander realized his mistake and admitted that it was because of his carelessness that the old sorcerer managed to escape unpunished. But Yomlo reassured him and said that no one had ever managed to escape from him so easily. Meanwhile, Gomlo took the worthless old warlock by the scruff of the neck and pushed him toward our protagonist while he begged in vain to let him go. She instantly took him to the bamboo forest to Lord Yomlo, who really did not expect that she would catch up with him so quickly. She delivered it right to his feet as she had promised. Gomlo begged for something to be done with her monstrous body for bringing the old sorcerer to him so quickly. The old commander said that it would be better if Yomlo himself decided what to do with this worthless sorcerer. But the main character had already decided his fate a long time ago, so he did not doubt it for a second. And he said that the time has come for the old wizard to go to the world of the dead, where he belongs. The Supreme System reported that the hidden mission Choice was successfully completed. Yomlo got 100000 points and a tool was unlocked. Warhorse, to get it, you need to go to the Mission Stone. The main character was happy to receive such a huge number of points. After all, now is the time to improve your world. Gomlo asked hopefully when Jomlo would change her horrible body. She could not bear this torment anymore. But the main character had his own plans for this situation. He said that she would have to wait a little until he finally got something right. He said that now is the time of an extremely large harvest. It was clear that he was up to something to get even more profit. Gomlo wondered what the huge harvest meant and could not believe that she would have to spend some time in this terrible body. The protagonist ordered her to stay here and promised to return soon. It seems like it was really important to him. In a moment, he rose into the sky and began to fly at an incredible speed. Only he knows where he is going. On the way to his destination, he asked the system what he could improve in his world. The Supreme System told him that he could improve the path of Sansara and the Yellow Fountain to level 5, after which he would fulfill the conditions for starting a new level of Hell. In the meantime, the Emperor was told that the Tibetan troops had dispersed in different directions and from that moment on did not pose any threat to them. The Emperor could not believe that Yomlo alone was able to defeat tens of thousands of powerful warriors, and now I thought that our main character was really some kind of deity. After that, Lord Yomlo descended directly from the heavens and stood directly in front of the Emperor, who was barely able to stay on his feet from such a powerful shock wave. When the dust cleared, the protagonist told the Emperor that it was time to fulfill his promise. This was the condition that if Yomlo brought him the sorcerer's head before lunch and neutralized the Tibetan army, then his promises would be fulfilled. The emperor couldn't believe that Yomlo could single-handedly take down an entire armed army without getting a single scratch. The main character said that according to their contract, now all the values of Dal Valley belong to him, and he also asked to employ Junvan. Yomlo radiated such cold energy that the emperor could not describe his feelings. 
He was frightened by the power of our main character, because if he wanted to, he could destroy an entire city. The Emperor realized that he was not a god, but a real devil. After that, he quickly ordered his servants to collect all their scarabs for Lord Yamlo. In addition, he immediately appointed Zhang Wan as his new head bodyguard in Jean's place, for whom it was a real surprise. Suddenly, the onlookers who heard this began to think that if they beat Zhang one more time, they could gain so much. Their eyes began to burn with the desire to do it immediately. Only Jean stood frightened and began to beg them not to touch him. At that time, Yomlo and Gomlo moved to his world. He decided to show her his possessions. But it did not make a good impression on her. She thought that this world was extremely backward and did not understand how Yomlo could live here. Her reaction made Yomlo extremely angry and he was already ready to beat her for such unpleasant words. But they were suddenly interrupted by the Supreme System and congratulated Yomlo on his return. One of the assistants looked at Gomlo in confusion and asked the king what kind of squash was with him. The protagonist ordered the system to do something with Gomlo's body, because this Quasimodo was already making him nervous. She breathed a sigh of relief and now looked forward to her new incarnation. The supreme system was extremely enraged by this order, because Lord Yomlo should use it only in extremely critical moments. Moreover, he could complete this task on his own. But still, she decided to carry out this order of Jomlo and began the process of reincarnation of Gomlo. This cost the protagonist 100 points, which were deducted from his balance. The Supreme System successfully completed the process and made Gomlo's body according to Jomlo's tastes. Now she has become a red-haired beauty with extremely curvaceous forms. Gomlo was very surprised at such a quick transformation, but she was only glad because she liked this appearance much more than the previous one. Her new beauty even managed to cloud the minds of the assistants of the Lord Yomlo, who began to admire her new beauty. The main character himself liked how Gomlo now looked. Now it has become much more pleasant to look at her. After that, he told one of his assistants that he had a present for him. The assistant thanked Yomlo for his generosity and kindness. He definitely considered him his true king and always trusted him. To get the gift, Yomlo approached the sacred stone, which gives him new tasks for which you can get points. The Supreme System explained to the main character that it is necessary to lay a hand on the stone in order to take the thing he needs. After that, Yomlo touched the stone with his hand and spoke his magic spell. In an instant, the rocky stone began to emit its magical glow. The gift Yomlo had in mind was the warhorse tool he had received during a mission in Dal Valley and now he appeared right in front of them. But the protagonist was confused by what he saw in front of him. This was clearly not what he expected to get. The war horse standing in front of him was extremely small. It could be compared with the size of an ordinary mouse. Yomlo hadn't expected the war horse to be so tiny, therefore it was extremely disappointing for him. He was able to easily lift the horse with only his two fingers and ironically offered the system a ride on it. The Supreme System explained to him that this was only the beginning as he would simply need to be fed and raised, and in time, he would grow up to become an extremely strong warhorse. The main character asked her what to feed him and where to keep him, because he did not have his own stable. The Supreme System answered him that in that case, he should build Inferno. The Overlord asked in bewilderment what this Inferno was. He remembered that he had unlocked this building, but he didn't know what he needed it for in the first place. Jomlo was surprised by the fact that Jomlo knew nothing about Inferno's capabilities. After all, every true lord should know this. Gomlo explained to him that Inferno is the basis of his estate. With the help of Inferno, you can grow various materials, from which you can then create weapons, hire warriors, and increase the level of your estate. Jomlo questioned whether he understood correctly that now he would not need to spend points on the maintenance of soldiers. The Supreme System answered him that he understood everything correctly. The main character of the Abomination was ignited by the desire to build Inferno, but not everything was as quick and easy as he wanted. The Supreme System explained to him that before that, it was necessary to improve the Yellow Fountain and the Path of Sanasara to level 5. And as a bonus, after fulfilling these conditions, she will give him a 50% discount on the construction of Inferno. Without hesitation, Yomlo immediately ordered her to immediately begin upgrading the Yellow Fontau and the Way of Sansara. The Supreme System heard this and immediately began to carry out his order. 
She warned him that it would cost him 50,000 points, but that didn't matter to him. In an instant, Lord Yomlo's order was fulfilled by the system. The Yellow Fountain and Path of Sansara have been successfully upgraded to level 5. The main character was satisfied with the result of the system. He was already used to the quick execution of his orders, but every time he was grateful to her for it. It was a surprise for Gomlo. She didn't think that the system would be able to level buildings up to level 5 so quickly in a matter of seconds. The Supreme System informed Yomlo that they had now completed all the necessary conditions to build the Inferno, but there was one more caveat. Yomlo asked irritably what else needed to be done to finally build the damn Inferno. She answered him that in order to build it, it is necessary to find a necessary material, the Gathering of Soul Stone. And she said that it can only be found in the Jade Cave of the Country of Dreams. Yomlo said that he had read about this country before because it was always famous for its treasures. And he said that he had dreamed of visiting there for a long time. And here came such a wonderful opportunity. The Supreme System immediately after that teleported them to the necessary destination in order to complete the task as quickly as possible. Jomlo went there with Gomlo. The two of them ended up in the middle of some forest. She had wanted to ask him something for a long time, but always hesitated. She still dared to do this and asked Yomlo why he performs such unimportant tasks on his own and does not send his assistance in his place. And she expressed the opinion that the Supreme System does not perceive Yomla properly at all. Gomlo hoped that the Lord would allow her to punish them for their disrespect, because she believed that she had no equal in this matter. But our main character was unmoved in this regard and also had confidence in his people. He ordered her to shut up and not talk such nonsense. Her constant chatter got him. Gomlo was afraid that she had made him very angry and said that she just wanted to help him. Disgruntled, Yomlo asked the system why she had teleported them so far from their destination. She told him that the soul gathering stone always attracts dead souls, so she landed them in a safer place. After a while, they heard people shouting, from which it was clear that they were running from something or someone that scared them extremely. In a moment, she saw a column of dust in front of her, rising from the fugitives who were coming straight at them. Bewildered, Gomlo asked what was going on here, but Lord Yomlo at this moment stood unmoved and confidently looked straight ahead. These fugitives turned out to be a group of angry women who shouted at them to disperse and not stand in their way. Jomlo and Gomlo decided that it would be better to move aside than to be trampled by these hippos. Angry women rushed past them at breakneck speed. Gomlo was surprised that they dared to pass by Lord Jomlo and not even bow to him, but on the contrary behaved too contemptuously. But unexpectedly, a grandmother passed by them who was obviously lagging behind the crowd of angry women and could not keep up with them. Yomlo decided to ask Grandma who they were all running away from and what had happened here. Unexpectedly for him, the old woman was not jokingly angry at such a question and ordered him never to call her Grandma again because she is not yet old enough for such a thing. The perplexed Yomlo stood right in front of her and didn't even know what to say to her. But when the older woman looked him straight in the eyes... She realized that this young man had an extremely handsome appearance. Her heart began to beat faster and her cheeks flushed. But in an instant, she remembered her Mr. Mujan. Only he had a place in her heart. And she asked not to block her path, because soon the folk festivities named after Mr. Mujan will begin. Yomlo thought in bewilderment when she mentioned Mr. Mujan's name. He had heard of him somewhere before, but he couldn't remember exactly where. He began to reminisce and thought that she probably meant the handsome Munzun, who was like a real dragon and phoenix among ordinary people. There was no other man in this world who could match his beauty. The protagonist said that they just needed to visit Munzun because he had family ties in the village of Manto, and that's where the Jade Caves are located. Gomlo joked that she liked the idea of joining the folk festivities more than looking for unknown treasures. When they reached their destination... They encountered burly guards who stopped them and asked them to prove the sincerity of their intentions, or else they just won't miss them. The main character did not like the tone in which the guards began to communicate with him. They behaved so arrogantly as if they considered themselves gods. He decided that they simply needed to be taught. When the guards saw that the travelers wanted to force their way to Mr. Munjan, they ordered them to stop immediately or they would use their force against them. 
Before the attack, Lord Yomlo told them that he would now show them his sincere intentions, if only they had enough health to withstand it. The main character directed his huge magic sphere at them. An orange orb of gigantic dimensions, this was another magic trick of the Yomlo Lord, which began to fall directly on the guards at a tremendous speed. The force with which the sphere fell was enough to forcefully flatten these insolent scumbags right to the ground. After this, only one managed to survive. She fell right at his feet. Yomlo told him to immediately convey to Mr. Munjan that the god of wealth had arrived and was very eager to meet him as soon as possible. Gomlo asked in surprise what he was up to. She was surprised that he decided to introduce himself as the god of wealth. But Lord Yomlo calmly replied that she herself would soon see everything. And he did not tell her about his cunning plan. Meanwhile, there was a huge number of girls and women at the folk festival who admired Munjan's beauty and were ready to do anything for him. Some of them, without exaggeration, could give their lives for him. Gomlo was surprised at how popular Mr. Jongwon was in these parts, and she asked Lord Yomlo if he had any extraordinary abilities. But the main character immediately denied this and said that Jongwon just has good looks and nothing more. At that time, Jongwon stood in his estate and felt their passionate urge and urged them to release their passion outside right now. Zheng Wang considered himself, without exaggeration, the most handsome man in the entire universe. His chief advisor said that if he continued to earn money and fame in this way, he would definitely ruin his high status, and suggested that he change the way he earns money. But Zheng Wang didn't want to think about it. He answered him that they now have a high rank, on the contrary. The most important thing for him was to win back the day and state, and then they would really be able to rise from their knees and get real recognition. And until this moment, it was absolutely not important to him in what way to earn money. He believed that he would easily make money from these stupid and naive women. After all, if they themselves want to give them to him, why should he ignore their wishes? Zhang Wan, who was looking into the distance, asked his chief advisor Jonathan if everything was ready to go on stage to the fans. Jonathan reported that they had finished their preparations and Jun Wan could start his show. Zhang Wan was happy and was already counting how much he could earn this time. He hoped that the women would not disappoint him today. Unexpectedly for him, one of his guards ran and shouted loudly that there was a huge trouble. Jonathan asked him why he was shouting so loudly and what had happened. The panicked guard began to explain that right now two very strange travelers had crushed the two guards with a magical huge sphere and said that they called themselves the gods of wealth. Zheng Wang curiously asked if they really called themselves the gods of wealth. It was clear that he was extremely interested in this, but he wanted to understand what they meant. The guard replied that they wanted to join the Zheng Wan Folk Festival, and when the guards were asked to confirm their sincere intentions, they simply dropped a huge orb on us. And he said that this sphere just appeared out of nowhere, after which he clearly understood that these are the real gods of wealth, and he noted that they asked to convey that they had come to Mr. Munjan. This fact surprised Zhang Wan. He was interested in why they were looking for him and what they needed from him. And after that, he joyfully thought that it must be because of his intention to return the land of Dayun and the heavens themselves, decided to send him the gods to help him. But Jonathan did not believe the guards' words. He replied that in his entire life he had never seen any gods, and most likely they were ordinary impostors. And after that he asked the guard where these gods are now. He replied that they must now come here to meet the most handsome man in the whole world in person. Jonathan was alarmed that the two had come at such an extremely important moment. He was convinced that they wanted to harm Zhang Wan and completely destroy his reputation. Jonathan immediately turned to Zhang Wan and advised him for his own safety to avoid their acquaintance and asked permission to deal with them himself. Zhang Wan asked curiously what exactly Jonathan was up to and what he wanted to do with them. The counselor reassured Zhang Wan and told him that he had a plan to test their honesty and find out what was really on their minds. Jonathan went with a bodyguard to meet the two strangers who called themselves the gods of wealth and asked if he at least remembered what they looked like. The guard replied that they looked too arrogant and said that he could easily recognize them in the crowd if he had to. But suddenly they heard a voice behind them who turned to them and asked if they were looking for them by any chance. Jonathan and the guard instantly turned to the direction of the voice, and they saw in front of them the same two travelers who called themselves the gods of wealth. 
Yomlo managed to tell them not to worry and not to search, because they came to them themselves. The guard said in surprise that these were the same two arrogant people and pointed his finger at them. Jonathan looked at them and wondered how they got here so quickly. It puzzled him because he hadn't had time to prepare for their arrival. But he had a good plan, so success was guaranteed. After that, he replied to Yomlo that everything was true and they were looking for them. He introduced himself to them and said that Munjan had ordered him to find the gods of wealth. The first step in defeating the enemy in Jonathan's plan was to lull their vigilance. He politely invited them inside to show his hospitality. Jonathan politely led them to a special room for guests, where they would definitely not be disturbed. After the main character entered the room, he asked Jonathan where Munjan is now. Jonathan answered him that he would call him here now. He behaved extremely politely because he wanted to lull their vigilance. Gomlo noticed this extra ostentatiousness, which pissed her off, but she decided not to show it. Returning from the search for Munjan, Jonathan replied that he had not prepared for unexpected guests, and now he needed time. And while he will be absent, he offered the guests alcohol and treats, which they keep especially for travelers. Lord Yomlo calmly replied that they would wait as long as necessary, without any problems or questions. Jonathan left the guest room and ordered the guards to keep an eye on the travelers and not do anything on their own. Jonathan went to pour alcohol for the uninvited guests, but according to his plan, he added poison to the drink, which had neither color nor smell. After he finished cooking, Jonathan walked over to Jomlo and Gomlo with a tray in his hands. On it was a bottle of wine with poison and three stacks. Gomlo noticed that the alcohol that Jonathan brought smelled extremely good. She couldn't tell what exactly was in the bottle. The Supreme System decided to scan the contents of the drink, and it immediately alerted Lord Yomlo that it contained an unknown poison, but it did not pose any threat to him. Jonathan told the guests that this is an expensive wine that has been subjected to special processing and long aging. He said that the wine was made in the Tongshan Valley and that ordinary people could not make it by themselves. The second step in defeating the enemy in Jonathan's plan was to catch the enemy off guard when he least expected it. To do this, Jonathan poured poisoned wine into each prepared glass. He decided to make a toast and said that it was an extremely great honor for him to meet the gods of wealth and offered to raise these stacks for their unexpected meeting. The third step in defeating the enemy according to Jonathan's plan was to confuse the enemy by creating the appearance of complete security. He drank poison wine with them, but he knew that he had an antidote, just in case. With this, he was to completely dispel any doubts they had. Yomlo, who already knew about the secret ingredient in the wine, turned to Jonathan and told him that he had been making a drink for too long that would eventually kill him. What Yomlo said shocked me. He could not understand how our main character knows about the poison in the wine, because he did everything perfectly and imperceptibly. Jonathan quickly began to regurgitate and said that it must be some kind of joke because there is no poison in wine. After that, Lord Yomlo raised his hand and showed him a small vial containing an antidote. Jonathan could not understand how his antidote, which he always carried with him, ended up in his hands, but he decided not to show it and said that it was probably some unimportant trifle. Yomlo answered him that in this case, if it is some unimportant trifle, then it should be thrown away, and threw the vial with the antidote directly to the ground. Jonathan panicked and yelled at Yomlo to stop immediately and not throw it away, but it was too late. The vial was already flying to the floor in the room, flying past Gomlo. Jonathan rushed after the bottle trying to catch it and shouted that you shouldn't litter here just like that. It was clear that he was determined to play his insidious role to the last. He caught the vial with his teeth at the last moment and fell to the floor right in front of Gomlo. But she did not understand what was happening here and slapped him and ordered him to leave her immediately. Her slap turned out to be so strong that Jonathan immediately punched the wall in the room with his body and flew straight into the street. One of the guards saw Jonathan fly off the wall and asked the other what they should do now. But the other calmly answered him that according to Jonathan's orders, they had no right to do anything at their own discretion, so all they had to do was stand silently. Yomlo remarked that Jonathan was the ugliest of all he had met. He managed to get himself into a lot of trouble so easily. He flew over the wall after Gomlo slapped him and landed directly in the pond outside the window. 
He understood that now it was definitely over. Jonathan did not expect that he would fall for his own tricks. Eyewitnesses who were passing by the reservoir noticed that someone was in it, but they thought that it must be some kind of big fish. Suddenly, a huge, unknown creature began to appear near Jonathan. He was scared and did not know what it was. Jonathan had never seen anything like this before. It was a huge monster fish with four bloody eyes and extremely sharp, blade-like teeth. She was looking directly at Jonathan. After that, he was even more scared. He did not expect that such terrible and huge creatures could live in the water. He began to swim and run away from her. Jonathan screamed for Munjan to save him from the monster fish that was chasing him and wanted to swallow him. Jonathan's last thoughts before he died were frantic despair and the realization that there would be no trace left of him right now. His fate was doomed. The monster fish swallowed him without even noticing right in front of the eyewitnesses. Yomlo was also surprised by the appearance of this creature. He asked the system what it was and why it was so big. He had never seen anything like it. The Supreme System explained to him that it was a biological organism that was formed under the influence of dark energy and warned him that he should be careful. The Supreme System thinks this being has something to do with the Gathering Stone. Gomlo also felt the dark energy from this creature and said that this monster fish came to this land for their souls. Munjan, who had been waiting for Jonathan all this time, did not know that he was no longer alive. Therefore, the appearance of frightened guards surprised him. In a panic, they told him that Jonathan had been eaten by a huge sea creature, and now he was no longer alive. One of them believed that these two strangers were involved in this. Munjan was surprised and did not understand what creature they were telling him about. After that, he decided to ask where those two strangers are now. But at that moment, Yomlo came to Munjan and said that they had finally met and offered him cooperation. Gomlo noticed that Munjan was not as handsome as everyone told about him. Yomlo's proposal surprised Munjan. He asked him how they were supposed to work together after they had just killed his man. Yomlo took this as a refusal and asked him if he really refused to cooperate with them. Munjan replied to Yomlo that they had caused him a lot of trouble and said that he did not care who they were. After these words, the enraged Munjan took out his mighty sword and said that he would surely destroy them now. He said that he is Munjan, and he always pays people with the same coin that they pay him, and today he will show how good he is with his sword. Munjan rushed to attack Yomlo and aimed his sword directly at him and shouted that now he will kill him. A few centimeters remained before the sword pierced through Yomlo, but at the last moment the main character simply disappeared as if he had evaporated. This greatly puzzled Munjan. He couldn't figure out where he could have gone because just a second ago he was right here. Suddenly, he heard Lord Yumlo's voice behind him, who calmly said that it looks like Manto Village is extremely far from here. Munjan was extremely surprised. He couldn't understand how he managed to move so quickly without even noticing it. But he decided not to give up and make another attack. He rushed at him again with his sword. Munjan was determined to destroy him. He channeled his inner strength into his sword to make it extremely sharp. He was clearly confident that even if he wore the strongest armor, the sword would still be able to pierce through it. Yomlo continued to stand with his back to him, ignoring him. This made Munjan extremely angry and he aimed his sword straight into Yomlo's body. But no one expected what happened next with the sword. Munjan's sword simply broke into small pieces. Eyewitnesses who watched this were extremely frightened that Munjan's sword could not withstand the duel and they decided that they had better get out of here before it was too late. Munjan felt something strange after trying to hit Yomlo. It seemed to him that he was attacking not a person, but something much stronger than even a strong steel wall. But it did not cause any harm to Yomlo. He looked with his cold gaze directly at Munjan. He felt this look on him and couldn't understand why he felt so cold. He was in such a situation for the first time in his life. After this look, Munjan felt like a piece of meat on a kitchen board that was about to be cut. His body began to tremble involuntarily. He had never been as scared as he was now. But killing Jonathan was not part of Yomlo's plans. He showed him a map and offered him to go with him to the village of Manto for 50 gold coins. This shocked Munjan extremely. He did not expect such a turn of events. It was too low for him. He considered himself a man from a noble family, and now some stranger offered him to be a guide for a pitiful fifty gold coins. Munjan answered him that he would agree to accompany him, only for one thousand gold coins. Yomlo immediately agreed to Munjan's terms. 
it was still a pittance compared to the riches he had. At the same moment, he poured a whole heap of gold coins in the amount of 1,000 pieces in front of him. They were cast from pure gold. Munjan looked at this mountain in bewilderment and could not believe that gold could appear from nothing. He began to think about the words of the guard who had told them that it seemed that these guests were indeed gods. After a pause, Yomlo said to him that he must leave right now. His task will be only escort. After that, Jonathan turned to the guard and ordered him to call his assistant to him. But the guard instantly answered him that Jonathan had literally just been eaten by an unknown monster fish. Moonjan could not understand how he could so quickly forget the death of his friend Jonathan. And after that, he said to Yomlo that unfortunately he will not accompany him to the village of Manto. Yomlo was surprised by his answer and asked why he was refusing such a good offer. Munjan understood that this stranger wanted to get into the Jade Caves for treasures, but he explained to Yomlo that, along with the treasures, there were an awful lot of dangers in those caves that no one had yet managed to overcome. Every year, different warriors go there in search of treasures, but they all disappear without a trace, as if dissolving in the fog. Because of this, people nicknamed this place Death Valley. Yomlo said to Munjan that he knows that his brother is now the head of Manto Village, and therefore it will be even easier for him to get into the village. Munjun confirmed that he has relatives there, but they hate him. And he said that he also wants to get into the Jade Caves. The cousin gave him a map to get there, but only Jonathan remembered the way to get there, but now he is dead. Yomlo answered him that after that it was necessary to find Jonathan and ask him to lead them to the Jade Caves. Bewildered, Munjan asked him if Jonathan was alive now and if he could save him. An eyewitness intervened in the conversation and said that it was impossible, because he saw with his own eyes how he was swallowed by a monster fish. After that, Munjan said that if he really returned Jonathan, then he was ready to go with him, and he wanted a third of the found treasures. Yomlo told him that he didn't say he would bring him back alive and ordered the system to return Jonathan's soul. In a moment, a magic circle of glowing red color appeared on the floor. It was the system's method to bring Jonathan's soul back from the other world. With her powers, she opened a portal to the afterlife to bring his soul back to this world. Zhang Wan and his guards had never seen such powerful magic before. It struck them incredibly. Within a moment, the Supreme System successfully returned Jonathan's soul, and he appeared before them in the form of a ghost. The appearance of Jonathan in this form extremely frightened Munjan and the guards. Out of fear, they took a few steps back from the ghost. After that, Jonathan said to them that he already thought himself dead. He thought that it was Munjan who saved him. But he still stood frightened and shouted in horror, What the hell is going on here? Munjan's reaction stunned Jonathan. He asked why he was so frightened, as if he had seen a ghost. Frightened Munjan answered him that he is now a ghost. But Yomlo was not interested in all this, and he decided to take the initiative into his own hands. He asked Jonathan if he knew how to get to the village of Manto. Contact with Yomlo caused him extremely strange feelings. He was extremely comfortable around him. Jonathan wanted to hug him. Yomlo said that they had little time now and ordered him to draw a map. Jonathan immediately obeyed him and promised to do everything now. Munjan was surprised that Jonathan immediately began to follow Yomlo's orders because before he obeyed only him. While Jonathan was drawing a map to the village of Manto, Yomlo ordered Munjan to prepare the boat for the journey. After that, Munjan began to think that if Yomlo was so cool, then he could be useful to him. At that moment, a plan came into his head. He threw himself on his knees and began to hug Yomlo's leg, calling him master. But Yomlo was unmoved. He ordered him to immediately rise to his feet and forbade him to call himself a master because Munjan was not yet worthy of it. These words offended him extremely. He turned and headed for the balcony. He considered himself a man of noble origin, and now they dared to humiliate him so publicly. Yomlo thought that if he could not endure even that, how would he cope with the challenges that awaited them? At that moment, Ghost Jonathan finished drawing the map and made a detailed route to the destination. Satisfied with the result, Yomlo said that it was time for them to leave. Their target was the village of Manto. Munjan approached Jonathan's ghost with curiosity and asked him with surprise if he was really his thirsty assistant. He assured him that he was indeed the real Jonathan and said that at the last moment he was quite certain that he was going to die. After that, Munjan touched him, but the hand penetrated his body without feeling any resistance 
and he asked him if he was not dead now. Jonathan told him that now he feels just fine, his body became so light. Suddenly, a guard ran up to them and warned them that an extremely thick fog had risen in the street. They all went outside and saw the fog their guard had told them about. Visibility was almost zero. After that, Munjan said that they needed to leave, but they needed to go only along the path that Jonathan had drawn without deviating by a single meter. Yomlo was also surprised by such a thick fog. The Supreme System explained to him that because of the soul-gathering stone, the dead cannot enter the path of samsara, and therefore they are forced to gather here. And she added that most likely the soldiers who died here became ghosts and now constantly hang out here. Suddenly a loud cry was heard on the street asking for help. Yomlo immediately understood that something had happened and went to help. One of the guards was attacked by some unknown shag. He asked to remove this unknown creature from his body as soon as possible. Another guard agreed to help him and asked him to stay still while he filmed the creature. But when he came closer, he was extremely frightened and retreated from him. He saw that this creature had a human face. Ghost warned Jonathan to stay away from these creatures. He explained that they were golden-faced blood demons. He recognized the creature because he had done many experiments with them before. He said that their main feature is that they stick to the human body, and the harder you try to get rid of them, the more it will sink into the body until it is completely absorbed into it. The frightened guard asked him what he was supposed to do with it after that. Jonathan answered him that now this demon will drink his blood and he has no chance to get rid of him. He said that for Munjan's safety he would have to sacrifice himself and ordered the rest of the guards to find a long stick to push the victim into the water. The unfortunate guard shouted that he did not want to die and began to beg for salvation. Munjan said that he could not so easily abandon his man to his own devices and ordered to find a way to save him. Jonathan told him that he could not take his own safety so lightly, even if it involved his men. Munjan said that he will always take care of everyone's life, because this is his life principle. Jonathan suggested that in that case, you could try to take down the gold-faced blood demon and see if it was really made of gold. Unexpectedly, the magical power crushed the demon into small pieces. This was done by Lord Yomlo. He was surprised that they were frightened by this small bug, and quickly ordered everyone to get into the boat. The Supreme System reported that for killing the bloody demon, he received ten points. Yomlo was happy that he got the extra ten points so easily. What remained of the bloody demon fell at Munjan's feet. He took it in his hands and was surprised, because to the touch and to the smell it was like real gold. Ghost Jonathan, who was watching him, felt the awakening of a malevolent soul. He knew that Munjan had two souls, and in one of them, instead of pupils, there is money. He decided that he needed to stop him at all costs. After that, the evil soul Munjan told Jonathan that he needed to find more golden-faced demons and ordered to find them immediately. But the ghost told him that he should not take such a risk, and that he should continue his journey to the Jade Caves, because there are many more treasures to be found there. Munjan said that there is never too much gold, so you should take every opportunity to earn more. He said that wealth and respect can only be gained by taking risks. After that, Yomlo approached Munjan and told him not to listen to that cowardly ghost, and he said that he had come up with one way to lure even more golden-faced demons. His idea was to tie the people of Munjan to the bow of the box as bait. Jonathan was extremely angry at the idea, but there was nothing he could do about it. All he had to do was watch it. Suddenly something began to rise from the water. Yomlo was clearly convinced that it was the golden-faced demons that pecked at their bait, and his senses did not let him down. It was indeed a pack of golden-faced demons that had surfaced to find new victims. Munjan immediately saw them, and noticed that they were even bigger than the previous one, which means that they contain even more gold. This fact made him extremely happy. The golden-faced demons immediately rushed at the bait that had been prepared for them. But suddenly another golden-faced demon climbed out of the water on which an unknown creature was sitting. Yomlo noticed this and asked the system what it was. She explained that it was a ghost of possession that could control the body of the possessed, and added that it had surfaced to avenge the bloody demon they had killed moments ago. Yomlo spoke to the ghost of possession, or was it all the golden-faced demons he had? He believed that it was not enough for him. This made him extremely angry. He angrily replied that he would destroy them now and said that no technology in the world would help them defeat him. The specter of possession wanted to devour their souls 
and ordered the golden-faced demons to bind these brats immediately. Their tentacles began to quickly go towards the Lord of Yomlo when suddenly Munjan jumped out in front of him with a sword, and he said that he would protect Yomlo from the danger that threatens them. Munjan used the Majera sword technique and cut through the tentacles that threatened Yomlo, but this was not enough. The ghost of possession was coming right at them. He told them that there is no point in fighting him, because he is not material, so their weapons will not be able to harm him. The ghost of obsession turned to Yomlo and said that he was acting too defiantly, so he decided to destroy him first. The ghost of possession approaching Yomlo looked him straight in the eyes and said that he would now take his soul. But Yomlo did not listen to his threats and kicked him right in the face. This was a real surprise for the ghost because he did not expect this. The stricken ghost could not understand how he was able to strike him. Surprised, he asked Yomlo how he managed to do this, because it is impossible for an ordinary person to touch him. Yomlo calmly answered him that it was a myth, because he managed to hit him using the technique of ordinary people. Unexpectedly, the ghost of obsession felt an extremely strong energy coming from Yomlo. He did not believe that he could have a stronger energy. Using his magic techniques, he began to use a special trick that was supposed to destroy the ghost. Munjan, who observed Yomlo, noted that he remains calm and balanced in any situation. Yomlo's special trick was already ready to be used, and he directed his powers at the Ghost of Obsession to destroy him. But the energy sent by Yomlo passed right over Ghost's head, burning the top of his hair. Yomlo realized that he had missed, but he also noticed that his strength had greatly increased. The Supreme System explained that it was because he had absorbed the power of the Bloody Lord Gomlo, the enraged ghost of possession felt so humiliated for the first time. He didn't expect that he could be hit in the face so easily. But Lord Yomlo decided to consolidate his success and once again successfully delivered a humiliating blow to his face. Humiliated, the ghost of possession turned to Yomlo and told him that it was enough to punch him in the face and asked him to treat him with respect. Yomlo answered him that he was giving him one last chance to bow before him or he would simply be destroyed. The ghost of obsession couldn't understand why he was behaving so defiantly, but the power of energy emitted by Yomlo left him with no other options. The ghost decided to bow down to him and, falling on his knees, began to hug his legs and beg for mercy. He said he could help them get to the Jade Caves. Jonathan quipped to Munjan that this situation with the ghost reminded him of something unusual, alluding to the situation when Munjan also fell at Yomlo's feet. Yomlo asked the ghost what he meant when he said he could help them get to the Jade Caverns. The ghost told him that he knew a safer and shorter way, and even the Mother of Ghosts would not notice them. Yomlo asked in surprise who the Mother of Ghosts was. The Ghost of Possession was surprised that Yomlo had not heard anything about the Mother of Ghosts. He answered him that despite the fact that he has incredible strength and energy, it is far from a fact that he will succeed in defeating her. He continued to explain, and said that if the Ghost Mother had not taken them here, they would have turned to ashes a long time ago. For them, she is the Savior Spirit. Surprised, Yomlo asked the system why the ghosts now cannot enter the path of Samsara. She told him that they were hindered by a stone of gathering souls through which they could not pass. While they continued to sail, the possessed ghost told Yomlo that it is forbidden for men to be here. If he does get here, he must die. His corpse will serve as fertilizer for the mother of ghosts, and his soul will become a medicine for ghosts that will help forget all difficulties. Yomlo replied that this ghost mother was kind of crazy and suggested that she must have been abused in a relationship. He thought that the possessed ghost was also a man and asked him how his soul could be used to prepare medicine. But this greatly dispelled the ghost, and she answered him that she was indeed a woman. This information came as a surprise to everyone. No one could have thought that she was a woman. She warned Yomlo that no one in this world could defeat the Ghost Mother, and it would be better if he left the place immediately. But Yomlo calmly answered her that he is not afraid of such challenges, but on the contrary, arouses interest. Yomlo's answer surprised her. She noticed that Yomlo is not afraid of anything. Knowing about the difficulties, he continues to move forward. She also liked his cocky smile. It seems she liked him. But the next moment she realized that she was helping her husband with her own strength, and she could not understand how he managed to charm her so easily. At that moment, a revenge plan appeared in her head, and they went to the Jade Caves, where she promised to lead them. 
At that time, something strange was happening in the kingdom of the Mother of Ghosts. One of the ghosts walked confidently around the kingdom. She had the task of bringing her ghost sister to her mother. She went to her room and said that the Mother of Ghosts was calling her to her, but she heard no answer. Therefore, she decided to look into the room herself to make sure of her guess. Her sister ran away from the kingdom again. The window in the room was completely open. The ghost immediately realized that she had escaped again. It was not the first time, so it did not cause her great surprise. The sister was tired of being in this place and decided that she needed to escape from here at any cost. Suddenly, the red whip caught up with her. She realized that it was her sister who had caught up with her to prevent her from escaping. She managed to grab her by the leg and immediately began to pull her towards her. She managed to do it without any problems. She told her that according to the order of the Mother of Ghosts, no one was allowed to leave this place and added that any resistance was useless. This made her extremely angry, and she replied that after that it would be better to kill her if she could, for as long as she lived she would constantly resist. The ghost sister said that she would gladly destroy her if the ghost mother wanted it, and began to persuade her not to resist. She told her not to forget how they died. They were killed by men. And she added that the ghost mother wanted the best for them and said they needed to go back so she wouldn't get angry. At that time, the ship from Yomlo and Munjan was approaching the village of Manto. The ghost kept her promise and helped them reach their destination. When they descended to earth, she told them that they were the only men who had managed to get here alive. And she added that it was time for her to leave them. That was her plan. She left them in the middle of the clearing because she knew that her other sister was there to enchant and destroy Yomlo. Suddenly they heard a voice. They realized that this sound was coming from a gazebo that stood not far from them. The second sister felt someone approach her. She thought it was the ghost mother, but when she turned around, she was extremely surprised. In front of her stood Yomlo, Munjan, and Ghost Jonathan, all three men. She wondered how they managed to get here alive. Suddenly behind them, she noticed that her third sister was standing there. She gave her a signal that she had brought these men to her. The second sister realized that she had not tried men for a long time because the mother of ghosts only makes medicine out of everyone, and she thought that it was a waste. She couldn't wait to dry their bodies. She began to seduce them and said that she had been waiting for them for a long time. She used a special charm technique to lure them. Her body was barely covered and her gaze radiated a magical glow. Streams of her feminine energy went to entice new guests. She knew that no man had yet been able to resist her charms. Absolutely everyone lost the ability to think sanely and showed their primitive animal behavior. The third sister who had brought them here watched her sister's charms with fascination and realized that even she wanted to knock her to the ground. Her energy of seduction was so strong. Looking at them, she was sure that they were hooked. She remarked that they were quite beautiful and she even enjoyed looking at them. Yomlo also liked her. He did not expect that there could be such beautiful girls in these parts. But the Supreme System informed him that after scanning her, it found a yin-yang pill in her body, with the help of which she can be in two worlds and not be affected by dark energy. The beauty told them not to stand at the entrance but to come to her. Munjan and Ghost Jonathan did not expect such a quick invitation and were extremely happy when they heard it from her. But before they could get to her, they suddenly started kissing each other. Through the spell of the ghost girl, they fall in love with the first person they see in front of them. Yomlo was now alone with the girl and shyly looked at her. She asked him whether he wanted to join her and plunge into true love with her. Yomlo immediately came up, hugged her by the waist, and asked if she could give him something. She answered him, if he is so impatient, how can she refuse him? She still didn't know what he meant. Yomlo looked her straight in the eyes and asked her to open her mouth. This request surprised her extremely, and she began to feel awkward. She had never been offered this before. She meekly opened her mouth and exposed her snow-white teeth. Yomlo immediately stuck his hand in her mouth and began to search for what interested him. This surprised her immensely. She thought that it was such a strange fetish of his. She had never felt anything like this before. Taking out his hand, Yomlo said to the system that he did not find the yin-yang pills in her. But the Supreme System replied that it was in a completely different place. There are not so many options left. Yomlo was a little embarrassed by the information he received from the system, but he was never intimidated by the difficulties. So he immediately got down to business, and it seems that this time everything went well. After successful manipulations, the yin-yang pill was already in his hands. 
He didn't expect the pill to be so big. She was extremely surprised by the fact that he was not affected by her charms, and she did not understand how he dared to take her yin-yang pill. She angrily told him that he was too insolent, and if he didn't want to do well, then she would have to act more cruelly. In an instant, she changed her form. A red mark glowed on her forehead and threatened that now she will simply eat him. Yom Lo saw her true appearance and was glad that he had taken the yin-yang pill out of her body first, otherwise he would have been sick for a long time. She turned into a mutant ant monster and angrily said that he has no chance to defeat her because she has no flesh, so his attacks will not be able to harm her. At that moment, she immediately rushed to attack him. But approaching Yomlo, she felt something strange. With each step towards him, she felt the approach of death. It was extremely strange to her. It pressed down on her with such force as if a giant would crush her like a tiny ant. She had never felt so small. This feeling did not last long, but it was enough to understand that Yomlo is extremely dangerous. The third sister, who watched all this, could not understand why she returned her appearance and became an ant. The second sister began to think about what options she had to save herself, because she had no chance to escape from him. Suddenly, she had a plan. She ran to her sister and brought her blade to her throat. In a panic, she began to tell that it was her plan, and she was only forced to obey it, and that it was because of her that she turned into such a terrible monster. Shocked, the ghost sister asked her what kind of play it was and asked if she could play along, but she angrily told her to shut up and started threatening to kill her. The ghost did not understand why her sister wanted to kill her. After all, they have been together since childhood and have always protected each other from evil men. The other sister had almost bitten her with her deadly bite when suddenly, an unknown force flashed past the ghost. It was the blow of Lord Yomlo who hit the second sister right in the face with all his might. The blow was so powerful that it easily threw her several meters away. The ghost sister looked at Yomlo in surprise and couldn't believe that he decided to save her, even knowing that she wanted to get rid of him. Suddenly she felt so relieved, she realized that she couldn't hate men like him. Yomlo asked Sistema why she suddenly shone and what was happening to her. She replied that he had succeeded in purifying her soul. Her body began to glow brightly, and her appearance also began to undergo changes. In just a moment, she turned into a real beauty with magnificent forms. Only the bald patch on the top of her head reminded her that she was a terrifying ghost just a second ago. Surprised, Yomlo looked at her and could not understand what had happened. The Supreme System explained to him that her negative energy had dissipated and she had regained her human appearance. Yomlo received an additional task from the system. He needed to cleanse the souls of the unfortunate people of this island and stop their bloody revenge on the male race. For this, he will receive 5,000 points. Yomlo thought he could do it easily. The ghost girl told him that she would take him to the Jade Caves until the ghost mother noticed them. But Yomlo replied that he could not just leave without saving their souls. The emotional sister asked if he was the one about whom the legends constantly spoke. Yomlo asked her what she meant. She told him that according to legend, one day an incredibly kind man would come and save them from the curse of revenge. Yomlo said that he was this person from the legend and asked to take him to the ghost mother. On the way to his mother, he asked her why Munjan and the ghost of Jonathan still hadn't regained consciousness. She replied that they would return to normal when the spell wore off. They came to a building and she said that the mother of ghosts was there. Yomlo smelled an incredibly strong corpse smell and said that probably quite a few men here died at the hands of their mothers. She replied that the ghost mother constantly used men's corpses to make fertilizer from them. An older woman with red hair suddenly came out of the building. She could not believe her eyes. Yomlo stood calmly and looked her straight in the eyes without any fear. She was surprised that a man managed to get all the way here. Alive. She thought it was some kind of illusion. She angrily told him that living men could not be here and added that he could go further only by becoming a dead man. Yomlo politely answered her that there must have been some misunderstanding between them and promised to fix it now. Yomlo's answer moved her. She had not met such polite men for a long time. For the first time in so many years, they spoke to her with respect and did not consider her a monster. Yomlo felt the burden on her soul and already knew how he could free her heart from hatred of men. An angry woman told him that all men are liars who only know how to speak beautifully to get a woman's body. Yomlo answered her that she had nothing to worry about so much. He tried to calm her down, but it didn't affect her and she continued to glare at him. 
She swung at him with her stout hand and said that she would now destroy him like a lousy dog. But Yomlo easily repelled her attack and applied his skills to knock her out. He believes that it was the Ghost Mother who brainwashed them into hating men so much that they wanted to destroy everyone. But he already had a plan to save all these unfortunate ghost women. Finally, Ghost Jonathan and Munjin woke up from the spell. Yomlo told them that they had recovered almost in time. Munjan got sick of him kissing Jonathan's ghost and asked what happened to him anyway. Yomlo calmed them down and explained that they were under the influence of magic, but that didn't matter now. He had a plan, and he needed their help. Munjan angrily yelled at ghost Jonathan to stay away from him and then told Yomlo that he was ready to help him. He snidely said that he needed to steal one person, namely the mother of ghosts. These words stunned her. It had been an extremely long time since she had seen the ghost mother up close. Moreover, she also rarely appeared in public. Yomlo said that they needed to somehow lure her to appear before them. She asked him what his plan was to get her to come out to them. Yomlo answered her that since the mother of ghosts likes to make medicine from men's souls, he has just two, Munjan and Jonathan. These words frightened Munjan. He could not believe that Yomlo really wanted to use them as bait. Yomlo calmed them down and promised that he would not allow them to make medicine. And he said that after a successful operation, he would reward him with a huge amount of gold coins and give him the opportunity to choose anything from the jade caves. Munjan answered him that this was an extremely generous offer on his part and asked what they needed to do. Yomlo knew that what he was going to do now would not please them very much, but that was his only plan. Catching them by surprise, he kicked them with his foot in the direction of the palace of the Mother of Ghosts. As a result of the blow, they flew straight to the place where Yomlo wanted. They landed right next to the Ghost Mother's palace almost simultaneously. The cobblestones in the yard cracked when they landed. After a successful landing, the barely conscious Munjan said to Jonathan that it looks like they are already there. The noise they made when they landed made one of the ghosts come out to see what was going on. It hovered right over their bodies. Jonathan said he thought he saw a goddess before him. Munjan agreed with his words. The ghost that appeared in front of them screamed angrily when they realized that they were men and quickly called her sisters. When Jonathan and Munjan realized that there was a ghost woman in front of them, they got scared and started screaming in terror. They did not know what to do now. They couldn't think of anything better than to just start running away from her. But their plan failed almost immediately. The ghosts she summoned had already blocked their way and made it clear that no one would be able to escape from here. Staring directly at them, Ghost Jonathan said that it looked like their end was near. But Munjan pulled himself together and reminded him that they were decoys and accordingly should behave like decoys. Jonathan asked curiously what it was like to act like a decoy. Munjan, using his example, decided to demonstrate to him and went straight to the ghosts. But it seems his plan was not perfect. In a second they were tied on the ground and could not say a word. One of the ghosts said that there have been no men here for so long that they must be shown to the mother of ghosts. This idea was extremely liked by everyone and they immediately decided to call her to show their find. The ghost mother heard the commotion and went out to check on them herself to see what was going on. Munjan was lying tied on the ground but he managed to see her. He couldn't believe it was really her. The ghost mother came right up to them and said in surprise that there had been no men here for a long time. She was truly incredibly beautiful, with an extremely beautiful figure and forms. She looked disappointedly at the new victims and said that it was a pity that they were such monsters. She wasn't sure if they would be good for medicine. Her reaction greatly infuriated Munjan. He asked in surprise whether she really considered him a monster. This struck his pride extremely hard. He managed to free his head and angrily replied that she should have taken her eyes today to see his beauty. Jonathan lay quietly on the ground and wondered why Munjan could never take any criticism, especially when it came to his looks. Munjan used his charms to completely free himself from the rope that bound him. He advised her to open her eyes and look at his beauty once again. But for greater effect, he decided to use his main trump card. He removed his cape and exposed his toned torso. Munjan showed her his abs and happily asked her if she really thought he was ugly. The ghost mother was disappointed in his impudence. But she heard rumors about him and she wanted to meet him for a long time. She had a surprise for him and ordered to bring his sister to them. She spoke contentedly so that he wouldn't be too surprised at how his sister looked now. Munjan could not believe that his cousin was also here. Suddenly a girl who was his cousin came out of the building. 
but it was obvious that she was being held here by force, against her will. Approaching them, she told Munjan to save her. She didn't want to be here. The mother of the ghosts said fiercely that she should be grateful to her for the opportunity to see her brother before his death. Munjan heard her voice and immediately recognized her. It was indeed his cousin. But when he saw her face, he could not understand why it had become so disfigured. When he last saw her, she was an extremely beautiful young woman. Jonathan decided to make a bad joke and said that he had heard that women change with age, but not that much. The mother of the ghost told Munjan why he was not happy to meet his sister, because they had not seen each other for such a long time. Stunned, he asked her what she had done to her. How did she manage to turn a beautiful girl into this monster? She told him to ask his sister what had happened because it was also his fault. And she added that it happened to her because of corpse poison. And she gave him a choice either to marry her sister or to give all his blood to make an antidote for her. Munjan replied that he wanted to choose nothing. She asked him why and added that he didn't like his cousin. She suddenly intervened in the conversation and told Yomlo not to listen to the mother of ghosts and to run away immediately. Dissatisfied with her words, her mother said that she needed to understand the simple truth that men look only at appearances, and their sweet speeches are designed only to deceive. She was sure that they had only one goal, their body. But Munjan interrupted her and replied that it was not true. A sister will always be just a sister for him and he doesn't care about her appearance. The ghost mother didn't believe him. She was sure that he dreamed of his sister and when he saw her now he did not care about her. She raised her hand, pointed her fingers at Munjan and ordered to kill him. The sister told the mother of ghosts that it was not his fault, but that she herself had only thought of herself from the beginning. She was disappointed in her. Her words hurt her and she was sorry that she couldn't convince her to see the essence of men too. She already had her own plan for such a development. She glared at her, and with all her might she hit her right in the chest. In this case, if it is impossible to convince her, then there is no point in keeping her alive either. The blow sent his sister flying several meters back. After this, the chances of surviving are extremely slim. Munjan shouted in shock to his sister and asked if everything was all right with her. The ghost mother rhetorically asked him if he at least felt sorry for his sister. Without waiting for an answer, she said that she would now bury him here as well. Using her magical powers, she directed glass tips, sharp as a blade, at him. They were flying right at him and it looked like they were just going to destroy him now. Jonathan, who was standing by, wanted to save Munjan and told him to hide behind him until it was too late. But unexpectedly, with the help of some magical force, the tips flying at Munjan broke right in the air into small particles and ceased to be a threat. What happened surprised the mother of ghosts, because no one had ever resisted her before. Suddenly on the lawn, someone said that it was not serious and that he was disappointed by her behavior. The mother of the ghosts could not understand who was saying this and why she began to feel as if something was pressing on her. It was Yomlo. He told her that she doesn't know what true love is, and he said that he would now show her how it is. He explained that love is the feeling of two people, not the intentions of one, and that it is impossible to force people to love each other. The ghost girls, who also saw Yomlo, thought that he was too rude to their mother and decided to capture him. They started running straight at him at breakneck speed. But Yomlo was unmoved. He ordered them to kneel and used his special magic technique. They were so bound that they could not even move and were forced to bow before him. He shut them up and said that he was going to teach them a good lesson today. Munjan admired Yomlo and said that he was proud of him. Suddenly the ghost mother turned to him and asked if it was him. She had seen him before. Yomlo was surprised because he saw her for the first time in his life. She angrily went on to say that he was a traitor and a scumbag. She was just going to look for him and did not expect that he would come to her himself. Yomlo could not understand what the hell was going on and why she was calling him a scumbag and a traitor. She added that throwing her life away for a scumbag like him was the dumbest decision in her life. Yomlo realized that there is another person in this world with the same appearance as him, and most likely he is still the scum here. Yomlo will have to blow in his place now. The enraged ghost mother immediately charged at him. She had only one desire, to take revenge on him. Thanks to her speed, she was behind him to attack where he did not expect it. She swung at him and used all her strength to hit him, but her blow did not manage to harm him in any way. Thanks to his skills, he parried her blow with a magical defense. She couldn't understand how he did it. She felt how powerful his energy was. 
and she said to him that he is not human. Yumlo confirmed her words and said that he had been dead for a long time. She rejoiced at his words and said that God's punishment had overtaken him. She asked him if that larva threw him and he decided to kill himself because of it. Yomlo decided to play along and replied that he did not want to hide anything from her and had been looking for her for a long time to tell the truth. His answer surprised her and she asked what truth he meant. He explained to her that he left her for a completely different reason and wanted to eliminate the misunderstanding between them. But the mother of ghosts replied that she would not believe a word he said and still wanted to kill him. He said that he actually had an incurable disease. The supreme system appreciated his good acting. Yomlo's answer stunned her. She asked what he meant. Yomlo apologized to her and explained that he could not allow her to waste her youth on him and therefore made this choice. He went on to explain that he was forced to make her hate him and it was the most painful choice of his life. He understood that he had gone too far, but he had no other choice. The ghost mother could not believe her eyes and listened to him in amazement. Yomlo felt that although it was a formulaic technique, he managed to impress her. He used his acting skills to the fullest to cleanse her soul first. As she listened to him, he decided to continue and said that he knew she hated him. But since God had given them the chance to meet again, he should tell her everything. He apologized for offending her but said that this time he would not give up and if God gave such an opportunity he was ready to die in her arms. She looked at him in shock and asked if he was really telling the truth now. He swore to her, if there was even an iota of falsehood in his words, let Lord Yomlo burn him to ashes. But suddenly, a female ghost interrupted their conversation and angrily said that it was all a lie and that not a single word of his should be believed. She added that ever since he had been dating the mother of ghosts, he had constantly cheated on her and secretly took possession of her family's property before disappearing without a trace with his mistresses. The ghost girl said that after that he also promised her to go together, but he left her, and if it wasn't for him, she wouldn't have been kicked out of the family. Stunned by these words, Yomlo asked her who she was. Munzun suddenly began to realize the true essence of the one he called the Lord. Jonathan said that it's all because of his appearance, with such good looks and wealth. It's normal that girls run to him one after the other. The ghost girl angrily answered him that he once defiled her body, and now she cannot even recognize it. And she added that if he does not want to bear responsibility for his actions, then he should at least think about his child, who is not guilty of anything. These words stunned Yomlo, because he could not have predicted such a turn of events. A transferred child came out of the estate and told Yomlo that he was his father. Yomlo looked in surprise at what was called his child and said that it was some kind of delusion. This duck seems to be even older than himself. The child said to him that it is impossible to escape from something so easily, and it is time to pay alimony for all the time you were gone. These words became a big mistake and made Yomla extremely angry. He has already decided how he will pay for alimony. He hit the child with all his might right on the chin. The supreme system explained to Yomlo that if he killed anyone here, he would fail the mission. The unhappy mother ran up to the child who had been hit, and in frustration she asked Yomlo how he dared to hit him. But he was clearly convinced that it was a lie, and said that even lies should have a limit. The enraged mother questioned whether he really believed that it was all a lie. And after that she took out a green ring from her pocket and asked him what he would say about it. The ghost mother saw it and recognized it. It was her engagement ring. She continued and told that once upon a time he had promised that he would run away with her and marry her. He had given her this ring as a sign of loyalty, but he must not have seen that the name of the Mother of Ghosts was engraved on it. Yomlo thought that perhaps his copy in this world was still that goat, and asked the systems to come up with something to help. She handed the ring to the Mother of Ghosts and told her to look and see for herself that it was all true. She took the wedding ring in her hand and really recognized it, but looking at the engraving on it, she clearly did not expect to see. That soft egg will be engraved there. The mother could not believe her eyes, because she knew what was written there before that. She didn't understand how he managed to change the engraving so imperceptibly. Yomlo thanked the system for helping and saving him in time. He said that he could never give such an important thing to another person and showed the ring on his finger and said that he always kept it with him. The angry mother replied that it was impossible and was sure that this was his next trick and deception. Yomlo replied to her that he knew her goal was to destroy all men, but to slander a faithful man like him was too unfair. 
His words angered her even more, but all she could do at that moment was scream that it was all a lie. The ghost mother ordered everyone to leave the two of them. She didn't want to listen to them anymore. Reluctantly but forced, they followed her order and left them alone. She approached Yomlo and unexpectedly returned to her true form. Yomlo saw this and remarked that she was indeed an extremely beautiful girl, and he could not understand how that scumbag could leave such a woman, and decided that he would definitely punish him for the fact that he spoiled his reputation. The beautiful mother of ghosts told Yomlo that they needed to catch up on everything they had missed during this time and ask them to never leave her again from this day forward. And they went alone to the room to catch up on what they had lost. The disappointed mother of his child could not believe that he had managed to charm the mother of ghosts so easily. She did not want to leave it like that and decided to call someone. She knew that the ghost mother always kept bloody corpses with her. It is with their help that she wants to get even with Yomlo. She and her child went to a secret forest. There they found the bloody corpses of the ghost mother. But now they were in hibernation. The frightened child said that he did not expect the mother of ghosts to keep such scary creatures around her. And he asked in surprise how mom was going to wake them up from a deep sleep. She replied that earlier mother always once told away how it can be done. It is needed only for this. Her child's energy to awaken the monsters. Using dark magic, she pierced the body with her hand. She became completely obsessed with revenge and didn't care about anything. Dark magic began to consume the child's body. It was a forced ritual of sacrifice for the purpose of awakening bloody corpses. She asked not to blame her for this because only male goats are guilty of this and added that soon they will suffer in the torments of hell. The ritual was successfully completed and she managed to awaken the monsters. With their help, she wanted to get even with Yomlo and the ghost mother. At the same time, they were already alone in the room. She asked him if he needed help or if he would do everything himself. Yomlo asked in surprise what she meant. She answered him that all this time she was extremely sick and therefore they would not leave this room for at least several days. She noticed that this time he became somewhat modest, which was not characteristic of him before. It was as if a completely different person was in front of her. But he quickly answered her that he was ready for anything and began to act. Suddenly, strange sounds were heard from the street. Yomlo asked in surprise what that noise was. He had never heard that before. But the ghost mother knew that sound extremely well. She immediately recognized and answered that it was the bloody corpses that came straight to them. Yomlo asked what kind of creatures he had never heard of. She explained to him that this was her secret weapon that she had cultivated for many years. They are extremely cruel and feed on blood. They have no feelings except hatred. They are just killer robots, she said in fear. If they really got to this island, then this world will soon turn into hell. Yomlo took her hand to support and comfort her, and calmly said that she should not worry so much because he himself can handle this little thing. Bloody corpses were approaching the estate from the side of the forest at breakneck speed. The ghost women were extremely frightened and could not understand what was happening. Bloody corpses were coming straight at them. It was even impossible to count them. It seems that the ghost mother was extremely worried about her safety. A disappointed mother sat on one of the monstrous creatures and controlled them. She had not felt so satisfied for a long time. Approaching the ghost sisters, she ordered them to disperse. And if not, she promised to destroy them all. They couldn't believe that she dared to disobey the ghost mother's order. But she authoritatively replied that she didn't care about everything now and ordered to call her queen from that day on. One of the ghosts answered her that she could not be queen because she did not deserve it. But she was determined and said that she did not have time to chat with them because she had much more important matters that could not wait long. One of the ghosts said that if it weren't for the mother of the ghosts, they would have turned into ashes long ago, so she won't let her be harmed. The angry mother got tired of arguing with them and ordered to destroy everyone who stood in their way. The bloody corpse immediately began to follow her order and headed towards one of the ghosts she had previously called her sister. The speed surprised her immensely. She would not even have had time to react in any way and repel the attack. Literally in a second, her body was torn in half. The bloody corpse didn't even feel any resistance and swallowed what was left of her. The angry mother said that she was not going to have any discussions or negotiations with anyone. She was simply obsessed with her desire for revenge. And she added that they were really good sisters. But now they upset her. 
She did not understand why they did not sympathize with her suffering. Suddenly, Yomlo came out to them and said to them, Is this really what is called female friendship that he has heard about all his life? And he said that he would not allow anyone to kill people at will. The angry mother answered him that there was no need to make a hero out of himself and added that she knew his true nature. She compared him to a bug that constantly crawls under her feet. Yomlo replied that she should not be so insolent with him because he had done nothing wrong to her. But she didn't care about him. She wanted only one thing, to tear them all to pieces. Yomlo said with interest that he did not want to be torn to pieces. He seemed to mock her and her words. It was fun for him to watch her get angry. She was tired of arguing with them and listening to their arguments. She ordered the bloody corpses to tear them all apart and leave no one alive. They obediently went to carry out her order. Lord Yomlo was the first on their way. Approaching him, they opened their jaws to cut his body in half. A whole flock of bloody corpses surrounded him from all sides. The mother, who was watching this, felt extremely happy and satisfied at that moment. After all, the dream of her whole life will come true in just a second. She joyfully shouted to them to roar louder. For her, it would be the most pleasant sound in the whole world. But suddenly they stopped in front of Yomlo without causing him any harm, and one of them said that they were not going to kill him and said that it was only an order from that woman and they would not carry it out. The ghost mother, who watched this silently, couldn't believe that her weapons, which she had carefully prepared for so many years, had surrendered without a fight. Yomlo happily replied that they were lucky to be so smart. At the last moment, they felt the deadly energy, and it became a signal to them that it is better not to touch Yomlo if they do not want to die. Yomlo ordered them to capture her. She was appalled that they had ignored her order, since it was she who had given them their freedom. But it was already too late. The bloody corpse followed his order and gripped her tightly, leaving her no chance to break free. He asked the Lord Yomlo what to do with this woman next. They were ready to do whatever he ordered, even tearing her to pieces. But Yomlo decided to give her a second chance and talk them into letting her go. When she found herself in front of Yomlo, she said that this was some kind of big misunderstanding because she just wanted to joke about the bloody corpses. But they immediately denied this and told Yomlo that she was deceiving and really wanted to use them for her own purposes. His words made her extremely angry and her eyes instantly filled with rage. She replied that they should be more grateful because she was the one who woke them up. But it was in vain. They have not become her tool and she will have to come to terms with that. After that, she decided that she had nothing to lose and, calling them senseless scumbags, decided that it would be better for her to carry out her revenge herself. She gathered all her dark energy into one point and directed it at Yomlo. She was sure she would destroy him now. But her attempts were in vain. The dark energy smashed against Yomlo's barrier and did not cause him any damage. She was surprised that he managed to remain unharmed again. It was one of her strongest techniques, which she had to spend a lot of energy on. But Yomlo stood calmly in front of her and said that if she really wanted to defeat him, she should use stronger techniques. She was extremely angry at his arrogance and self-confidence. She said that if she couldn't defeat her by force, she had another method in case that happened. She kissed him right on the lips. She tried to suck all his energy, and without her he can't do anything. But as she kissed him, she felt something strange, as if a waterfall was rushing straight into her mouth with crazy speed. In a moment there was nothing left of her. She exploded and it turned out to be her last kiss in this life. Yomlo said that before you take something from another person, you need to find out if you can do it or if it will turn against you. The ghost mother, who was still watching this, was stunned by the power Yomlo possessed. For the first time she saw his majesty, when the bloody corpses approached Yomlo, such a strong energy came from him that they were forced to surrender to him. She was sure that he was ten times more powerful than her. After that, she turned to her ghosts and said that from now on their master would be Yomlo and everyone should obey him without any hesitation. They gave him a new title, Father of Ghosts. The Supreme System informed him that the additional mission was completed and he received 50 points for it. But Yomlo was surprised and asked why only 50, because she promised him 50,000 points. The Supreme System explained to him that this was due to the fact that it was not without sacrifices. If he had not completed the mission by force, he would have received the full number of points. Yomlo angrily replied that it was not his fault, because she had exploded herself. 
He spent so much effort on it, and now it turns out that it was all for nothing. Yomlo told her that he didn't want to deal with it anymore and let her look for someone else. The Supreme System answered him that it was not her fault, but that it was all because of his actions. She literally accused him of the fact that the woman herself got into his lips. Angry and disappointed, he sent her to his uncle. For the first time in all their time with him, the Supreme System was angry and resentful of him. She gave him all this power that he has, and he treated her with such ungratefulness and contempt. She promised herself that one day he would regret it, but not now. She decided it would be best for her if she reassured him, and she explained that not everything depends on her, and it is not profitable for her either, that he was deducted points and promised to compensate him for everything. Yomlo was interested in her words about compensation, and he asked how she was going to do it. After that, he and the ghost mother went to the jade caves to find all the hidden treasures. On the way, she asked him what kind of soul-gathering stone it was. Yomlo answered her that it is a stone that keeps you here and makes you wander aimlessly with the same ghosts, preventing them from entering the path of Sansara. And he said that soon she would have the opportunity to see for herself what he meant. They came to the entrance to the Jade Caves, which was right in the forest. Yomlo wondered if this was the same entrance to the famous Jade Caves, where many people had tried unsuccessfully to enter. From the outside, it looked quite poor, but he said that he would go find out if there were any valuable artifacts inside. Entering the middle, the Supreme System scanned the contents of the caves and informed him of the contents. There were 966 military tracks of the first class, 109 military tracks of the second class, one military tract of the fourth class. The exchange price was 68,000 points. Suddenly, after examining the cave in its entirety, Yomlo saw that he was not the first to find himself here. Jonathan and Munjan were already here. They also claimed the treasures. Yomlo asked them in surprise what they were doing here. Before, he wondered where they had gone. But now it became clear to him that they had gone to steal treasures. Munjan answered him that they do not steal, but borrow. He meant that they would read the tracts and bring them back. There were so many of them that his eyes were running in different directions. But Yomlo was determined, and Jonathan and Munjan were not part of his plans. He ordered the system to exchange everything for points except the Level 4 military treatise. The exchange was successfully completed, and he received 61200 points. All but one of the military treatises have disappeared. Munjan couldn't understand what happened. He thought it was Jonathan who did something, but he denied any involvement. After that, he angrily ordered the ghost to find him the secret techniques immediately. Jonathan obediently began to carry out the order and went in search, and in just a few minutes he found something interesting. He called them to himself and showed them a huge magic stone, dark blue in color. He was right in the middle of the cave and enlightened everything around him. Jonathan moved closer to him and he felt something strange. He could not understand why he was so pleased to be near this stone. He was convinced that it was definitely not an ordinary stone. Yomlo guessed that this must be the gathering soul stone he had been looking for all along. The Supreme System confirmed his guesses. Suddenly the enraged Munjan threw the stone over with his foot and said that it was just a meaningless piece of stone and he needed the rare military artifacts he came for. The stone broke into small pieces that lay just on the ground. Jonathan couldn't believe that Munjan just took it and smashed it, but he calmly said that one should not attach so much importance to it. He believed that this stone was worth absolutely nothing. Yomlo, who was standing behind him, was filled with mad rage and glared directly at Munjan. He felt his gaze, which made him feel dangerous, but he didn't even have time to turn around. How unexpectedly Yomlo hit him with all his might right in the face. Munjan's act made him so angry. As a result of the impact, he flew several meters away. It was as if he had put all his efforts into inflicting maximum damage on him. In pain, Munjan began to scream frantically. It was so loud that even the mother of ghosts, who was standing at the entrance to the cave, heard his moan. She thought it was Yomlo's cry and decided that she should go to his aid. Once inside, she saw a strange picture in front of her. Yomlo was holding a huge stone block in his hands, which he wanted to push right into Munjan. Only Jonathan protected him from this unpleasant procedure. 
She thought they were having such fun games that she wanted to join them. But the Supreme System warned Yomlo in time that even if the Soul Gathering Stone was broken, it did not affect its properties in any way, and said that he should return home to build Inferno. Yomlo heaved a sigh of relief because he was already clearly convinced that he had walked such a long way in vain. He threw a stone block which he almost pushed into Munjan on the ground, and he said to the Mother of Ghosts that they should already leave here. She asked with interest where they were going next. Yomlo mysteriously said that their next destination was hell. He was referring to his world, which he is building from scratch, searching the world for resources for it. The ghost mother repeated with interest, Hell! And they went to his world together. Their adventures were just beginning because Yomlo still had a lot to do. Sometime later, Munjan recovered from Yomlo's powerful blow. Not understanding what had happened to him, he asked Jonathan about it. But what he saw surprised him no less than the blow he received today. The appearance of the Mother of Ghosts, who ran to him with a hug and said that she was extremely glad that he had come to his senses. He was convinced that it was the Mother of Ghosts, but he could not understand why she had suddenly become interested in him. He still did not know what happened here. She told him that he had scared her terribly and added that there should be no more breaking things around here. She explained to him that although her appearance had changed, she remained the same Jonathan. It is worth admitting that she really liked her new body. Munjan is stunned by the new changes and asks her what happened here while he was in blackout. She told him that after the ghost mother had left her body, she had turned into an empty vessel and Yomlo had decided to give him her body. And she also added that from now on, Munjan can call her aunt or Jonathan. After hearing her, he started to laugh loudly. His laughter could be heard throughout the cave. His aunt asked him why he started laughing so loudly. She thought he was amused by her reincarnation story. But he replied that it was all God's will and said that from now on the jade caves were completely in their possession. But his aunt reminded him that Yomlo had completely taken away all the precious things that were here, and now it was just an ordinary cave like any other. Munjan was extremely upset when he remembered that all the military treatises had disappeared. And he said that, they tried in vain and risked their lives to get nothing in the end. He was extremely saddened by the fact that they could not get any benefit out of it. But she said that this was not all, and added that Yomlo took all their treasures from the ship. Munjan was filled with insane rage and did not understand why Yomlo had not left anything for him. He simply lay down on the ground in grief. Such a miserable existence saddened him to the core. He told her to just kill him. He does not want to have such a sad fate that was eating him from the inside. But the next words gave him hope. She said that Yomlo had left it for them before leaving, and she gave him a strange book. Munjan got up quickly and could not believe his eyes, because it was a legendary book of traveler's secrets. He didn't believe that such a thing existed before, but now it gave him new hope and meaning in life. Meanwhile, Yomlo had already moved to his world together with the Mother of Ghosts, which had now become an empty container. Returning to his world, he told her that this was his possession. But he was surprised that no one met him and started calling someone. But why no one responded to him? Only the Supreme System welcomed him back. He asked her in surprise where everyone had gone, and if it was her fault, and also reminded her that she had promised him compensation. He remembered this, because he is not so easily deceived. She explained to him that he returned to his world through a special portal that does not allow outsiders to enter. Their souls went to the path of Samsara. He can return them only after he builds Inferno. And she informed him that all the necessary materials for construction have been collected. The Supreme System asked if he wanted to build Inferno right now. He told her that he did not want to delay even a second in order to start construction right now. The Supreme System immediately began to carry out the order and began to create Inferno. 15,500 points were withdrawn from his balance. In an instant, the inferno was built by her magic. Yomlo watched the result with interest and was happy that he finally succeeded. The Supreme System congratulated him on the successful construction. Now Inferno has an initial level, a village, but he will be able to improve it later. But that wasn't all she had in store for him. Her mouth was full from the inside, as if something suddenly appeared in it. In a moment, she spat out an extremely beautiful artifact. Yomlo asked in surprise what it was. He had never seen anything like it before. 
She said it was his extra reward. Three strange pearls hung in the air around the artifact. The black pearl is the gem of Qing. It is a plant that can be absorbed by the soul. Gray is a dark pumpkin. You can feed it to a war horse. And white is a three-colored fruit. You need to find out its effect yourself. And also the artifact itself is a mirror of gathering souls. With its help, you can find special souls. But suddenly the artifact began to move away from them upwards as if fleeing into the abyss. Yomlo asked in surprise why it flew away from them. The Supreme System explained that it had already found a special soul and offered to go see what it had caught. The soul-collecting mirror flew straight to the path of Samsara. Having flown to him, she began to emit a magical glow and as if began to draw his soul into her. In just a moment, the mirror successfully retrieved a special golden soul from the path of Sansara. Yomlo saw her for the first time in his life. He was clearly convinced that these were legends, but now that he saw it with his own eyes, all his doubts disappeared. Suddenly the golden soul began to fly away from them. Yomlo could not understand why she was running away. But he wasn't going to leave it like that and said that she wouldn't be able to escape so easily. He immediately went to catch up with her. He did not yet know what awaited him and what adventures he would get. Catching up with her, Yomlo said that she had no chance to escape from him because he was much faster and more powerful than her. In a moment, he grabbed her tightly with his own hand to prevent her from continuing to run away. Having caught her, he said that now they will find out what it is. Suddenly, right in front of them, the soul-gathering mirror opened an unknown portal. Surprised, Yomlo asked the system what it was and what it was for. The Supreme System answered him. The mirror opened the possibility for them to move between dimensions. Before he could say it, it dragged them into interdimensional space along with the golden soul he had just caught. They found themselves in a strange place. Yomlo felt that he did not feel any emotions here, which seemed extremely strange to him. He asked the system what this place was. She explained to him that it was an interdimensional transport route, and she said that he should let go of the golden soul and return to his world because the soul can go to another dimension, but if it chooses the wrong place, then he can be in extremely great danger. But Yomlo replied that he wanted to deal with this soul. He felt some unknown forces in her that interested him. But the Supreme System thought first of all about his safety and forced the release of the golden soul against his will. This upset him immensely, but there was nothing he could do about it. She added that the passage was closing soon and he needed to turn back immediately. He saw an interdimensional entrance right next to him. He thought that this was his world. He had already started the transfer process, but suddenly the Supreme System said that this was the wrong entrance. It was already late. Yomlo did not hear her and went to a new dimension. He ended up in some office building. What he immediately saw as soon as he moved surprised him. He watched as a man pointed a gun at an innocent girl. He heard their dialogue. The man demanded that she trust him and it seems that she was ready to die for him. She said that this was probably their only chance, and told him to kill her immediately. He was pointing the gun directly at her and was almost pulling the trigger. How suddenly he heard someone approaching him from behind. He did not yet know that it was Yomlo. This surprised him, because he clearly did not expect this. He was clearly convinced that no one in this building would interfere with them. But he did not have time to react, as Yomlo hit him on the leg with all his strength. It felt like he almost killed him. Suddenly, the stranger hit the ceiling. Satisfied with himself, Yomlo told the girl that he always helps people when he sees injustice and asked her where they are now. But she glared at him and replied that if he had just killed her brother, then she would have to kill him herself. Her answer stunned him. This was clearly not what he expected to hear from her, as he had just saved her from death. Suddenly, the man he had sealed to the ceiling began to fall to the ground. After landing, only a red stain of blood remained from him. His sister hoped to the last that he was alive, but Yomlo was clearly convinced that he had no chance of survival. He asked her where they were now, and maybe he could somehow help her. He also turned to the system and asked what this place was, but he did not get any answer from it. This was the first time since he had died, which surprised him greatly. Suddenly, the man he had just killed began to recover and told his sister that he was all right, except that he spent the reincarnation card, which was his last trump card in this dimension. Rising to his feet, he asked Yomlo who he was and why he had not seen him before. He was surprised by the great power that the main character had. He thought he must have exchanged points for superpower. 
Yomlo heard his words about the card of reincarnation, and he was extremely surprised by this fact. He already understood that he had entered an extremely interesting dimension, but he did not yet know what awaited him ahead. Her brother Leon said that everything was getting more and more interesting and reached for something in his pocket. He didn't yet know what he should do with Yomlo, who had just killed him. He took his pistol from his pocket and removed the safety. So far, that's the only thing that came to his mind. Leon pointed the gun at Yomlo and asked him who the hell he was and where he came from. He knew that it was not so easy to get into this world. Yomlo stood in front of him in only his underpants and asked him if he always pointed a gun at people he had just met and said that he was a simple traveler. But this answer did not seem to suit Leon. He told him that he was sure it wasn't that simple because he didn't have any marks on him that meant he wasn't on their side. Leon said that from the analysis he had done, he was absolutely certain that he had been sent by the chief curator. Leon was clearly convinced that the curator was afraid that he would win. Yomlo still did not understand what he meant. He stood silently and looked into his eyes, not understanding a single word he said. He did not know which chief curator he meant. Leon suddenly said the word, exchange, out loud. And in front of his sister Gabriella appeared an unknown touchscreen, which was just in the air. She began to pick something out, poking her fingers along it. But she noticed that suddenly all the cards went up significantly in price. Unexpectedly, Leon became extremely angry and said that they were unfairly underestimated, because the fact that they managed to reach the last stage was not just a coincidence. He said that now he would show him his true power. But his threats were empty sound for Yomlo. With his magical skills, he made them sit on the ground next to each other. And he said that he did not know any curators. Moreover, no one sent him anywhere, but he got here by accident and threatened them that if they did not want to die, they should immediately be told what kind of place this was. The wounds that remained after the first accidental meeting with Yomlo remained all over his face. Leon asked in surprise, How could you even get here by accident? But Gabriella's sister intervened in time before Yomlo killed her brother and told them that they didn't really know where they were either. She began to tell that she was an ordinary office worker without any purpose in life, until one day when she was surfing the internet as usual. A strange notification flashed on her monitor screen. On it was an offer to learn the meaning of life and try to live in the real way. And two selection options, confirm or reject. She knew that she was tired of living as a zombie. She felt worthless and did not see her future at all. So she became interested and accepted the offer. An unknown energy pulled her through the monitor into this world. When she woke up in this dimension, she saw an extraordinary number of unknown people near her. Only after some time, she realized that she was in a real hell. Hell is the most suitable word to describe this place. Brother Leon said that since then, complete disappointment and fear have constantly haunted them. Their only goal is to survive. They called this place the Extermination District. The main curator made them experience every level in this world. People trying to survive died one after another. When they managed to complete a level and make it out alive, they received points that could be exchanged for items or to upgrade their survival methods. Yomlo, who listened attentively to their story, noted that the points they were awarded with were extremely different from what the Supreme System was giving him. He thought, maybe they have a Supreme System too. But since his Supreme System does not communicate, it hardly had anything to do with it. Concluding his story, Leon said that Yomlo was most likely completely unlucky and suggested that most likely they would all die here soon. Yomlo let it pass and asked if they had ever seen the chief curator they had told him about. Gabriella told him that he never showed his face. He simply explained to them what to do in order to leave this place and go through all the levels he had prepared alive and added that Leon always helps her and if he dies then she will have no chance to go through all the levels so everyone she gives him the points. Suddenly a large gate opened. Yomlo didn't know what that meant. Simultaneously, Leon and Gabriella said that it had begun. They both knew what was coming, but this was a first for Yomlo the Traveler. Suddenly, a screen lit up, on which it was announced that in order to survive in this place, they need to live in this task for seven days. It stated that the reward for completing the task was 10,000 points, which could be exchanged for a high-level function card and a resurrection card. By local standards, 
It was one zero 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 points. Yomlo was surprised that they could get as many as one zero 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 points for this task. In his opinion, this was enough for several lifetimes. Suddenly, an unknown magical door appeared in the wall, which served as a portal to the future task. Yomlo said excitedly that they should go at once to claim this huge reward. It was an extremely high number of points for him. But Leon answered him that this excitement is temporary, because soon he will be able to feel real disappointment. Everything was not as easy as Yomlo thought. Yomlo replied that there is no need to lose optimism because not everything is as bad as it seems. Jomlo was determined for this task and believed that nothing could stop him from getting these points. They went together to complete the task. Yomlo encouraged them and emphasized that the most important thing is not to get lost. As they walked around the building, Gabriella thought they were just walking in circles and concluded that they were most likely lost. Leon replied that, in his experience, they were indeed lost, and that this was the first time since they had been in this dimension, and said that they should be careful. Yomlo felt a strange feeling that he hadn't had since he died. He didn't feel any energy in this place. This seemed extremely strange to him. Suddenly, Lino said that he knows how to get out of this mysterious labyrinth. He already had his own plan. He told Gabriel to turn around because he needed to do something. By the time she turned around, he had begun to follow through with his plan and said that he had been feeling a bit unwell lately, so he might be smelling a bit. Yomlo asked him whether it is possible to get out of the labyrinth with the help of urine. He couldn't believe that this was his only plan. Gabriella was silently ashamed and decided that it was better to remain silent. Suddenly, their supreme system announced that it had discovered that one of the participants was defecating, and therefore it was forced to initiate a punishment process. Leon was surprised by this and almost managed to say that he didn't even have time to finish the process. How suddenly blood began to splash in his underpants in different directions. It became extremely painful for him. He started frantically, started screaming in pain. It was a real despair for him as for any man because it was a blow to his dignity. Blood began to drip from his pants. It was obvious that the Supreme System had punished him for starting to relieve himself in the wrong place. His sister Gabriella, frightened, asked him if he was all right. But Yomlo answered her that the consequences were visible on him because he had just had his genital organ cut off. Leon took out the recovery card and regretfully said that he would have to use his points again, but during the process he got frustrated with one thing. Their supreme system has informed that recovery is not possible until the participant fully completes the task and wished him a pleasant game. Leon looked at his severed genital organ and was extremely angry when he heard their system's response that for the next seven days, he would not be able to regenerate a part of himself. Yomlo said that in this case, it is necessary to act by force. He already had an idea of what could be done in this situation. Leon asked in surprise what he meant. He was extremely disappointed that in the near future, he would have to be without his penis. Yomlo gathered his magical powers into his fist and spoke what it meant. That he will have to take the initiative into his own hands. He cut a huge hole in the wall with his own strength. Leon was surprised to see Yomlo's power and asked him why, with such power, he didn't do it earlier. But Yomlo ignored his words and told them to go with him immediately. Gabriella admired Yomlo's power and was sure that with his help, they would definitely be able to complete the task and return to their world. But Leon was angry that some stranger would be able to weaken his reputation. He considered himself the only one who could complete all the tasks without any help. Gabriella noticed that Leon froze in one place, as if not going anywhere, and told him that they should trust Yomlo. She considered him the only hope of survival. Passing through the hole in the wall that Yomlo had just made, they noticed something strange. Gabriella was the first to say that something was wrong. She added that in her opinion, they seemed to be going in circles. Leon told her that they needed to look around. Maybe they were missing something that could be important to them. He said that there might be suspicious things here and that force would not help here, but only measured and confident actions. At the end, he said that they should act better with their minds. Leon was glad that he had regained the lead and he made sure that they should believe him and listen to his advice. Yomlo looked him in the eye and asked him what he meant when he said that it was necessary to act wisely. 
He thought Leon thought he was stupid, but he snidely replied that he still had to prove his mental abilities. He said that if he wanted to survive in this dimension, then he should obey him because he was the only one who could complete this task successfully. Suddenly, Gabriella intervened in their verbal altercation and said that they needed to come to her to see something strange. Yomlo, starting to walk, pushed Leon with his shoulder and managed to smear him on the wall. It was too easy for him, and he replied that he was on his way to her right now. Leon was offended and told him that he was a sadist, but he could not oppose anything to his strength abilities. As they approached her, she said she had never seen anything like it in this dimension. Before her eyes was a strange window. Suddenly they noticed that unknown blood began to flow from the window. It was no joke that they were alarmed. When the blood flowed down the window, the inscription, I'm leaving, became visible. It came as a complete surprise to them, because they did not expect to see such a thing. Yomlo said with interest that it was getting more and more interesting and mysterious here. This became a real challenge for him, and he clearly showed a desire to deal with it. Gabriella read the note on the window in horror and couldn't understand who could have left it. She was most interested in whose blood it was. Looking further, they saw a bloody corridor. Gabriella asked the boys if they thought it was too dark and scary. Suddenly, she heard sounds coming from the corridor, as if someone was trying to call them. Gabriella asked them if they heard it too. Yomlo did not answer, but it was clear from his enigmatic look that he too heard the sound of the phone. Leon only confidently said that it had begun. He was clearly confident that he understood the whole situation, but this was only the tip of the iceberg. In the corridor, there was an old bedside table with a landline phone from the last century. It was clearly heard that someone was frantically calling him. Yomlo gathered courage and headed in the direction of the phone. Gabriella asked in surprise where he was going, but Yomlo confidently answered her that he wanted to take this damn call. He said that the creature calling them wanted to get them out of here. It looked more like a joke. But when he did pick up the phone, it was clear that he wasn't going to joke with them. He asked over the phone who it was and why he was calling them. Yomlo was completely sure of himself as a man, so he had no fear. The interlocutor was puzzled by such insolence and did not even know what to respond to such an attitude towards him. The interlocutor did not even have time to really answer. Suddenly, some strange sounds were heard from the corridor. To Gabrielle, it looked like something unknown was approaching them at an incredible speed. This scared her immensely. Leon took out his gun again and said that she better take cover while he destroyed the guest that was approaching them. At this moment, he felt like a real defender. Yomlo was the first to see the unknown creature. It was right at the end of the corridor, and it was approaching them extremely fast indeed. Leon pointed his gun at the creature and suddenly realized that it was nothing but a ghost. He had seen them before, so it was not difficult for him to recognize that this was it. He fired the entire horn of his gun at her, but his bullets passed the ghost without causing any damage, even without making a single wound. The ghost had long hair and one eye was twice the size of the other. She only scornfully scoffed at the pathetic attempt to harm her. Leon was surprised to realize that his attempt had not met with any success. His gun failed to do any damage to the ghost. The ghost started screaming at them frantically, trying to scare them. It must have made quite an impression on them. Leon began to stare at the screen in a panic, trying to find some special technique that could help him deal with the ghost. But it turned out to be unsuccessful, and he said that they should flee right now. But Yomlo was clearly not satisfied with this. He decided to approach the ghost to deal with it himself. The ghost watched her actions in surprise, trying to understand why he didn't get scared of her and run away. The ghost began to threaten Yomlo. It was clear from the words that he was going to destroy him and tear Yomlo to pieces. But the only thing that bothered Yomlo was that for some reason only ugly ghosts of the female kind always happened to him. He swung his right hand and slapped her hard to quell her anger and bring her to her senses. Yomlo wasn't the least bit afraid of her, as he had enough experience to destroy the likes of her. Hitting her on the cheek, he said that she should behave more quietly and not be so loud. Her noise was extremely annoying to Yomlo, so he did just that. When she regained consciousness from the slap, she apologized to him. Yomlo was glad that she could speak human language. He didn't even expect that. She opened her jaw and screamed fiercely that she was a brutal slayer. She couldn't understand why she had decided to apologize to this pathetic man. 
That is why Yomlo decided to remind her who is the boss here and again swung at her terrible mouth. From his repeated blow, seven teeth fell out of her mouth. Yomlo did incredible damage to her because the dentist's services were extremely expensive by any measure. The ghost could not understand what was happening to her. No one had ever offered her such strong resistance that she could not resist. Yomlo told her that if she wanted him not to kill her, then she should listen to him. He made it clear to her that it was better not to joke with him. He really wanted to talk to her. He explained to her that if she continued to make a mess, then he would not have any more ceremonies with her. But suddenly the ghost started to run away from him and went to the place where she came from. She could not understand what was happening. It was the first time that anyone was not afraid of the ghost. She hadn't seen anything like this before. That's why it came as a shock to her. But Yomlo quickly turned her back and told her that he would not let her go so easily. He had his own plan for her. Opening her mouth with the remains of her teeth, she replied that he shouldn't treat her like that if he wanted to have a good time here. She explained that, according to the rules of this task, they need to set off certain triggers and added that not a single person has yet managed to get out of here alive because she prepared the traps herself. Yomlo answered her that from that day on the situation has changed radically and if she does not help them pass this task, then he promises to kill her. The ghost was surprised at Yomlo's impudence and said that he should look more realistically at the situation that developed between them. She asked him if he wanted to feel the fear he felt before. She knew that he used to be a miserable man with no purpose in life. Yomlo got angry and replied that he was giving her one last chance to realize her mistake. The ghost apologized to him and said that she was willing to help them and swore that they could rely on her. Leon and Gabriella listened stunned as they spoke and could not believe their eyes that they had witnessed a human being able to tame a ghost. After all, Yomlo did not have any weapons. She turned to the window on which there was a bloody inscription and said that this was their key to the exit. The ghost pointed at it with her finger and said that they should remove this window and then they would be able to find the information they needed. An unknown force immediately broke the window with the bloody inscription into separate pieces. Gabriella was the first to notice the next clue that would help them get out of this task. In the place where the window had just been, there was a new inscription with a certain number of numbers. It was like a puzzle for them. They still didn't understand what they needed to do with it. This was one of the ghost's tasks. She said that they have three seconds to remember the numbers that were given there. After three seconds, this inscription will disappear. And if they do not have time to remember, then they will never be able to get out of here. As she said, after three seconds, the numbers began to disappear from the wall, as if they had never been there. The ghost asked them if they managed to remember what was written. But she was told that her handwriting was too terrible to fully understand what was written. This answer infuriated her beyond measure, for it was one of her most successful and elaborate tasks that she had managed to come up with. But Yomlo silently reminded her what could happen to her if she did not go to meet them and the ghost humbly told them to follow her. She went to the phone and explained that she needed a girlfriend to pass this stage. It was work for Gabriel. She meekly approached the ghost. The ghost decided to remind them that if it weren't for Gabriella, they wouldn't be able to complete this task and would be stuck here forever. But Yomlo showed her his fist again and explained to her the future prospects if she decided to make fun of them. The ghost quickly realized this and apologized to him again. The ghost told Gabrielle that she should dial the numbers they saw on the wall over the phone, but she shyly answered that she could not remember them in such a short period. She needed more time. The ghost remembered Yomlo's threats and replied that there was nothing wrong with that and agreed to help her. But suddenly she realized that she also did not remember all the numbers that were written. She made the task too difficult, even for herself, and she added that it was entirely her fault because she wasn't going to let them out of here so there was no point in her remembering it. Yomlo's eyes filled with rage, and he angrily asked if this meant they had no chance of successfully completing this task. The apparition frightenedly replied that he should not be so nervous and replied that they had another way. She called the system and confirmed her identity. The confirmation was successful, and the Supreme System asked what the ghost wanted to do. She said she wanted to change her password. The Supreme System, after confirmation, asked what password she wanted to set. She gave her a new password of three sixes. The Supreme System reported that the password was successfully changed, 
the ghost uncertainly told Yomlo that the password had most likely been changed, and a new password was indicated on the wall, which she asked the Supreme System to set. Three sixes. Gabriella, who saw the new numbers on the wall, suspected something was wrong, but the ghost said that now she can dial these numbers on the phone, so she listened to her. After dialing three sixes on the phone, some unknown magical door appeared in the wall near them. The ghost said that a further path awaits them, but she does not know what will be there. Therefore, they will need to take care of the successful completion of the task themselves. But the ghost added at the end that she had one more request, but she didn't know if they would agree to it. Yomlo assured her that he would try to fulfill her wish. He was surprised by this, but he still asked what she wanted from them. She had only one wish. She asked that if they could successfully reach the end, they would kill the head curator. It was obvious that she too was tired of following his ridiculous orders. Yomlo answered her that he would not be able to pardon someone who mercilessly plays with other people's lives, and said that protecting the weak is his vocation. After that, the three of them went to an unknown door without any understanding of what would be waiting for them there. But it did not scare them in the least. After Yomlo's answer, Ghost realized that he was unusual. She knew that she would not have the strength to deal with the curator herself, so she was forced to ask for help from stronger characters. Yomlo was her only hope. Passing through the door, Yomlo wondered how long they had been on this task. Gabriella replied that they were only here for one day. Leon said that they needed to find the key to the cipher before the time ran out, because then they wouldn't be able to complete the task. Yomlo noticed two doors at the end of the corridor and pointed them out. Leon said that this is the door of life and death. He explained that this seems simple, but in fact there is a trap here because it would be too easy for such a task. Gabriella asked what they should do after that in such a situation. It seems that she had the least understanding of what was going on here and therefore completely trusted men. Yomlo immediately replied that they should trust him and said that he would handle the selection of the necessary doors himself. Leon asked in surprise if he even had a plan to choose the right door. Yomlo replied that the plan had been ready for a long time and had been waiting for this moment to test it. To everyone's surprise, he had only one plan. Choose the necessary door at random and go on unknown adventures. Leon was surprised by such an approach to a task that could decide their fate, but he could not object to him because he had no other plan. Yomlo chose the left door at random. Doors of death. It was a real surprise for everyone. Leon was the first to speak. He convinced them that a decision that could determine their fate should not be taken so lightly. Yomlo asked him if there were any other options besides this, and said that the unknown cannot be predicted just like that. Leon said that everything can't be that simple here. He believed that the curator had specifically put them before the choice. In his opinion, by choosing this door, they may fall into another of his traps. Gabriella told him that they had no other choice, because they would have to open one of the doors anyway, and it was impossible to tell in advance which of them would turn out to be the right one. But suddenly, Yomlo said that he still had one idea. They didn't yet know what he was up to, but they had no other choice. Yomlo suggested that we simply open one of the doors and see for ourselves what was happening there. Leon did not understand Yomlo's logic. That everything was as simple as it seems. He was clearly convinced that no matter what they chose, certain death awaited them. But Yomlo ignored Leon's fears and, swinging his hand, went to break down one of the doors. He struck with all his might and managed to crush one of them. Gabriella and Leon watched Yomlo in surprise and could not believe their eyes. They had never seen a tableau of mighty warriors with their own eyes before. He managed to break through a huge hole where the door had been just a second ago. Satisfied with himself, Yomlo apologized to them for hitting too hard. But it should be noted that he was not good at anything else. It was too expected. Leon told him that he was too smart for the task, and the curator clearly couldn't think of what they would do in this way. Gabriella suddenly saw that between the two previous doors, another one appeared. Leon noted that whoever the main curator was, it seemed that his only desire was their destruction. Whichever door they chose, the only thing that awaited them was their own death. Yomlo replied that he did not care about the curator and invited them to check the contents of the door together. But before that, Leon spoke to him that he had one question. 
He was interested in why he behaved so confidently as if he had already completed this task many times. Yomlo told them not to be offended, but he considered them too weak. And he said that despite this, he would help them pass this level. His words angered Leon, who fiercely denied it and said that they couldn't be weak because they managed to reach the last level and scolded him that Yomlo was definitely not an ordinary person. But Gabriella intervened in time in their conversation and began to convince her brother that without Yomlo, they will not be able to pass the last level. So it is better to trust them if they want to get out of here alive. Her arguments made him change his mind because more than anything in the world, he wanted to get out of this dimension alive. And he also realized that he had never seen Yomlo afraid of anything. It was as if it was a normal routine for him because he even enjoyed the process and gave the impression that he himself could destroy this world. Leon could only hope that Yomlo would not become their enemy because in that case they would have no chance to defeat him. But suddenly this suspicion disappeared and the door opened a portal in front of them. They immediately passed through it and found themselves in a new location. They found themselves on a sandy beach and could not believe their eyes. The warm sea washed the shore on which there was not a single person. They felt like they were in paradise. Gabriella could not believe that they managed to pass the last stage and said that she had not seen such a bright sun for a long time. But Leon got suspicious because they didn't get any message from the system about the completion of the stage and said that they need to be vigilant. Suddenly his sister smelled a rather familiar smell of smoke. It was the smell of barbecue coming from behind the rock. Without any suspicion, they went to the source of the smoke. They saw in front of them a strange man in Hawaiian shorts who was grilling meat on a grill. He sensed their presence and said that he finally managed to see them and asked if they had enjoyed their adventures. Leon looked him straight in the eye and asked if he was the main curator of this dimension. The man immediately denied his words and said that he could not be the main curator because he was just cooking barbecue, and he said that he lacked some ingredients. In the same second, he pierced Leon's body right through, taking out his heart. His last thought before dying was a curiosity about why it was always he who got hurt. The unknown man said that he did not know what a fried heart would taste like and said that the three of them were really brave because God had created such a beautiful world for them and they did not want to enjoy it, which became extremely offensive to God. At the end, he said that he would have to kill them. Gabriella looked frightened at her brother and at his pierced body from which the heart had just been taken out. Blood gushed out from the place where the heart was and he cried out in pain and fell to the ground. Gabriella fell to her knees in front of his body and began to beg him not to die. The bleeding was so strong that literally in a few seconds he was lying in a pool of his own blood. She knew that she had only the last hope. The only thing she could do in this situation is to exchange her points for a treatment card. But she was surprised that there was no reaction. She was unable to use the card to heal Leon. The unknown man told her that he had taken away their ability to use their cards, and he said that he was disappointed in their training. The man assured them that any of their skills would not be able to pose any threat to him, because he considered himself the best in this world and ordered them to call him God. Gabriel was angered by his words and decided to take out her special gun to destroy the insolent man. Without a second's hesitation, she fired three magic bullets at him that were supposed to destroy him. The man said that she did not quite understand him correctly. He stood calmly while the bullets flew at him in order to reduce their damage to zero and asked her if this is all she is capable of. It was obvious that he was not at all surprised by what Gabriella had done. He put the feather in his hands in front of him and easily stopped the bullets that didn't even manage to pierce it. In honor of their first meeting, he also wanted to show his skills. He already had his own idea. He said that if they liked guns so much, he wanted to shoot them too. He used the technique of exchanging for weapons. And in a second, a gun of gigantic dimensions appeared in front of him. He did not expect it to be so huge and said that it would be better if it were normal size. Gabriella glared at him while Yomlo observed his abilities. He remarked that he himself would not mind learning such a thing. The man ordered his gun to open fire. Within a second, the gun fired a huge bullet at Gabriel. She flew at a crazy speed and raised a huge cloud of dust behind her. Yomlo ordered her to hide somewhere because then it was his business. He never liked it when someone tried to insult the weak. 
He stood in the way of the bullet, which was only a few meters away. It seemed that a collision was inevitable. After that, he decided to concentrate his energy in his right hand. And after waiting for a sufficient amount to accumulate, he directed her attack to destroy the bullet. His energy that he sent to attack took the form of a bloody monster that initially swallowed the bullet without even feeling any discomfort. And then she stopped right in front of the man and began to roar furiously at him, as if warning that she would destroy him now. He agreed that it looked quite menacing, but he reminded them that they would not be able to do him any harm. He was clearly convinced that they were too insignificant to threaten him. He spread his hands in different directions and said that now he will show them his true power. It was obvious that Yomlo had already gotten the better of his constant chatter, so he didn't want to waste any more time. In an instant, the energy he directed at the man left him with only bones and Panama. His skull was thrown onto the brazier where he was grilling barbecue. Yomlo said that this supposed god is somehow too weak. He did not think that he would be able to defeat him so easily. The remnants of his consciousness could not understand how this happened, because he reduced their damage from the attack to zero. He asked the system to show the properties of this unknown young man. While the Supreme System began scanning Yomlo, he approached Leon's body and said that he could still be saved and that even the lack of a heart wouldn't affect that. The Supreme System has completed its analysis and reported that it has not been able to find any data on it, so the degree of threat cannot be determined. Using his magical skills, Yomlo directed them to resurrect Leon. Literally in a moment, his eyes opened, and this meant that the resurrection was successful. The man's subconscious could not understand what kind of guy this is, and how he got here in the first place. He was even more surprised that he managed to resurrect Leon, because no one can do that except God. Suddenly, Yomlo turned his gaze to what was left of the man he had just defeated. The subconscious understood that he had just been discovered. Therefore, there was no point in hiding any further. The subconscious began the process of restoring the flesh. In a moment, he managed to fully recover, and he said that they would not be able to get rid of him so easily. Leon rose to his feet, and the only reminder of his death was a hole in the place of his heart. But besides that, there was something else strange. Chamley noticed that he seemed to be frozen in one place and did not react to the environment in any way. Yomlo ordered her to take Leon with her and hide so they wouldn't disturb him. The man looked directly at Yomlo and did not understand why there was no data on him. He was interested in how he managed to get into this world without his knowledge, because he knew that the chief curator could not allow strangers to enter this dimension so easily. But he decided that it didn't matter who it was, because it was not allowed to make a mess here. Moreover, skills can be tested only in a real match. Gabriella led her brother behind a nearby rock. While she was watching what was happening there, her brother was somehow strangely looking at her body. For some reason, Leon decided that the best thing he could do now was to bite her. Gabriella jumped from the sudden pain and could not understand what had happened. She turned around and saw that it was only her and Leon. But suddenly she realized that only a shell remained of her brother. What guided him in the middle was definitely not his consciousness. At that time, the man said to Yomlo that now there will be a real male fair fight between them which will make it possible to identify the stronger one. Yomlo was fully prepared for this development and replied that he was looking forward to it. He was heartbroken to see the skills this man possessed. The man said that he should not be so insolent because he does not yet know who he contacted. He used his favorite technique, which greatly increased his physical and strength properties. In a moment, his body turned into a real mountain of muscles. His growth increased tenfold. It was a card of the strongest form. Yomlo did not expect that this man could reincarnate. This surprised him a little. The mountain of muscles told Yomlo that now he would show him what he was capable of. He was clearly confident that he would easily defeat him. And he started running straight to Yomlo with a crazy speed. He was convinced that he would not be able to react in time. Yomlo was so taken by his chatter that he couldn't wait to get even with him. The man decided to use his favorite trick. He clenched his hands together forming a single fist, and using all his strength, hit the yoke as if with a sledgehammer. At the last moment, Yomlo decided to use the technique ghost form. His fist hit with all his might at the place where Yomlo had just been. He was clearly convinced that he had no chance of surviving such a thing. The force of the impact was so powerful that the blast wave even reached Gabrielle, who was far away from them. The satisfied man said that no person in the world would be able to survive such a blow. 
No one has yet been able to hold out against him for more than three seconds. But thanks to his tactics, Yomlo easily managed to avoid the blow by using the ghost form technique. He said ironically that he would have to disappoint him. The man could not believe his eyes. He was clearly convinced that he had destroyed it. Yomlo calmly told him that he was expecting something more. The man's reception failed to impress him. He was extremely angered by Yomlo's arrogance and arrogance. No one dared to talk to him like that for a long time. He swung at him again and struck him. But since Yomlo's body now had no material sheath after the technique he had used, he struck himself with such force that he managed to cut off his own hand. Yomlo scornfully asked him what it feels like to beat yourself up. The man got so angry that he shouted that he would kill him anyway. Since Yomlo was near his head, he couldn't think of anything better than to just hit it. This was his other fatal mistake. With his own hands, he hit his own head, which flew dozens of meters away from him. Falling on the beach, his subconscious wanted to use a recovery technique. But at that time, Yomlo came up to him and was about to crush his skull, when suddenly he told him not to do this and offered to talk. Yomlo answered him that this only meant his defeat, and he said that he came to his senses too late. He should have thought about it sooner. Yomlo crushed his skull, leaving only his eyeballs, which flew in different directions. Suddenly he saw something that flew out of his head. It was some sort of magical digital card. At first glance, it was not clear what it was, only that it was locked was visible on the screen. Taking the card in his hand, he asked in surprise what the hell it was. Unexpectedly, the card said that the one who kills the Game Watcher gets the Watcher card. She congratulated him on becoming a new observer. In a moment, the synchronization between them began. In the middle of the beach, only a pillar of light was visible. Within seconds, the new Supreme System reported that the card usage information had been downloaded into his brain. Yomlo said that he was getting more and more interesting here. He ordered the new system settings panel open. She instantly followed his order and opened the settings screen in front of him. Yomlo was surprised that there could be so many parameters in this world. What surprised him the most was that this was not the only such world. He was confused as to why his old supreme system was not communicating. He thought it had something to do with the barrier that exists in this world. Surprised, Gabriella ran up to him and asked what was going on here. She saw the synchronization process but she didn't know what it meant yet. Yomlo answered her that now he has become an observer in this world. He was convinced that most likely she would not believe him. Surprised, she asked him what it meant to be a watcher. He explained to her that now he can do whatever he wants. At first, he wanted to change the difficulty of the game to the easiest level. The new Supreme System reported back to him that the difficulty of the game had been successfully changed. Yomlo told her to open the settings panel and asked her to increase the reward to the maximum. The new Supreme System once again reported that his order had been successfully executed, and now the highest reward in the game was 1 million points, or 100 billion coins. Gabriella watched in amazement, and couldn't believe that the reward could be so great now. She asked if he thought it was too much, but Yomlo, satisfied with himself, answered her that they needed to play to the fullest. He then ordered the new system to open the balance of points. The new Supreme System again immediately followed his order and reported back to him that his balance had zero points. He asked her to give him the maximum number of points in this world. But the Supreme System explained to him that the Observer has no rights to this action. Yomlo was upset because this meant he would have to complete quests to earn at least some points. Yomlo was saddened by the fact that he would have to earn points himself. He was about to go on a mission to earn points when Gabriella suddenly stopped him. He turned to her and asked her what she wanted from him. She looked him straight in the eye and said that she thought something was wrong with Brother Leon. He approached her brother and said that his mental organs were damaged. He explained to her that something had dried up a part of his soul. Surprised, she asked him if it was true that people really have a soul. He told her that she was a fool and asked where she thought the ghosts they had seen came from. He had already thought that there was also a messenger of darkness in this world, but he realized that he had not experienced anything like that. So in his opinion, it was unlikely. But he said that he might try to find some little soul. He closed his eyes and used his skill called Lord Yomlo's gaze. His abilities told him to pay attention to the sea. Using his skill, his gaze caught something strange at the bottom. He understood that these were souls that were locked at the bottom of the sea. He asked Gabriel to wait for him here until he returned, and in a second he sank into the water. Descending to the bottom, 
he saw many closed souls. He could not understand who kept them here, and what surprised him even more was that there were many innocent souls here. A dark, unknown creature appeared in front of him, who menacingly asked who he was and how he dared to enter this forbidden territory. It was a huge purple monster with large tentacles, compared to which Yomlo seemed like a small insect. He asked menacingly if he was not looking for his sudden death. Yomlo answered him that he was an observer, and that's why I came to check his work, and he remarked that he should not behave so brazenly. The huge monster checked and indeed found that the uninvited guest had an observer card. Yomlo told him that he would forgive him for his insolence if he told what had happened to these souls. But the monster replied that he didn't care about the fact that Yomlo was a watcher, and he said that no one would dare to violate God's rules. He threatened him that he was giving him two seconds to get out of here, and if he didn't, he promised to destroy him. He started the countdown, but he did not have time to finish it. Yomlo cut off its tentacles and decided that they would make an extremely good stake. Satisfied with the result, Yomlo asked Gabrielle if she could exchange the points for some spices. He wanted to add some flavor to such a delicacy. She told him that she had never seen anyone make such an exchange. Surprise and admiration were clearly visible in her eyes. At that time, the monster mourned his tentacles which were intact just a few minutes ago, and now he felt humiliated by the cripple. Yomlo asked him if he had thought about his behavior and if he had any information for him that might interest him. The crippled monster desperately answered him that he himself did not know any information because he was an ordinary guardian of souls and no one told him secret information. After that, Yomlo asked him if he knew how to open a path through the stone pillars that are at the bottom of the sea. The monster began to realize what Yomlo wanted to do and this guess scared him no less than the fact of the cut-off tentacles. He replied that this cannot be done under any circumstances, because this is God's long-term efforts, and if he lets all those souls go, they will all perish themselves. He refused to confront God. It was extremely unprofitable for him. After that, Yomlo asked him if he wanted to die later from God, or right now, but from himself. The monster remembered that he had a backup plan, he opened the magic digital screen in front of him and began searching for the menu item he needed. The whole search took him a few seconds. He needed to find the emergency button. He said that they would not be able to wait for his death and that he would not give up so easily. He quickly pressed the emergency call button. Yomlo should have cut off all the tentacles, but it was too late to change anything. The monster quickly jumped into the water and began to run away from them as fast as it could. Farewell! he shouted to them, that most likely they will never see each other again. Surprised, Gabriella's sister asked Yomlo why this monster decided to run away from them, and asked if he had any plan to prevent him from doing it. Yomlo calmly answered her that the monster had no chance. During this time, the monster managed to swim to a distance of about 200 meters. He knew that the help he called would be here in 10 seconds, and all he needs is not to die early. Suddenly, Yomlo found himself on his head and asked the monster where he was in such a hurry. He raised his huge eyes, which were filled with fear, and realized that Yomlo was already here. After that, the main character asked him if he really dared to call an emergency. The monster told him that it absolutely was, and said that they should be here within ten seconds. Observers from other worlds were supposed to appear and unite to kill Yomlo. The monster considered him the weakest of all the other observers. But Yomlo was not at all angry at this, but on the contrary, thanked him for saving him a lot of time. Yomlo already had a plan that was being executed exactly as he intended. This answer puzzled the monster because he could not understand what saved time meant. He was clearly convinced that Yomlo had no chance against experienced observers. Suddenly, an unusual portal to other dimensions opened in the sky, and in a moment, six other observers came out of it, and came to destroy Yomlo. The monster rejoiced at their appearance and turned to them as the last hope, explaining that this boy is a traitor, and said that he had betrayed their Lord God and asked to kill him as soon as possible. Six newly arrived observers began to approach Yomlo. What he noticed was that so far they were in no rush and took every step carefully. The joyful, crippled monster said that treason was a great sin, and they no longer needed any other reason to kill him. He said that they were so heartless 
that they would gladly destroy him. But Yomlo is not one of those cowards who are extremely easily intimidated. He still felt confident and noted that their callousness would play into his hand. Suddenly the monster noticed something strange in Yomlo's hands. This alarmed him greatly. He couldn't understand why he so suddenly felt the deadly energy coming from Yomlo. The first observer from another world asked if he had really betrayed God, and if so, where did he get such courage? A second watcher from another world warned Yomlo that treason is an extremely huge sin, for which the death penalty is always given. They were suddenly interrupted by the third watcher and said that there was no need to call everyone, as he himself could handle it with impudence. He immediately flew to Yomlo to deal with him quickly. The main character calmly stood and watched as one of the observers, wishing him death, was heading towards him at breakneck speed. In the air, he used his special skill that doubled his strengths. Inspiration and confidence were visible in his eyes. While Yomlo coldly looked him in the eyes and waited for his right moment. After a second, Everything around was filled with black darkness and only splashes of blood, and two apple eyes made it clear what had just happened here. Yomlo's devastating blow left almost no trace of an observer from another world. After the death of the Watcher, another digital card fell out of his body. The monster was shocked at how quickly Yomlo managed to destroy such a powerful Watcher. But he was not the only one who was shocked by the speed and power of Yomlo. After that, the main character shouted at them that there is no need to attack one by one. He has too little time and urged them to try to destroy him together. One of the observers said that it was the first time he had seen such insolence, and he replied that he would now show him his strong defensive abilities. But another observer advised him not to go to certain death. This made him extremely angry, and he replied that his abilities should not be underestimated because his level is higher than all of them. The observer who warned him of possible danger turned out to be a girl. She said that he has a typical thief appearance and added that people like him usually end badly. He angrily told her not to say such a thing and promised to teach her a lesson right after he dealt with Yomlo. But his words did not frighten her, and she was ready to compete with him. Yomlo asked them in surprise why they had come here together if they could not communicate properly with each other. Another observer intervened and told them to shut up. He said that he has a plan to defeat him. He explained that Yomlo would be able to defeat them all because they have weak resistance to magic. And because of that, he would be able to repel all of their attacks. And he said that if they want to win, they need to increase resistance. Of all of them, only one had enough resistance and only he can handle it. He ordered the girl to prepare a control spell. She quickly carried out his order and prepared everything necessary. He was referring to the third Watcher, who was more than happy to get even with Yomlo. After that, he ordered the third Watcher's magic resistance to be increased immediately. They all transferred their magical skills to resist him to increase his chances of victory, and he was given the order to start the attack. He immediately obeyed the order and descended to the water at breakneck speed, while others prepared to support the attack. The plan was for him to start a fair fight and deliver the first major blow, and they would connect later. He was approaching Yomlo, who continued to stand on the monster. Because the other observers gave him some of their powers, he felt like a god of death. The collision was less than a few meters away. The monster began to beg for them to succeed. After the murder, he wanted to drink his blood and eat his flesh. Yomlo, who stood calmly and watched as the third watcher approached him, said aloud that they didn't seem to understand exactly how it would all end for them. The observer who watched all this from the mountain was clearly convinced that only the gods could predict the trajectory of movement at such a speed. And he was clearly sure that Yomlo still did not understand what kind of force he would face now. But unexpectedly, the protagonist's fist collided with the face of the third observer, who was about to destroy him. The blow was so strong that he immediately flew away in the other direction. Only the monster watched in shock as the waves rise from the body of the third observer. It became a real surprise for all observers. They clearly did not expect that he would be able to repel the blow so easily. The girl observer thought that Yomlo was cool, while others wondered how this was even possible. One of them asked with interest if Yomlo was a person at all. The main character turned to them and said that if they consider themselves the strongest, it does not mean that they can underestimate others. He said that their lives are not given for entertainment and promise to destroy everything here today and kill their god. One of the observers angrily asked if he was clearly sure of his words. 
and told him that no one is allowed to underestimate or despise God. After all, God gave them hope, and people like him do not know the value of this life at all. And if he does not understand this and does not appreciate the good heart of God, then he is obliged to kill Yomlo today. But the observer girl put her hand on his shoulder and warned him not to attack, because she believed that they were not his equal. And she added that he is, after all, Lord Yomlo. Suddenly, after these words, their god appeared. He appeared through a cross-shaped portal, and he was dressed in a black robe and had a golden-horned necklace around his neck. His face was not visible, only a pair of eyes shone as if in the darkness. After that, he turned to the Lord of Yomlo. Yomlo answered him and said that it is similar and is the same god whom everyone here fears. There was still no fear in his eyes. Observers respectfully greeted God and said that they were glad to see him here. After that, he asked what kind of wind brought Lord Yomlo here and said that he was sorry that he had not met him earlier. The girl observer said that she did not imagine him like that. She was surprised that he was so young. After that, Yomlo said that if everyone finally got together, then it is necessary to make up with all this once and for all. Relatives suddenly rose from the water. It was the third watcher who got out of the water in anger and said that it all went to the old man and said that he didn't care who Yomlo was and promised to kill him with his own hands. God, who had just appeared, watched his observer in amazement. A third watcher cried out that he would never dare dishonor his god again. Yomlo was surprised that this Dubnia wanted to die so badly. His actions were surprising even to other observers, who also began to consider him a moron. Suddenly their god raised his hand and drew a cross-shaped spell on the sky. And in a moment, lightning burst from the place where the cross was drawn. It was clear they were meant for the third watcher who suddenly screamed in pain as the lightning struck him. God said that he does not like it when people make noise without his permission. Within a second, only a pair of shoes remained from the third observer. This is the only thing that reminded of his existence. One of the observers remarked that he was God for a reason, because he managed to kill him so quickly, despite his defenses. The watcher girl told him that he better shut up before he killed him too. After that, God said to Yomlo that as far as he knew, no one had invited him here and asked him why he had come to this world to bring order. The protagonist replied to him that he apologizes for the inconvenience, but he cannot allow anyone to play with innocent lives. His answer pleased God exceedingly. He said that he was a king who wanted to control everything for a reason, but he had one question left. Will he be able to withstand all this personally? After asking this, God moved to Yomlo with the speed of light and was already behind him. The protagonist couldn't even react in time to this and turned around only after a moment. God then used the analysis of the two constellations that began to scan Yomlo. After completing the scan and conducting an analysis of the resistance, it was found that the chance of victory over Yomlo was 99.99%. The protagonist decided to act immediately and swung his right hand to strike. His fist hit God in the face, who at that moment told him that if he did not understand yet, even as a king, this does not mean that you can do whatever you want. God easily stopped Yomlo's strike with his hand without any effort. The frightened monster began to beg for them to stop fighting on his head. One of the observers began to support God and asked to destroy Yomla. He was clearly confident of a quick victory. God continued to speak and told Yomlo, that if he wanted to make a mess here, his chances of winning were only 0.01%. He was clearly convinced because he had done the proper analysis and asked him if he was really clearly convinced that he wanted to continue. Yomlo answered him that although the chance is minimal, it still exists, and asked God if he was clearly sure that he wanted to fight with him. God answered him that it seems that Yomlo still does not understand what is happening here. But the main character answered him that he did not need to predict the future and said that this was not all. God understood that things would not go well with him. How suddenly Yomlo thrust his two fingers into God's eyes which shone like two balls under his hood, and he said that his eyes were extremely annoying. God began to scream in pain while Yomlo watched him. This act stunned other observers. They had never seen anyone behave like this with God. Yomlo replied that he had disappointed him immensely. God's eyes turned red and began to tear from what Yomlo had done to them. He said angrily that he had managed to anger him and promised to destroy him right now. He began using his magical powers to make himself a weapon. In a moment, a magical, powerful rifle of enormous size appeared, with which he was going to destroy the main character. 
God said that it doesn't matter how cool Yomlo is, because against this weapon, he has no chance. The main character was surprised that he decided to use a weapon against him. He wondered how he was going to destroy him with this. God spoke to him that he hoped he would not ask for his pardon, and threatened to cut off his hands for such behavior, and said that now he will shoot them to him. God aimed at Yomlo's left hand. The main character continued to watch in amazement what would happen next. After that, God gave the order for fire. A magical ball the size of a large tennis ball flew out of the gigantic magical weapon. This magic ball seemed to have teeth as sharp as a blade and flew straight to Yomlo. But he managed to evade in time and said that such tricks could not cause him any harm. But God answered him that he rejoiced too soon. All the most interesting will be ahead. In a second, the main character's left hand was cut in half by a magic sphere. He thought, how can this even be? Because he dodged a bullet. This was, not for the first time, a real surprise for him. After that, God said that now he would do the same with his other hand. He aimed his magic optical sight at Yomlo's right hand and pulled the trigger. A magical ball with teeth flew out again, flying straight at the main character at breakneck speed. This time, Yomlo didn't even have time to dodge, and Kulia aimed exactly at the place where she was directed. Now it was no surprise that the same thing happened to his right hand as it did to his left a few seconds ago. Suddenly. Yomlo realized that he was being damaged on a spiritual level. There was no intrigue for the observers. They were confident in God's powers and waited for him to crush Yomlo with his mighty powers. Pleased, God began to mock Yomlo. He said that he had analyzed all its properties and knew everything about him, while he knew nothing about him. He assured him that he had no chance of winning. So all that was left was the final shot. He aimed his magical optical sight again, but now at Yomlo's head. He gave the order to shoot and said that he could say goodbye to his head. In an instant, the main character's head was completely destroyed. Not a single trace remained of her. Yomlo's body seemed to dissolve in the dark space without any signs of life. Pleased God said that he was weaker than he expected and said that he is not that cool anymore. Observers from other worlds marveled at the power of God. For them, he was the strongest in the entire universe. It was an honor for them to serve such a mighty God. They were sure that there was no being that could defeat their god. Nothing could match his power. He is satisfied that he destroyed the Yomlo Lord and asked the system what reward awaits him and if he can level up. But the Supreme System answered him that he destroyed only his worldly body. He asked her in surprise what she meant and what the worldly body was. But the Supreme System did not answer his question, offering him to continue the fair fight further. God was clearly convinced that no one could defeat him and commanded that Yomlo appear before him immediately if he was still here. Suddenly, six terrible clicks appeared from behind him. It was Lord Yomlo in a new form of reincarnation and gently asked God if it was he who was unexpectedly looking for him. God turned and looked at Lord Yomlo in surprise. Stunned by his sudden appearance, he asked what kind of energy he had. Was it the energy of death? But Yomlo answered him that if he dared to destroy his worldly body, then because of this he was forced to kill him. The watchers felt a strange new sensation, as if Yomlo had almost stolen their souls. Was he just hiding his true power? One of the watchers spoke to them to look at their cowardly appearance and replied that they had nothing to fear for their mighty God was with them. At that time, God spoke to the system and said that he sensed a change in his energy and asked it to scan again to find his weak point but the Supreme System answered him that it was impossible to carry out the analysis now, because now it exists in non-existence. God carefully asked her if she did not mean that he was not capable of fighting him, to which the Supreme System answered him that he would not have time to escape, and the only thing left for him was to ask for pardon from Yomlo. But he answered her that she is some kind of too cowardly Supreme System, and he said so that she would not forget that he knows how to work real miracles, and this time will not be an exception. He ordered to seize the target and fire a shot, but this time the Supreme System reported that it was impossible to detect the target. Yomlo scathingly said that it seems that this time the weapon is not obeying him. He flew up to God from the side and grabbed him by the shoulder, and he said that now it is his turn to show himself and the time has come to end this circus. But God did not want to give up so easily and replied that he would not wait for his surrender. Using his skills, he decided to use his most powerful spell. He sent hundreds of deadly lightning bolts at him, with which he had already killed more than a hundred opponents. This was his favorite trick. 
But this time it did not help him. Yomlo moved too quickly and in a second was already behind him. God felt that he did not feel his existence, but could only see him with his eyes and ask the system to increase his observation. But it was already too late. Yomlo touched it with his index finger to use his new skill. The magical force separated the body and soul of the mighty god. He turned out to be an ordinary fat clown. He couldn't believe that this had actually happened to him. No one had used such an unknown spell against him before. Observers from other worlds did not understand, is this terrible fat man the true appearance of their god? But Lord Yomlo answered that there is no need to be surprised, because this is the true soul and appearance of their god. The fat man said that you should not believe him because he is deceiving them all and said that this is not his true appearance. But it seems that observers believed Yomlo more in this case. They could believe that all this time they idolized this miserable fat man. Yomlo said ironically that he seems to have disguised himself for so long that he is even afraid to perceive his true appearance and said that one cannot hate oneself so much. At that moment, God felt real anger. And he said that he is not very good at fighting, but he knows how to create. He has a special skill for this. Using this, he summoned his magical digital screen. And he said that now he will see what can be done here. First, he decided to check whether this Lord has his own world. And in a few seconds, he managed to find it. Finally, he had a plan. He began to click rapidly on the keyboard. And he said that now he knows how to win. He decided that it was necessary to create a ruler like Yomlo. It seemed that he clicked on the keyboard with the speed of light. The girl observer was surprised that he could type so quickly and tried to understand what he was trying to do. The fat man had almost finished and said that there was one last step left. He pressed a special key in order to appear immediately. In a moment, a magical golden glow appeared. It was obvious that this was the work of God. This meant that he successfully managed to fulfill his plan. He was satisfied with his work. Yomlo watched in frustration at the fat man's pathetic attempts to save the day. After that, God said that now he will gather all the fear and horror from all the worlds into one body, and even the power from the world of Yomlo. And he said that it would be a real killing machine that he could control. In a moment, a messenger from hell appeared in front of them. He was superior to all blood demons and was made to kill. The messenger inspired real fear. His face was hidden under a mask that was made from the ground bones of defeated enemies. The satisfied fat man told him not to restrain his strength and ordered to kill Yomlo by tearing him to pieces. The messenger immediately got to work and went to Yomlo, leaving a trail of fiery rings behind him. In just a moment, he found himself directly in front of King Yomlo, who confidently remained in his place with folded hands. The main character spoke to him and asked if he was clearly sure that he wanted to kill him and if he knew who he was. But suddenly the messenger who was sent to kill him began to kneel before him right in the air. What began to happen really surprised Yomlo. He did not expect that the situation would develop in this way. After that, the messenger, falling completely on his knees before him, said that he was glad to see the Lord of Yomlo. What happened surprised not only Yomlo, but also the observers who looked at them in shock. The fat man was extremely angry when he saw what his messenger had begun to do, and again he ordered to destroy the Lord Yomlo. But the messenger did not listen to him. He raised his hand to the mask that hid his face and started filming it. It was obvious that she was preventing him from communicating with Yomlo, creating an additional obstacle for him. Taking off his mask, he turned to Yomlo and said that this fat man was making too much noise and asked permission to kill him. These words stunned the fat man. He did not expect that the messenger could rebel against him. Yomlo agreed to the request to finally destroy this arrogant fat man, who misled so many innocent people. The messenger thanked him for this opportunity and said that he would not let him down. And he said to the fat man that disrespecting the Lord Yomlo is a huge sin, and it will be better if he goes to hell. He directed his magic chain at him, which began to wrap around the fat man's body. The former god to the last could not believe that this was happening to him. He began to beg them for a dialogue and said that it is not necessary to solve everything by brute force. This was his last hope. But the messenger replied that he never communicated with such pitiful ghosts and said that these were probably his last words in this life. With the help of his skills, he began to use his favorite technique. An unknown ball with red eyes appeared from his hand. She immediately went to the fat man and she swallowed his body with her huge jaw. After he swallowed his body, the messenger was able to see the many innocent souls he had destroyed 
As expected, he turned out to be cruel and merciless. The disappointed fat man said that young people do not know morality at all and can only decide everything by force. After that, the magic ball returned to the messenger in the same place from where it appeared. He reported to the main character that he saw many innocent souls there, and he said that those infernal worms contained innocent souls that Yomlo had seen before. Yomlo said with satisfaction that it seems the fat man was able to give him a lot of valuable information, and he said that from this day he would be his subordinate, him that it would be an extremely great honor for him to serve King Yomlo. After that, the main character said that he had to finish the unfinished business. Suddenly, a synchronization started in Yomlo's head, and after it finished, he heard the voice of the old system. Finally, he waited for her and asked her in surprise where she had been all this time. She replied that some strange energy was blocking her access to the dimension, and because of this, she could not contact him. But it seems that this problem has already been solved by Yomlo. He said that he did not want to bother her about such trifles. Unexpectedly, the new supreme system, which was still in his head, asked him why he decided that everything was over, and she offered him to change the place for the conversation. The new supreme system has begun the process of teleportation. In a moment, they found themselves in some strange place, among the cubes on which only two numbers, three and four, were written. Once there, he immediately asked the system if it was also here. She replied that she was here too, and explained that it looked like the new supreme system had changed their space. That fact surprised Yomlo because he did not know that the new supreme system could change space. Suddenly, he heard a voice behind him, which diverted his attention. There was a new supreme system in the human body, which offered him something to discuss, and she asked if he was ready to become her new master. She stood in front of him and showed him her curvaceous forms and remarkable beauty. Yomlo thought about how many systems in the universe he had not yet seen. One was quite enough for him, and here comes such a proposal. She introduced herself to him and told him that she was an unlimited supreme terror system that could create a variety of terrifying worlds. And she added that if he wants to become a full-fledged god, she can help him with that. Yomlo remembered Tovsten with whom he had just fought and realized that he did not want such an insignificant fate and therefore refused such an offer. But she continued to convince him and said that she could help him become a better version of Lord Yomlo and together they could conquer other dimensions. The new supreme system hugged him and added that he had no reason to refuse her such a good offer. All he had to do was simply agree to become God. She looked at him with her deep eyes that begged him to choose the right decision. Suddenly, someone's hand grabbed the hand of the new supreme system. It was a real surprise, and for both of them, it was a hand that came out of Yomlo's pants. Moreover, this hand came out of his fly. Yomlo at first could not understand what it was. When the hand that came out of his pants and grabbed the hand of the new system, she thought that he had not taken the Lord for nothing after all. It also shocked her quite a bit. Yolo wondered when his penis became a ghost and took on a life of its own. Suddenly his old supreme system came out and calmed him down, saying that he shouldn't worry so much about such things. Her look was quite angry. Disgruntled, she told the new system that Yomlo was already hers, and she had nothing to do here, and added that she should roll as far away from here as possible. Suddenly, a strong hand slapped her head. Before flying a few meters away, she only had time to ask why she was being treated like that. It was an angry Yomlo who hit her with all his might and he said that no one here would dare to destroy his image. Two systems knelt before him. The old supreme system apologized to him and explained that she was nervous, and that's why she got out so suddenly, while the new supreme system could not understand why it was on its knees. They spoke to each other for the first time. The old supreme system said that he was her chosen master, and she had to follow the rules. The new supreme system answered her that it was the first time in her life that she had seen such a pathetic system. And she added that although Yomlo is already taken, she has an idea of what can be done about it. She suggested to the old system that she was willing to share it with her, as it would be beneficial for both of them. But she immediately refused such an offer. Satisfied, Yomlo noted that it was extremely popular among the systems and thought about what would happen if they were combined. After that, the new supreme system said that he had defeated her previous master and therefore had the right to become her new master. And besides, he met all the necessary requirements. She went straight to Lord Yomlo and spoke. 
that he can start the fusion process right now if he doesn't mind. From the king's point of view, it was clear that he did not expect such a fierce struggle between them for the right to be his system. The old supreme system remarked that for the first time in her life she had seen such an insolent system. It really pissed her off. It was not an easy decision for Yomlo, but he still dared and said that he had to refuse her. She could not believe that she had been rejected. This is the first time in her life that they dared to refuse her. The old supreme system began to get angry and told her that she did not know him at all because this Yomlo is not so frivolous because he was able to refuse her harshly. Yomlo told them that they should not be so nervous, and he replied to the new system that to begin with, they need to get to know each other better, otherwise it might deceive him in the same way as his current system. With side vision, he saw that his old supreme system was approaching him at breakneck speed, and he understood that it was unlikely that she wanted to just pat him on the head. She kicked him in the back with all her might. It was her revenge for calling her a liar. After that, the new supreme system told him that it would not bother him, but since he had defeated its master, he would be rewarded. As a reward, she can grant three of his wishes, but only within her means. The impact of the old system sealed him in the wall. When he heard about the three wishes, he felt a sense of deja vu. His first wish was for her to release all the souls stuck here in their original worlds. She admired his kindness and said that she would do it easily and asked what his next wish would be. After that, he said that he wanted to take with him one person whom she could not destroy. She asked who he meant. He told her that it was a messenger from hell, summoned by her previous master, the fat man. He wanted to take him into his world. She replied that it was the property of the previous owner, and usually the property was destroyed after his death. But if this is his wish, then she will easily fulfill it, and now the messenger has passed into the possession of Yomlo. Next was his most important desire. He wanted this more than anything else. Money. He saw the rewards for completing tasks in this world and was clearly convinced that there was an extraordinary amount of money here. She replied that the money was just a number, and she would easily give it to him. She didn't even think that Lord Yomlo was still so attached to money, and asked him for a second. Yomlo turned to the old system and said that it still had no idea how much they had benefited this time. He said that now they will become extremely rich and will be able to build everything that is still missing in their world. But she still didn't believe him. The new supreme system something clicked on the magical numeric keypad, fulfilling his last wish. Suddenly a portal appeared in the sky, from which many banknotes began to fall. Yomlo didn't understand what it was at first, because that's not what he meant. The old supreme system spoke to him that this was the money he wanted. He picked up one of the bills and saw that it was Ming currency, and angrily ran up to the new system and asked what kind of delusion it was, and he said that it was Ming currency and he meant points. She answered him that she did not understand what points he was talking about. The old supreme system explained to him that points are a special currency in this world, and only she can give them to him. And she added that now they can go back and calmly carry out her tasks further. The new supreme system said that she had fulfilled all three of his wishes and now he could return to himself. At the end, she added that she hoped they would see each other again someday and playfully called him handsome. He had no choice but to return to his world. He had already had enough adventures in that dimension. His supreme system was happy to teleport him home and they returned together. She told him that the messenger of hell had already passed through the path of samsara and that he could summon him from the spirit world at any time. Suddenly he remembered the golden soul from which all these adventures began and asked where it was now. She told him that it was a high-level soul and had the ability to travel through dimensions. This soul did not want to stay in this world because most likely he had some urgent matters. Yomlo asked her what she meant, and she told him that she had already sent Voktong to check what was the matter. Voktong, who went after the golden soul, found himself near some strange building which was located in a dim forest, in which there was complete disorder and chaos inside. Everything was scattered, but there was no one inside. Voktong went inside and saw it all with his own eyes. An unusual candle on the table in the room caught his attention. Suddenly it lit up with an unusual blue flame and lit up the room around. When he walked into the middle of the room and looked up, he noticed something strange. Souls began to climb out of the ceiling. There were so many of them that it would not even be possible to count them so easily. He thought to himself, where did so many of them come from? 
He had never seen so many souls in one place. Suddenly the greatest soul touched him from behind and asked him if he also wanted to join them. He apologized to them for his unexpected appearance and replied that unfortunately he could not join them. It was too generous an offer for him. He asked her where so many souls came from and what happened here. At the end, he asked if they had met a special soul here. She told him that it was none of his business and that if he wanted to continue living, he should get away from here, because if he stayed here, she would not be able to save him. He answered her that he had other things to do here, and he could not leave this place yet. Suddenly, Vaktang told the person who was hiding to stop doing it because he knows that someone is there. At first, the soul did not understand whom he was addressing, but noticed that his gaze was directed somewhere to the side. Behind the column stood a strange girl in a hat and thought to herself that she seems to have a companion now. She came out of the shadows and said that she had no longer expected that she would have company. Vaktang asked her what she meant. She answered him that she needed to drive all these souls away from here before it was too late, and asked her not to disturb her. The Soul That Met Vaktang It was a paper servant of this girl who had the task of distracting all the unfortunate souls. She said that she needed to send them on their way before it was too late, and immediately set about doing it. Using her magical incantation, she began to speak so that the souls would go on a journey and get rid of suffering and wish to aspire to the pure eastern lands, because only there they themselves would become pure. She took out several more candles and lit them with her magical fire. She placed them in front of the unfortunate souls, creating a magical path for them to leave this place. She ordered them to leave immediately. Holding the magic bell in her hands, she began to shake it. It was a special ritual to send the souls to where they were supposed to be. The magic bell began to drain the energy of the souls. They entwined into a single bundle, and they went to the magic bell, forming a single energy of souls. This was the special ritual she wanted to perform. Voktang was surprised that despite her relatively young age, she managed to understand the ritual of soul removal. He is clearly confident that she will handle them. She thanked him for his praise and confirmed that she would manage without his help. Suddenly the bell began to shake wildly and cracks appeared on its body. Literally in a second it flew into small pieces. From her point of view it was clear that something had gone wrong. She realized that they had too much unhappiness energy and her bell would not cope with it. The souls she was supposed to send became wildly angry and began to scream loudly. In all her life she had never seen anything like this. Vaktang said to her that she seems to have overestimated herself. She took his hand and offered to run away from here because they had lost complete control over them. There were many more unfortunate souls here than she expected, and if they all got out, the surrounding villages would be doomed. Vaktang became her last hope, and she asked him for help. He asked what he needed to do. They went to the gate and stuck magical yellow pieces of paper on it. She said it would buy them some time. She began to run and said that they urgently needed to take away the energy of misfortune from them. She ran to her horse and said that she was in such a serious situation for the first time in her life. She started looking for something in her bag. Vaktang was surprised and could not believe that they were still some secret weapon. He wondered how strong she was. When she finished rummaging through her bag, she said that she had found what she was looking for. After that, she took out some unknown book and began to read it quickly. It was a book of spells. She quickly found a spell to remove unhappiness from souls and began to say it. She successfully spoke what was written in her book, but suddenly something strange began to happen. All the souls flew out of the building and she suspected that something was wrong with them again. She asked in her voice what had happened because what she had read was supposed to help them on the contrary. Once they were on the street, it was clear to their hearts that they had become extremely furious and angry. In a panic, she said why their energy of misfortune was getting stronger and asked if she had read something wrong. Vaktang asked her if she really did not understand ghost language. After all, he already knew what the matter was. She asked to tell what she did wrong because she was reading the text that was written in her book. He explained to her that she had read everything correctly, but it turned out that she had just offended all of their ancestors up to the 18th generation, and because of that, they were now evil souls. Suddenly, her soul and body were separated. It was a surprise for her, because she had never experienced anything like this. Vaktang understood that this was the beginning of the process of soul materialization and directed his magic spell at her. He built a magical dome around her to protect her while he was busy. He said that she was doing quite well, but asked him to leave the rest to him. 
She was surprised by the skills of this man and she realized that most likely he is a real master. She felt a strange sensation as if a stream of air had been introduced into her body and she suddenly felt so warm and beautiful. Suddenly, some unknown creature appeared behind the watchman. It was clear that she had no good intentions. She launched her nasty black tentacles at him. The girl shouted at him to be more careful. Black tentacles quickly began to capture his body. He did not even have time to make any resistance. In a few seconds, they completely covered his body, making it impossible for him to move. The girl thought that it was already the end and that he no longer had any chance of getting out of there alive. The creature began to pull his cocoon to itself and furiously said that now it would simply swallow him, and then all the rest. She had almost swallowed him when suddenly something strange began to happen. Streams of light began to radiate from the cocoon, which the creature was trying to absorb. Within a second, the Voktong flew out of it at the speed of light, and using his magic wand, he began to attack his attacker with it. The fair fight happened so quickly that it was not even clear what was happening at all. But in a moment, his long staff had completely pierced the creature's body, and he joyfully said that it was not as easy to eat as it might seem at first glance. The girl looked at him admiringly and was surprised at how he managed to get the weapon. Moreover, such a long rod. She had never seen such an interesting weapon before. He answered her that he came from hell, and therefore these souls are not a problem for him. The souls heard his words and now understood why his energy had changed. As it turned out, he came from the other world. They began to regard him as their master and began the formation of all souls into one sphere. The girl could not make out a single word while they formed a whole. In a second, the process ended, and they merged into one magical sphere that glowed with a purple glow. She flew up to the watchtower, and she said that now he can dispose of them as he pleases, because he is now their master. The first thing he asked them was why they were so offended and wondered what had happened to them. They told him that they used to live in this village and did not touch anyone, and did not quarrel with anyone. But one day, they were approached by a bunch of people who called themselves Lord Yomlo's gang. They started killing everyone, and not a single person managed to escape. When he heard the words that they called themselves Lord Yomlo's gang, he immediately suspected that something was wrong. He answered them that no one would dare to use the name of Lord Yomlo, and he said that those who did this will still regret it. The United Sphere of Spirits said that they would help him in everything that would be necessary. He asked to show where they went. He had only one desire, revenge. Suddenly, the girl who had been listening to this all the time said that she also wanted to go with them and promised to help them. Voktong answered her that he did not need her help, and asked her not to be associated with the soul removal ritual anymore, because this activity was not for her. And he had already said goodbye to her, when suddenly she said that she knew the answer to one of his questions. Her words intrigued him, and turning to her, he asked what she meant. She told him that she knew what he was looking for, because she had seen with her own eyes that strange soul about whom he had asked at the very beginning. She told him that several days ago, she saw many souls in the sky flying in the same direction. She had never seen anything like this before, so she ran after them to find out where they were going. She managed to find out that they were heading towards the city of Fenver. This city, which was located in a lowland between the mountains, became a refuge for wandering souls. She added that her book says that if such events happen in the sky, it is a harbinger of great trouble. The United Sphere of Spirits flew up to her and asked where she got this book with so much information. She answered them that this book was given to her by her late father in memory of himself. After that, she began to beg Voktong to become her student. She was ready to help him in everything he wanted. And she sweetly said that he is extremely strong and she is smart and smart, so they are perfect for each other. She assured him that he shouldn't worry, he wouldn't have any problems with her. But he paid no attention to her. He asked the United Realm of Spirits if they knew if they were the city of Fenver. They answered him that the city is about ten kilometers from here. After that, he asked them to show him the way there, and went after them saying goodbye to the girl. It was clear that he did not want to take her with him, but she wasn't going to give up either. She told him not to even think of leaving her here and said that she wouldn't stay here anyway and followed them. Voktong angrily said how insolent she was and asked her if she was not at all afraid of death. She clung to his robe and spoke desperately that she was born to free souls, and therefore she did not fear death. She literally begged him to take her with him. 
He answered her that he had other things to do, and he could not become her teacher. If she chose this path, he did not want to interfere with her, and said that she could go with him to the city, but only on one condition, that she would not disturb him. But she was quite satisfied with such cooperation, and thanked him for his kindness. It was a real chance for her to show herself. They reached the city of Fenver without any problems, the streets of which were illuminated by the moonlight. Vaktang was surprised that there was not a single lantern in the city, and the light was as bright as day. The girl replied that she was also alarmed by this. She asked him if he might know if something bad had happened here. He told her that he felt some kind of evil energy. It could only mean that they had come too late. Suddenly in one of the buildings, the girl saw a human silhouette and immediately informed Vaktang about it, asking him to look there. She thought that it was some local resident and decided to ask him what happened here. Suddenly, the stranger she had just seen took out his sword and swiped it across the ground, threatening her. It scared her so much that she couldn't even say a word. He stepped out of the shadows and it became clear that his left leg was missing. He had an unhealthy skin color, and the face was covered with a huge number of wrinkles. His gaze was completely blank. He constantly made some strange sounds that were not at all like human speech. Frightened, she asked Vaktang what had happened to this unfortunate man. Suddenly, he started running towards them on one leg. It is worth noting that despite his defect, he moved quite quickly. As he approached her, the man swung his sword in his right hand. She was extremely frightened and thought that her end would come right here and mentally said goodbye to her life. The stranger seemed twice the size of the young girl's body. His sword went straight for her. There were literally a few seconds left before the collision. His eyes began to glow as if from rage and his teeth were sharp as claws. But Vaktang stopped his attack and prevented a blow to the unfortunate victim. The girl could not believe that this man had become a real zombie. Vaktang touched him with his magic finger to perform a spiritual analysis and understand what had happened to this man. After that, he answered her that he was possessed by an evil spirit. He saw it using his magical abilities. Suddenly, they heard footsteps gradually approaching them. These were unknown soldiers who appeared on the roof of one of the buildings. One of them spoke to the mentor and reported that some strange people had been found here, whom no one had invited here. Their eyes glowed with a red glow, and their foreheads were also covered with a huge number of wrinkles. Their one look froze the blood in the veins. Vaktang said that he had never seen so many unclean things in one place. He understood that this would be a new challenge for him. He wondered how strong they were and what they were capable of. One of the unfamiliar warriors began to use his dark magic and opened an unknown portal in his belly. It seemed to be his dark magic technique. Vaktang said that the evil spirit was trying to steal their inner power to transfer it to his warriors and use them for his purposes. He explained that if you try to separate the evil from them, you can injure their souls. Suddenly, they managed to quickly teleport from the place where they were just a second ago, and they found themselves right in front of Vaktang and the girl. It was clear from their looks that they were clearly determined. Vaktang said that all the evil would have to be beaten out of them. He saw no other way out of this situation. The Dark Warrior began to use his dark skills and cast an unknown spell. He directed all his energy at the strangers who came to them. He was clearly confident that this technique would be enough to completely destroy them. It was a powerful ancient spell that destroyed more than 1,000 brave men who came across his path. After that, Vaktang took the girl in his arms and decided that it was necessary to escape immediately before it was too late. The energy sent by the Dark Warrior had already reached the place where Vaktang and the girl were standing a second ago, but they managed to dodge his blow. The girl realized that he had just used the Diamond Fist technique, but she was happy that her mentor was excellent at light movement techniques. She was lucky to meet masters of such a high level. The Dark Warrior was furious that he had failed to destroy them in one blow but he was clearly not going to give up. After that, Vaktang ordered the girl to stay here safely until he dealt with them. It became a real challenge for him, because he had not had such a worthy opponent for a long time. He waited for this moment for an extremely long time, and finally, it came. He was one against five opponents. It seemed that the chances were not quite equal. The Dark Warriors immediately decided to take advantage of their numerical advantage and simultaneously rushed to attack him. It seemed that he had no chance against them. They were extremely determined. They thought they had an advantage over him, both in numbers and strength. But Vaktang took out his sword and, dodging the blow of the first attacker, 
began to deal with each warrior in turn. First, he decided to attack the main warrior with black pearls, which immediately crumbled after the first blow to his head. Using his skills, he placed the following warriors one by one so that it would be easier for him to attack them. He dealt them an extremely devastating blow with his magic weapon, and the shockwave successfully hooked all the dark warriors who were near each other. From the pain he inflicted on them, they began to scream frantically. The girl watched Vok Tong enthusiastically and could not understand what kind of fighting style he used so professionally. Meanwhile, this battle was watched by a mysterious man who did not even expect to meet a real master in such a small town. The impure souls that inhabited the Dark Warriors turned them into killing machines, but even taking this into account, Vok Tong was no match for them in battle. The man could not understand where he could come from. It became a real mystery for him. He needed to come up with something urgently before his impure souls failed. His master came up behind him and reminded him that their revenge plan must not fail under any circumstances, as it would have fatal consequences for them. Caesar replied to his master that everything would be fine, and assured him that he controls everything. But his face showed a bunch of bruises and a bruised eye and cheek. His master saw this and asked in surprise what had happened to his face and whether he had everything under control now. This task was too important for him to take his word for it. Caesar replied that everything is fine with him. It's just that his body is connected to impure souls, and therefore the blows inflicted on them are reflected on him as well. But he said that he even likes it. He was clearly confident that he would succeed in defeating Vakhtang and very soon this master would also become their weapon. Caesar began to speak his incantation, and as a celestial seer he called fire and lightning so that the evil power would immediately obey his command. He summoned the dark warriors who were to immediately appear from the bodies of the dark soldiers, and within a moment on the battlefield, unclean souls began to leave the bodies of dark warriors. Dark matter came out. This came as a surprise to Vakhtang, because he did not understand why the evil spirit left their body voluntarily. But it looked like they weren't going to leave this place just like that. They began to circle Vakhtang around his body, but they did not dare to touch him yet. Caesar, who was watching this, was sure that Vakhtang could neither see nor touch these unclean souls. Even though he has power, it is useless against this technique. He was absolutely certain that he would succeed in making him his new slave today, and ordered the impure souls to capture him immediately and possess this skilled warrior. They immediately began to attack Vakhtang. There were literally a few seconds left for them to completely subdue him. But at the last moment he snapped his fingers and using his magic skills, he managed to successfully repel their attack and counterattack the evil. This came as a real surprise to Caesar, because his evil spirits were intangible and no one had managed to strike them physically before. But since the blows on the unclean spirits were reflected on him as well, he personally managed to make sure that all this is happening now in reality. The impact was so strong that he was thrown several meters away. Only his master watched in amazement as he flew through the air. When he regained consciousness after the blow, he said angrily that he was too professional a craftsman and no one was allowed to treat him like that. This is the first time in a long time that he received such strong resistance from an ordinary warrior. And after that he said that at first he still wanted to spare him because of his abilities, but now he changed his mind and decided to kill him brutally. For this, he will have to use his last powerful technique. He ordered the servant standing by him to bring his mighty cauldron of souls to him. They immediately carried out his order and brought a stone cauldron, which was decorated with a dragon, and placed it before Caesar. At first he wanted to play with the watchman, but he did not expect that he would be able to interfere with him and their plans so much. His master asked Caesar what it was and what he was going to do about it now. He told him that with the help of this magical cauldron, he would summon a power that would be much more powerful than that of impure souls. This is their most powerful weapon, capable of destroying the country of Dal in just three days. After that, he ordered one of his servants to come to him. He had no idea what fate awaited him now. He obediently approached and asked what his next order would be and what he needed to do. Caesar answered him that now he would raise his soul level, but in return, he would borrow something from him. 
He quickly thrust his hand into his body and ripped out his heart, which was the secret ingredient to harness the full power of the cauldron of souls. He now had everything he needed to begin the process of creating the necessary spell. Using his magical skills, he used the dark energy to summon his most powerful weapon. He uttered an incantation and called to wake up to begin a fair duel in the name of Caesar. It was his time to unleash his anger, hatred, and aggression, and he ordered all enemies to be destroyed and their heads hung as a prize trophy. His master asked if everything would be all right this time. Caesar assured him that Vakhtang didn't stand a chance against this powerful magic, and he said that since he had never disappointed him, this day would not be an exception. Only a sure victory awaits them. Suddenly the sky was covered with black, unclean clouds and something extremely strange began to happen. The first to see it was a girl who pointed it out to Vakhtang and asked in surprise what was going to happen now. She had never seen such legendary magic before. Vakhtang answered her that now an extremely powerful opponent will appear here, which will not be as easy to defeat as the pitiful warriors who were before it. The sky was instantly covered with a huge amount of lightning, which even made the street lamps light up. Vakhtang understood that this was an unusual thunderstorm. One of the lightning bolts hit the ground directly and raised a column of dust and smoke around it. The blow was so strong that the girl recoiled because she could not keep herself in place. After the lightning, a huge funnel with a depth of several meters remained. They were lucky that she did not get into them, because after such power, there is no chance of survival. Suddenly, an unknown warrior in magical armor began to appear from that funnel, and instead of a face, he had only a shining point. The dark warriors who saw this were extremely frightened and immediately began to run in different directions. The girl cautiously asked why these cowards started waiting so quickly when they saw this lightning warrior. But he did not let them escape far, and used his magical skills against them to prevent their futile escape and extract a valuable resource from them. He sucked all their energy out of them and sent it straight to the sky. This gave him extra strength before such an important battle. He turned their energy into a weapon for himself and created a magical axe with which he will chop down his enemies. For the first time in his life, Vakhtang had seen someone turning dark warriors into weapons. It was clear to him that this monster was hundreds of times stronger than anyone else he had ever fought. The powerful warrior pushed off the ground and with the force of the push, broke the asphalt that was under him. He charged at Vakhtang and swung his mighty axe. It was clear that he wanted to destroy him. Vakhtang decided to prepare for battle and said that now they will check who is stronger and who is capable of what. He readied his blade to parry the blow. Their weapons collided with each other with great force, which caused a huge cloud of dust and pieces of asphalt to fly in different directions. The blow was so strong that the girl was literally thrown back by the blast wave, and she screamed from unexpected pain. Vakhtang immediately felt his power and realized that he would not be able to repel his attack next time. But suddenly, a magical portal opened from the face of the unknown warrior, from which a dark hand climbed out. With her help, he managed to throw the Vakhtang away from him with great force. At the last moment, the Vakhtang used a soul-sealing spell and directed a magic chain directly at the warrior. He managed to wrap it around him. But it was not for long. He immediately managed to tear the chain into small pieces with almost no effort. Caesar, who was watching the match, only mocked Caesar's efforts. He knew that the monster he had created from a thousand selected warrior souls was much stronger. And soon, Caesar will also join them and become part of this mighty monster. The warrior once again opened a portal on his face, from which desperate screams poured out. Vakhtang immediately understood that these were the cries of the soldiers whom the monster had defeated earlier. And with a shout he released their souls to attack the watchman instead. Thousands of souls of fallen soldiers rushed to attack him to finally destroy him once and for all. Vakhtang decided to use his magical skills and used a special spell with his blade. He decided that with the help of a magical barrier, he would be able to resist these souls. But there were too many of them, and in a moment they completely destroyed his barrier. The situation was really serious. After they managed to break through the barrier, a huge column of dust and black matter rose around them. The girl was afraid for the fate of the watchman and could not believe that he would be killed now. After this bloody fight, he had no hands left, 
It was obvious that now it would be even more difficult, because he dared to break the body that the supreme system had given him. Caesar, who was watching this, was pleased with the result. He said that this is real power, and ordered the monster to complete this matter. The mighty warrior pointed his nocturnal tentacles straight at Vaktang, who looked him straight in the face, without any fear as befits a true warrior. He managed to wrap his tentacles around his body and throw him against the concrete wall with all his might. The building against which he was launched began to crack. The girl could not calmly watch this, and desperately decided to help him. She threw her magic seal at the back of his head, and she began to say her magic spell. Vaktang, who saw this, ordered her to flee from here immediately and said that she had no chance against him. The monster, who noticed this, began to attract her with his magic charms. The girl started screaming that she could not move. Caesar, who was watching this, knew that she was now completely under his control, and he took great pleasure in watching her being torn to pieces. The monster swung his magic axe at the girl and began to bring it down on her head to chop it. Her last words were an apology for letting Vaktang down. He desperately begged him to stop and let her go, because it was nothing the girl's fault. Caesar only mocked him and asked if he had lost hope and was trembling with fear. Suddenly something with great power appeared near them. Only his silhouette was visible. It was as if God himself had come down to them. Caesar, who was watching, could not understand what had happened. Such unexpected guests were clearly not part of his plans. The monster's axe almost chopped off the girl's head when Yomlo suddenly appeared in her path. The blow to his head caused the axe to crack and shatter into small pieces without causing him any harm. This was a real surprise for the girl and Vaktang. They could not believe that Lord Yomlo had come to save them at the last moment. Caesar could not believe his eyes because this axe was made of impure souls and could not be broken by anyone. Satisfied with himself, Yomlo told the watchman, that he seemed to have arrived on time and noted that things here were not going as smoothly as they could have been. Suddenly, a silhouette of a monster appeared behind Yomlo, bearing down on Yomlo with an insane fury. He struck him on the back of the head with his mighty waiter, but he continued to stand as if nothing had happened. The fact that Yomlo survived such a blow without showing any signs shocked Caesar extremely. No one had ever been able to withstand the blows of his monster so easily. Yomlo mockingly apologized to him and said that he was sorry that he did not pay attention to him because he was conducting a dialogue. This made the monster extremely angry, and he jumped back a few steps to prepare for his next attack. In the place of his face, many purple vile bubbles appeared, which began to open. The ruler asked Caesar what kind of nasty thing was happening to his monster. Caesar answered him that these were eyes which he collected from the field of battle. They contain all the negative energy, and even ghosts will not be able to withstand this technique. He was surprised that he decided to use this particular technique, because it requires an extraordinary amount of energy. It only meant that Yomlo scared him to the extreme, and he wanted to destroy him immediately. The monster launched hundreds of purple eyes of dead souls with negative energy at him. After that, Lord Yomlo decided to make an exchange and spent 100 points to get himself a special weapon. He noticed that the monster's anger had flared up too much and he was going to extinguish it now. Yomlo calmly watched as hundreds of bubbles flew at him to kill him, but it seems that it did not scare him at all. Caesar watched his reaction in surprise and couldn't understand why he wouldn't even shy away from such a dangerous threat. After that, Yomlo took in a full lungful of air, which further surprised Caesar, who couldn't understand what he was trying to do. After that, he blew his powerful ice breath and began to freeze the eyes of the dead souls with negative energy. His breath managed to reach even the monster that released it. He didn't even understand what was happening because this was his first practice. The monster's body froze literally in a matter of seconds, giving him no chance to get out. Caesar realized that Yomlo had frozen him with his breath and could not understand which temple had given him such a skill and why he had not heard of it before but he was even more surprised by the fact that no one had managed to defeat his strong monster before. After that, Yomlo took out his weapon, which he exchanged in the system for 100 points and said that such a monster had nothing more to do here and it would be better if he was destroyed. He fired a missile at it and it began to fly at the frozen monster at breakneck speed, leaving behind a trail of smoke. The launched missile hit the target directly and caused an explosion of incredible force. After the collision, 
a powerful fire was formed, which was supposed to burn the monster to the ground. But he only unfroze him and gave him the opportunity to run away as far as possible from here and never appear here again. The girl watched this with fascination and could not believe that such a powerful weapon existed in the world. She had never seen anything like this before. Caesar brought back his monster, which was supposed to kill Yomlo. He was very surprised by such a tactic. First ice, then fire. It was extremely strange for him, and he could not understand where such strong warriors could have appeared here. Yomlo just calmly watched how quickly the monster ran away. He didn't even have time to say goodbye to him properly. Fak Tong, who stood with his arms cut off, asked his master why he let him escape instead of destroying him, and he said that he was ready for any punishment for his bad work. Yom Lo answered him that this monster will not run away because it is constantly controlled like a tame dog, and he said that there was no fault of Vak Tong in this because the monster was much stronger. He felt it in the match. The main character decided to use his magical abilities and skills. He said that no one would dare to mutilate his beloved commander, and said that he would have to teach this bunch of brats a good lesson. In just a moment, the magic completely returned Vak Tong's hands. His body was finally restored. The girl was surprised that he managed to restore his business. After all, it is impossible for an ordinary person to do this. At this moment, she began to consider Yomlo a real god. Her legs began to shake from his admiration. She decided not to lose her chance and immediately introduced herself to him. She said that her guide was called Baby and added that she did not expect to meet such powerful warriors in this small village. Yomlo was no longer surprised by such a reaction to his skills. This became a common practice for him. After looking around, he asked the watchman what happened here. Around them lay a mountain of corpses that had been abandoned by their souls. He knelt down and began examining their bodies. Disappointment and pain was the last thing they felt alive, and it was forever imprinted on their faces. Vak Tong explained to him that they were possessed by evil souls and turned them into real killers. Yomla understood that those who know how to control evil souls are far from ordinary people. The girl intervened in their conversation and said that she was sure that this was the work of Lord Yomlo's gang, and added that this is definitely their dirty tricks again. Yomlo asked in surprise what she meant and if she was really sure of what she said. After that, he turned and headed in an unknown direction, inviting the girl to join him. The girl only asked in surprise when he was leaving and what he wanted to do. He replied that he needed to visit Lord Yomlo's gang to see for himself what was going on and why they were behaving the way they did. She eagerly began to complain to him and replied that Lord Yomlo's gang was extremely strange. She had personally heard that the leader who called himself the Nesset had received a powerful power from the ruler, and she added that they are only interested in treasures. She was sure that they would not be able to handle them. But Yomlo reassured her and said that she should not worry about it, because they will not be able to harm him. To the surprised look of the girl, he replied that he personally created this gang, and after that they went to the country of Dal. Yomlo wanted to meet with the Nesset in person to give him an explanation. They calmly walked in the middle of the forest. A group of angry men ran not far from them, which raised a huge column of dust behind them. They ran extremely fast and held the flag in their hands. Surprised, the girl asked what was happening and where the noise was coming from. But Yomlo saw that not far from them, a group of disgruntled men was rushing at great speed. He found it extremely interesting and decided to see for himself that this was happening. With the help of his magical skills, he immediately teleported to the men. It took him literally a few seconds. He was right in front of them, like a bolt from the sky, and stood in their way. He immediately decided to ask them where they were in such a hurry as if they had found treasures. In front of him stood a crowd of men who looked at him in surprise and could not understand where he had come from. But one of them immediately answered him that it was impossible not to know about it. Because an incredible event took place, no one even thought that such a thing could happen. Yomlo asked him what he meant. It was clear that he did not even understand what he was talking about. The man answered him that an event of incredible magnitude had taken place. A war has begun against the gang of Lord Yomlo. The main character decided to ask him what caused the war to start. The man could not believe that someone in their land did not already know about this grand event. 
and he answered that it was all because of their murders and robberies, for which everyone hated them. They must answer for their actions. He said that all the groups united in one and decided to wage war with the gang of Lord Yamlo. They knew that the gang was extremely strong, but they were sure that it could not stand against so many warriors, and they hoped that they might be able to take possession of their treasures. Yomlo listened to him and asked what gang they were from. The man replied that they were all from the Raging Bull Gang, and he was the leader. His name was Horin. He replied with disbelief that how such small gangs dare to attack Lord Yomlo's gang. One of the men was extremely angered by his words, and he threatened them that they should not be despised, for very soon they would become a huge group. Horin quickly took matters into his own hands and told him that he should be more polite. It was one of their principles to behave more dignified. After that, he said that they will be constantly mocked until they achieve their goal, and that is why it is so important to them. Yomlo said that, for such a small gang, they were in a pretty good mood and offered them to unite with him and promised to help them reach their goal. After that, Horan interestedly asked what gang he was from and who he was. The main character answered him that he is also the head of the gang of Lord Yomlo. Crazy confidence was palpable in his eyes and voice. Horan looked at him with disbelief and answered him that this simply could not be. The men simply laughed in his face. They were sure that this jester was just joking. Horan answered him that they should not be considered fools, because everyone knows that the head of the Yomlo Lord's gang is the Knesset coward. Yomlo realized that he had not appeared here for a long time, and because of this, no one knew him here. And after that, he decided to offer them a gift they couldn't refuse. Horan looked at him in surprise and tried to understand what this stranger was up to. At that time, the Knesset estate did not yet know that Lord Yomlo had returned to the country of Dahl. Suddenly, one of the messengers ran to the estate and shouted that trouble had happened. Surprised, the guard asked what happened, why he was screaming. He told him that all the gangs had united against them and had already managed to descend from the mountains. He asked where the Knesset was because he must know about it. But the guard told him that he was busy now and should not be disturbed. It was his order. At that time, he was having fun with beautiful girls and was almost at the most pleasant part of the process. The pretty girl was completely at his disposal and was ready to fulfill any of his wishes. Nesset had already climbed up to kiss her and asked her to prepare for the best moment of her life when suddenly the teleportation process began. At that moment, Horan told Yomlo not to waste their time anymore and to get out of here before it was too late. But he only calmly answered him that their gift was already ready and would appear in front of them now. He was clearly convinced that Yomlo was some ordinary fool and was simply a waste of their time. How suddenly, a naked Gnesset appeared in front of him and climbed up to kiss him. Their lips merged into one kiss. Horan did not even have time to understand what had just happened. The Gnesset barely had time to say why such a beauty smells like an old man when it suddenly dawned on him what had happened. He found himself in such an unpleasant situation again, and he immediately began to spit in disgust. They glared at each other, unable to believe that they had just kissed. Horan's soldiers looked at them in surprise and could not understand what had just happened. Yomlo asked the Nesset what he was doing at that moment. Gorin could not believe that the first kiss in his life was with a naked clown. He has never been so ashamed in his life. After that, he shouted angrily and ordered his soldiers to immediately kill these fools. The enraged Nesset began to threaten these scumbags and almost said that he was from the king's gang. How unexpectedly, Yomlo cut him down with his palm, preventing him from finishing his words. His nose began to snot from the sudden blow. This was a real surprise for the Gnesset, but he could not stand after this and lost consciousness. Horan's soldiers did not even have time to react to such a surprise and watched in amazement what would happen next. After that, Yomlo calmly told them not to stand, but to quickly tie up the Nesset, whom they wanted to kill a few minutes ago. But they didn't believe that this naked pervert was the head of Lord Yomlo's gang. They had never seen him with their own eyes before. Horan said angrily that this miserable man could not be the head of the Yomlo Lord's gang. He was extremely offended and thought that they were taken here for fools and decided that he would put up with it. His eyes filled with rage, and he angrily ordered to take revenge immediately and kill them. He wanted to see blood. The soldiers immediately rushed to carry out his order, and on their way to Yomlo, shouted that they would definitely kill him. 
But the main character only needed a few seconds for them all to be dead and lying on the lawn without any signs of life. The raging bull gang was completely destroyed. Immediately after that, a watchman appeared with a girl. They could not understand what happened here because they had just arrived. He explained to him that this miserable gang surrounded him on all sides, but he quickly dealt with them without any effort. After that, he began to call out to the Knesset, who managed to hide at that moment and ordered him to come out immediately. The girl heard the name of the Knesset and said that it was the head of Lord Yomlo's gang. She couldn't believe he was here too. Yomlo explained that he had fled into the forest and said that he must be found immediately. Baby had heard about the Knesset before, that he used to be a nobody, but became one of the best warriors, and most of all, she wanted to see this mighty man with her own eyes. She went into the forest to find him herself, but she didn't even know which way she should go. How suddenly she saw her legs hanging in the air near her head. As soon as she turned in that direction, she immediately saw something that surprised her the most in her entire life. Right on the branch hung a suspended, completely naked Nesset. Baby started screaming wildly from the fear and horror she had just seen. Yomlo lowered him to the ground. Baby uncertainly asked if this was indeed the great, mighty Knesset warrior of legend. The master answered her without any doubt that it was so. The frustrated Knesset asked their master why he had almost killed him. I asked if he had made a mistake and had done something wrong. Enraged, Yomlo answered him that when he was leaving this world, he only told him to look for treasures, not to kill innocent people. He could not believe that the Knesset was asking about such obvious things. His warden answered him that it was impossible and most likely he was framed, because he could not do such a thing with his own hands. He told him that a few days ago he had seen strange things in the sky and had sent his soldier up there to see what was going on, but he had never returned. The girl confirmed that she also saw something strange in the sky a few days ago and asked if it could be the work of evil forces. The Knesset said that now the dark forces know that Lord Yomlo's gang is getting stronger, and that's why they decided to take revenge on them with their vile methods. Yomla replied that it became extremely interesting to him, and he wanted to look at those brats who decided to challenge them. At that time, a large number of angry men had already gathered near the Knesset estate and came to him. They chanted for the Knesset to come out to them immediately. What got them was that he constantly humiliated their innocent people and promised to send them to hell. There were various rumors between them. One of them said that Junwan studied with this master, and that is why his fighting skills became extremely high. He even managed to defeat Duan, after which even the emperor recognized his strength and hired him to work for him. He was answered that they don't even know who could teach such a pitiful man such powerful combat techniques in such a short time. The bald man with dots said that, according to rumors, this man's name is Yomlo, and no one knows where he came from, but they say that he single-handedly forced an entire army to retreat and compared him to a god. Another man who heard this conversation intervened in it and said angrily that he did not believe in all fairy tales. In his opinion, this was real nonsense that could not be true. And he said that no one had seen any of them. It was with his own eyes, and therefore one should not believe such various rumors. He was clearly confident that today they would be able to recover all their lost property. Suddenly people started leaving the Nesset compound. This was immediately seen by the people who chanted for the Knesset to come before them. They could not understand who it was coming to them. These were some strange servants who carried many wooden chests in their hands. Apparently they were extremely heavy because they carried them two at a time. This greatly surprised them because they could not understand what was in those chests and for whom they were intended. Yomlo said that a bunch of weaklings had come too small for such a noise. But despite this, he ordered his servants to open the trunks and show everyone the contents. There were many books in the box and people immediately understood that these were secret techniques. They wondered what they were up to. After that, Yomlo told the audience that they all know that he has his own gang and he said that he admires the courage of those who came, but he is not to blame for the fact that they are constantly humiliated and explained that they are trying to frame him. And if they are willing to help him with the investigation of this case, he promised them the opportunity to join his gang. And as a gift for joining, he will conduct an auction of equipment for them. These words greatly angered those present, because they knew that these were their techniques and could not believe that he was trying to sell them to them. 
Yomlo said that he was ready to listen to all their complaints and suggestions and asked what they thought about it. One of the older warriors said that Yomlo would not misunderstand them, but these are their things and they don't understand why they should buy them, because they belong to them anyway. One of the soldiers replied to the elder that there is no need to be so polite with Yomlo and there is no need to be afraid of him. Yomla said that if they wanted to fight him, he advised them not to act out of fear and promised him a real fight. Enraged warriors immediately rushed to Yomlo to attack. They were confident that they would be able to outnumber him, despite his strength. After that, he used his magic technique of contactless combat and directed his powerful force at them. He was most angered by the bald, insolent warrior, and he decided to punish him for his bad words. The last hair on his head was sticking out, which Yomlo managed to cut without any effort, without even approaching him. Behind them were the ancient rocks on which he directed his magical beam of destruction, which began to cut and destroy everything in its path. A column of dust rose up on the rocks from the magical reception, and they suddenly began to crack. The bald warrior was suddenly surprised and turned his head towards the rocky mountains behind him. What he saw made him sweat. The top of the rock seems to have been cut with an extremely sharp blade, leaving behind a perfectly even mark. The warrior even began to scream from the fear and power of the Lord Yomlo. But in an instant, his emotions changed to furious anger, was ready to destroy Yomol right now. He immediately charged at him and shouted his battle cry. His master, who taught him, admired his courage to face such a strong warrior as Yomlo, and said that it was not for nothing that this warrior was his student. He realized that he had shifted all of his inner strength into his legs to deliver a swift and powerful blow. The main character just calmly watched this and did not know why this warrior decided to become such a suicide. During that time, the bald warrior managed to gain extremely high speed and was getting closer and closer to his goal. The other warriors who watched this also began to admire his courage. They could not have expected him to be capable of such a powerful attack. But when he approached Yomlo, he did not attack him, but said that he needed all the equipment that was in the boxes and asked him for what price he was willing to sell it to him. This act greatly surprised the soldiers, and they said that they had never seen such a disgrace. One of them angrily yelled at the bald warrior, How dare he do such a thing, because these are the practices of their sect, which they have had for many years. But he answered him that now these practices do not belong to them, and therefore he will be able to buy them first. They quickly all understood his words, and before it was too late, they also began to approach their master to buy these techniques before this bald scoundrel could do it. Yomlo stood and looked at them with satisfaction. He was glad that they all began to quarrel among themselves. After that, he told the teams that they have nothing to worry about, because he will organize an auction, and the one who offers the highest price will win. And he said that every piece of equipment comes with a gift in the form of insurance. He showed them his magic seal and explained to everyone that with its help, they will be completely safe because it guarantees them for one week that no one will be able to kill its owner for one week. They looked at him with interest and could not believe that he was offering them a spell of immortality. Yomlo decided to take the initiative and asked the bald warrior what his name was. He introduced himself to him as Sean. After that, he inscribed his name in this magic seal and then shoved it directly into his mouth and told him to swallow it. He followed Yomlo's order, but realized that he was not experiencing any changes that would indicate his immortality. After that, Lord Yomlo said that whoever succeeds in killing Sean, he will definitely give his huge spiritual sword. These words surprised the bald warrior extremely, because this was not part of his plans. He was extremely frightened. The crowd immediately ignited the desire of the teams because they understood that this is an extremely profitable offer that cannot be refused. They immediately rushed to attack the fox warrior. They began to chase him and shouted after him that he should not run away from them, not be a coward, but be a real man. He managed to hide from them in the nearest forest, and he said with relief that nothing seemed to threaten them anymore. And he said that he was lucky that he runs extremely fast and managed to break away from them. How suddenly a black blade appeared near his neck, and the unknown man told him that it was extremely good that he was running so fast, and that he had managed to run right up to him. He was clearly sure that the sword would become his. The man immediately cut his throat with a magic blade and told him to die. But to William's surprise he felt nothing, and there was not a single scratch or mark left on him. After that, 
The man explained to him that he stabbed him with a special weapon and said that he would be able to feel everything in three seconds and asked him what his last words would be. But suddenly blood flowed from his throat. He didn't even have time to understand what had happened, but it was clearly not what he expected. He began to scream wildly from the pain and from the realization of the fact that he was about to end. He fell to the ground and begged for someone to stop his bleeding because he did not want to die so quickly. Suddenly, the father of this severed warrior ran up to them and angrily said that now the bald warrior would pay for the fact that he dared to kill his son. The bald warrior tried to explain that he was not here for anything, but it seems that it was useless and the father did not want to listen to anything. The father only angrily told him to close his mouth and not dare to lie to him again. He was clearly convinced that he would simply destroy him now. He began to gamzel him with all his might for several minutes, meeting no resistance from the bald warrior. But after all this, he himself found himself next to his defeated son and lay completely unconscious, showing no sign of life. The other warriors who saw it all with their own eyes couldn't believe that the old monk fell to the ground by himself. While Sean stood there and did nothing, was it a matter of his insurance? Yomlo replied that this is exactly the case and said that no one would be able to harm him for seven days and asked who would be the next to receive immortality because there may not be enough for everyone. The soldiers realized that it was similar and they had no other choice and decided that it would be better to pay him. At that time, Caesar reported to his master that he had information that Yomlo had a special spell that protected anyone from death for seven days and said that they had a chance to win this gift at an auction. The Lord answered him that they had both seen Yomlo's strength and power with their own eyes and said that they had no chance of defeating him, so it was better not to even try. Caesar could not agree with his words and said that Jomlo alone had killed their entire army and did not understand how one could lay down his hands after such a thing and not take revenge on him. He explained to the master that although Yomlo is an extremely powerful warrior, he has an idea how to defeat him. He was clearly convinced that if they could get these techniques and give them to their soldiers, they would become invincible and be able to defeat Yomlo without any problems. The master replied to him that if he is clearly sure of this, he can do everything necessary for this. He still did not know what Caesar was up to. The next day, all the soldiers gathered again near the Knesset estate to take part in the auction. They did not manage to collect an extraordinary amount of money. Some found only 200 gold coins, even though the starting price was 100 gold coins. But there was another poor gang who managed to collect only 10 gold coins. Yomlo did not think that they were all so poor here, and thought that they would be able to collect more gold to participate in the auction. But there was nowhere to look, and the Nesset came to them and announced the start of the auction. He took out the first book from the box and said that it was a famous technique from Dinchen. Its starting price is 100 gold coins. The warriors immediately realized that it was their former creation technique that had been taken from them earlier. An unknown man with golden teeth suddenly appeared and told Yomlo that this was too small a price for such powerful equipment. Yomlo was already thinking that he should have increased the price. The soldiers only looked at the unknown rich man with amazement and could not understand who he was because they had never seen him before. After that, he said that he was ready to pay 500 gold coins for this technique. One got the impression that he was all dressed in gold. The warriors immediately suspected something because no one in this country could offer 500 gold coins at once, and they thought that something was wrong here. The unknown man told them that his only advantage was money and that he could not miss such a generous auction. The bald warrior William angrily told him that this auction was only for gangs and said that the rich had no place here. At that time, the Lord, who was watching this, asked Caesar who this unknown man was. He replied that it was their puppet agent that he was now controlling. He sent him to secretly participate in the auction. The Lord asked him if he really wanted to buy all the techniques and spells and asked him where he got so much gold. Caesar answered him that he had taken the gold from their treasury. As it turned out, this was all the gold they owned. But he assured his master that they should not worry about it because when they take away all the techniques and spells, they will be able to return all the gold back. The auction ended successfully, and the person sent by Caesar managed to win all the skills and spells. He spent 10,000 gold coins on them. 
Yomlo congratulated him on the successful deal. An angry crowd of warriors chanted that it was unfair and they were against such deceitful actions. They demanded justice. But Yomlo replied that now all the skills and spells belong only to this rich man, and if they want to take revenge, then they should decide it only with this man. After that, the soldiers said that now they would get even with this insolent rich man and help him with these heavy suitcases. The rich man realized that Yomlo was not a completely honest man because he managed not only to make money from him, but also to make everyone hate him. Yomlo told the Neset that they should return already. He already had his own cunning plan to deceive everyone. The rich man understood that he could not defeat all these angry warriors and said that he was not going to appropriate all these techniques to himself and explained that they misunderstood him. This was another cunning plan of his. He considered them stupid and decided that it was time to move on to the second step in his plan. The warriors were surprised and asked what he meant and what he was going to do with all this now. He replied that he would give them not only all the techniques, but also all the spells. And after that, they would no longer have to fear that thief who tried to sell them his own things. The warriors joyfully accepted the rich man's words and noted that he was saying everything correctly, and they completely agreed with him that they would not be in any more danger with these spells and techniques. He spoke to them that their time of revenge had come, and he urged them to immediately deal with that insolent Yomlo. To do this, they needed special techniques that he had just purchased, but after he opened the chests he had just purchased, he saw something that surprised him extremely. Instead of the purchase techniques and spells, there was only a huge pile of stones. He began to scream wildly when he realized that he had just been extremely deceived. Caesar, who was watching this, was also extremely angry when he saw that Jomlo had just deceived him in such a vile way. His master's eyes began to glow with rage as he realized what had just happened. He went up to Caesar and grabbed him by the throat and said that it was all their money and now they had nothing left. Suddenly someone came to them and politely asked if he could address them. The master did not immediately understand who it was and answered him that they were busy now and it was better, whoever it was, to get away from here as far as possible. It was Yomlo who calmly said that he had just arrived and was already being chased away. After that, he asked if guests were greeted so rudely. When the Lord and Caesar realized that it was Yomlo who appeared near them, they were terribly frightened and could not understand how he ended up here, because they hid extremely well. The main character explained to them that their puppet agent was connected to them by a red magic thread, and it was through it that he managed to find them. Caesar was shocked by this information, because there were dozens of kilometers between them, and he managed to overcome them in a matter of minutes. He realized that it is better not to joke with him, especially since his black energy has not yet been completely restored and therefore it will be extremely difficult to fight with him. After that, he decided to use his magical skills to save himself. He conjured a dark matter spell that was supposed to save them from Yomlo coming to them. He channeled his black magic. It was a celestial projectile that was supposed to detain Yomlo, and he immediately told the Lord that they should flee from here before it was too late. The surprised Lord asked him where they would flee. He did not yet know what Caesar's plan was, and asked why they simply can't defeat Yomlo and take revenge on him for the fact that he deceived them so much. Caesar answered him that he was too strong for them and that black magic would hold him back, and now they had better run while they lived, because they both saw his power and what he was capable of. When Caesar used black magic, he detected a special aura and was able to activate it. It has turned into a portal that allows you to get anywhere in the world. But when he saw it in front of him, he was extremely surprised and did not expect such a thing. In front of him were many portals that led to new dimensions. He had never seen anything like this before. He did not understand what he should do now and where to go. But suddenly he saw something strange. In one of the shower containers, one started shaking wildly as if she wanted to get out. Caesar immediately understood that now she would be released and leave the special container. He wondered what would happen next. In a matter of seconds, the special soul managed to get out of the container without any problems, and she quickly went to one of the portals to another dimension. Caesar decided the best idea would be to follow her, and ask the Lord to follow him, though he didn't know if it would be safe. But the Lord did not have a better idea, so he decided to go with him to an unknown portal. Meanwhile, Yomlo ordered the system to collect all the valuables in this house, but unexpectedly, 
She informed him that she had discovered redundant portals to other spaces. He asked her what it meant. The Supreme System began to angrily shout at him and said that he should not forget about his task and remember why he appeared in this world. After that, Yomlo realized that she meant a special soul and asked the system if she was really here, but she did not answer him anything, only informed him that he has a new task to save the souls who are stuck in the destroyed world. At that time, Caesar and the Lord found themselves in a new dimension of the destroyed world. They did not yet know who was waiting for them here. The only thing they saw was complete devastation, and the air was filled with the smell of blood. The ruler immediately offered Caesar to turn back, but he told him that the only way to survive was to stay here. And he added that they should not lose hope. He was clearly convinced that all was not lost. Suddenly he saw that someone was not far from them and said that if any of them helped to survive here, he would pay handsomely. They were monsters that ate the remains of human flesh. They immediately turned their gaze to the guests in their world. The master asked in fear why they were so ugly. Caesar answered him also because they were already dead. The ugly monsters were heading straight for them, and it was clear that they did not have good intentions. But Caesar assured the ruler that the best of all he fights with the dead and got the technique of a special spell. He bit his finger and wrote a spell on his device with his own blood. After that, he began to say a special magic spell that was supposed to deal with these zombies and applied the magic technique to the dead man's head. But it had no effect on him, and he grabbed Caesar's hand. He knew immediately that his spell had failed. After that, the zombie decided to immediately bite the uninvited guest and began to eat his flesh. Caesar did not immediately understand what was happening and did not know how to react to it. After that, he swung his free hand and simply blew off half the dead man's head, thus destroying it. But the ruler saw that something strange had happened to Caesar. He decided to ask him how he was doing. Caesar turned to him and everything immediately became clear. A dead man's bite also turned him into a zombie. He only calmly replied that he felt extremely well as never before. At that time, Lord Yomlo was in this dimension. He noticed that when he was in this world, he felt much weaker. The Supreme System explained that it is because there is no his estate here that all the souls here are locked in rotten bodies. Because of this, his power is now 90% less. Yomlo asked in surprise what the rotting bodies meant. Was it a zombie world? And asked the system whether their bites are contagious. But before she could answer, he saw something strange in front of him. An unknown man was running, begging for salvation with tears in his eyes. He was being chased by a huge crowd of zombies who had almost caught up with him. Yomlo just watched with interest and tried to understand who it was there. Suddenly the man tripped over a stone on the ground and fell straight to the ground. He started screaming in pain. He turned back to see that the zombies that had been chasing him had almost caught up. He understood that his end would soon come. It was Caesar, now a dead man. He approached his former master along with other zombies. Their intentions were quite clear. The Lord writhed in fear. Suddenly, a magical protective sphere lifted him into the air, preventing the zombies from reaching him. It was the handiwork of Lord Yumlo who saved him. After that, he immediately saw who it was and was glad that he managed to find him. When the ruler saw that it was the same powerful man, he was immediately frightened, and he was clearly sure that this world would become his grave. After that, Yomlo said that this magic sphere barrier will work for ten minutes, and then it will disappear. After that, you will be able to test your strength against these dead people, and wished him luck. The frightened master begged him not to leave him here to fend for himself and promised that if he saved him, he would give him money, treasures, and a beautiful woman, and offered him to negotiate with him. Yomlo answered him that if he decided to deceive him, he would die an extremely painful death. The master assured him that he would never dare to deceive him. He understood that Yomlo was his last hope to survive here. The main character decided to use his magic strike and directed all his power directly at the zombies. The dead did not even have time to react. The last thing they saw was a magical force heading to kill them. The spell that Yomlo used completely destroyed all the zombies, leaving them no chance to survive. The ruler began to cry from happiness. He was extremely happy that he managed to survive in such conditions, and he also admired the power of Lord Yomlo. Suddenly he saw something strange in front of him. A strange glow was visible at the end of the street. The ruler thought that this sun was rising over them and said that this world still has hope. 
but Yomlo was surprised and asked the system why his body was getting weaker every minute. She told him that there was not enough energy in this world to restore his strength, and therefore he should be more careful. The glow that the master saw did something strange to him. He stood as if enchanted and said that he had not felt so warm and pleasant for a long time. How suddenly a magical worm of gigantic size appeared in front of him, which was heading straight for the ruler, who continued to stand spellbound, not realizing that danger and death awaited him. The giant worm opened its jaw, in which there were two rows of teeth, and some hands protruded from the tongue. They enveloped the ruler's face, putting him in a state of hypnosis. He continued to watch it all as if fascinated. A man with a bare torso appeared in his imagination, offering him to have fun with him. While he was standing spellbound and waiting for his sure death, Yomlo quickly ran up to him, who decided to save him before it was too late. He grabbed it by the face and promptly tossed it to the side until the giant worm ate it. He fell to the ground and realized that he was under the influence of an unknown spell that almost brought him to death. Lord Yomlo stood in front of the giant worm and faced him face to face. Now he became his main target. He decided to attack him immediately, and a frantic fair fight took place between them, which ended in a huge explosion. Lord Yomlo tore him into small pieces, leaving only his giant eye. He killed this monster and received a reward of 10,000 points. He realized that this world is much more interesting than he thought before. Many interesting adventures await him and the opportunity to make valuable points. He then asked the system if there was no energy in this world, where would he find the strength to face the challenges in this dimension? The supreme system answered him that for this case, she had a magic pill that could temporarily increase his strength, but one piece cost 10,000 points. But he thought it was too expensive and asked if there were any cheaper analogs. The supreme system replied that he could use cheaper pills, but the effect would be much weaker. One is worth 500 points, and he decided that it would be better to use them. He asked for ten pills. Caesar's master, who listened to his dialogue and could not understand who he was talking to, he didn't know about the system, so it was strange for him. But Yomlo was not going to explain it to him. Suddenly an optical sight from a combat rifle was pointed at them, which was ready to fire. All that was necessary was to pull the trigger. It was some unknown soldier of the command who discovered suspicious objects and asked his commander for permission to attack them immediately. But the commander said that he first needed to see who they were before destroying them. He picked up his thermal imager and saw that one of the unknown guests had no body temperature at all, as if he was dead, but looked like he was fully alive. He said that it could be zombies that were on their trail. The soldier answered him that in that case they must be destroyed immediately before they reached them. He picked up his scoped rifle again and started aiming at them. He was ready to carry out the order without any hesitation. His rifle can penetrate 20 mm steel plate from a distance of 100 meters. He was clearly convinced that they had no chance of survival. Aiming well, he fired his clearly confident shot, which was supposed to destroy the uninvited guests. First, he chose Lord Yomlo and fired his armored bullet. Yomlo saw with his peripheral vision that something was coming at him with evil intentions. His magical abilities came in handy. He used his magic barrier and the bullet that was supposed to kill him just stopped in front of his cheek without causing him any damage. Caesar's master asked what was the strange sound he had just heard. It was the sound of a shot that had just been fired at them. Lord Yomlo understood that it was an ordinary bullet. And he thought, did he finally find ordinary people alive again? The soldier who fired at them thought he had missed, but he was clearly convinced that it was impossible. Such a distance is just a warm-up for him. The commander frightenedly answered him that he did not miss, but that the bullet was deflected by an unknown guest without any problems. He didn't even know how to react to that. They decided that the best idea they could have now was to start running before they got to them. But they failed to carry out their plan and Lord Yomlo got to them first. He told them to follow that they should not run away from them so quickly. They turned in the direction of the voice and saw something that surprised them greatly. These were the same unknown guests. But what surprised him the most was that one of them used the other as a flying skateboard. Caesar's master said despairingly that he could never have imagined that he would be used as a means of transportation. It was extremely humiliating for him. Lord Yomlo landed on top of the building riding Lord Caesar. He raised a huge column of dust behind him. 
The commander and the soldier looked at this picture in amazement and were completely shocked by this course of events. They had never seen anything like it before. After that, the commander told the soldier to run away immediately and report this to their leader. And at this moment, he will try to delay them in order to gain the necessary time. The soldier said that he would not be able to resist them so easily and promised to stay with him to repel the attack together. The commander angrily slapped him and said that now is not the time to make a hero out of yourself, but to silently follow orders. Moreover, their team is now responsible for saving all of humanity, and therefore such rash decisions can prevent them from achieving their ultimate goal. The soldier decided to carry out the commander's order and said that they would surely take revenge for him so that his sacrifice would not be in vain. The main character watched this in silence and asked the commander what he was trying to do now. He answered him that he had turned on the self-destruct mode and they, together with him, would become a part of this doomed world. It will explode after 20 seconds. The timer has started. After that, Yomlo decided to calmly say that he came to help them save their humanity and that he has no ill will towards them. These words greatly surprised the commander and he asked if he was the same secret warrior that their leader had told them about. When he realized this, he started frantically yelling at his soldier to come back because he was the only one who knew how to disable this explosive device. But the soldier ran away from them with tears in his eyes. His thoughts were entirely on the brave self-sacrifice of his commander and on the plan of revenge. The commander barely caught up with him and ordered him to stop immediately. He pounced on him and screamed frantically for him to stop the explosive device immediately. The soldier clearly did not expect to see him alive so soon. But until it was too late, he successfully defused the explosive device and together they approached the unknown guests. They told them that this world was in complete chaos and that they were unlucky to get here. The commander introduced himself to them. His name was Lulu, and he asked the guests whether they came from a different world. The soldier believed that these superhumans had come to them to save them. The protagonist calmly asked them what happened here and asked them to tell him everything they knew. Lulu replied that this is an extremely long story, but humanity is to blame for what happened here. He said that several dozen years ago, employees of the Brell Company investigated the ice sheets of Antarctica and found a strange virus there, which, after infecting people, increased their capabilities and even immunity. With the help of that virus, it was possible to create pills that brought humanity to a new level of development and destroyed all known diseases. And the human body became extremely strong. Everyone thought that this was a huge gift for all of humanity and a chance for a happy future. But after some time, problems appeared. This unknown virus damaged people's brains and turned them into creatures that knew only the concepts of sacrifice and killing. Many of the people became mutants and they got different properties. They are called superhumans here, but they have lost all human senses. Yomlo listened to his story and asked if they knew how they could save their humanity from such a disaster. But Lulu's commander replied to Kim that this was all he could share with him, and now they needed to go to their allies immediately. He said goodbye to the guests and left them. After that, Yomlo turned his attention to his companion and asked him how he was feeling now and whether everything was okay with him. The humiliated former lord told him that he had never imagined that he would feel so worthless and miserable as he did now. He was extremely offended by the way Yomlo treated him. This made the protagonist extremely angry, and he asked him if he had anything against him and his actions. The former master sensed danger and fear and decided to answer that next time before using it as a means of transportation. But he did not have time to finish speaking as Yomlo interrupted him and said that they should go on. They both had a crazy desire to eat. At that time, Lulu and his soldier had already returned to their base and reported that everything was fine with them. Their enraged allies looked at them as if they wanted to tear them to pieces. The ally angrily asked why they were half an hour late, as he had been telling them about an important sortie that was to take place tonight. The Lulu commander quickly informed him that they had met two strange men who said they came from another world. But the Allies did not want to believe them and reminded them that they only had one task, to look at the dead bodies, but they did not manage even that. They were then angrily asked where their weapons were. In fact, they were so late that they forgot her on the roof. 
but weapons were an extremely important attribute of their lives, and if it weren't for her, they would have died a long time ago. Another one of their allies came out to them and said that they had had enough of making noise and reminded them that they should leave already because the portal will appear soon, and asked how much gunpowder they had left. The girl reported that they spent too many resources in this city, and because of that, they have little left. One of the allies pounded on the wall, and it was clear that he did not agree with their plan. He said that the mutants had killed too many of their brothers, and he could not rest until he had destroyed every single one of them. But he was told that they had no chance of destroying them, because their weapons were too weak. Moreover, there was another bad news. The portal they need will open not far from here, and it will attract a huge number of mutants. It seems that their end will come here. But suddenly Lord Yomlo intervened in their conversation, asking why they would surrender so easily. His appearance greatly surprised them. Lulu said that this was the same strange man they had met, and he said that even a bullet could not do anything to him and he can fly. The girl prepared her electrifying swords and asked in surprise if he had any superpowers. The professor told her that his device showed that he had no abilities. After that, Yomlo asked him if he really knew how to cure all these sick zombies. The girl did not trust him and asked him who he was and what was on his mind. But he assured her that he is not her enemy and said that his mission is to save this world before it is too late. He said that from this day on, they were his disciples and now they were under his protection. She asked in surprise that he didn't even have any weapons and asked him how he was going to protect them. Yomlo calmly answered her that it was a mistake to think that he had no weapons. He asked the system to exchange 5,000 points for two machine guns. She successfully executed his order and reported that their validity period is 20 minutes. The allies watched him in surprise and could not understand what kind of magic was unknown to them. The former lord was also surprised by this and asked him how he managed to hide such huge machine guns. And one of them said that it was extremely wonderful because they just needed such brave warriors. He was ready to accept him into his team. After that, Yomlo asked if they themselves had any weapons. He was told that all they had left were three pistols and 200 cartridges. One day, they were unexpectedly attacked by a monster of the fifth level, and they were forced to spend a lot of ammunition on it to escape. Many of their allies died that day. They explained that now their task is to accompany the professor to the final destination. And for this, they need to get to the portal alive. Yomlo asked them where the portal they were talking about led to. The soldier told him that their next destination was the city of Dason. There are other members of their team who will accompany him further. He said that they have already tried all the known ways of moving, both on water and in the air, but everywhere there are monsters that prevent them from reaching the portal. They had already spent an inordinate amount of their soldiers and doses of the antidote, but all this did not give them the desired result. They have the last dose of the antidote left in their last attempt to successfully accompany him. They have little time left, so they need to leave immediately to get to their destination in time. The professor was extremely grateful for their help when suddenly a fierce monster with green eyes appeared behind him. His allies immediately shouted to him to watch out behind. The professor turned around and saw a mutant who wanted to destroy him. He quickly dropped his antidote suitcase and ordered it to be kept. But it was already too late. With his sharp calls, he cut off the professor and the last dose of the antidote. The allies began to call the professor in fright and realized that the mutant had become invisible. The former overlord and overlord Yomlo stood and watched. They had never encountered such creatures before. The mutant decided to play with them and became visible again. He informed them that he had destroyed almost all of their team and their last antidote and promised that they would be his dinner tonight. Before turning invisible again, he said it was time to start the show. The girl said that they should all become extremely careful or they would all die at the hands of this mutant. The monster was invisible and began to move around the room at breakneck speed. The only reminder of his presence was the trail of dust he left behind. The allies all prepared to attack and took out what remnants of weapons they had left, but they still couldn't see him. He said that they will not be able to see him because he is faster than the speed of light and all their efforts are useless. He started running around them and surrounded them. The monster did not allow anyone to get out of this trap. He decided to attack the girl first because he really liked to eat soft female bodies. He threatened that he was already behind her. 
She prepared her electrifying swords, but she was well aware that they would not be able to harm his flesh. The mutant had already swung at her, but his attack was instantly interrupted by Lord Yamlo, which surprised the monster extremely because he was sure that he was invisible to the human eye. The girl was only surprised that he managed to be behind so unexpectedly. Yomlo said that he hated rats that always attacked from behind and advised him not to be so cocky. The mutant wondered in surprise how he managed to stop his attack since his claws were as sharp as a sword. He thought that Yomlo was a cultivator who stood up for the people. They again swung into attack, and Lord Yomlo used his crowning capture technique to stop him from escaping and began attacking him with his magical powers. The main character said that it is better not to resist, but the mutant replied that it would not be so easy to kill him and decided that it would be better for him to cut off his captured arm, and jumped away from Yomlo to catch his breath and continue the fair fight. Vid angrily asked him why Yomlo, a cultivator, sided with the people and betrayed his own, and he promised that he would pay for having hurt him. At that time, his hand began the process of recovery. Finally, he said fiercely that today no one would leave him alive. The mutant was determined to destroy every single one of them. He decided to use his crown technique and used his mental call. He used all his vocal cords to call for help from zombies and other monsters. And he said that a huge number of monsters are already heading here and will tear them to pieces. And he said that they can enjoy the last seconds of a miserable life because no one else will help them. Yomlo questioned his words and said that this was not all. He prepared a surprise for him. He began to use his magic technique. He had prepared a special reception for such situations. The main character used blue dragon magic. He managed to take control of the monster and turn it upside down. After that, he told him to enjoy the last seconds of his worthless life while he still had the chance. And he said that if he was so brave and dared to sport his plans, then now he would extremely regret that he was still alive. The monster told him that he was talking too much, and it was obvious that he was a weakling. He had an average level of cultivation and was clearly confident that he would not be able to kill him. The main character said that since these were his last words before death, they should have been used more appropriately. The monster thought it was some kind of joke because their weapons couldn't even scratch his thick skin. He was clearly convinced that they had no chance of seriously harming him, let alone destroying him. But suddenly, he saw something in front of him that surprised him greatly. Yomlo used 10000 points to get a hell tank with five lethal charges. The monster could not understand where the tank came from, but it was too late. The main character loaded a projectile and quickly shot it at the creature. His allies were also shocked that he managed to take an entire tank somewhere. They had never seen such powerful magic before, so it was a surprise to them. Yomlo said that they didn't have that much time to talk for so long and ordered them to quickly get into the tank. One of the allies said that it was all for naught because the professor was dead and the last antidote was lost. They already believed that there was no longer any hope that could save this situation. But the main character denied his words and answered him that he is their main hope that can help them. With the help of his magical abilities, he showed them the sphere in which the saved antidote was located and said that not a single drop of it was spilled. They could not believe their eyes and thought that it was God who had come to help them. They had a small hope for the salvation of humanity. The main character drew a magical portal of resurrection to finally convince his allies that he can be trusted. In a moment, their professor appeared from the portal and died before their eyes. Yomlo decided that he needed to get his soul back in order to carry out his plan. The bespectacled man could not believe his eyes. He had never seen anyone succeed in raising the dead before in his life. The professor had already thought that he had come to life. But the main character answered him that he returned his soul here and said that he did not have time to explain. It would just be necessary to do as he said. Suddenly, one of the allies saw a huge number of zombies coming towards them and said that they should do something about it before it's too late. The zombies were gradually climbing the stairs towards them. They were going for the shout that the monster had used before it died. Lord Yomlo and his allies climbed into the tank. It was their only chance to escape. They didn't want to engage in direct combat with so many creatures at once. They jumped out of the building right on the tank. They really should have been quick, because it would expire after five minutes, and then it would just disappear. 
But when they flew in flight, they saw that a huge, fierce purple eagle was near them. It was another creature that had come to the cry. But they were lucky, because when they fell in love, the portal they needed was already in front of them. The professor noted that they had very limited time to get there, as the portal was closing soon. And because of this, they should hurry. Lord Yomlo asked where this portal led to, and the professor explained to him that it led to the next city. And he said that this is exactly where they need to be. Now they were in the city of Zenbun, and the portal leads to the city of Medvin. There is a ready-made hidden provision for them. And the final point of arrival is the city of Gunkan. They decided not to waste time and quickly made their way to the open portal, being careful of the purple eagle so that it wouldn't do any harm to them and prevent them from getting through in time. His fierce tentacles began to emerge from the eagle's mouth to prevent them from escaping from him. They had almost captured their tank with them. But at the last moment they managed to speed up and slipped away, leaving the maddened tentacles behind. They managed to break through the open portal in time. It was fortunate that the creatures could not go after them, because their limbs were cut off when they tried. They found themselves in the new city of Medvin, and it was extremely timely because the action on the tank was already over. Time was up. The allies were surprised to ask where the tank had gone. The protagonist said with relief that they were extremely lucky that the path was close, otherwise he would have had to spend an extremely large amount of points. His allies did not understand what he meant, but it would take a long time to explain, and it was not a fact that they would be able to fully understand everything, so they decided not to ask much. Yomlo decided to go scouting and ordered them to wait for him here. One of the allies showed him a navigator on which it was clear that provisions lie somewhere here, so they should be searched for. Suddenly, one of them saw something interesting and called everyone to him to show it. It was something new for them. They climbed the hill and saw the castle. Ochkarik said that it seems to him that some super beings live here. In front of them was a castle of gigantic dimensions. They had never seen a building on such a huge scale. Suddenly, the girl saw something very strange on the bridge that was near the castle. One of the allies said that it looked like it was Commander Wu and his squad. It seems that he knew who was there. It was a ferocious creature that was driving the three hostages to the edge of the bridge. He decided to sacrifice them for his zombies because they had not eaten fresh flesh for a long time. The monster told them that they had become his prey because they were too weak to resist the superhumans one of the hostages told him to go back and said that he was not worthy to speak in human language. It was the squad commander, and the monster was extremely surprised by his audacity. He threatened him that he would beat each of his squad in turn, and no amount of courage will help prevent this. Zombies were already under the bridge waiting for new meat and moaning hungrily from hunger. The allies at the time were watching this and thought they needed to do something about it immediately before it was too late. One of them told someone that they needed to find a cultivator. That's what they called the Lord Yomlo. After that, one of them took out his gun and said that he would shoot that monster now. He was sure that he would be able to get there successfully. But it seems that the bespectacled man did not agree with such a thoughtless decision. It was clear that something was bothering him. After all, this is how they will reveal their location, which will reduce their chances for a successful development of events. He was worried about the number of super beings, creatures that were in this castle. He scanned with his glasses and saw that they had an extremely strong aura, and if they detected them before time, they would be the end. And after that, the chances of survival will be zero. Therefore, they had to find another way to help Commander Yu and his squad. One of the allies looked again in the navigator and saw that the portal was somehow located in that castle, and they still needed to get there. After that, the girl was surprised and asked where the cultivator had gone. He was their only hope. At that time, on the bridge, the monster said that it was time to become food for his zombies and swung its vile tentacle. And he threw into the abyss those who were bound in one chain. It looked like they had no chance to escape. But something suddenly happened that shocked the creature wildly. He clearly did not expect that the commander had such a great strength that he would be able to cling to the edge of the bridge and hold on. He held himself and his team by his own strength, clinging to the cliff. The chain gripped his left arm with great force, but he wasn't about to give up. The allies watched in awe and could not believe that he had so much power. Together they all fell to their knees and began to pray for the fate of the guilty commander Yu and his squad. 
Only a miracle could save them. The commander said that it was all the effect of the medicine and noted that it was quite timely. He swung the chain with his left hand and successfully threw his squad back onto the bridge. The monster still couldn't believe that humans could have such great strength to escape from the trap with such ease. He was clearly convinced that they would not stand a chance. But the commander's will to win helped him to save himself at the last moment, and in a moment he was behind the monster that wanted to destroy them. He swung his right hand to strike and take revenge on this creature for all the trouble he had caused them. The fist reached such a tremendous speed that it began to leave behind a trail of fire. It was clear that Mad Rage was in charge of the commander. The creature could not believe that anyone would dare to resist him. He was clearly convinced that the body had become so strong that even a bullet would not penetrate his flesh, let alone a fist. But these were his vain hopes, because the fist crashed into him with such a powerful force that he did not even have time to react and repel this fierce attack. He began to scream wildly from the pain that the commander caused him. He had never felt such a strong blow before. Commander Wu successfully knocked him back with his powerful punch and said that he was a real weakling. He ordered his squad to wait for him here while he sent everyone else to their graves. He was so strong that he managed to break the shackles of the chain without any effort and escape from captivity. His squad admired his power. He said that this is the effect of the medicine and now his body is completely filled with strength. But suddenly he began to cough up blood, which was clearly not part of his plans. The team could not understand what happened to him, but he assured them that it was just a side effect of the medicine that had just saved them. He has only three hours, and then after that time, he may even die. Their final task is to find the explosives and raise this castle to the ground and avenge their brothers. At that time, the allies who were silently observing the actions of Commander Wu and his squad could not believe that he had managed to destroy this Nido squid with one blow. The girl could not understand how he managed it at all. But they explained to her that this is the effect of paranormal drugs that were specially created for them. They increase the strength of the whole body, but within three hours the body begins to feel a huge weakness, from which it is possible to even die. After that, when the super beings found out about these drugs, they destroyed their base. They thought that there were no more supplies left anywhere in the world, but Commander Wu managed to find the last copy. Suddenly. Lord Yomlo appeared behind them and said that he had found a mass burial site nearby and needed to go there to replenish his energy. These words greatly surprised the allies, who did not understand what he meant. They could not understand what mass burial and what energy he was talking about. After that, he said that there were many super beings here who had turned many innocent people into their food, but today was a good day for them. The girl asked him what his plan was and what he intended to do in this situation. He said that he alone would not be able to deal with this huge number of monsters, but he had one method that could help. He decided that for this, his team should be stronger, and he had a hundred percent plan how to do it. He decided to make them tough Wu Lin warriors. This is the only way that can help them defeat all this number of super beings. After that, the girl surprisedly asked if it was not related to the combat techniques that she had heard about from her grandmother. The protagonist confirmed her hypothesis and said that she was absolutely right. This is the only way to achieve their goals. He showed them a set of techniques that he had with him and ordered them to choose any of them that they liked more. The former overlord was fascinated by the techniques that the protagonist had and could not believe that he was ready to give them such a powerful gift. But Yomlo said that for him it's just waste paper that doesn't carry any value. Ochkarik asked in surprise what techniques they were talking about, because he believed that these were all fantasies from children's fairy tales. One of the allies understood that their strength would not be enough to defeat these powerful enemies in the tower, but now they had no time for jokes and idle talk. The allies knew that even if there were special techniques, they needed time to master and learn them. Lord Yomlo replied that some things may be beyond their understanding, but that does not mean that nothing is impossible. He put his left hand to the face of one of the allies and began to speak magic words. In a moment it was clear that he had managed to summon magical powers with which he wanted to endow one of his allies with special abilities. And he said that from this moment on, he is the strongest warrior that everyone should emulate. The magic spell ignited the incredible power of one of the allies. 
He began to feel like the strongest warrior in the world and fiery energy seemed to pour out of his body. He had never felt so powerful before. His body was filled with incredible strength and became extremely light. It seemed to him that he could conquer the whole world by himself. He knelt down and began to use his new abilities to demonstrate what he was capable of. Already in a moment he managed to bend with such enormous force that he only left behind a pillar of dust and air. At that moment, he himself did not know that he was capable of such a thing. The jump was so powerful that in a matter of seconds he was on the top of the mountain. It seemed that he was endowed with the power of God himself. The other allies looked in surprise at the new abilities of their colleague and could not believe their eyes, because an ordinary person cannot bend tens of meters. The protagonist knew that he had been accumulating his inner strength for twenty years just for this moment. He was satisfied with his result. The other allies immediately fell to their knees and began begging him to make them the strongest people as well to help him fight those monsters. The girl who was already ready to become stronger and more powerful was chosen first in line. The main character used his magical abilities to give her incredible strength. After all, he understood that he would need allies, and he himself really wanted to help them. The result was unsurpassed. Her feminine energy rose to an extremely high level. Even her breasts became bigger, although she herself did not expect it. Next in line was the rest of his future team, and he wasted no time directing his magical energy at them. In a matter of seconds, the strength of all squad members was raised to the maximum. They are all now super-powerful warriors who must help defeat the monsters. Lord Yomlo, after all these manipulations, felt as if he had been emptied from the inside. But all this was necessary to fulfill his task. Each of the squad members received 50 years of inner strength. They still didn't understand why they needed it, but Yomlo already had his own plan, which is that now they only need to spend an hour to master all these techniques that he was willing to offer them. They could not believe that they would succeed in such a short period of time, because according to legends, in order to fully master one technique, some warriors had to devote their whole lives to it. But after that, the leader led them to the edge of the cliff and showed dozens of zombies at the bottom. And he said that he has one way how they can reduce the time to learn the necessary techniques. He decided to push one of the allies to send him straight to the zombies who were already waiting for him at the bottom. He believed that this would be the best motivation to learn the techniques as quickly as possible. He landed hard on the ground and found himself right in the middle of the zombies who couldn't wait to feast on the new flesh. He quickly rose to his feet and saw dozens of zombies who wanted him dead immediately. They started coming straight at him, making strange noises. He was so frightened that sweat began to form on his forehead. He had never faced such a huge number of zombies before. They were so angry that it seemed as if they would just eat him now and leave no trace of him. He quickly began to run away and said in a panic that it would be better if he was given to learn the special techniques first and not sent to certain death. His allies watched in despair as he fled helplessly from the zombies and did not know how to help him. Surprised, they asked Lord Yomlo why he decided so easily to let them kill their team member. They believed that in such a panic it is impossible to quickly and correctly master the techniques, but the main character thought otherwise. He didn't have any more time to wait for them to learn it without proper motivation. And that is why he sent them all together forcibly. He was extremely indifferent to their opinion. Now the four of the allies were running away from the angry crowd of zombies who were gradually catching up with them. They did not understand how they were supposed to learn the techniques under such conditions. The former king, who still remained on the mountain, began to shout at them so that they would stop running away, but start giving a decent fight back and stop being pitiful cowards. After that, Yomlo decided that it would be better if he too joined them and helped them. When it came down to it, the former lord began to give back. He believed that he did not need such radical measures. But Yomlo thought otherwise and also sent him to the bottom of the rock. He believed that they should manage together and it should not be a problem for them. The former lord had no choice but to join them and repel the attackers. Since he had such a chance, he should not disgrace his royal dignity and set an example of how a real man and warrior should behave. He decided that as long as they were running away from them, he would deal with them himself. It is a great honor for him to deal with such a huge crowd on his own, but his allies warned him in time that if even just a drop of blood fell on him, he too would turn into a zombie. 
The former Lord did not know about this information, so it came as a real surprise for him. He had no other option. In addition to joining allies and running away from them together, they did not yet know how they should cope with such a difficult task on their own. Suddenly, one of the allies tripped and fell straight to the ground. It seemed that she was doomed to certain death. Angry zombies were already happy with such easy prey and started running even faster. It was just a gift of fate for them. It was a real loss for the allies, who did not want to lose one of their team members in such a ridiculous situation. The monsters have almost reached their new victim. She was literally a few centimeters away from feasting on fresh flesh. The girl writhed in terror and meekly waited for her certain death. She thought she had no chance against such ferocious zombies. But suddenly, some unknown magical sphere began to emerge from it, emitting strange sounds. The girl had never done this before. The sphere grew to an incredible size and instantly pushed dozens of zombies in different directions. It became a real salvation for her. Surprised, the allies asked her what it was and how she managed to do it. They did not even understand what had happened. But the girl also did not understand what she had just done. She couldn't believe that she was still alive and safe. The former overlord explained that it was a barrier that was triggered by the release of an inner force. It seems that he had an idea. The protective sphere prevented zombies from getting inside and harming them. They felt relatively safe in it. But it could not last long because her strength eventually ran out. After that, the allies began to think how they could help her. Sweat broke out on her face from the great tension, while the other team members discussed what technique they should use in this situation. But her patience ran out earlier, and she angrily said that now is not the best time to lose him in idle chatter, and it is better to start, to do something before it is too late. The allies decided to listen to her and quickly chose the techniques that Lord Yumlo had given them. They really didn't have as much time as they wanted. Their commander quickly began rereading the equipment manual and he seemed to have a sudden enlightenment, which he had never experienced before. The energy gave him clarity in his head, and all the knowledge from this book seemed to be absorbed into his brain with the speed of light. All the chakras that were previously closed opened in his soul. His body was filled with magical energy and gained insane freedom and strength. It was like a blissful feeling that made him the most powerful warrior on this planet. The commander began to study his new abilities, and it turned out that now he can possess various magical powers. He felt himself to be an extremely gifted and capable warrior. Bespectacled watched the transformation of the commander in surprise and could not believe his own eyes that it was all happening in reality. After that, he decided to use a special technique, which, in his opinion, was supposed to help him destroy the attackers and save himself. The former lord was surprised to realize that this was the technique of the eight-legged dragon. He couldn't believe that he had decided to use it right here, but it was too late. The commander could not stop and said that the dragon would appear here now, and he began to scream wildly from the inner energy. The former lord understood what was about to happen here and began to beg to be released from here immediately and asked the girl to take this barrier to hell, but it was already too late and the dragon broke free. It was an ice monster that seemed to destroy everything in its path. His gaze was blank and angry at the same time. He knocked back the rest of the allies with his blast wave, who didn't even have time to understand what had happened. At that time, their leader wielded his human dragon and directed his wrath at his attackers. The zombies began to run away from them in panic. They understood that they could not cope with them. At the end, he said with satisfaction that he had succeeded and turned to his allies. But at that moment, they were lying unconscious a few meters away from him. He could not understand what had happened to them. The leader did not see that he managed to harm them with his own strength. But that was just the beginning. Exactly an hour has passed since the zombies started running away from them. They had never seen such powerful magic techniques before and understood that if they stayed there, they would surely die. But the one-hour head start was not enough to save them. The Allies quickly caught up with them and shouted at them that they had no chance of survival. With the support of their commander, each member of the squad received previously unavailable power. Each of them learned a new technique, and they were ready to mercilessly destroy the enemies. They used the Golden Shield technique to trap the zombies. They were so adept at using their new powers that it was as if they had possessed them all their lives. The zombies, who were trapped, realized that they had no chance to escape. 
They didn't even put up any resistance, and in a few seconds their bodies were cut by the giant blade. The professor, who was watching them from above, said that for the first time in his life he had seen zombies run away so cowardly. He couldn't believe that they also had a sense of fear. The main character answered him that it is the fear of human souls which are locked in the bodies of zombies, and said that it was time to meet the main boss. At that time, the commander of Squad U managed to get inside the tower together with his team members. Two monsters were walking down the corridor, discussing the anniversary of their leader. They hoped that they would also receive some gifts today. Commander Yu, who was watching them, decided that this was their chance, and he decided that he should act immediately. He began to catch up with them and told his team to go with him. He had only one thought in his head, revenge. Two monsters opened the next section in the corridor. They had not yet guessed that they were being watched. Behind the door of that section were several pretty young girls who were clearly not happy about their appearance. They already knew what was coming next. The monsters began to lick themselves with lust. They were excited by these young and fresh girls, but they did not have enough time to realize their secret desires. The monsters walked into the cell to the young victims and greeted them. The faces of the girls showed that they were frightened and were in a state of intense fear. One of them started whimpering. She was sure that they would be killed now. But another girl interceded for her and promised her that as long as she was here, nothing would threaten her. The monster said that to become food for the master is a great honor, which will then be credited to them in heaven. They considered themselves new people, but the girls did not agree with this. They considered them ordinary scum who deserved to die in the most severe torment. But the monster did not pay attention to her words and began to choose who would become a worthy victim for his powerful master, and decided to choose an unhappy girl who was constantly whimpering. She was the most vulnerable among all the others, and that seemed extremely attractive to him. But the other, who promised to protect her from all dangers, rose to her feet and stood in a fighting stance. She was ready to enter into a fair fight with him. But the monsters were clearly convinced that she did not have the courage to do so. He didn't believe she could stop him with her little fists. And despite her threats, he grabbed the girl, who began to cry before that, and dragged her behind him. She tearfully begged her sister to save her because she didn't want to be eaten by these monsters. The sister rushed after the monster with her fists and shouted for him to let her go immediately. She turned out to be an extremely brave girl. But the monster had demonic tentacles on its head, with which it destroyed more than 100 innocent people. He launched them into her and managed to wrap them all over her body. She couldn't even really move. And he angrily said that if she is ready to sacrifice her body so much, then he must taste her. He slid his long tongue right into her throat. She began to mumble, trying to say something, but nothing came out of her. She found herself in a deadly trap. But his colleague ordered him to stop, because they were forbidden to touch anyone without their master's order. But the monster answered him that their master would not see it anyway. He thought that today was a nice enough day to please himself. This answer made him extremely angry, and he once again threatened him that because of this they could have quite a lot of trouble. He decided that it was better to listen to his words and left her alone. All they had to do was prepare for cooking and find all the necessary ingredients. The sister was extremely upset by the fact that she was unable to protect herself and the person who was extremely dear to her. Suddenly there was a sound in the corridor, followed by a smoke grenade thrown by an unknown person. The grenade suddenly began to hiss and spray a smoke screen. The monsters did not even have time to understand what was happening. The smoke screen continued to fill the room, and even a greater number of eyes do not give them the opportunity to see anything in it. Suddenly, Commander Yu started running at them. He appeared out of nowhere and was determined to deal with them. The monster felt that one of the people was approaching him. He was clearly convinced that whoever it was, he still had no chance against them. But the commander was so fast that the monster did not even have time to react to his appearance. It seemed that he was faster than the speed of sound. He stretched his right hand forward and grabbed the monster he had wanted to deal with for a long, long time. Another monster stood in the middle of the room and could not understand where his partner had gone. It was like someone decided to throw them a holiday today. Meanwhile, the commander forcibly dragged the monster into another room so that no one could see them and pressed him firmly against the wall, holding him by the throat. 
he menacingly asked him where all their resources were and promised him that if he did not tell, he would be forced to strangle him. But the monster was not going to give up so easily and told the commander to take his time. It was like he had a cunning plan. He decided to use the power of all his eyes, which began to fill with demonic blood energy. The monster said that although he is physically weaker than him, he has the ability to control the alien's mind. Anyone who looks into his eyes becomes his personal puppet. He was clearly confident that he would take control of his mind and thus be able to defeat him mentally. The monster began to brazenly laugh in his face. But it seems that his plan failed. The commander hit him in the face menacingly and said that he would not allow anyone to mock him so much. The monster could not believe that he had failed to possess him. He managed to escape his control without any obstacles. He couldn't believe that he had such a strong will. Suddenly another monster looked into the room and saw them. He asked his partner if he had wet his pants from fear. Suddenly an unexpected blow from behind landed on his head. It was a powerful wooden bat. A member of Commander Yu's squad entered the room and said that no one attacks from behind better than her. It was noticeable that she was proud of her act. The monsters were stunned that they could be treated like this in their own territory, even with such dishonest methods. The commander understood that he did not have that much time and decided to continue to beat out of them information about the location of all their resources. The monster replied that after he leaves this room he should turn left and go to the kitchen. He said that all their valuables were there and begged not to kill him. The commander put a strong point and hit him in the face with all his might. At the end, he thanked him for the information provided. After that, he told his allies that their plans had changed. He ordered them to rescue these innocent girls while he dealt with the explosives. They told him that they had very little time. They thought it wasn't a good idea right now. But the commander did not listen to them and quickly ran down the corridor from them. He had a clear plan to destroy this place once and for all. However, in this tower, there were video surveillance cameras that were constantly monitored by supervisors. But they believed that these uninvited guests would not be able to harm them and they decided not to tell anyone about it. They wanted to play with them, and the man said that it was better to give them vain hope and watch them, and then tear them into small pieces. He thought it would be much more interesting that way. He had not had enough entertainment in this boring tower for a long time. The girl, who was also watching them with interest, asked what vain hope he wanted to give them, and he replied that he would give them a false hope of victory, and then destroy their entire paradigm of representation. He knew the commander would be able to find the explosives now, but he didn't know yet that their engineer had already worked on it. The girl still did not understand why so many extra steps, because it is much easier to kill them without any ceremonies. But he replied that he wanted to enjoy the process of the game, and to see their doomed faces, which will look at him with a lost look. He took the walkie-talkie in his hands and told the guards not to touch the uninvited guests, but to leave them for him. The girl was categorically against such a plan, because on such an important day, everything had to pass without any incidents. While they argued with each other, Commander Wu took down their bodyguards effortlessly. They just lay unconscious on the ground. He could not understand what was happening and why it was all so easy. He did not understand, is it they are so weak? Is it he who has become so strong? There wasn't even a guard near the kitchen where the resources were. He decided that God himself was on his side today. He had little time and immediately went to the kitchen and opened the door. So far, everything was going according to the plan he imagined. He was surprised that they did not even think to hide the box with explosives, but left it in a prominent place. They don't know yet that he will blow them up now. This explosive is enough to raise this entire palace to the ground along with the monsters that are here. He leaned his hand against the lid of the box and the process of identity recognition began. The timer was successfully started and it had ten minutes left before it self-destructs. He could not believe that he had succeeded in all this. He watched the countdown with a tired look. He was sorry that he would not be able to save all the prisoners in these ten minutes because he has a more important task. Suddenly a man came to him who was watching him on the video surveillance cameras and noticed that the commander looked too pleased. The commander immediately launched his spear at him. He didn't even want to talk to him for a second. But the man's head seemed to dissolve in space and the spear went through, sticking into the concrete wall. But this did not greatly upset the commander, because the explosives had already been set off and would soon blow everything to pieces here. 
What pleased him the most was that no one would be able to get out of here alive. The man started clapping his hands and thanked Commander Zait for bringing some fun into his monotonous life. It was this self-confident physiognomy that he expected to see, that moment when you seem to think that you own the whole situation, but in fact you are just an ordinary hostage of circumstances. He didn't want to upset him so early, but he said that this bomb wasn't going to explode. Suddenly, some unknown creature knocked down the door to their room and rushed inside. It was clear that she was furious. It was their engineer and the man asked in surprise what he was doing here. He clearly did not expect that they would suddenly burst in on them. An enraged engineer approached him and asked who set off the explosives. The surprised man could not understand why he was so angry, because this explosive was still not going to explode. He was sure that the engineer had worked on her, but it was not quite as he thought. The engineer explained to him that he managed to make her ten times more powerful than she was before. The man could not believe that this was happening to him now. After all, no one asked him to do exactly that. Meanwhile, exactly thirty seconds remained before the explosion. After that, everything around them is leveled to the ground. Suddenly they realize that the commander had managed to escape. But that was the least of their worries now. He ordered the engineer to immediately defuse the explosives. But he answered him, whether in order to stop the timer, it is necessary to confirm the identity. But the bad news was that he didn't have time to enter his data after increasing its power. This information made the man extremely angry. He began to realize that they had no chance of getting out of here alive, and it looked like this was the end of them. Sweat broke out on his face from panic, and he angrily said that it was necessary to find the commander immediately, because only he could cancel the explosion. Meanwhile, the countdown timer showed that there were exactly ten seconds left before the devastating explosion. The guard understood that he was in a complete ass, and the jubilee of the master of the tower turned into his personal funeral. He couldn't believe that all he had left were the options he'd gone through in his head. It is simply to start running away as soon as possible. But the chances of survival still remain minimal, because the engineer increased the power of the explosion by ten times. Suddenly the door opened in the room and an unknown shadow appeared in the room. It was the lord of the tower who arrived, who was on a pedestal, which was carried by four of his servants. They obediently reported to him that they were already there. The appearance of the master of the tower was extremely deceptive. He looked like an ordinary boy who would be no more than ten years old. The guard could not believe his eyes that the owner himself appeared before him. This fact surprised him extremely, and now he did not know what to do. The owner quickly jumped off the pedestal and headed towards the guard as if nothing had happened. He quickly approached the box on which the countdown timer showed exactly five seconds remaining. The guard began to make excuses, but was suddenly interrupted. The host said that it was all pretty good, and even he almost got it right. He began to use his magical powers and reached his hand forward towards the box. Strange fibers began to grow out of his hand, as if extending it. It seemed that it was human flesh growing from him. In a moment it transformed into the appearance of Commander Yu. He directed him to a box with powerful explosives. What remained of the former commander clicked on the chest, and the process of establishing the identity began. The self-destruct program was successfully stopped. The program was stopped in time and no more explosions threatened them. Suddenly the owner felt strange emotions. It was anger mixed with despair. He began to cry from these strange sensations. From mixed feelings he suddenly grabbed his head and started sobbing wildly. After all, he had very little left. The guard realized that the master had absorbed the commander, who had managed to escape from him. But he did not pay attention to his appearance, because he had the ability to transform into any person, whichever he absorbed. But in addition, he acquired the abilities and feelings of his victims. One of his features is to get pleasure from all negative experiences. No one in the tower knew how many of those abilities he had, all they knew was that he was a godlike being of the highest order. After the owner successfully defused the bomb, he told the security guard that, according to rumors, he wanted to kill him. The man immediately began to make excuses and answered him that it was not him, and he said that he would never dare to do such an act in his life. But the owner continued that the engineer told him that he had stolen the bomb that he wanted to use to blow him up. The guard told him that he only wanted to play with that old commander. But the game had gone too far, and he had lost control of it. 
but the girl and the engineer wanted to frame the unfortunate guard and confirm to their master that allegedly he really wanted to betray him. After that, the master replied that he hates traitors most of all and ordered to put him in a cage until the circumstances are clarified. Meanwhile, the guards who were monitoring the security of the tower noticed that someone was approaching them from the side of the ancient island. They felt the aura of people, but they could not understand who was so bold as to come here without any weapon. Suddenly they saw that some unknown glow appeared from the guests. They could not understand what was happening. Suddenly the magical radiance took the form of two extremely sharp blades headed straight for them. The monsters didn't even have time to react, as a magical glow cut their bodies in half. They had never had such powerful guests before. The allies used the six spirit sword technique. In such a short time, they perfectly managed to master such complex techniques. It was Lord Yomlo's gang who came here to avenge all the innocent victims. They will not be afraid of any difficulties. They got into the middle of the tower without any problems, without encountering any resistance. Immediately in front of them, they met a giant wall. The allies noticed that there was something strange on it, and at first they did not even understand what it was. But when they realized, they were filled with insane rage because these were innocent people who had been killed. Several bodies were unceremoniously hoisted to the ceiling. It was clear to anyone that they were simply executed without clarifying the circumstances. They recognized that it was their special group. Now the desire for revenge became even greater. Now they understood what kind of monsters they were dealing with. Suddenly behind them were sharp as a blade, unknown calls. Someone sneaked up behind them unnoticed. It was a monster that decided to take advantage of the moment of surprise and decided that it would be able to single-handedly destroy the uninvited guests. He began using the furious hurricane technique, which was supposed to turn them into mincemeat. But the protagonist chose the moment in time and with one hand closed his mouth. The monster clearly did not expect such a development. His eyes began to pop out of their sockets. He tried to speak to be released, but nothing worked. The Lord held him firmly with his mighty hand. The monster had no chance to get out of such a trap. The allies turned around in surprise and saw this strange picture. They quickly realized that this doveman wanted to attack them from behind, but he was unsuccessful. Our main character neutralized another threat without any effort, and they moved on. They still had an extremely large number of cases that required immediate action. The girl asked Lord Yomlo what their current plan was in case of unexpected threats. She questioned if they really needed to kill everyone in their path. The Lord told her that they had no other choice if they wanted to stay alive and avenge their people. She began to admire the calm and balanced King Yomlo. She understood that he really knew what they needed to do. She considered him an extremely brutal man. She was sure that under his command they would destroy all their enemies and no one would be able to stop them. At that time the master of the tower was informed that an unknown group of people had killed their guards, and he said that they are so strong that no one can stop them. The owner said in frustration that he was not allowed to spend a single day in peace and asked what weapons these unknown people had. But he was told that they came without any weapons, strangely dressed, and said that they did not look like superhumans. This information puzzled his guards who were standing nearby dressed in a hood. It was the Dark Guardians who asked the Master to entrust this matter to them. In addition to the hood, they also had a strange beard. They were sure that they would have no problem dealing with the uninvited guests and would be able to give them a fair verdict. The Dark Guardian opened the court gate, which began to emit a powerful glow. It was their personal hundred ability that always instilled great fear in their enemies. The glow was so powerful that it immediately began to blind their master. He told them to move away from him immediately. They asked him for forgiveness for such carelessness and turned the other way. He ordered his dark ghosts to go and punish the villains. The dark ghosts immediately went in search to carry out the order they had just received. Their goal was to immediately find the uninvited guests to punish them. At that time, Lord Yomlo and his new team calmly walked the corridors of the tower without encountering any obstacles. They were surprised by the fact that they did not meet anyone on their way, as if everyone was afraid of their appearance. Suddenly, they saw dark forces in front of them, which were rushing towards them. The allies did not yet know what it was. But Lord Yomlo was the first to notice them but it was clear from his face that they did not frighten him. 
The Dark Guardian immediately saw them through his magical helmet and ordered that they should immediately prepare for the spiritual judgment. Dark forces began to surround the uninvited guests from different sides, as if they wanted to surround them to give them no chance to disappear without a trace. Hochkarik decided that this was the perfect chance to test his new powers and assured everyone that he would handle it now without any problems. He decided to use the Golden Shield technique. With the help of new magical powers, he conjured a magic bell in front of him, which was supposed to serve as a barrier, but the dark forces broke through it without any effort. Ochkarik was surprised that they passed through so easily. In the meantime, the master decided to ask his servant if everything is really going according to plan. The Dark Guardian answered him that his ghosts had successfully found them and would now deal with them without any problems. Dark forces have absorbed Lord Yomlo and his band of allies. Their souls ended up in an unknown dimension. The Dark Guardian gathered them all in one place and said that this is his territory and now they will do what he tells them. He said that now they are in front of the Holy Court and this is where their fate will be decided. It was a sacred court in which it doesn't matter how strong someone is because everyone is equal here. The allies did not agree with such insolence and said that the only ones who deserve to be judged are the monsters, you who kill innocent victims. The Dark Guardian asked if these would really be their last words. According to his logic, they killed his comrades, and that is why their sin is extremely great. He raised his magic hammer up and said, Their sentence is death penalty, and ordered to bring it to execution immediately. But suddenly he noticed that one of the defendants was missing. He did not even notice when he managed to escape. After that, Lord Yomlo appeared before him, who said that he had an extremely interesting court, and he said that he did not yet have enough rights to judge him. The Dark Guardian was surprised that he had managed to grow so large. He felt like an insignificant insect compared to him. The protagonist began to squeeze it with his giant fingers. The Dark Guard began to frantically beg him not to kill him and promise to make amends, but it was already too late. At that time, the owner asked the Dark Guard where his holy cross, which was just above his head, had gone. He already wanted to answer something to his master, but something happened that no one expected. His head exploded and began spewing his goo all over the room. That was the end of it. The host realized that this time really strong warriors had come to him. He wondered what they tasted like. After successfully defeating another enemy, the main character began to examine the dimension around him and tried to understand where he is now. Suddenly, he saw the same dark souls who began to ask him for mercy and explained to him that they collaborated with the enemy because they did not want to perish forever and ever. But Yomlo was not interested in this. He asked the system what kind of place it was. She explained to him that this is a dimension for another world, but since there is nothing here, emptiness reigns here. He asked her to get him out of here immediately. The injured dark priest said in panic that he didn't even have time to see their faces and didn't understand who it was. The host answered him that there was one not quite ordinary man among them, which may not even be a person. He became extremely curious to learn about its abilities because he had never encountered such a powerful force before. He ordered his servants to draw his blood, but not to engage him in a real fair duel, but to turn back quickly. Their team consisted of three creatures, each of them had their own superpower. Mr. X possessed absolute protection. Fire monster can burn everything in its path. Poisonous scorpion, extremely well versed in poisons. The other guards sat in ambush and tried not to make a sound. They could feel the uninvited guests approaching them. But suddenly the blow pierced the wall they were standing next to and hit one of them in the face. It seems that their ambush was exposed. They started to run away in panic and beg for help because they thought that they would just be killed now. Suddenly, they saw three colleagues in front of them who were approaching them. This was the command that the host sent to the uninvited guests. The fire monster asked the guards where they are in such a hurry. They were overjoyed when they saw that these were the guardians sent by the master himself. They thought they were safe now. The guards informed the fire monster that the uninvited guests were further down the corridor and added that it was necessary to avenge them for their dead creatures. The monster decided to take the initiative into his own hands and went to meet the guests. He was clearly confident that he could handle them without any problems. Venomous Scorpion yelled at him that he shouldn't be so cocky. She believed that they needed to act together, not alone. But it was already too late. His confidence knew no bounds. 
He believed that the flame he possessed would destroy everyone in its path. He quickly reached the guests and directed his magical flame at them with the hope of their complete destruction. The girl was the first to see it, but she thought it must be some kind of fire, and she looked in surprise at the flame, which was approaching her with crazy speed. The fire monster said that now his fire would completely cleanse their dirty souls. A huge stream of fire was aimed at the uninvited guests, which was supposed to completely burn them to the ground. They had no choice but to defend themselves and decided to use Zingan's strong hand technique to stop the flames. The fire monster couldn't understand what kind of technique it was that managed to stop his powers. He had never seen anyone do that before. Suddenly, Lord Yomlo ran up to him, who decided not to engage in formalities with him. He already knew what trick he would use against him. Taking a full lungful of air, he blew on it with great force. The fire monster didn't even have time to understand what was happening. But it was too late. The main character managed to extinguish his flame and return him to a human appearance. He turned out to be a miserable old man who didn't even have a hair on his head. One of the allies decided to use a double holy sword strike and directed it at the former fire monster who now turned out to be an ordinary naked old man. After that, he decided to say that it is not entirely fair to fight with a crowd against one. For some reason, he decided that he would have a chance if they attacked one by one, and not all at once. One of the allies answered him that no one was afraid of him here and there, and that he had one extremely strange request. He asked the former fire monster to lend him some of his flame. He decided to mock him one last time. Mr. X and the poisonous scorpion who were approaching them understood that the fiery monster paid for his self-confidence and fiery nature. They decided that they did not need to jump into battle right away. They came closer and could not believe their eyes. What they saw completely shocked them. They couldn't believe that this had happened to a fire monster. His body and eyes were in various bruises and bleeding. Venomous scorpion. She couldn't believe that in just one minute they managed to beat him so badly. She understood that they needed to change their tactics. The allies approached them and said that now their time for payback had come. Their eyes glowed with rage and desire for revenge. Poisonous Scorpion said that there was a certain understanding between them, and she invited them to join the anniversary of their master. The protagonist asked them in surprise what they meant. It was clear to anyone that he did not expect such a gesture from them. But it was another cunning plan of these weak monsters. Poison Scorpion subtly winked at Mr. X and hinted that he should play along with her. He immediately understood what she wanted from him and told the guests that today was their host's anniversary and they would be pleased if they joined this celebration. But the Allies categorically answered them that they are here to destroy everything down to the last brick and they threatened that all the monsters involved in the atrocities will die here today. One of them began to use his magical skills to deliver his mighty blow to them. Mr. X couldn't figure out what kind of ability he wanted to use. He had not yet encountered such techniques. It was a spirit sword technique, which he aimed directly at Mr. X. He wanted to destroy him immediately. After that, the monster decided to use the absolute defense technique and summoned a magical barrier to stop the blow. This time the attack was deflected successfully and did not cause him any damage. He thought that he had a chance to win, and he said that if they really decided to kill them, then they have nothing to talk about. He wanted to test all their capabilities so he would know what to expect from them. He put a magical shield in front of him and said that this shield would repel any attack. He was clearly convinced that they had no chance. But the allies quickly told him that he had started to rejoice too soon and added that they had a certain surprise that he could not expect. Lord Yomlo held up his two fingers to use his magic technique. With extreme ease, he managed to destroy Mr. H's protective barrier. The shield shattered into small pieces. The monster had never seen such powerful techniques before and watched in amazement at what would happen next. But it seems that the poisonous scorpion already has a plan for how to fulfill the master's order. She believed that all was not lost. She filled her lungs with air and directed a deadly poison at the main character. If this poison gets on the skin, it immediately begins to rot and decompose. Has anyone in this world managed to survive after such an attack? How unexpectedly the hand of Lord Yomlo passed through the poisonous veil, which was headed straight for the throat of the poisonous scorpion. Vid grabbed her tightly and lifted her up. 
The main character said that, unfortunately, his body is not quite ordinary, and therefore such cheap tricks will not work on him. She was surprised that there were such strong creatures. She understood that she had no chance of escaping his grip. He said that he only asked her to lead him to his master. He didn't need anything else from her. But unexpectedly, with her sharp claws, she began to pierce the skin of Lord Yomlo. It was clear that she wanted to get the blood that she had to deliver to her master. She succeeded in this. She released her poisonous veil again and tried once more to escape from the hands of the main character. This time it was successful and she started running away. All she needed was for Mr. X to hold them back. But it became quite a challenge for him because all he could do was defend himself. Now he was left alone with them. The poisonous scorpion rushed to his master at full speed. She understood that she had very little time left. But she reached her destination quickly enough and reported to the host that she managed to get the blood of this powerful guest. He thanked her for a job well done and was already eagerly anticipating the taste of the new abilities he was to receive. She immediately passed the drop of blood she managed to get from Lord Yumlo to her master. The blood took on the form of a small man, which outwardly resembled a tiny baby. The venomous scorpion was extremely surprised that it had acquired such a strange appearance. She had never seen anything like it before. The owner watched this little one with interest. It impressed him immensely, and he was glad that very soon he too would have such powerful abilities. He didn't care about the rest, because after swallowing these abilities, he would be one step closer to becoming God. He decided that he would not drag it out for another second and swallowed the tiny man that contained the abilities of the mighty Lord Yumlo. The poisonous scorpion rejoiced and congratulated his master. She was sure that now their enemies will find out who is the real king here. Suddenly, some parts of her master's body became incredibly large. He himself did not expect that it would lead to such an effect. Such a result shocked her no less than him. She had never seen such transformations from her master before. But something happened that no one expected. A tiny copy of the main character broke out of the host's body. He was extremely angry that such an insolent creature had managed to damage his body without any problems. It was an extremely bold move. But that was not all. The tiny man mustered all his mighty strength and decided to prove that he was not a victim here. With all his strength, he charged the owner right in the face, leaving a huge dent in it. From such a powerful blow, the owner was pushed back several meters. Even the concrete coating could not withstand such an onslaught. The master could not believe that such a tiny man could have such mighty power, but he decided that this was not a reason to give up. The venomous scorpion began to worry about her master and warned him of the possible danger he might encounter. But he assured her that he was fine and said that he simply underestimated such a small opponent. He decided that it would be better if he changed his weak body to another one. The master chose the form of a powerful crystal. He was clearly confident that he would now be able to absorb the new abilities without any problems. The poisonous scorpion understood that the host was really serious and decided not to interfere. The little man tried again to deliver a crushing blow, but this time he failed and the owner managed to catch him. He let out a sigh of relief that he could finally gain the power he deserved and swallowed it. Meanwhile, the former fire monster led Lord Yomlo and his allies to the room where the host was. He only asked them not to forget that it was he who had brought them here. He showed them the entrance, but said that it would be better if he did not go with them. It was clear that he was still afraid of his master. But suddenly, something broke through the door with tremendous force. The fire monster looked inside and couldn't understand why there was a fight going on right now. At that time, the master of the tower successfully absorbed the power of Lord Yomlo and took on his appearance. He felt so powerful for the first time in his life. The allies could not believe their eyes. They believed that it must be some kind of illusion, and they could not understand why there were two identical men in front of them. The fire monster realized that the lord of the tower had managed to absorb the power of Lord Yomlo, and that is why the situation had changed now. He decided that this was the perfect opportunity for him, and he began to run to his master and begged him to save him. But Lord Yomlo also couldn't understand why he looked the way he did. This situation was a real surprise for him. Meanwhile, the fire monster ran up to his master and said that these people do not respect them at all. Most of all, he wanted revenge on them for all the suffering he had experienced. The master of the tower began the process of teleportation and moved past Lord Yomlo. 
He decided to deal with his allies first and with one blow subdued them all at the same time, without any effort. They did not even have time to react to such an unexpected step. The fire monster was happy for such revenge and wanted them to feel the pain they were inflicting on others. The master felt the dragon's blood hand approaching behind him. He understood that this was a cunning attempt to attack Lord Yamlo. He was angry that they decided to attack him from behind, but he already had a plan for what to do with it. Since he now had the same ability as Lord Yomlo, he used the same technique to answer him. Only to surprise him even more, he didn't even turn to face him. He asked if he was angry that he was using his own abilities. The owner decided to mock him a little. The irritated protagonist could not believe his eyes. He had never seen anything like it before. He asked the system what was happening now. She explained to him that the master was absorbed by a part of him and now mastered his powers. She can restore him to full strength, but to do so, she needs to post a penalty task. At that time, the master said that he also had other abilities, but the powers he received from Lord Yomlo were the strongest of any he had encountered. The Supreme System informed the protagonist that the penalty task is not to move for ten minutes. He had no choice but to bide his time and decided to play with him. The master thought that Yomlo was afraid of him, like all previous enemies, although they were extremely self-confident. He began to laugh brazenly and said that eventually their confidence was under his feet. And he said that now is the best time to feel the real pain and power that he is capable of. Poison Scorpion was rooting for him and couldn't wait for him to finally destroy them all. The main character was also not going to give up so easily, and he used the technique of non-contact combat. But unfortunately, along with this, he was forced to fail the penalty task. The master's head exploded with dark energy from the technique used by the protagonist. He didn't even have time to understand what had happened. The venomous scorpion was seriously frightened and could not understand why her master had not been able to foresee this attack. Meanwhile, he lay naked in the middle of the room with a bloody head from the dark energy. Supreme System informed Yomlo that he failed her penalty task and therefore he was fined 1,000 points. This information made him extremely angry. He could not understand why she took away so many points from him, but she explained to him that it does not depend on her. Suddenly, the dark matter started the process of rebirth, and in a few seconds the body was completely restored, as if nothing had happened. Poison Scorpion mentioned that her master had the ability of resurrection, but Yomlo couldn't believe it. He believed that he had just destroyed him. The owner, meanwhile, rose to his feet and could not understand how it happened that he could not react to his attack. He decided that he needed to become even stronger. He increased his strength and speed by 50% and also improved his alertness and hearing. He believed that this would help him in the fight against such a strong opponent. Now he believed that Lord Yomlo would stand no chance against him and decided to attack him. But he suffered the same fate as the previous time. His head exploded with dark matter. This was again a non-contact combat technique. This time, the Supreme System fined him as much as 10,000 points. In Jomlo's opinion, it was too much. But she informed him that next time, the fine will increase even more. The Master used the rebirth technique again, and he managed to recover from dark matter. But he still couldn't understand how it could be that he doesn't even see his attacks. Suddenly, something strange began to happen to his body, and the dark matter shook him in different directions. The Supreme System decided that now was the perfect time to remove the power of Lord Yomlo from this poor organism, and for this, the main character quickly extended his hand to the enemy. Without any effort, he managed to extract his tiny copy, which was in the body of the master of this tower all this time. It was a joyful kid who was pleased to call him his daddy. The main character could not believe his eyes. No one had ever called him daddy before in his life. The Supreme System also congratulated him on his new title while he stood in silence and didn't know what emotion to feel. But it was clear that he clearly wasn't going to agree to a new status, because he didn't even have a girlfriend. In the meantime, the owner of the tower came to his senses and noticed that Yomlo was the first to regain his strength. I have never seen such powerful creatures before. He managed to explode his head twice in a row without a single movement. Now he decided to mock him and asked why he was afraid of him. He really liked his ability to reincarnate, and with its help, he will now be able to experience real hell in his body. But the owner of the tower said that he no longer wanted to compete with him. After all, it is too painful for him. 
he decided it would be best if he just ran away from here. But it was clear that the main character did not want to let him go so quickly. He had his own plans for this. The owner of the tower decided to throw himself out of the window and go as far as possible from here. He didn't think there was anyone stronger than him in this world. But suddenly some magical force intercepted his body in the air and delivered a devastating blow. He couldn't believe that this was happening to him again. It seemed to him that it would be better if he did not start the process of rebirth. But it was already too late. The magical force hurled him in the air and slammed him to the ground with all his might. After such an attack, his face looked like a juicy pork chop. There was not a single living thing on it. But the protagonist decided that this was not enough and told him to get up and continue a fair fight with him, because he is a mighty strong man here. The owner of the tower began to beg him not to touch him anymore because he had already realized all his sins. After that, Lord Yomlo said that he had one last chance to talk to the offended spirit that had been inside him all this time. The devastated host could not understand what he meant. He hears for the first time in his life about the offended spirit that is in him. Suddenly, he heard a strange voice in his head, which begged the master to leave this body and wished him death. He could not even understand what was happening to him. After that, the main character answered him that he is the creature that can kill him at any moment. With the help of his magical transformation, he began to split the flesh of the tower's former master. Dozens of other heads literally grew from his body and began to burst out. It was the most terrifying sight that could only be imagined. The former lord looked at it in surprise and could not understand what was happening there. He saw such an unknown show for the first time in his life. Suddenly, a man in a human body came out from the place where the former owner of the tower was unhooking the atoms. The main character immediately recognized him as a professor and could not understand how he managed to get out alive. The first thing he asked him was if their latest antidote was okay, because without him they have no chance to restore humanity. But the professor assured him that everything was fine with the medicine and not a single drop had been lost. Hope appeared in them. The former king, who did not understand what had happened here, decided to inquire what kind of unknown thing had grown from the body of the master and asked where all the others had gone. If this thing is to be given a name, the most suitable name is the Tree of Life, which literally in a few minutes grew from the body of the former master of the tower. Led by a small replica of the Yomlo Lord, the allies decided to go on the offensive to take revenge on all their enemies. They rushed to the laboratory and mercilessly dealt with everyone who got in their way. During that time, Lord Yomlo returned with the former king to his world, because the Supreme System called him back. She was already waiting for him and congratulated them on their successful return. The main character noticed how beautiful she is after all, and began to squeeze her cheeks. It was clear that he missed her terribly, until they saw each other. But the Supreme System did not appreciate such a friendly gesture and hit Lord Yomlo with all its might. It was clear that she was extremely annoyed by this. The main character could not understand why she became so hot-tempered and arrogant. After all, he treated her like his sister. Suddenly their relationship was interrupted by the former lord, who decided to ask where they were now, because he had never been here before. Lord Yomlo explained to him that this was his world, but it was quite unusual. He said that this is not exactly a world for the living. These words extremely surprised the former lord, and he could not understand how the world could not be for the living. He believed that this was another joke of Lord Yomlo, because he did not believe that he could be in the underworld now. But from the evil look of the main character, it was clear that he was not joking at all, but was speaking quite seriously. He welcomed him to his possessions and called them the Infernal Estate. It was clear that he was extremely proud of his world. But the former lord did not appreciate such a kind gesture and could not believe that now he was forced to be in the hellish estate. He had never heard of this place before. The only thing he knew about the afterlife was an ordinary hell where ordinary sinners go. But the supreme system answered him that where he is now is inferno, that is, the afterlife. These words scared him extremely. He didn't even know how to react to them now. He began to cry wildly and told the main character that he had promised to ensure his safety. He wondered when he had time to die because his life did not last as long as he would have liked. But Lord Yomlo quickly calmed him down and said that he would not die without his permission and explained that he was still alive. These words puzzled the former king. 
He couldn't understand what it meant without his permission. The Supreme System explained to him that the main character is the Lord of Hell. Sweat broke out on his face from these words. He pretended that everything became clear to him, but in reality, everything was the opposite. He just didn't want to appear stupid in front of such powerful beings. The only thing he understood was that Lord Yomlo really had extraordinary abilities, because an ordinary person is not capable of doing what he is capable of. He considered himself lucky to befriend such a powerful warrior. After that, the Supreme System asked Lord Yomlo if he did not want to combine the estate with those empty lands that he saw during the duel with the Death Guards. In surprise, he asked the systems if it was really possible to merge them into one whole. This information gave him some hope and joy. She explained to him that since there is no estate in the other world, it can be easily merged with this world. Each dimension has its own worlds, and each lord has a goal, to unite as many territories as possible to increase his influence. So, he was extremely lucky to find an empty world. Moreover, according to the system, the main character developed his world extremely slowly and should speed up in this regard. After that, Lord Yomla decided that he could not waste any more time and ordered the system to quickly unite the worlds. The Supreme System quickly began to carry out the order and began the unification process. He is lucky that she knows well how it can be done. She sent her magical powers into the universe and began to open a portal for unification. A crack began to form on the ground. In a moment, the portal of the Path of Samsara opened, shining with green magic. It meant that she had succeeded. And souls from the other world began to enter the Path of Samsara along with their energy. That could not but please the Lord Yomlo. He felt strength begin to fill him. A powerful surge of energy filled his body. He hadn't felt like such a powerful warrior in a long time. But the Supreme System reminded him that he still had an entry-level estate, and he should continue to complete tasks to raise it. But before that, he should go to the human world, because because of one evil spirit, a bunch of lonely souls went to that world, and he needed to fix this situation. The former lord was happy about this because it meant he would be coming home. They quickly moved into the human world. But near his estate, more and more people who wanted something gathered every time. He made his way past them in silence to get to the Nesset. Men from the crowd immediately recognized Lord Yomlo. They just couldn't understand what kind of strange man was walking next to him. The Nesset began to calm them down and said that everyone would have a turn and they would take care of everything. The main character asked the Gnesset what is going on here and why there are always so many disgruntled people near their estate. He explained to him that all these people had come to join their clan. This is all because they saw the power of Lord Yomlo and immediately wanted to join them. The Gnesset turned its gaze to the stranger who was standing next to Lord Yomlo and asked him who he was. The protagonist answered him that he was their old friend. He explained that after that, when they were surrounded in the country of Dal and wanted to destroy them with their army, this was the man who planned this whole operation. The Knesset could not understand why he was calling him an old friend and asked Yomlo if he really understood the concept of friendship. The former master answered him that a good friendship always begins with a fight, but everything that was in the past must remain there. The main character told him that he had to complete one more task. The former lord was ready for anything without any objections. He ordered him to capture King Yomlo's clan. It seems he has another cunning plan brewing. He did not yet understand what this meant and what challenge awaited him. It all seemed extremely strange to him. At that time, there were three pumped-up men in the forest who all together drew the spirit to themselves. They knew that it is not as simple as it seems to them, and it is a real challenge for them. The dark spirit answered them that he could not go with them and asked not to force him to do so. But the men were extremely determined because the dead spirit has nothing to do in their human world. The other answered him that they had no time for idle chatter and said that they should pull even harder. They tried their best to tame the dark spirit, but he put up an extraordinary resistance and said that unfortunately he could not go with them now because he had unfinished business here. The man told him that now it was no longer important and directed the power of locked swords at him and ordered them to severely beat the disobedient dark spirit, which has no place in this world. The swords went into spirit matter. They were called to tame him and make him more submissive. 
But this dirty trick did not have a successful effect, but backfired. He successfully repelled this attack and directed this spell at the one who summoned it. It was clear that he would not give up so easily. The blade of the sword was already headed for the man's eyes. The dark spirit said that he himself would come to them when he had completed all his necessary business. And with crazy speed, he left them over the horizon. It was clear that they would not be able to catch up with him. They already thought that it would be better to report this to Commander Zhong Wan, but suddenly realized that they were higher than him in rank. They faced a real dilemma. At that time, Commander Zhong Wan was, as usual, in the brothel, where he first got acquainted with his new abilities. He turned to the pimp and asked if it was true that they had been given a lift by new girls. She confirmed these rumors and said that he would be pleased today. She led him to a room where one of the new girls was and added that she was a little buina. But it did not scare him, because he liked the playful girls with whom he spent his time. The hostess opened the door to a dark room and in front of it sat a bound girl of incredible beauty on a mattress, who begged to be let go. Zhang Wan reassured her and promised that he would not harm her if she served him well. He didn't know yet that this was the sister of the whimsical ghost. She began to cry for help, but Jun Wav ignored her cry and said that she had no choice but to serve him well. Her pitiful cries for help were really starting to turn him on. He knew that no one would help now and promised her to be gentle with her. He came even closer to her and began to undress in front of her. Zhang Wan couldn't wait to enjoy his new body. Suddenly, a silhouette appeared behind him, the eyes of which glowed with a green glow. For the time being, he was silently watching Zhang Wan's further actions. The dark spirit waited until the attacker was completely undressed and approached her sister. After that, his patience completely disappeared. He attacked him. He took out his dark sword and swung it at the naked Zhang Wan, who was still unsuspecting. Suddenly, the sword was thrust into the body of the naked Zhang Wan, who only winced in pain. This was a real surprise for him. After that, the dark spirit cut him in half, leaving him no chance to survive. Only the remains of the body reminded of his existence. The spirit instantly apologized to his sister for not being able to come earlier. He explained that bad soldiers detained him. The sister could not believe that this ghost was her brother. She asked him where their father had gone, but unfortunately he failed to save him, and now she is left alone in this world. Tears appeared in her eyes. She did not want to accept this information. This meant that she now had to take care of herself. After that, he asked her how she ended up in this brothel and where she shared her talisman. She explained that it was an extremely long story and added that it was all because of her too much trust. A few days ago, an unknown man appeared in their world. He came to their emperor who was standing with his soldiers to take the book of life and death from them, and he promised them that if they voluntarily gave her up, he would not kill them. It was clear that this old warrior was determined, and at any cost, he wanted to get a book that could give him superpowers. He said that the sooner they give it to him, the better chance they have that everyone will remain alive and unharmed. But the emperor did not want to appear so simple and answered him that one should not forget about their customs. He meant that ordinary people are not allowed to have such knowledge. This is just real madness. But the old warrior said that he had long ago found a way to grasp that ancient knowledge. And to get that book today is his sacred duty. The emperor thought that this man had come to them alone and decided that he had no chance of winning her. He reached for the sword behind his back and ordered his soldiers to seize it immediately. But the old man answered him that he did not come here alone. Not everything is as simple as it may seem at first glance. He had managed to master many other techniques and now he was ready to show off his new skills so that they could see the difference between a god and a human. He exposed his torso and began to summon an unknown force that erupted from his chest. The emperor could not believe that this old warrior had sold his soul. How suddenly an unknown weapon began to burst out of the chest. The man grabbed her and pulled her completely out of his body. The emperor could not believe his eyes. He had never seen such powerful techniques before. The warrior explained to him that this was the brush of death, and for the first time in so many years, he would have to use it. If he got that book, he would be able to control the life and death of any person. The emperor angrily asked him how many innocent souls he had lost in order to master this technique. The warrior answered him that this is one of the ways of awakening 
and it is a pity that the Emperor did not understand how powerful she was before. He waved his magic brush and ordered his servants to appear. He used the technique of dark magic Komayaka was supposed to help him take possession of the Book of Life and Death. His heartless soldiers immediately appeared at his side, ready to carry out any of his orders. The Emperor watched the dark magic in shock and realized that this world had come to an end. The warrior ordered them to immediately kill anyone who stood in their way. They had no emotions, only a thirst to carry out an order. The Emperor quickly handed over the Book of Life and Death to the girl who was the sister of the whimsical ghost, and he sent some of his soldiers with her to protect her on the way. But as soon as they set out on the road, they were shot by dark ghosts, who wanted to destroy them and take the book from them. The soldiers who accompanied her were much weaker than those ghosts, and if they hadn't sacrificed themselves, she would be dead now too. When she managed to escape from them, she found a small village and decided that it would be better if she stayed here for a few days. She went into some abandoned house and lit a fire. She didn't know what to do at that moment. She felt extremely lonely and abandoned. She did not understand why she was given such a difficult task, how to guard such a valuable thing. Moreover, it brought their people only a lot of troubles and problems. After that, she decided that she could not continue to live like this, and she should do something about it immediately. The best idea she had at the time was to simply throw her into the fire to destroy her completely, but local residents saw it. She thought they would want to help her. It was her last hope. But suddenly they started to smile evilly, and these smiles made her extremely wary. She didn't know what to expect from them. She couldn't escape from the locals, and so she had to endure all their abuse, and then they sent her to this brothel. The dark spirit that was her brother listened to this story calmly, but he was alarmed by the fact that he knew that someone had already managed to open this book. The sister could not believe his words, and said that she had done everything she could at that moment. Her eyes began to fill with tears, and he asked her to take him to that village. At that time there was not a single living soul in that village. It was as if a tornado of death passed over him, who left behind only a lot of tortured and killed people. It was clear that they died a violent death, and the book Life and Death ended up in someone else's hands. The old warrior still managed to get her, and now the whole world was in his hands. From today he will now rule this world.